Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. Mavs are up by 18 points. We play early in the third. Right back at you. 30 points tonight for Luka. His seventh made three. That is how we start the Hump Day edition hump day. of Sean and RJ here on DFW Sports Station 105.3 The Fan. Thanks for being a Tolo. That stands for Turn It On, Leave It On. I'm Sean Sharif alongside Ralph J- Ra? Raj. What was it? Raf. Raf. Raf James Choppy. We got Peyton and Ry Ry in the back. We are live on the Fan Cam Twitch and YouTube. And the Dallas Mavericks continue to roll in the prey for Grant Williams game on ballot. Yeah, it was. It was the prey for Grant game. That was about, uh, that was a cookage. That was a cookage uh, <laughs> last night, man. That's some MJ stuff. It's like, oh, all right, yeah. you said something about me. Fake LeBradford Smith, uh, <laughs> BJ Armstrong, and Grant Williams. Talk about the name on the back, the name on the front. Mm-hmm. And Luca had something for him. First nine minutes of last night's game. 21 points, five rebounds, two assists, one block, seven of nine from the field, five of seven from deep, and the Mavs were up 69-47 at the half. Yeah, he was uh, he was locked in. Um, he was locked in from the start, and and there's 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 really nothing that can stop him right now. He's he's playing at a high level, but at a high level, as high <laughs> of a level as anybody in the league. Um, I still think he should be the MVP. I still think he has a surprising shot just because Joker's won it so many times. The Mavs are also surging. 39, 12, and 10 for the final Luka numbers. Just missing out on the 40-point triple-double. Yeah, and maybe we're too close to it. We've forgotten Shea. Um, I mean, he's still only three hours away. But, um, you know, and they've had such a great year. That maybe he could sneak in because I know on the ESPN poll he was second by a wide margin mm. uh, over Luca. Uh, but yeah, it's like there, there's nobody that's playing at a higher level today than Luka Doncic is um, now. And, and, and listen, you know Kyrie's playing at a very high level too, and that's why the Mavs are winning so much. Not just Luca, and he won Western Conference Player of the Week while Porzingis, I think at like 19 and 10, won Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Wow, I, I didn't know Porzingis won it. Yeah, that's good. I mean, look, he he was always a good player, very good. I think it was just a bad fit, uh, and 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 maybe in a gallopy way, too close to the injury when he was here, in a Michael Gallup kind of way. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like like it, you could easily convince me that Luca uh, has has a chance at the MVP. It's just the voters seem to think that he doesn't. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but like again, he was playing at such a high level, and and you met with the Grant Williams pray for him game. And you mentioned MJ, and this is like Tiger a couple years ago where the where the golfer's like, you know what? It'd be really cool to be with Tiger in a final round and see what this is all about. And he said at his press conference, he's like, okay, here we go. Like, <laughs> you're about to find out. And and they found out in a hard way on that Sunday in, in, in 2019. Uh, this week, it's what, Sunday of 2019. We're Tiger Woods Masters. Luca on what it was like to see Grant Williams quote. He's a great guy, but I think you can see what PJ brings to our team. I think the trade was great for us, but Grant is a great guy. We have a good relationship. Some people say we don't, but we do. And they did hug it out uh, before the game. And then Luca pulled out the knives and did what he had to do during the game. They clinch no worse than the number six spot. In the Western Conference, one more Maverick win or one Pelicans loss clinches the five spot. So we continue. We think on this collision course yeah. for the Clippers again. Yeah. And, and look, that's you got to go through your team, right? You got to go through that team that, that knocked you out a couple times. Um, you know, even a lot of people had the Clippers a month or two ago as the favorites in the West. Not Denver, right? Not Minnesota, not OKC. They still have the Clippers, right? They, they, they. That's true. That's true. They, they did have the Clippers, and and they still have a good chance. I mean, they're 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 tremendous. Now they're going to face. Did you see the score last night against the Suns early on? You don't even have to look. I just saw it on TV as a reminder. It was thirty-five to four. Thirty-five to four. I think the Suns ended up with ten points in the first quarter. I had a Tolo hit me up last night saying, are you watching this Suns game? I'm like, no, after the Stars won, uh, I uh, I shut it down. But yeah, it 30, 37-10. 37-10 after the first quarter. 
Uh, so that's what the wow. Clips did. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a dist- and now they made the score respectable. You wouldn't know it because uh, that third quarter they came out firing. I mean, they were up, they were up twenty seven. They're up third. What's twenty seven plus six? Thirty three. They're up thirty three at the half, and they only win by thirteen. Like that's you you, you know third quarter they came out very flat. I'm sure, uh, but that's that's a that's a hell of a first quarter. The Lakers lost to the Golden State Warriors, and the softest NBA player of my lifetime. Anthony Davis strikes again. There's no way he missed this game with a headache because of that shot to the face the other day, right? Headache and nausea as the Lakers are trying to jump to the seven spot and they're taking on the Warriors and Anthony Davis misses this game because of a headache. Scotty embarrassed? Scotty Pippen type piston vibes for Anthony Davis yesterday, leaving his team out there to lose as Golden State bombed away from three. But, man, Anthony Davis is going to be all over the news and the headlines today. Yeah, uh, Scotty had a migraine. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you can, you can, I understand that. Did you see the shot where Anthony Davis got hit the other yeah, night? Yeah, it, it didn't seem like it was, I, I mean, I didn't notice it was like this <laughs> head whipping, yes. you know. Wh- it was like a tap. Yeah. It I'm, was a little more than a tap. Yeah. Now, look, maybe a doctor says he got hit in the right part of the frontal lobe, temple area, whatever. And that creates a vibration and a brain bleed. All right. And then there's a possibility that I'll buy this. I buy Scotties, right? You have, a, you have migraine. Anybody's ever had a migraine? You can't do anything. You're nauseous. You're, or you're nauseated. You can't see lights. Nothing like that. Yeah. And <sighs> look at this. Look at that. Yeah. That's <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless that was in the perfect spot. Oh, you know? man. I don't look know. at that. That's insane. So he missed the game because of a headache and some stomach sickness. Yeah. I, okay. Like maybe he's throwing up everywhere. Like we're gonna need we're gonna need some video. Anthony Davis experiences more pregnancy symptoms than my wife. Like my wife hasn't been this nauseous. Well, yeah, she didn't go out during the eclipse, so she's and- not gonna experience anything. <laughs> the paper clip saved us in the red ribbon. Eight seven seven eight eight one one oh five three to hit us up on the Frankel and Frankel injury attorney hotline. Early shout out to K Mess. He's sitting there showing off. Look at this chop. Look, look, look at the early weight room sessions. Oh wow. From the Tolos. That's that- what I don't do anymore. No weights? No, I don't, right. do, I don't do I don't do deadlifts. That, that's a classic deadlift thing. Jay Ochoa, of course, is uh he's in the, he's in the gym for the hump day edition. Hump day. Then you have KMS and uh Jalen Brunson was at it again last night. He went off for 40. Brunson, oh by the way, with the Mavericks making the playoffs, they officially basic give the 2024 first round pick to the New York Knicks. Final oh, cool. co- final condition of the Porzingis deal. Uh, apparently, this is the worst draft in human history. So don't even bother. The Mavericks have a first round pick this year. <laughs> yeah. <it's>, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, you say that as a drop for Mike? <laughs> oh, they're crapping on the draft. Yeah, I heard a lot of people talk about how this is one of the worst drafts they've ever seen. Um, so now maybe it's bad from a top of the draft perspective, and it's deep, uh, or maybe it's just bad. So they didn't explain why they said it was bad. It was some of these draft ex- experts and analysts. Just talk about how bad this draft is. So if you're going to miss one, this is the one to miss. And Jalen Brunson is getting his own commercials now in New York. You see the AT&T commercial? I did not. That he has? Oh, yeah. He's got the AT&T commercial. He's walking the streets. Jordan Brunson in his last, excuse me, Jalen Brunson in his last four games. 35 and 11, 35, 11 and 6, 43, 8 and 6, 45, 8 and 3. And this will be my uh, my Steve Nash Maverick moment in not seeing this coming. Like Steve going on over to the Phoenix Suns and Jalen Brunson unguardable as the best street baller in the NBA. Mm-hmm. And he's killing it. As someone tweeted, man, look at what Brunson and Luka did last night. Just imagine if they were on the same team. Could you imagine? Yeah, you know, they were on the same team. They went to the West Finals that year. Thank you, man. It was a good year. Breaking news. It was a good year. By the way, the Celtics' first team in NBA history last night to shoot zero free throws in a game. First team ever? That's surprising it's the first team ever. Not me. That no think? one has shot one free throw? I mean, I would think in the history of this league, which is back to 1946, that there would have been a game where someone 
didn't shoot a free throw. No, but I guess I wouldn't think so. I guess it makes sense. I mean, you know, they used to kick it down low all the time, and you know, really get the, the whole point was to get to the line. Okay, I could see that. I'm just surprised. I guess I'm just surprised. There's something Look at the new. free throw category. They still God, just zero, zeros. zero for zero. Wow. For the New York Knicks. So that was the night in the association as we get closer and closer to postseason playoff basketball. But right after you had the Mavs, you had the Dallas Stars. Could they stay hot? And do we officially have another closer problem in DFW on the home of the Rangers? Hump Day Edition Hump Day. with Sean and RJ. Just getting started. We got the pack guest list. Swung on, there's a drive to deep left center field. 
That is way back, and that ball is gone. Home run number three of the night for Shea Langoliers. He has put the Athletics in front, four to three. Have a night, Shea Langoliers. From Keller High and also Baylor, three home runs off of three different Rangers and the Oakland Athletics come back late to ruin Evan Carter being the hero with his first home run of the year and the A's take game one in Arlington 4-3. Jose LeClerc gives up the final one. This is one of the most like disappointing and disheartening Ranger games I've seen in a while. It was man, I had a lot of Tolos freaking out over this. Game. It was a bad game. They, they, that was a bad game. Adolis was that was that was a bad performance from him. He had four pretty mid at bats, some with runners on, some without. It, there was just I mean outside they had the, bases loaded, didn't yeah, score. I mean just you know, Evaldi had, Evaldi pitched pitched well enough to win. Was his best, won't be his worst. But he's good enough to win. Uh, you know, Robertson you know, gave up a home run, and Leclerc gave up the big fly, and that's. I mean, like that's. I, I was just very disheartened by this game. It was just it's going to leave a taste in my mouth. And I'd already picked my shirt out for the day. I'd already started. I already planned to wear this. Pick my clothes out at night. I don't want to funnel around with going through drawers and such. Yeah. And uh, just yeah, I was going to wear red today. It was like, you know, it was like Tiger Woods. You know, Wednesday, wear red, I guess. It's a new thing. Starting right now. But uh, very disappointing game. Yeah, I've made a conscious effort not to wear anything Cowboys for as long as I can. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to. Jersey, we're Arkansas now. That's because oh. he's wearing Arkansas money. He's got Arkansas stuff. So they're not going to. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, I was very, very disheartened with this. Pepe, hey, hey, are you worried about the pen? I'm worried about Jose Le Leclerc. I mean, I mean, at some point, Chris Young has to think you have to spend the money on a closer, man. You can't just say, "Oh, it's the next man up." It's whoever we have in the bullpen. You, you got to spend the money, man, because I mean, you, you can't lose the A's. You can't waste a great start with Nathan Evaldi, because that's the thing the Rangers did last year. They lost four or five games of the A's while the Astros were winning, you know, twelve or thirteen. The Mariners were winning ten of thirteen from them. I mean, you can't lose the A's yeah. at home, man. It, it's a, it's awful. That that's the thing. Divisions are not won based on beating the Astros. Um, the, 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 the AL Central is not one with Cleveland beating Minnesota. It's beaten Kansas City. It's beaten Oakland. It's beaten the, um, the, 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 the worst team in the, in the American League East, whoever that's what it is, the Red Sox, maybe. Whoever, whoever has the best record against those bad teams, a lot of times will win the division. A lot of times. It's not necessarily the head-to-head. -head. You've got to own these teams. You have to win 11 of 13, 10 of 13. Not seven or eight or nine. You've got to dominate. I I, th I think that we all thought that the light clicked on for Leclerc last year. Yeah, it did. So, I mean, it did last year. So you go into this season being like, uh -huh. okay, we we have our closer stabilized. That's that's closers though. Closers are very fickle. If you're not an all time great, you go into every year kind of like kickers. You just kind of don't know. And you know what's surprising? After saying that, Leclerc's worst month. ERA last year it was early. It was actually no. That's why I said surprising. It was actually October. He had a three two nine in October. Is it, that the playoffs or is that the regular season part of October? Playoffs. Okay. He had a three two nine um, in the month of September. Postseason was a three two nine, uh, and then I'll get the ERA by months. But it does not look like. It was it was higher than that, but I'll I'll double check it. They don't I don't know why they didn't summarize it at the bottom. But we all felt really good about Leclerc at the end. Yeah. So now you're Chris Young and you have to decide how long to ride this out. Yeah. Like they did so many times with the role as Chapman. They they did, and, and teams have done that. I mean, a role this has had months throughout his career where he's just been bad. Um and, and this again, this is if you're not an all time great elite closer where you're just kinda like you're just kind of there, you're doing your thing every year, you're gonna have ups and downs. Like you hope the ups and downs don't stay very long, but you, you've got to expect, you know, when you're going to pitch 60 innings or 60, which is usually about 60 appearances, you know, how many nights are you going to be off? You're not going to be on all 60. You're going to have some bad nights. Like how many nights are you going to have where you miss your spot? And then Shay Langoliers in front of all of his family and friends in town puts one out at about 400 feet. How, how many times a year that's going to happen? Well, 
And Robertson's ERA, I thought was going to be higher than it is. It's a one two nine. Um, he's been okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, David Robertson's been. I mean, I wouldn't I don't necessarily think I'd put him in the closer role, but I, th I think he's a seventh inning guy. I mean, you could do a lot worse. I think Robertson's been fine. You know, you know, he he left one out there last night. Uh, and that's the thing with the home run ball. You know, you're giving up. They give up solo home runs to Leclerc, and then all of a sudden, gone. It's a it's a tough spot. At least the night ended on a good note. It will be played back to the far point. Tannen looking for traffic in front. They score. That took a deflection as Tannen just threw it to the net, and the Stars take the three to two lead here in the second period. Sabres TV with the call. They got off to a slow start, falling behind 2-1 after the first period, but scored the next two in the second period to take the lead and hold on to the win. It was their 50th win of the season, and they are now one win away from clinching the Central Division. They currently have the second best record in the entire NHL. They're 10-1 and in their last 11, and we'll talk about it today with Craig Ludwig at 8 o'clock. Yes, we will. And uh, it's always good to talk to Lud, uh, who's always got uh, some great stories to share. But, you know, the, the end of the Stars uh, season is not the most difficult that they're going to play all year. And this is a chance for them to uh, continue to, to you know wrap up the West and then get closer to the overall number one, which is probably going to be tough to do anyway. Uh, but you get a good win and... Hopefully what you do is you stay healthy and you get Otter into a groove. Because, uh, you know, even though he won against Colorado, he wasn't great against Colorado, uh, but he got the win. He was great against Seattle and Edmonton. Uh, now you want to get him into that groove. When I got any uh, plane, any Boeing updates for travel? No, there's always Boeing updates, Sean. Got to worry about my uh, my parents here coming up in about... Uh... In, in a few weeks. Oh, are they uh, they uh, they coming to town? Flying in for the uh, for the new baby. Oh, that's right, that's right, the new baby. Yeah, one uh, one just you know simply broke apart midair. Um, didn't crash, but just you know, the uh, so you know how like there's like the is this the one where they're filming like the plane like shedding things yeah. just flying off of yeah, it? Yeah, it was the engine. Uh, I think it's called a cowing. It's basically the sheet metal around the engine, so it didn't. It's just cosmetic. It just exposes the engine, but you don't want things flying in there. Uh, no, it just came off mid-flight. So they take <laughs> off and they go, oh, wow, look, here, this thing's coming off. So they got to, you know, circle around and, and maybe dump some fuel. And then they did an emergency landing. And everybody landed and this thing is just flipping and flopping all through the air. That's got to be very unsettling. And then yesterday, somebody posted a video of a pilot, pilot, Sean, not a maintenance guy, pilot, on a United Airlines flight, fixing the window in the seat. He is sitting in the, in, in the window seat and he's fixing some kind of casing around the window. Again, it's all cosmetic. Right? It's just a little border around the window. But that's not something that you want to have passengers see. This is probably stuff that's gone on for years and years and years. Just do it before they board. It's quite simple. I know you want to board at a certain time and you want to take off at a certain time. Just fix the window before people get on the flight. Have numbers gone down with all this? Have you seen any stats? I haven't seen any stats in terms of passengers go down. Uh, costs are still, they're stable. You know, I, 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 we've been looking at trips right now, and the you know the costs are a little bit more expensive than they were a few years ago. Did but you book it? Did you bring, uh, book the uh, Swingers Resort, mm. Swingers Hotel? No, we did not book the Swingers Hotel. Oh. I'm gonna I, we're, we'll bring a swing maybe, but we're not gonna be swingers <laughs> uh, that week. But uh, no, we did not. But we're looking, we're looking at other places. You know, we uh, today's Wednesday. I think we're gonna book today. Flights that uh, they they reset. On Wednesday. So I think we're going to book today. Live on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. Thanks for being a Tolo. That stands for Turn It On, Leave It On. C.D. Lamb responds to the report that he's going to hold out. And what do other teams in the NFL think of Jerry Jones' all-in comment? Bobby Bell joins us for that to kick off the 6 a.m. club for the hump day edition okay. of Sean and RJ next.
Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. From news and notes to the coaches and players for America's team, let us go inside the stars on 105.3 The Fan. And we do so here on the home of the Dallas Cowboys, Sean Trafe, RJ Choppy, and our Cowboys insider, Bobby Belt, where CD Lamb appeared to respond to Diddy Bobby. Diddy? Diddy. Maybe this is why you have sports people ask people like CD Lamb questions and not TMZ, because oh. then they ask nuanced questions where they don't really know what they're asking, and then they confuse CD Lamb. So. The big discussion around C.D. Lamb has been what lately? He's going to hold, hold out. out. He might hold out. He might. So the question would be, are you going to be there for OTAs? Are you going to be there for training camp? Nope. The question, which utterly confused C.D. Lamb, but is now being circulated, is uh, are you going to be in Dallas next year? So why would he Why would he not be in Dallas in 2024? He was confused by it, but this is uh, the TMZ approach this week. How's the off season going? How you keeping yourself busy? Um, relaxing, man. Chilling. Could have come out, of course. Laying by the pool. What are you looking forward to most next season? Winning again. Looking forward to winning. Being out there with my guys. And um, making another run at this thing. Will you be in Dallas? Yeah, I'll be in Dallas. <laughs> like, what are you asking me that for? And this is this is what happens when you get TMZ. But look, he's clearly saying. I'll be there when the regular season comes around. I'm looking forward to winning, being out there with my guys, doing my thing. The question will be, is he out there doing it with the new 32, $33, 34000000 million contract? Yeah, Florio has uh, already attacked this uh, with the headline, Cowboys seem to twist CD Lamb comments into something they weren't. Uh, the DallasCowboys.com website. Did he uh, text you about that too? He did not text me. <laughs> oh. He did not text me any more follow-ups yesterday after I did not reveal my sources and give him any more uh, insight and intel. I saw Clarence Hill get involved, though, uh, which we'll deal with as time <laughs> moves forward. Um, but there we go. 877-881-1053 is the Franklin Franklin Injury Attorney Hotline. I, uh, you know, I, I, I generally, you know, you never, you, we never believe anything. Two, we're two weeks before the draft. You never believe anything a team says at this point, right? Like, just don't believe anything with, with draft related. And then when it comes to players who are under contract, I mean, they always, a lot of times they'll say the right thing. And then sometimes they'll purposely say the wrong thing just to, just for effect. And it kind of confuses us. And it confuses me at least. So I don't know what to make of what CD says. Uh, yeah, he'll be here. He has to be here. He's under contract. Will he be here holding out? Will he be here with a new deal? I'll be here holding in. Or holding in, whatever you want to call it. Will he play week one? That like yes. Like they, yeah, they're, they're not gonna let it get to the point where he doesn't play week one. Not if not if Jerry's really all in, which whatever the hell that means. You know, and not if they have any desire to not lose this entire locker room. Why was Eric DaCosta, the Ravens general manager in Baltimore, asked about Jerry's all in? It was so somebody asked a question. Uh, the phrase "all in" has been all over the NFL this off season. That was the question, and DaCosta spoke about the Ravens being all in and what that kind of meant to him. Well, I'd like to think Jay, we're always all in. You know, in this business, if you're not all in, then you're all out, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, we're going to be in every single year. And I, that's what John expects. That's what I expect. That's what Steve expects. And I think that's what our fans expect. So I think, you know, you should expect that too, Jerry. So I was like, this is... If, if, if Shad Khan said the Jags were all in, the, the, the phrase all in is not circulating throughout the NFL. Right. And that's this is such a Cowboys thing that the Cowboys uh, reach on SportsCenter, on First Take, on, on all the shows. Uh, Jerry's probably more happy that All In took off and is being talked about in Baltimore than he's upset. His his yeah. level of emotion probably happier that that took off versus being upset that we all think he made a huge mistake and he misspoke. Yeah, I mean that really we'll should be, be all in. the name of his Netflix show this year is All In, the All In Joneses or whatever. It's just taken off. Well, and, they're not a reality show according to the right. Dates. Absolutely. Uh, but that's just the power of the, this team. You know, they're all in. Or, or the all in phrase, I should say, has now gotten to Baltimore, the AFC version of the Cowboys this offseason, who have done 
as little, maybe a little bit more. Definitely a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, with Henry. Okay, but they lost. I mean, look, they well, lost. They re-signed their guy, too. They re-signed Matabuka. Justin Matabike. But they lost Patrick Queen. Willingly, it seems. Right. But, like, we willingly lost Tyron. Not not according to Jerry. Jerry said we just couldn't afford it. Jerry well, said don't have the money. Look, all in is what the Rams did. Okay, Yeah, that's all in. F them that, picks I'm, is all in. Yes, F them picks is all in. That's all in. Like, the Houston Texans... Are like getting really close to uh-huh. all oh, in, yeah, for sure. approaching all in, all this, all this other stuff. Like we're selling out. It, to me, all in is the world is ending in 2025, so we have to win the Super Bowl right now. This is our last chance to do it. Going all in. That's what it is. This, you know, this, this whole thing with Jerry. You know, it's an insult to our intelligence. Oh, you just don't. You you, you don't define it the same way that I do. Okay. That's what all in is. F them picks and what the Rams did. Yeah, I think they there's two things that the Cowboys as a whole would like back. Things they've said this offseason. And I think it's Demarcus Lawrence saying we were tired. And I think it's Jerry saying the words all in. Because that has that has ultimately bit them more than the moves themselves or the approach itself is the expectation they set with that quote. It, it's just like last offseason, the expectation that you set or or the the fire you started when Mike McCarthy said, Kellen wants to light up the scoreboard. I want to run the damn ball. Like sometimes I think they don't understand what specific buzzwords are going to just stick. And I don't know that Jerry or Demarcus Lawrence thought what they said was going to stick and reverberate the way that it has, but it's, it's here now. And now they got to deal with that reality. And so I think the walking back of, well, you don't understand what all in means is just like a thing of like, how do I make this not like be something that the fans apply to us this aggressively? I can't tell whether you have morning voice, you're sick, or you're just still finishing yeah. breakfast. No, no, it's morning voice. Or not morning voice. I mean, I don't know. I woke up. I was telling Ryan on the way up here as I forgot my second badge, my alternative badge that we need to get up into the building. Um, I had woke up this morning i got like all sinusy so i think it's just allergies do you make a phone call every morning i did this morning to be able to get in i don't otherwise with the second badge that we have the second badge yeah we have two bad yeah Yeah. two badges uh pay pay let's just play this in the beginning and then we'll cut it off because i think it's like over two minutes long this is rg3 yesterday talking about the cowboys off season Hey, what's up, Cowboys fans? I just want y'all to know I am not going to laugh at you. I'm not here to make fun of you because, honestly, I feel bad for you. And I want you to know that this is a safe space that you can express all your frustrations about what you just watched and what you've been dealing with for the past 28 years. The bottom line is, guys, I hate calling for coaches' jobs because this is not what I do, but it's got to be the coach. You guys have had three consecutive 12-win seasons. Nothing to show for it. It's been 28 years since you made a conference championship game. It's been 28 years since you won a Super Bowl. And you've had 12 consecutive right, playoff appearances. Uh, we, we know the whole resume. If you can cut down something good that's 30 or 40 seconds from that, go ahead and do it. Um, we move on to the other harp. What? We're just going to move on from the fantastic point he just made? That it's the coach? That it's the coach's fault? Wow. Go ahead, elaborate. It's the coach's fault. <laughs> uh, now, we are looking at the other Harbaugh brother. They're already loving what Jim is doing in Los Angeles with the uh, with the Chargers locker room. Boy, I think this is... I don't understand it. And, and yeah, people are freaking out and like, mm. whoa, what a, what a great move from Jim Harbaugh. So Jim Harbaugh has apparently rearranged... Do me a favor. What? Can you not eat or drink the rest of the segment? Yeah, okay. Mush mouth. Yep. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Jim Harbaugh has rearranged the locker room numerically, and instead of the normal setup where you just start pairing guys next to each other to do whatever it is in terms of, oh, we need this guy to link up with this guy and everything else, he's done it numerically. But then he's also stuck high school stars on everybody's nameplate. So, if you're a two-star recruit, he's putting two stars next to your name. No star, a zero star. I don't understand the point of this. I don't know what end game this has. This is... um. Anybody can come from anywhere. Is that what yeah, this is? It's, it's, uh, it doesn't matter where you came from. It's that you're here. It's a motivational tactic. Remember where you remember that how disrespected you were for some of these guys. Yeah, but or we can't. Five, your five stars. Like, hey, remember what you are. You're a blue blood. But we can't immediately reject this as like new college guy. You don't do this in the pros because he played and coached in the pros already. 
he may know the right buttons to push. You can't roll your eyes at college guy. Hasn't won a Super Bowl yet. <laughs> well, he's been there. And he's done a lot of winning. And he, he has. And he played. Did yeah. He? Yeah, he played. Yeah, he played. He was a pro bowler. No, no, no. I know he played. I already said it once in the segment. <laughs> Did he get to the Super Bowl with that yes. Colts team? No, with the Colts? Was no. Who was that with? When he played? Um, Did he he never got to the Super They lost to Pittsburgh. A they lost Pittsburgh AFC in AFC title. title game, 94, yeah. five, something like that. Last time Cowboys went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, 95. That's when it was. Ouch. Yep. Been a minute. Been, been a minute. Been a minute. Um, but yeah, that was that was that was Harbs as a player. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's look, it might work. It might work. Um, I, they, they, it's a little collegiate. Definitely one of those kind of collegiate motivational tax. But I don't understand how it's supposed to even motivate. Like I don't understand what it. Like okay, fine, you do it numerically. I can kind of understand that aspect of it. Of just like. We're not going to orchestrate this like a wedding party and say this person at this table or whatever. You're just going like, all right, numbered. What, one through 99, that's how you guys sit next to each other. And whoever you end up next to, that's your locker mate and you deal with it. Fine. Okay. I kind of get that. But the idea of sticking the recruiting stars on there, I don't see what that, what message it, that sends. Unless he looked at his roster and his roster was ironically all three star guys or less. Right, which is probably not the case. But let's just say for the sake of argument, they were all very under recruited. Okay. Okay, I can see that, right? Well, and doesn't it risk the idea so one of the biggest recruits in the history of high school football that's been through Dallas was Bryce Butler. Bryce Butler was a five star, like top ten recruit in the country when he was coming out. If you stick Bryce Butler's five stars up there, aren't you also risking like like what is being what is the message being said like Josh Allen was a zero star recruit. If you put them in the same lockers, it's supposed to be like, look, Bryce was a five star, and look what uh, look what a loser he ended up being. Josh yeah. over here, he yeah. was great. Like I feel like you you risk setting up guys to feel embarrassed about where they ended yeah, up. Yeah, I, I think from Harbaugh's perspective, he would be like, see, that's the potential you have. That's that's what's it. That's the talent level. That's what's in you. I don't want to want to be very positive about this. That that's what he could probably be looking at. It's a shot in the dark. But maybe it works. Who knows? And then back to the other hardball as John in Baltimore was asked about uh, the tackle rule. The, we call it the hip hop, the hip, hip drop. drop. Yeah, hip drop. The huh? hip drop tackle rule that is being banned. RJ, agree with it. Bobby and I did not. Here's John Harbaugh. As far as the hip drop tackle, the challenge of tackling, I don't, I don't even understand the question. I mean, the hip drop tackle. When did you ever hear about the hip drop tackle? until like two years ago, three years ago, right? That's because it was discovered probably in rugby and started being executed as a, as a standalone technique. It's a three-part movement. You've got to execute that play. You've got to be close enough to that, ta that ball carry to actually get him around the hips, all right? Pull him close to yourself, swing your hips through, and drop on the back of his legs. If you're that close, wrap him up and tackle him and take him to the ground like Ray Lewis used to do and everybody did for 100 years before that. But you're talking about a tackle that the ball carrier has no method of escape from. He can't escape. So when you drop down on the back of his legs, it's a mass, and it's 25 times more likely to have a serious injury. So it's really a, a bad play and it needed to be out. And guys are gonna tackle just fine without the quote unquote hip drop tackle um, because they tackled just fine without it for 100 years of football before that when you never saw it really. 25 oh, times gosh. more likely. Very scientific sound. If that's, I mean, look, I mean, Bobby, you had a, you, you saw, showed something to us last week. There, the, the chatter within league circles is that it's something where they say there, there's well over 50% of injuries occur because of this tackle. I mean, if that's the case, yeah, and then that's, that's something that I have no problem getting rid of. I don't feel like most injuries I saw last year, though, were, oh, that was somebody getting tackled with weight being dropped on their legs. Was, I don't think that's what I saw. Was this the Pollard San Fran tackle? Yep. Is that what took yep. him out? Mark yep. Andrews. I mean, Dak. To be Dak's injury. As I tweeted, just ha make sure your kids growing up, make sure they play offense. Just just keep them on that side of the ball. Just, just do that. Or play baseball. Um, <laughs> but don't pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't pitch. But don't pitch. Hey, well, you can pitch for the Rangers. You might be able to be their closer right now. 877-881-1053. Rangers lose with Jose Leclerc giving up the third home run of the night to the same player. Dallas Stars get the win. But how dangerous right now are your Dallas Mavericks? That's next on Sean and RJ.
Well, let's get you over to the greatness of Diamonds Direct, though. You are going to want to make this.
Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there's never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Bridges leads them with 12, Brandon Miller 11, and Davis Burton 10. The look away and the reverse finish. Put that one on the highlight reel. And why are all these clips like cutting off like a half second short uh -oh. that's just how they are well quick pick, fade pick some uh like uh -oh. the one to open up the show follow up just getting cut up it, 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 it mavs win by 26. um gafford goes 12 for 12 from the field matches his season high with 26 points seven rebounds luca with 39 12 and 10 as Pat Mahomes tweeted, MVP, and Luca wrote yeah. back, thank you, Goat. <laughs> thank you, Goat. Yeah, and like I said, when I was at the game last week, they were all over the sides, were all over the stadium. The Luca for MVP. Um, the, there was T-shirts. Oh, up. they were allowed to hold those up. Uh, well, I, I didn't say the people had them. There's signs like in the stadium, right? Oh. Like So like uh, on the banners, uh, like on the, on the screen banner around the lower bowl and the upper bowl, um, and then you've got like the on, on the scoreboard. It borders the scoreboard. It borders the jumbotron video, so when you're watching replays. You see it right there. I mean, they're they're making a push. They're making a push for Luca MVP. I, I don't know if it's too little, too late uh, with with how the voters around the league are um, perceived to be leaning, as the ESPN article said last week. But we will find out soon enough who the MVP is. What is the case for Shea over Luca MVP besides the Thunder and the standings? The Big part of it. The Thunder are the same. Their starting five is the same age as the starting five for the North Carolina Tar Heels. They're a baby team that's being led, you know, to the top of the Western Conference. I think it's the idea that their youth and everything else is it's improbable that they would be this good this early. And him at the front of that is probably what's got to do with it. Expectation too. there's expectation that like a lot of times the MVP comes down to what were you expected to do and how that can be a little bit of a separating factor. People thought the Mavericks would generally be in this area. Yeah, but numbers have to heavily weigh in as well. Yeah. So Shea is 36 and five, uh, shooting 54% from the field. Those are obviously fantastic numbers. 36 and five. Well, Luka Doncic scores more than him. Luka is, I mean, he's wrapped up the scoring title basically he's at 34 9 and 10 so what does the gap have to be in the standings in order for you like fine you want to you want to vote for Shea for mvp but like the, i'm still bothered and blown away by that espn voting piece last week that didn't even put Luca. Someone didn't have him in their top five. Yeah, I I I, I truthfully think uh um, at Oklahoma City they're five games are five games up in the standings on the Mavericks enough to overshadow all of Luka's numbers being better than Shea's? To me, it's not. Well, it's like when Nash first got to Phoenix. Like, like I don't think it is, but when you talk about the history, the way they've voted over this award, uh, typically, I mean, like, they go, okay, what were the Suns supposed to be? Nobody expected the Suns to have the turnaround they did and become a 60-win team and be, like, near the top of the standings. So because of that, it's almost like a, you know, best debut type of or, or like most surprising best player on the most surprising team like there are times where the MVP can factor into that and so I think it's just no one really expected them to be this good this quickly their average starting line like the average age of the starting lineup is 22 it's just incredibly young people expected that Luca th there's a little bit of We've been guilty of it in Dallas a little bit. There's almost numbness to how good Luca is. He is. I, I think. I, I. I truthfully think the because if you go the one two three in the in the in the voting one two three on, on like the, the first place votes, it's just going by 
win shares and, and player efficiency rating. But Jokic is one in ball, 30.9 in, in, in player efficiency rating and 15.9 win share. So it means he is basically 16 wins on his own. Shea is 29.4 player efficiency rating and 13.6 wins. And then Lucas 28.1 player efficiency and 11.5 wins. And, you know, a lot of the voters do buy into the metrics. And if you buy the metrics, then it's not even close. Like Jokic is worth what four games more or three and a half more wins than Luka and there's your, there's your standings then we shouldn't vote there shouldn't be a vote well, then if they, I mean I, I mean if that's right. the way it's going to be it shouldn't even be a vote it should be a just where do you land in the win shares at the end of the year and then that's the MVP standings that, that's basically what they do then don't vote about it like take the take it out of the writer's hands if the writers aren't going to have any nuance other than what's in that stat sheet if they don't have any original ideas or concepts of their own then they shouldn't vote on it I don't disagree, but I'm just I'm just asked throw this out. No, there. no, I know. Is your original idea a hometown bias? We see him every day. I don't think Luca leading the league no. and scoring by like four points and doing what he's done and put up seventy three and figured this thing out and But is that a volume? Is that like leading the league and rushing when you're getting fifteen more carries a game than somebody else? Like Luca averages eight he's averaging eight more points than Joker. Eight. That is a humongous margin. Now Rebound wise, uh, Joker has them by two, and then they're tied in assists. So that's, Jokers, that's wild yeah. that they're tied in assists. Yeah, that's pretty. Really imp- that's pretty impressive for Joker's part. So uh, Luca gets it done again last night. Gafford goes twelve for twelve, and they are no worse than the number six seed. One more win or one Pelicans loss clinches the fifth seed for the Mavericks, and we think they're going to end up taking on the Clippers. And then making the playoffs sends that first round pick to the New York Knicks. Bobby, who's talking about how dangerous the Mavericks can be? The Ringer, Bill Simmons' outfit, has uh, an article up last week that was really, really glowing in its review of the Dallas Mavericks. It says, it's finally April. I didn't think I'd begin the last month of this regular season leading the column with the following sentence, but at the moment, little feels more relevant or meaningful. The Dallas Mavericks are now the proverbial team no other team wants to see in the playoff series. Not the Clippers, not the Thunder, not the Timberwolves, not even the Nuggets. This is the number. Over the past 25 games since the trade deadline, obviously this was last week, there have been a couple since then, the Mavs sport the profile of a bona fide contender. They rank third in net rating, fourth in offensive rating, and seventh in defensive rating with wins over several teams that are built to win it all. Currently in fifth place out of the West with the sixth the easiest remaining schedule, this team is sharp, brisk, dazzling, explosive, and crucially humongous. This is one of these things like, <laughs> and I mean, that's the thing. When you look at them it. right now, the, the best thing that you can say is there's not really a lineup that they can't match up with. And that's the big thing that the ringer locks it on. They say they have counters, answers, and a strategic stretchiness that didn't exist back in October. Most lineups can be met with matchups that at the very least sees eye to eye with any opponent's best offer. And so the ringer's just saying, look, you've got to look at what Dallas has been over the last you know, 25, 30 games since the trade deadline instead of looking at the totality of where they struggled early in the year because this is a different team than they were back in January. It's a different team than they were back in December. Mm -hmm. And right now, there's really nobody. In fact, if you look over the last 17 games or whatever, they're better than any team in the NBA. They're better than Boston. And that's one of those things that right now, when you look at it and the way the peripheral statistics say it, the way that the raw statistics, the counting numbers, the win-loss column, whatever else... Everything there says Dallas has been the best team in the West by far yeah. over the last month and a half or so. And there's a pretty strong case that they're the best team in the NBA during that time. I, I, don't, I don't think Clippers want any part of that. I don't think they want to play them. And why isn't that enough, though, if that's the case? If this is a different team than we've seen all year and Luka's the best player on the best team in the final stretch of the NBA season, why isn't that more than enough to actually have him in the conversation? Including beating Jokic in a game. I think he's in the conversation. I think he is. No, but I don't. It's more the conversation like a uh, he's in the conversation as like, well, we, we've got the winner. And then here are the guys that, uh, you know, here are the, the runner ups or whatever. He's not in the conversation as the guy. Like the guy who may be making this case on the other side is Tatum. <laughs> Tatum gets no, no love ever for MVP. <laughs> like he gets no, no love for the MVP. Like he did early on. If you want to if you want to go by wins and dominance. I mean, they're the Boston Celtics. He's at 27, 8, and 5 on the year. 27, 8, and 5. So he has, he's, I'm just going by points, rebounds, and assists. He's three points mm-hmm. shy of Shea. 
and the Celtics have run away with the run league. away. Yeah, run away with it. Now, do they dock him for the Celtics kind of having a system that's just I mean they've been really really good for a long time and there's, there's good players around them and well, well, that's kind of my point. Like with the surprise factor that does play in, like OKC, I would think that Joker wouldn't be such an automatic lock. Yeah, I think he's I think he's the lock by default because they don't view anybody else as being you know ready to take the mantle. And I also think a lot of them feel like okay, we effed up last year. I think a lot of them are doing the eh, that that we look back, we were trying to give it to somebody else, and they gave it to Embiid. It was really jokers anyway, and I think maybe it's a make good. And to be fair, Shea still the other aspect of his stat line that we don't talk about is he leads the NBA in steals, and he's about a block a game too. Okay, and so I mean he's a, he is a complete player, but still it's funny he has it was shocking. I know I mentioned it last week. He has no triple doubles this year, and he has as many double doubles as Jalen Brunson eight eight double doubles from the runner up MVP just seems. Kind of wild in this day and age. Good news for uh, John ja Morant yesterday. It's what it seems like. So, and this is such a weird ruling in terms of what it actually means. But uh, on Monday, uh, actually, it was the Shelby County Circuit Judge Carol Chumney ruled that John ja oh, yes, Morant Carol. enjoys. Yeah, love Carol. Enjoys a presumption of civil immunity under Tennessee self immunity self defense immunity statute, and basically the burden of proof has now shifted on that teenager that he fought. That 17-year-old that he punched after the ball was checked rather aggressively at him in a pickup game. It's exactly who you are, Ja. And uh, so because of that, they say that the default now is actually, okay, burden of proof shifts to the teenager. So it's not that Ja has to prove he acted in self-defense. The presumption, based on this court ruling, is he did act in self-defense, and now it's on the other side that they have to prove that Ja Morant took it over the line rather than switching it over to the other side of this but this is a good ruling for him it's It's not over but this is definitely a big victory for him in terms of the court proceedings because now it's hey the default is you're innocent of what this charge is and they they've got to prove it on their side i'm just like lost in the minutia of all this like what are what is like because he did so many things in like a four-week stretch i was like okay is this domino number one like there was two other things that were involved no, the here. No, wasn't mine. And then you know, two, it, <laughs> it's we, good that he stayed quiet though. It's very. I good. forgot about John ja Morant. Completely forgot. I don't know what's changed. I don't know if he's changed or they've made things quieter or what it was. Everything it seems like since the McMahon article came out that detailed. Here's the start of it because they said I think it was his first All Star game that that's when Memphis felt like crap. There's a problem here. What's that, the, that weekend, it's gone downhill since then. What is the latest on replacing the college legend? We'll have Dane Brugler to preview the Cowboys and NFL draft at 720 during the expressway. Craig Ludwig to talk about the red-hot Dallas Stars. And Brett Boone in the final hour of the show. Do the Rangers have a bullpen problem? Let's talk about replacing the college legend. And the final numbers are in. Did the ladies take down the men Bobby will really be eating during this segment. Next on 105.3 The Fan.
here on 105.3 The Fan segment here brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More new Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. The Show of Wales kicks off with Dane and Brugler at 720. During the Commercial Free Expressway, Craig Ludwig at 8 o'clock. Brett Boone to talk about the Rangers bullpen at 920 here on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. we got Peyton and Ry Ry in the back. We are live on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. Oh, the whale didn't cut off. Good job, Peyton. Good adjustments. Yeah, but uh, it was late with it. <laughs> I, I had to give us the sound effect Thank first. You, Bobby. Uh, so. Choppy? Yes, sir. The final numbers are in, and so was you. So, so were the spin jobs. Bobby and Chaffee just went right to I think work. It's a spin job. Oh, I don't think it's a spin I don't think job, it's a spin at, all. job at all. Right to work to go ahead, and it's like we're covering politics here. Like some facts come out, some numbers come out, and they immediately get well, put into the blender. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't even think you believe that, judging by the smirk on your face. <laughs> Uh, if, yeah, if, this is a very me setup. This is the way I would yeah. set up a troll bit. Yeah, the uh, the ratings came out for uh, the final four. Um, uh, you know, both men and women. Obviously, the women had eighteen point seven uh, million, and the uh, UConn Alabama final four game uh, had fourteen point eight million. Ladies, uh, which that one? Watch that one. Okay. Uh, but then the final game uh, had just under. 15 million it was ladies 14 what's that mean that means the ladies want one oh want one the matchup uh 14.82 million they didn't win you don't win when you're on network tv and then the other one is on tbs a network that has no people just there on it it does it, like that that's this is the dumbest this is the dumbest thing i've ever seen like the fact that people are using this to like trump up and, and the whole notion that, you know, the, the question See, is even being asked. Drop Trump into it. <laughs> oh. The whole question is even being asked. Is the men's game in trouble? You know, the men's game destroyed the NBA Finals and Major League Baseball's World Series. The men's game is just fine. Yeah, this doesn't have to be an indictment on men's This basketball. is not a men's versus women. Next year, the women's tournament, the women's final, will not have 10 million people watching. Agreed. Here's what I would love to see. It was Caitlin Clark. Agreed. It was Caitlin Clark. South Carolina's unwatchable. LSU outside of Angel Reese, unwatchable. What happened? Caitlin Clark, not unwatchable, very watchable. ABC is where this brought. This was the broadcast for the NCAA women's title. If you put on Monday night at seven o'clock, you put the women's title game on ABC and the men's title game on CBS at seven, same time. You put them up against each other. We're not even. It's not even a discussion. We're not even talking but about. But the it. fact, though, and all trolling aside. The fact that we're even having a discussion like this is a humongous, oh, huge, huge win. Huge win for the women. Never, n- never thought we'd ever have this conversation. Never. Yeah, and they, the, had, they had to game the they had to game the system as much as they could. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, as they, much game as Caitlin Clark had on the court. The uh, the 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 simps out there had in the broadcast schedule. You started it at nine. The men's title at nine thirty p.m. Eastern with two Eastern time zone teams. What what people in Connecticut were going like? Well, uh, I guess uh, you know, I, I guess we're gonna stay up till nine thirty tonight. We got work in the morning, but okay. ABC yeah. reaches three hundred five million homes. TBS reaches seventy one million, and they won by but four million. But you still had to make the choice to watch women's basketball. Sure, but I mean, what what it's what a, was it's on? A, it's a it's a huge win. Yeah, a percentage of viewers. It's a win. Yeah, it's a uh, huge win. A percentage of the percentage of viewers that has access to both channels that yeah, and, watch and the get, band is but, far, yeah, far but, higher, but, get, but whatever. Yeah, but also, you know, people have other things they can watch in life. For sure. You know, everyone has apps and everyone goes to different things. They got everything. They got everything they could possibly do. Um, you know, it's... Um, th- ironically, this was not the highest rated men's game. The final? Yeah. The NC State Duke game, which was C- the Elite Eight game, that was on CBS. That got over 15 and a half million. Yeah, I'm not shocked by that. This The championship game wasn't a good game. No, not even that. Yeah, it was, it's second. also the CBS first because that Duke game was on CBS. Um, I mean, that's just that you're just going to have a built-in audience when you're on that network. It's it's just, and I'm not saying that's what you're saying, Sean, but the, it's intellectually the, the narrative. It's intellectually dishonest that people are trying to push it as, look at this, just as popular. Just okay, then why is the revenue that the Final Four brought in for the women's game twenty five million and the men's was two hundred? 
Like it's it's a different animal. Like it's fine. Just talk about them within their own context and stop trying to make it so much of a women beat the men, women beat the like they just they want it to be the narrative so bad. And that's what I think is a little silly. It it can be its own game and stand on its own and be successful. It should I mean look, it it should stand on its own because it was amazing and like it will have they will be able to say we we beat our previous number by six hundred percent or whatever. Um you know, as opposed to doing some kind of a weird you know, comparison to a game that was only available to 70 million people. Ladies. All right. What's going on with Calipari? <laughs> oh, what's well, going on with Calipari? Two, two and four says Raph is clearly getting tired of Sean saying ladies. <laughs> Bill Raftery? No, oh, Raph. Raph. Oh, Remember, that's Raph. what we're calling him. We're yeah. calling him Raph. Raph Choppy. Uh, <laughs> so Coach Cal uh, is officially gone. He is officially gone from the University of Kentucky. Now, those of you who know Arkansas, Bobby, you vacation there. Nick Eatman. Love it. SEC. Where, where's the where's the big time John Calipari esque place that he's gonna live there? How's John Calipari gonna fit into Arkansas lifestyle? Although a lot of people would have said that maybe about Kentucky. Fa- you know, Fa- New Yorker, New New yeah. Jersey. Does he guy. have a cousin there? Ah, stop it. Fayetteville's amazing. I think Fayetteville, you know, now that now that Texas and OU are in the SEC, um, I think I think Athens and Fayetteville and Austin are probably the three best places, college towns in the conference. Fayetteville's amazing. Like it's you you will have you will have no problem finding something to do in Fayetteville. Like it's there's money out in Arkansas, Tyson, Walmart, Jones family. Yeah. There's, there's they got they have undercover. They have, they're, they're, there's like an undercover mob out there, right? Like he'll be fine. Um, it's great. Good job. It's not Kentucky, but it's a good job. Pepe, you ever been to Arkansas? I've been to Conway, Arkansas. I think you have to drive through Little Rock to get there. But yeah, okay. I've been to Conway. That's about it. I went. I, I, I still. I stared at the Kerr Road sign just northeast of Little Rock for about two and a half hours in 1998. My car ran out of gas. Wow. Oh. The side of the road. <laughs> it was the worst two and a half. It was like August too. Just dying in an nice. Arkansas heat. Mm. Dying. Should never run out of gas. My gauge was broke. And the, uh that's I had a problem. One of, one of the one of the things my dad like would always put in my head when I was younger, he's always like, There's money in your bank account. You should never run out of gas. It's I just get, being lazy. I get so paranoid. <laughs> I cannot drive. Yeah. When that thing when that thing clicks on the gaslight, I'm I'm in panic mode. I, I'm, I'm I'm rushing. I screw myself because I'm always like, ah, I'll get up early enough to go get gas in the morning when I see it click on, and then it'll be like 5:20, and I'm like, crap, there's not enough gas to get there. And I'm really hustling. <laughs> um, so you know, Cal did a little uh, video video tribute to the Kentucky faithful from his couch. Now, didn't I didn't see Paul? Not from the dog park, not from the kennel. No, I didn't see Paul, his dog, very oddly named dog. <laughs> but uh, Coach Cal from his couch uh, said it was just time. It was just time. This is a dream job. It was my dream job. Anybody in our profession looks at the University of Kentucky in basketball and said that is the bluest of blue. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice, that the university as a whole has to have another voice giving guidance about this program that they hear. And the fans need to hear another voice. We've loved it here, but we think it's time for us to step away and step away completely from the program. Okay, so that little last part, is like the step away completely means I'm going somewhere else. Because like if you just step away, you still have kind of like a an overlord. You're still the guy that people go to. But now if you go somewhere else, you ain't that guy anymore. And, you know, the next part, he continued with this. This is about a three or four minute video. And he continued with now thanking the fans. All the people in the university as a whole in all the things that they did. The friends, I'm looking right into the camp. We've made lifelong friends that we'll be close with the rest of our lives. And the fans, the BBN, all that you've done to build this program, the people that traveled with us, 
I want to thank you. Um, hopefully it was an experience with your kids that you can look at and say, man, this is something that we'll remember the rest of our lives together. Those memories and what we were able to do together is what this is all about. Again, it's been a dream what we've been able to do, but 15 years, time for another voice. And you know, I'm always going to be a fan. Thank you. This video is hilarious because he's just sound boring to me. No, Generic. it's the, it is the aesthetic. He's it's got the aesthetic. The, he's sitting the on this couch. He's got like a, uh, a th like throw pillows on there and everything Very else. Old looking. A quilt. Yeah. It looks like grandma's house, but the aesthetic he opted here was the, uh, like the, I'm so sorry for cheating on yeah. my wife, like celebrity videos that get dropped. Yep. It, it looked like Kate Middleton's, you know, serious announcement of like, oh guys, I'm sick. This is what's been going on. Like it's look, it looks like he did that, but he actually had to repost the video. Yeah, there was two takes in it. He right? initially posted it. He filmed it on like a toaster or something. It was all pixelated. It looked like it was about 144p. And it was just this pixelated mess. And people were like, what the hell? Is this why Cal left for Arkansas? He didn't have enough money for a phone? Like he can't shoot a video properly? Yep. And now this is this is the question. Because they've already been turned down by Nate Oates. Uh, they've already been turned down by Billy Donovan. Who after you saw that that Al that that off the backboard dunk attempt in the Bulls game last night, I think he was rethinking that in the middle of the game. <laughs> um, they've already been turned down. They offered Dan Hurley eleven million, and he already said no. Maybe they upped the offer to fifteen million. Um, now they've been two coaches in the SEC already said that they'd rather be somewhere else. They don't said he'd rather stay at Alabama, and John Calipari said he'd rather go to Arkansas. I you know, now, they're, now they're next. They're zeroing in on Scott Drew at Baylor. Like that's the guy they're really zeroing in on. If he says no, now they're gonna be freaking out. Unless Chris Beard somehow says yes. Who wants to deal with that community? Like like they can be psycho. Yeah, a bunch and, of Will Chambers. I mean, yeah. Could you imagine having to deal with four drinks in? Yes, and that like I mean, they live in Kentucky, so they are that drunk all the time. Uh, and so, I mean, my goodness, that no, they are like yeah. rabid and ruthless when you don't live up to like, this is our standard, which I mean, I understand they have a high standard, but still like, who would want to deal with that level of just aggression and like bipolar approach? Yeah. What's a Kentucky fan really like? Will Chambers, <laughs> but like more angry. <laughs> um, so like Jay Billis says, every fan base has that fringe. Right, they've got a fringe, a psychotic fringe about them, and he says their their fringe is just bigger than everybody else's. They're they are one of the most unreasonable fan bases in sports. <laughs> they look, they have not gone to a Final Four in a decade, and they want it. This that's Cal, crazy. Cal's been to four at Kentucky in five years, went to four Final Fours, included a national championship. And they were undefeated going into one of the Final Fours, one of the most amazing they lost. He went to four Final Fours in five years, and they wanted him out universally to a person. They wanted him gone. But none in the last 10 years. None in the last 10 yeah, years. That's, that's 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 enough to say bye-bye at that type of place. It, it is. It is. I do think, though, the COVID years screwed him up because of he always still was the one-and-done guy, and he was playing against grown men, and they got beat. They got beat by those grown men uh, in the tournament every year over the last five years. And he stuck with the same strategy? He stuck with the same strategy because that's, that's the strategy he does. Like that's, that's, that's what he's great at. He's great at schmoozing parents and kids, 18-year-old kids. And he'll do fine at Arkansas. And I, I guarantee you but this. John Pat Calipari can schmooze anybody. He can. It's not, it doesn't have to just be a one and done. No, it doesn't have to be a one he and done. He chose to stick with it. Yeah, because he wants the talent out, the, the super talent. I guarantee you this. Arkansas will be in a Final Four in the next five years. Woo! Okay. okay. Okay, Nick Eatman. There you go. <laughs> uh, Rangers, Stars, and does Tiger really think he can win a final one? All of that, then Dane Brugler to kick off the expressway next on Sean and RJ. But now is the time to sell your car, your truck, or your exotic. Give me the VIN is buying, and the car market is nuts. So if you're thinking of selling your vehicle, you better do it soon as prices may never be the same. Give me the VIN.com. We're selling your vehicle as simple, fast, 
and easy. Give me the VIN.com has thousands of top rated Google and Facebook reviews. Just log on, put in your VIN number, a couple of pictures, and get ready to be rocked because give me the VIN.com is America's best car buyer. If give me the VIN can't beat your CarMax offer, they'll pay you a hundred bucks. Give me the VIN offers amazing customer service and a hassle free selling process. Give me the VIN.com. They offer a 60 second bid, pressure free service, and free pickup. So click on give me the VIN.com and get your check on the spot because selling your car, your truck, or your exotic has never been easier than at give me the VIN.com, America's best car buyer. Sell us your car. Give me the VIN.com.
Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. For Langoliers, his second home run of the year, the 1 0. Swing and a high fly ball into center field. Laoti going back, still going back to the track. He looks up and it's gone. Langoliers has a two homer game. This one ties the score at two. And he would make it a three homer game off of Jose Leclerc as Evan Carter, being the hero, gets ruined by the Oakland Athletics who come back and beat the Rangers on this radio station. Good morning, Metroplex. It's the Hump Day Edition Hump Day. with Sean and RJ, along with Roberto on DFW Sports Station, 105.3. The fan, 4-3 A's. Yeah, this was a disappointing game. Very disheartening game. Um, they, they looked a little lifeless. A lot of people were complaining about that on social media. Yeah. I thought Adolis had a couple of... I mean, he didn't have bad at-bats. They weren't really good at-bats either. It's not like he was flailing at pitches. He just wasn't patient. Um, he, you know, it was it was a very odd, odd game. And then Langoliers had a night. He had a night in front of his family, in front of his friends. He's a Keller kid. Um, you know, I, it's funny. Like, you look at him, it's like, boy, that guy looks like a baseball player. The way his body is structured. He looks like he either play baseball <laughs> or be like, like a, a or, DH baseball Yeah, player. he looks like a baseball player or a D2 running back. Like, that's... A that, fullback. Yeah, like a fullback, right? Like, that's that's the kind of the body that he has. And he had a night. They got beat by one guy. Uh, they, they got beat by one because the A's didn't have a particularly great night offensively. Well, you don't have a problem with pitching to him, man on right there, right after he hit two. Uh I, I didn't even think of it. I was like, I, I never, I never really. He's not Babe Ruth. He's not Shohei, right? You know, where he, where he's, he's Babe Ruth against the Rangers. But now. Last night, yeah, he's the new Chris Davis, the um, new Tim Salmon, the new Tim Salmon. But yeah, I didn't have a problem pitching him. I mean, you get your. You're in a position to win the game. You know, do you want to bring and put uh, the tying run in scoring position? You know, that's a – at that point, I mean, anything can happen. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I didn't have a problem pitching to him there. But you got to make a better pitch. Yeah, look, I uh, I, I mean, I'm be, I've become a big Shea Langoliers fan now. That's clearly why I'm sporting my Keller High School hat. It's for Shea this morning oh. uh, and just the way that he played last night. Look, Leclerc is a massive problem. Like this is this is even though the one appearance that he's had this year where he didn't give up runs, he still like gave up a couple of hot shots. He's he's not right now. You're stuck because Spores is out. He's on the injured list right now. So what's your next default? Robertson is that what we're looking at? Robertson who also gave up a home run last night. He did. It's just this is it, it's starting to feel a little bit like a repeat of last year's yeah. you know back end of the bullpen. And you know to the Tolo's points uh, in terms of effort, I, I don't like the. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's a 162 game. I, I, I'm not going to go to effort. This team just is not as fun. They're not as fun right now as I expected them to be and want them to be every night. Uh, tuning in to the start of this Rangers season, my anticipation for excitement level was through the roof. I'm just not getting it, like, right now. I'm like, okay. But, but again, my anticipation and my expectation was very, very high. And I'm just, I'm just not sitting there right now, again, just a couple games, being like, Man, this is really fun baseball. Now, I couldn't see Friday, Saturday, uh, literally. I wasn't getting Apple TV, or I couldn't figure out where Bally, Bally, Extra Bally was. divided by three was. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I did miss those two, but I think I'm putting it on Wyatt Lankford and Evan Carter, where I'm like, all right, come on, be the spark. Be the spark and give me some showtime out there. Carter it's, finally hit a homer. Yeah. Yeah, a little infield hit from uh, from Lankford, showing the speed. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, look, the young guys, you know, if you're a lifeless, the young guys are the ones that should bring life in a game. And you're going there's going to be plenty of games where a team is lifeless. I mean, every single team out there is going to have multiple games over the year where they just never get it going. They just never get it going that night. It happens. There's 162 of them. Um and 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 the good news in is if you want to be super positive, they were 3 outs away from winning. They were in a position to win this game in a game they looked absolutely lifeless. If you're going to look lifeless, do it against the A's. Yeah, that's the team to look lifeless against, and you just hope that Shea Langoliers doesn't go off and have a night. I look like Mark Witten one day. I mean, at some point, Mark Witten. At some point, you have to. It's it's going to become too much when you don't have three of your top four starters. When you don't have half of your starters on the infield. When you're missing, arguably your most reliable bullpen arm. Like, when all these things start happening, eventually you're going to have to say, all right, there's only so much next man up you have before this starts really taking a toll. No, the real good news is that Cody Bradford is going tonight. 
with his .47 ERA in 12 and two-thirds. Pre-game at 6.30. First pitch at 7 o'clock right here on your home for Rangers baseball, as RJ's t-shirt is telling you on the Twitch and YouTube. At least the night ended on a positive note as I had to switch on over and make sure that they closed it out. It'll be played back to the far point. Tannen looking for traffic in front. They score. That took a deflection as Tannen just threw it to the net. And the Stars get the 3-2 lead here in the second period. Sabres TV with the call. They fell down 2-1 but scored two in the second period. Hang on for the 3-2 win over Buffalo for win number 50. They're one win away from clinching the Central. They have the second best record in the entire NHL. They are 10 and 1 in their last 11. The victory, a career best eighth straight win for Otter and Wyatt Johnston continues to be on a tear. He scored number 30. He has four goals and four assists for eight points in his last five games. A uh, big game tomorrow night at home yeah. against Winnipeg. The Jets have won four straight. Currently tied with Colorado for second place in the Central Division. Gavin Spittle, the Hockey Hawk, with the Spits and Suds podcast. And Craig Ludwig will join us at 8. Yep, back-to-back back, back back good games against Winnipeg and Seattle coming up. And then, of course, you, you want to get Otter at this point uh, into a groove. Uh, you, you really want to get him into a groove going into the postseason. Uh, that would be absolutely crucial. But, I mean, they are in such great position right now. Fantastic position. Uh, just a point behind the Rangers for the for the uh, for the President's Trophy, for the overall uh, top in the in the entire league. They're in a great spot. All home games remaining. Go get it. Make sure the players get enough rest because you know the NHL, you know, the NBA may take like five days off between you know the uh, the end of the regular season and the start of the playoffs. I don't think the NHL is doing that. I think they got like they'll maybe have three max between the playoffs and the regular season. Pairings are out for Augusta with round one tomorrow. We're going to get some live coverage during our show. Going to have them kicking off there in Georgia. As, uh, we will. Georgia. As Tiger Woods says, I think if everything goes right, I can get one more. He thinks he can get one more. Now he's hurting. He is like, he's in pain. Like he's, he's still. Oh yeah. He, I mean, he'll never be, he'll never be the same. And, and, and to be honest, Augusta is the best course for him from a from a physical. No, no, no. From a playing standpoint, the, the Masters really is the easiest major to win. There's only 85 players. All the rest of them have 150. So you got a limited field, mm. and there's and, and and there's a large part of them. Your Fred Couples don't have to deal with beating the minorities. Your <laughs> Jeez. I'm making a Bobby joke. Your Fred Couples, your Larry, an accurate, yeah. uh, historically accurate joke. Yeah, it's very historically <laughs> accurate, unfortunately. But you don't. Have to, you you have a lot of guys who are locked in as former champs, like Larry Mize and Fred Couples, who are just old. They're not really contenders. So now you're down to about 75, and then there's really only about 20 guys that can win this thing because you either play well at Augusta or you don't, and there's not really an overlap. So, and he's one of the guys that play well. The problem is, is that this course is so hilly. It's a nightmare mirror for <laughs> guys with bad legs to navigate. Brooks Kepka had a knee. I mean, he was having to zigzag up the green and down the green because he couldn't go straight up. And the Tigers got a bad leg. It's a very difficult course to walk uh, for these guys. So that is a problem for Tiger Woods. But there's about six groups that are that are really, really good, really must-see groups. Uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, Tiger will be playing with Jason Day and Max Oma. Uh, that's a really fun group. Uh, you'll have Scotty Scheffler and Rory and Xander Shoffley. That's a fun group. Uh, you know, there's a couple others, but for the most part, you know, you'll have your Phil thrown here. You'll have your Spieth thrown there. Your Kepka thrown over there. Uh, but that's to be tomorrow. We'll be able to watch on the computer, Sean, because they won't put it on TV oh. for the first round. But I we just, can tether. Can we tether on these TVs? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. I just, I, I. Do you know how to tether? On my TV, I do. I don't know how to do it on these. I don't know. We, I don't think we have the remote. Bobby, <laughs> I don't look, think we have the remote here. Don't, don't call out sick tomorrow, Bobby. Uh, no, 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 no. See, I just, Friday. I just have allergies. That's, oh. uh, I don't, I don't call out for allergies. <laughs> uh, I, I would look. I, you, you, you always hear all the time about like this guy played with a broken hand or this guy did that or that. Chop, you just told me. Walking around the grass is going to be really tough. This is a huge factor for these guys, how tough it is to walk 
My goodness. The hills, though, what, Bob. What the is, hills, what is the, the walking factor is really being undersold here, I think. I think the how tough it is to walk. Don't you ever tell me I couldn't shoot 80, Bobby. Chop. Don't you ever tell me when you tell me the, the, the biggest factor is walking. Walking might, might ruin this weekend for Bobby, several players. This isn't David Boston out here, okay? <laughs> they don't have guys testing their poop for the proper nutrients to get in their body that are playing golf. <laughs> These are golfers. Okay, Brooks Kepka is like the most yoked out dude in the in the uh in, in in the professional golf world and you have punters who are bigger than he is like this is not the same thing mm -hmm. these are golfers like just take it for what it is the naia basically the governing body for mostly small colleges announced a policy that all but bans transgender athletes from competing in women's sports the presidents approved the policy in a 20 to nothing vote i think both of you sent this story so that told me okay you guys want to go ahead and talk about this so choppy take it away i'll, I'll probably go first oh, okay. <laughs> probably go first uh, okay. sure i'll go first why is this controversial why do we have a problem with this why i don't why have this? a problem with I, it. I don't have a problem with it at all it's, it's what should it. be done it's I, basically inclusion it tell me if this is right inclusion versus competition and you you for, for for the argument of sports like you have to make it fair so this is the, this is the right move this, this isn't about meeting people where they are this isn't about accepting them this isn't about human rights or anything else what this is about is about what's fair and yeah. unfair biological competition it's not fair and we're seeing it by when you get like that transgender swimmer who is like shattering every Leah, record Leah in the history, like to me, it says that's, that's clearly not the same. It's not the same. And, and you can't approach it that way. So I have zero problem with this. And I think anybody who has a problem with it and turns it into some big thing, they are, they're, they're, they're taking a political stance that they feel like I can't, can't give in on this. Cause then I might lose politically over here. This is not even political. This is just about what's fair and unfair, and that's not fair. And so, agreed. That's why the standards yep. in place. I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't understand why this is such a uh, like a controversial thing to say that it's not fair. Well, what sucks is like you there know, needs to be something though for the transgender women, yeah, to be able to do. You know, they need to be able to participate in an athletic endeavor. Yeah. Um. Now. You, you want to have a side argument to this? And I've, I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, if you transition before you hit puberty, that since you didn't go through male puberty, you didn't go through the hormones, you didn't get the benefit of being 6'3 and 240. Um, all right, you know what? I'll listen to that discussion. But if you've gone through it and you're the size of a man and, and now you're transitioning a woman, I don't know. It just makes it seem like it's just not a not fair to me. Maybe someone needs to educate me on why it is fair. I have no idea. I don't see how you possibly could. Well, I think Don Staley is here to do hmm. just that. If you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? <laughs> do, you, do you think... Uh, transgender women should be able to participate. That, that, that's your question you want basketball. me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am going to be a distraction so you are actively telling me you're reading your twitter replies and your timeline and everything else because you're saying that that <laughs> will actively distract you okay all right you know why she's taking this position because she knows south carolina is in such a strong recruiting position so she knows she's going to be able to, to to get these people eight seven these seven people. eight wow. seven seven bobby is on one this wow morning. Eight, bobby is on one this eight morning. seven seven eight eight one one zero oh, five three the franklin franco injury attorney hotline here on dfw sports station Let's get Bobby in a better mood and bring in his good buddy. Dane Brugler previews the Cowboys and NFL draft. Dane kicks off the commercial free expressway next, but maybe like a fair.
So I'm excited. You got an athletic subscription, you get it for free. I cannot remember the last time that we had Dane on, and he joins us via the DNM leasing hotline to get us set for the NFL draft here on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Good morning, brother. How you been? I've been good. I've got uh, uh, my PR people. They, they've put so many of these uh, interviews on my plate, and I said, you know what? My my guys down in 105.3 got to be first. All right, we, we got to do them first on the beast release day. It's been a while, but uh, it's good to talk to you guys. My PR people. My PR. Isn't what a great? long way he's come. Yeah. Oh, oh, I had to fight them. I had to fight them because they were Broadus was trying to come hard, and I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, come on in the morning first. And Dane was like, of course, I like you better than Brian. Uh, yeah, I don't care about. Are you still in Ohio now? Yeah, I'm still in Ohio. We've got we got four kids now, so we, we put down roots uh, close to my parents and, and my wife's parents. We need the extra help. So, uh, but it, it was great being down uh, for the Shrine Game. Uh, East West Shrine Bowl was in uh, at the Star this year, and that was uh, it's always a great scouting event. But it was awesome being back in Frisco and seeing a lot, a lot of people. And so, anytime I get a chance to go back down there. I'm always going to take advantage of that. All right, I don't care about any of the picks of the players. What has been on the smoker, or has that been in the garage with four children? Yeah, you know, it, well, and also up here, uh, you got to worry about the elements a little bit more. So yeah. in the winter time, don't get to use it as much. But uh, that, that's why I love this time of year. You know, obviously we got the draft, uh, Masters coming up here, but it, it's the weather starting to break here in Ohio. So uh, definitely. Coming up here the next few months, doing a lot more of that. Uh, I mean, beef ribs, uh, mm -hmm. brisket. I mean, you can't can't beat that. So, I mean, I, I'm not doing it as much as you, but I mean, <laughs> your family's growing too. I know they are. They are. I got the got, got the other. Uh, my 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 smokers gonna be put away here in about a month for a while, no doubt about that. Dane, put a label on this draft the way you would define it in terms of strengths, weaknesses. How would you how would you label this draft class? At premium positions uh, in the first round, I think that it's going to be dominated by quarterbacks, wide receivers, offensive tackles, uh, a few corners mixed in, a few edge rushers. But we're going to see those premium positions just fly off the board. And I, quarterbacks suck up all the oxygen every year, right? Uh, and that's not going to be any different this year, especially with uh, Caleb at one. Uh, and then probably we're going to see quarterbacks two and three, and then maybe even quarterback at number four. Uh, it's just a matter of what's the order going to be and who are the teams picking those quarterbacks. Uh, we know Caleb Williams is going to be a Chicago Bear with the number one pick. But then what do the commanders do at number two? Uh, a lot of intrigue around that pick. Jane Daniels kind of feels like the favorite. I think it should be Drake May. To me, he's the second best quarterback in this class. And then what do the Patriots do at number three? Do they stick and pick? Do they get a big enough trade offer where they want to get out of there and uh, get a chance to recoup a lot of uh, draft capital as they kind of rebuild that uh, that that roster in New England? And then uh, who takes J.J. McCarthy, assuming he's the fourth quarterback? Is it the Giants at number six? Do they trade up to four to get him? Uh, we know the Vikings want to get a quarterback. Do they have a strong enough trade offer to go up to number four to number five to get that quarterback. Uh, so a lot of intrigue around these premium positions, but especially the quarterbacks at the top. Dane, where do you stand with Caleb Williams and are some of the character issues a legit concern in your opinion? You know, I, the the painted nails don't care. The the crying in the stands don't care. I shows me he, he shows me he does care. It shows me he's passionate. It shows me he wanted to win that game so badly that he was so broken up about falling short. I, that that's the kind of competitor I want. Uh, the the only concerns that I would have with Caleb in terms of off the field is this guy wants to be an entrepreneur. He wants to be the Jay-Z of the NFL. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're winning. And so it's not put the, the cart before the horse. Let's make sure we're doing everything we need to do on the field, uh, within you know your new organization. You're winning over that locker room. You're stacking wins before you start putting all these deals together and want to be the, the face of the NFL. That's that's great. He's he's had a plan. Him and his dad have had this plan in place since he was 10 years old to get to this point. And so it's all about staying focused and being doing what he needs to do. The talent is there. There's no question. 
Uh, did, needs to clean up the fumbles? Absolutely. Needs to clean up some of the decision making? No doubt. But all the talent is there for him to be a top five to seven quarterback in the NFL. And at the end of the day, that's the goal. If you have a top five to seven quarterback in the NFL, that's that's all you can ask for. That's going to help you compete for Super Bowls. So if you're the Bears, you you should be very optimistic. Uh, but if I were to have any concerns off the field, it would just be uh, you know his ambitions away from the game as well. Who's your comp for him? He is. Uh, I don't, there's not a great apples to apples comp. You see, you could see a little bit of you know some Aaron Rodgers with the way he operates. Um, I, the comp I've been going with is, is a karaoke version of Patrick Mahomes, uh, where you can. They're very. They're, they're different, but stylistically, with the way they want to play the game, where it's a lot of off platform, it's a lot of creation, it's a lot of. That's not quite how we drew it up, but. I'm going to trust my instincts. I'm going to trust my football awareness and I'm going to go make a play. Um, I, and can he be more consistent working on schedule from the pocket? That's going to be a big thing for him, especially coming from that Lincoln Riley offense where, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of first read stuff. Uh, and if it's not there, you're going to move your feet. You're going to in the pocket, outside the pocket. So just being uh, developing his decision-making from inside the pocket I uh, want to see that get a little bit better, but you can definitely pick up a few things that you see from Patrick Mahomes, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, you know, I know it's it's easy to get carried away with comparisons, but uh, it's hard to find a apples to apples comp for a guy like Caleb that you just absolutely love. Dane Brugler, NFL draft analyst, the Athletic, joining us here on 105 through the fans. Our path to the draft brought to you by Pluckers and Zero Res. Our quarterback show fight of the uh, draft season is J.J. McCarthy. Uh, Sean has completely put him in the Carson Wentz <laughs> category of he's KP, can't play. Uh, how do you like grade a quarterback that isn't asked to do a lot, but he goes to the combine, he's got some tools, and, you know, all right, I mean, he's got a good arm. Like, what do you think of J.J.? Yeah, I'm a Big Ten guy. So growing up in this part of the country and watching this Ohio State-Michigan rivalry, Ohio State dominated it for so long. And then when J.J. kind of came into the mix, it was kind of like, uh-oh, okay, Michigan's for real. And it, he showed it in those games. Uh, yeah, this is an offense that is really built around the ground game. It's built around offensive line, winning the trenches. But on third downs, fourth downs, when they needed him to make a play, he made it every time. And, you know, we saw it in the Rose Bowl against Alabama where he stepped up in the final two minutes and drove him down the field. Uh, and, you know, he did everything that was asked of him. So it's not a case of he can't do it. It's a case of do you wish there was more of a body of work? Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, we have to take with what's on the tape and project that out. So, there's a little more projection involved with J.J. McCarthy than most quarterbacks. There's no doubt about that. But and so there's there's risk involved. But at the same time, I can understand how a team would bridge that gap based off of the tools that he offers. The thing that's going to set him apart is the intangibles. That and I've been saying this for uh, for a while now. Once coaches get involved in the process, they're going to just be won over by the way he carries himself, uh, the toughness that he plays with. Uh, and, and I know fans hate quarterback win loss record, but you know thirty six and two in high school as a starter, twenty seven and one in college as a starter. He had a state championship in high school, national championship in college. Those things matter to NFL teams, and so this guy's going to go. It's just a matter of is it going to be a team trading up the four? Could the Patriots surprise everybody taking like three? Um, I, there's going to be lumps, uh, especially if he starts as a rookie. But three, four years from now, I, I can understand how if he'd be a uh, B-plus starter in the NFL, I think that's a realistic outcome for him. Dane, everybody at this point seems to be settled on the idea that the Cowboys are going to take offensive line in the first round. And that because Tyler Smith's flexibility to go guard or tackle and the opening at center, that they really could fit center, left guard, or left tackle with their pick. How would you just kind of give a brief overview of the type of offensive line that you think would be worthy of the selection at 24 and which guys you think will be in that range? Yeah, I, I mentioned how the, you know, the premium positions, that's going to really be the, the focus of the first round, and especially these tackles. We're going to see six, seven tackles come off the board, 
So it'll be interesting to see who's available for the Cowboys at 24, who's still left. Um, I think that's going to uh, decide the direction the Cowboys go more than anything. It's just who's available for them. Is it going to be one of these tackles? Uh, do they like Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma? Do they like him enough to take him at 24? I mean, six, seven and a half, 322 pounds, really good athlete, former uh, defensive lineman, tight end who made the switch to offensive line. And it, it, the talent is not the question mark. It's more just can he settle down, stay controlled, and execute. And, and we saw at the Senior Bowl him execute at a high level. Doing it against NFL pass rushers, obviously, a much different animal. But he has the talent to do it. So, uh, you know, I think that'd be the preferable way to go. You add the left tackle. You can keep Tyler Smith at guard. And then, you know, you figure out center. Uh, this is a strong center class. Uh, I think, you know, Graham Barton from Duke, Jackson Powers Johnson, Oregon, Zach Frazier, West Virginia, those three guys are at the top. And I think all three would be in that conversation at 24, but they don't have to go that direction if they don't want, if they don't get that center first, they could wait and go the Tyler Biotis route where they wait to the fourth, fifth round and get a guy like uh, Bo Limmer from Arkansas or Hunter Norzad from Penn State, Tanner Bordellini from Wisconsin. This is a really good center class where you don't have to necessarily go get that guy early and feel like uh, you know, you're going to be left out if you don't. So then the, the Cowboys are in a spot where I think we feel good about who they're going to draft in terms of position. We just don't know who it's going to be and what order they're going to draft. We know they're going to draft a tackle, or, or at least we're going to know that they're going to draft two offensive linemen in, in some shape or form. We know they're going to draft a linebacker. We know they're going to draft a running back. It's just a matter of where they draft them. Is it going to be in that first round, second round? Uh, and then, and I think it really will all depends on who's available for them at 24, which kicks off a domino effect about the order that they do draft these players. Because you have to stay true to your board. You don't want to go into it thinking we're definitely drafting this guy or dra definitely drafting this position. Stay true to the board and see who falls to you at 24. Dane Brugler's draft beast is out today. It has 1.1 million views and interactions already on Twitter. Wow. And he just put it out one hour ago. So congratulations already on that. I want just your overall thoughts. You talk to a lot of people. I want your overall thoughts on the Cowboys off season and, and what other people around the league are saying about it. And are we overreacting to the lack of anything here in the Metroplex from what Jerry and Steven have not been doing? You know, it's tough because obviously uh, money is the issue and uh, you, can always, you can always fudge things, right? You can always move money around and, and few people know that you know, better than uh, the Cowboys and, and the Cowboys fan base. Uh, but, you know, I, I think based off of what some of the things Jerry said um, uh, this offseason about how this is the time we're going for it, you know, all the excitement for the future, but then – it, it was kind of a letdown. I, I, I can understand based off of what Jerry has said that there really hasn't been any action in the off season. But you know, realistically speaking, there's just so, only so much you can do. And this has been an, a team that usually waits and kind of waits, lays in the weeds, waits and see. Okay, Stephon Gilmore is out there. Okay, we'll go make that move, or you know, we make a make this trade, and so. We'll see what the Cowboys do between now and the draft and then what they do on draft weekend uh, to make this team better. I can understand the uh, lack of excitement uh, from the fan base, but, you know, uh, realistically, realistically speaking, there's only so much you can do with their current situation. So I I'm really focused on how they can get better in the draft. I think there's a lot of different avenues they could go. Um, and so if I'm, if I'm a Cowboys fan, that's what I'm focusing on, what they're going to do at 24, what, what are they going to do in the second round? What are they going to do on day two? How are they going to make this team better on draft weekend? Because there's a lot of different ways they can do that. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, how the board falls with them and what they think they should do. Will there be a QB available at 24, one of the top uh, six QBs? And if there is, would you? I, I, it'd be pretty shocking. Uh, that's for sure. I, what I know, um, you know, I think you, you you ride it out. And if there's a quarterback there at 24, there's a, there's a reason uh, he's available there at 24. I'm not the biggest Bo Nix fan. I'm not the biggest Michael Penix fan. I think they could be, I think they could be solid starters uh, in the NFL. But 
uh, I, I'm not sold that either will be top 12 to 15 quarterbacks in the NFL, and, and that should be the goal. So, no, the Cowboys are going to ride with Dak, um, and, and I think that's what they should be doing. Build up the roster around him, and then, uh, you know, if you have to worry about quarterback next offseason, then so be it. But uh, you gotta go, you got to go for it right now. Is there a is there a guy in the draft like a, like an athletic freak? Doesn't matter if there's like a DK Metcalf that you know has this immense upside that people aren't really talking about. Sure, I mean every year we've got these guys right who uh, maybe go under the radar a little bit. Um, you know, guys that uh, are really just good football players, but also have freaky athleticism. You know, Andrew Phillips from Kentucky is one of those guys, one of my favorites this year. He'd be available some probably in the third round. Um, you know, Jared Wiley from TCU is a really good tight end that uh, could be in that mix. Uh, Jaden Hicks from Washington State, safety, who in my opinion is the best safety in the class and doesn't get enough lo- enough love. So, yeah, this, this draft, uh, there, there's plenty of guys to get excited about on day two, day three that are not really being talked about a ton, but have a ton of potential, a ton of ability. Um, and I tell you what, I, I – Trust Will McClay. I, I really feel like he under his him and his staff have put this organization in a spot where they can hit big on draft weekend, develop their guys, and it's it's the right formula to have. And so I, I think they've got the right people in place to do that. Dane, uh, you have roots here, draft roots, so you know of the Blue Star Special, the second round pick, um, the uh, the character or the medical red flag guy who who slides down the board a little bit. Give me mm-hmm. give me a couple names that that might be there around the second round that could be in the running for the Blue Star Special. Well, we got to start with Jonathan Brooks, right? Yeah, the, the running back from Texas, ACL. Uh, in, in my opinion, the best running back in the class. He's the only running back I would consider in the top fifty uh, this year. Um, so I, you know, he's he, on track to be uh, healthy before training camp. Uh, the Cowboys uh, surgeon did the did the, the surgery for him, fixed his knee. So nobody's got better information than the Cowboys uh, with with Jonathan Brooks. Um, he's the one that would make the most sense, uh, especially with when you look at his team and the running back position, what the depth chart looks like right now. Uh, it's uh, you know, he's, a, he's a Texas kid. The character's off the charts. He was in the middle of a career year. For the Longhorns before he got got hurt, so the one that's blinking in red lights, uh, definitely Jonathan Brooks. It's just a matter of okay, does he does he fall to the Cowboys at what fifty six in the second round? Does he fall that far? And if he does, uh, do they take him? Another guy would be Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from NC State. Uh, double digit surgeries in his background. It's uh, a, a lot of medical information there, but this team needs a linebacker, and he's a pretty good one. So. It's all a matter of uh, what do the doctors say? Thumbs up, thumbs down. If it's thumbs up, look for Peyton Wilson to uh, potentially be an option. Dane, who are the best and worst drafting teams nowadays in Mm -hmm. in your view? Uh, I mean, the Eagles, the Ravens, uh, those two teams really stick out every year as uh, bang for their buck, value, getting good players. Um, uh, You know, I I think uh, the Cowboys would be up there for sure. I mean, we look at – just this roster and a lot of homegrown guys, um, you know, I, uh, frustrations uh, aside with some of the things that have happened on the field, this is a team that has really uh, drafted and developed. And so they, they deserve a lot of credit for that. And it starts with Will McClay. Um, so I think the Cowboys are up in that mix. Um, Steelers have always been high. So, you know, I think it's not a mystery why the good teams are good. Uh, obviously, the quarterback matters. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is, is the reason the Chiefs are a perennial Super Bowl contender. But then you look at what that front office has done around him. Uh, you know, they've drafted really good corners, so you can let a luxurious need walk out the door and still have a really good secondary. Um, you know, that offensive line, the way they built that up. So uh, it's, I think you look around the league and you see the teams that are winning. It's really not a mystery. Uh, yeah, they, a lot of them are good quarterbacks, but the pieces around them have been uh, drafted, homegrown, developed. Um, it's uh, it's really a recipe for success that a lot of teams use. We've missed you. Congratulations on the beast yet again. Cannot wait to follow you uh, as the draft kicks off, and we'll be catching up with you again very soon. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Can't wait, guys. Take care. Dane Brugler on the DNM Leasing Hotline here on Sean and RJ. Our path to the draft coverage on your home of the Cowboys is brought to you by Pluckers and 
zero res. It's Expressway. It's Hump Day. Hump day. It's commercial free. Craig Ludwig to talk stars at eight. Let's chop it up. All right, here we go, fellas. Let's have a little fun today. Oh, we have some breaking news in the world of entertainment, Sean. Oh, we do. Do not be expecting a Jon Snow Game of Thrones spinoff. Do not. Okay. I've been wondering about this. I know you have, Bobby. Peyton, you might be a big time. Oh, baby. Game of Thrones fan. I enjoyed the show. I thought it was very good. I thought I would hate it. I thought I would absolutely hate it because it's about dragons and stupid stuff like that. Uh, but actually, it was quite good. But the network, HBO, uh, had been working on a spinoff as the lead character. And there's whispers that it might actually work. But recently reported it is unlikely to happen. My voice cracked. Fans can, you know, officially stick a pin in the idea that he is not is now headed in the wrong direction. It is not happening, at least at HBO. I would not look around for commentary. I'm devastated. I've never seen it and not going to watch it. No, no, ch no, no chance. Uh, if it's like the only thing I can stream on the airplane, well, I'll well, watch it before it goes down. It's I think it's a hundred episodes. <laughs> I think it's a hundred hundred hour long episodes. Yeah, ninety. It's it's great. It's fa I, I thought it was fantastic. At the end, I don't know. I got a little. I liked it. I liked it more pre Dragon than after Dragon. See, that's the, the problem. first several years, and the dragons weren't really a part of it. They were there, but they didn't really have a major destructive role. Then after the, guy, the dragons got there, it's like, all right, you know what? It's it's, it's 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 an unfair fight. There was something that, like, like I, I was five minutes into the first episode, and something in there hints at alludes to dragons exist in this world, and I paused it, and all of my friends were like, "You got to watch it." I texted them, I was like, "Are there dragons in this show?" The, you didn't know that going in. No, and they said yes. I was like. Turn it off. We're done. No, I'm not watching you dragon could, shows. You could have made it solidly through like season four. Pepe? Pay? Without seeing a dragon. Have not seen a single episode. I was too far behind when it got going. I was like, I'm not going to start yeah, over again. So. I didn't start until the last season. I guarantee you Ryan has seen it. Ryan, thumbs up or thumbs down Game of Thrones? Never no. Oh. He's, he's young. I mean, that thing came out. He was probably seven years old, I think, came out. This buzz. first episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if watch that, that thing. I'll, all I know about it is it's dragons and it has uh, inter family relationships I feel like and your loving. Daughter or daughters like love like sci fi type stuff like that. I can operate. Is that one in obsessed the, with Star Trek? Or? Look, I can operate in like certain areas of like, okay, I can do sci fi, I can do this. The, where, where it's hard for me is like, drop me in another era in a like alter alternate world where there's things like dragons like that's too many things for me to suspend belief and feel like i'm enjoying this yeah I mean, look, there's a lot of incest in it that's a little weird um but you teach their own step dragon what are you doing no nah, it's not even step step not dragon it's not even <laughs> step bobby <laughs> it's not even step um look i love gen z i have been they're your hope they're my hope for the future. I don't mean, yeah. They are going to get us a four-day work week. I think that it's weird because I hate so many things about them, but I love how their their inherent refusal to work is going to change the game for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like it's like our our eventual demise in a hundred years will be okay because I will know that in the next fifty years that I'm alive, I will have to work less because of them. But one thing I just can't get down with is their refusal to do anything competitive. All right, anything. To the point where Scrabble is changing. <laughs> no. For the first time in 75 years, Mattel is making a major change to Scrabble. They are touting, quote, no more scoring gameplay option. It will be a double-sided version, one side with the original game for those who want to stick to the long-time traditional version of tough words and brutal fights and scores, <laughs> and the other side with a, quote, less competitive version to appeal to Gen Z gamers. The flip side, called, called Scrabble Together, will include helper cards. Helper? Helper cards, so you can get help on words. <laughs> a simpler scoring system, be quicker to play, allow people to play in teams, and also offer no scoring. Gen Z people don't quite like the competitive nature of Scrabble. Uh, they want a game where you can simply enjoy language words, being together, and having fun creating those words. Do you find that Gen Z doesn't like to compete as much? 
Um, no, not not my. But my kids are at the end of Gen Z. My youngest kid, I think, is actually Gen Alpha, which is the next. That's the one after. Gen is that Z. a thing? Yeah. So, how old are your youngest? Why can't uh, the person who ten. they're Gen Alpha? Hmm. I wish whoever names the natural disasters could name the generations because it's yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah, like Gen my young, yeah, my youngest doesn't have, doesn't deserve to have the term alpha uh, on his on his name at all. Why? Uh, he's not an alpha. He's a follower. He's eleven. He ain't an alpha at eleven. Yeah. Hey, what are you? You know what I mean? He can't wait. He asks me all the time, "When are my, when are my boys gonna drop? When's my voice gonna get deeper? When am I gonna get hair?" That's all he asks. Mm. I've seen pictures of him. He's got hair. So he's horny. I oh. think he's he'll probably be a comedian. My hope is he'll be a comedian. You're messy. He's he could be he could be pretty funny. But uh they're, you know, but they're calling it Scrabble for Snowflakes. I didn't say he's Hank Aaron. I said he's horny. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Uh, so anyway, Scrabble's making a little bit of change. No more scoring. Uh the they will uh, the, the helper cards, obviously all that stuff. Scoring is the thing of the past. Now, all you have to do is finish a goal and collect the goal card. So that's what they're doing now. That's how they're replacing scoring. You get to a goal. I got five words right. And then you get a goal card. Oh, boy. Yay. You got your five words right. Practice, practice makes progress. Yes. So we, like, we don't want anybody to feel like practice makes perfect. Goal cards include play a horizontal word. Play a three-letter word. Play a word that touches the edge of the board. That's what we're doing. Trying to get 20 goal cards. Do you like spam? Not the email. The canned meat. I don't think I've ever had it. I have not either. I saw one guy have it, and that's when I worked for the Parks Department at Grapevine, and he was he had spam for lunch on crackers, like a little snack. We got a break at 10.15 every day, and uh, he had, it was his 10.15 a.m. snack. Really? Yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't know anybody that had it. I smelt it, didn't really care for it. Apparently, it is on fire. Spam is on fire. Food First inflation is up. Yeah, the cost of food for cash-strapped shoppers are making Spam and Vienna sausages oh. to the point they are surging, mm -hmm. and stores can't keep them on the shelves. Never thought I'd see this day. Right? But here we are. <laughs> here we are, where you're going in, and things are so expensive. Like Your regular food is double the cost at some of these grocery stores, and you're getting Spam and Vienna sausages going to make me want to vomit. The, I, that that should be a bet payoff that we have to do. Somebody uh, has to eat a whole container of Vienna sausage and then down the water you have, behind it. You ever had spam? I've never had it. Don't have any intention of eating it at all. The, do you know Joshua Wiseman? He's the the long haired YouTube cook yes. guy. Yes, he. I got, I have a, I got, uh, Tolo John gave me his book. He always has argued that he thinks there's a place for spam and cooking. That he I, thinks it's reliable, cheap, good eating, and you can make it up. Right? I mean, is it? How how do you relate it compared to ham? Like, is it gooier? Is it like, is it nasty? I don't know. How you, would you describe you've it? You've had Vienna sausages, right? Yes. Okay, so I like it's been so long since I had it, but I would basically compare it to it is the Vienna sausage version of ham. Like to me, like it's that. Okay. It's like if you took a Vienna yeah. sausage and turned it into a ham. I bet if you like cooked it or seared it or he sears it, it and enough, he like, you he, could dress it up. Yeah, I probably could. Probably could. Uh, it's I I don't. Well, right now these days, thanks, bud. Is your you like your food shortcut like where you're trying to save? What will you do? My wife always buys like the the standard bread that somehow ends up lasting longer, like sandwich bread. Yeah. Uh, what is your like your what is your sacrifice? Chris, Kristen's new shortcut she's looking into is just like making bread because she's like. Oh, it's a, wow. She's like, it's so, like, because she's like, everything's getting so expensive. She's like, if I can make it, we need to just make it because it's going to be Has cheaper. she tried? No. But, I mean, we, we made bread growing up. We had a bread maker and stuff, and it was, I mean, it was good. It was really? really good. Yeah, it was really good. Dude, that's tough. The you bread make makers make it pretty easy these days, I feel like. Some of the automatic ones, like, did you put it in? Okay. You know, no, no actual food item. I've just changed stores. So, like. Yeah, you guys were at the uppity places. Yeah, because like the, the closest like grocery store to us was, us was Tom Thumb, and or whole, whole check. They're just uh, right. They're I just that's what Pittman calls it. The whole whole check. That's good. <laughs> they're just considerably more expensive than like Walmart or Aldi or Costco. So we just have stopped basically going there right now. That that's really what we have had the biggest change of. Um, okay, you want uh, text chain or shaker? 
Shaker bottle. What's the text chain? It's it's it's, it's Kirby enthusiasm thing. I'll do the shaker thing. <laughs> this is the grossest <laughs> thing ever. I went in my trunk the other day uh, to get something I had left in the car, and I found a shaker bottle in there. One of those like you know yeah. protein shake shaker bottles. No, do that again. Protein shake shaker bottles. Yeah. I don't usually extend my thumb when I do that. Oh. Uh, I took it inside and I go to clean it. It's a nice change up. And when I popped the cap, first of all, it had like a like a real like loud, like a lot of air was built up in there. Uh. There was the tiniest bit of protein that this this thing was probably in the trunk for two months. The <laughs> vile smell. Bobby's gonna gag. The the this was the most <laughs> vile smell of all time. Did you wash it? That could be the bet payoff. Okay, so I washed it. Bobby, oh. do that instead of, oh, you already washed I it. I kept washing it, pouring it out, washing it, pouring it out. It still stunk. I soaked it for th for two days. <laughs> and I went to get it yesterday, and it still had the same smell to it. Wow. And I do I have to throw this thing you, away? You have to throw it out. Got to. Got to. Two days didn't work? But I it has the little hook on it. It's one of those things that has the little hook thing that you can grab onto, and you can <laughs> carry it around. Uh, Tolo Ricky said, you guys need to educate yourself on the New Jersey pork roll, Taylor ham. We talked about the other day, Jersey Taylor shore. Ham. It's delicious and cheap. Great on um, bagel, egg and cheese sandwiches. And then tray pan, fry it, toast bread, add the fixing, melt the cheese on the spam stuff is fire. Get the low sodium one. So they are washing low down sodium. With RJ's protein mold. It's disgusting. I, I have to, th I, I think you're right. It's the smell is still in my nostrils. I can still smell it. Right now. <laughs> That's how bad it is. It was the worst, most offensive smell. Sarah could smell it in the other room when I opened the door. When I opened the one's uh, wet, the cap. one's dry. It was <laughs> definitely wet in there. It was disgusting. <laughs> Chopping it up every hump day. Hey. Expressway commercial free on DFW Sports Station. The show of whales continues. They are absolutely red hot. What are their chances to win it all? Let's talk to Craig Ludwig about your Dallas Stars on Zoom. As well. Next. Let's get your carpet clean. Cleanway, Greenway, Zero Resway.
Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. We'll be played back to the far point. Tanev looking for traffic in front. They score. That took a deflection as Tanev just threw it to the net. And the Stars get the 3-2 lead here in the second period. Stars win again. They have won 10 of their last 11. They are rolling win number 50. That was Sabres TV with the call. Good morning, Metroplex, Sean, RJ, and Bobby. And I think the most surprising development of the week was when we were told we were going to get Craig Ludwig to fire up the Zoom for the fan cam Twitch and YouTube. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool getting Lud out there. And he's got his uh, he's got his Dallas backwards hat, his true brand hat on. And- yeah. Nice little microphone setup he's got it at the house. I like it. All right, let's see if uh, he's he's connected with us. Craig, are you there? You got us? Uh, yes, I've got you as long as Gavin Spittle's not on the line. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give us the pros and the cons of doing the, uh, the, the Spits and Suds podcast with our boss. Well, first off, who 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 named him the the something hawk the, hockey, the, hawk. The hockey hawk hockey hawk yes <laughs> who who gave him that that uh, title you know i i think it may have been self appointed yeah, can so. you can you name yourself can you nickname yourself yeah well it it should be more like the hockey sparrow or or something <laughs> like that the hawk the hawk doesn't really if you've seen Gavin, he doesn't look like the hot, you know, out here, I'm on Lake Louisville and you know how them great big crows are flying around. There's that, that little tiny bird. That's always on the back of its tail. That yeah. That's me. on the spits and suds. I mean, that's, that's, I'm the big black bird and it, the little <laughs> hockey sparrows, the one nipping at my heel. Bobby, this is about to be your favorite interview of the year. Oh, now, man. have you ever gone out? Have you tested Gavin's drinking ability? Have you ever gone gone out and slammed a few? He doesn't have one. He's uh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no. He'll he'll have he'll have his his little uh, I don't know something pink, and he has some little <laughs> pink thing in a martini glass. And then uh, I'll ask him, "Are you having another one?" Oh yeah, I'm having another one. And then by the time we leave an hour later, it hasn't been touched. So that kind of. <laughs> but a lot of people would call that a responsible drinker. So I'll 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 lay off on that. <laughs> how is the? Uh, how, how is your? How is your current? Is it, are you still in game in game shape in the drinking world as you were in your playing days? Oh yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I try to I try to maintain my level. So we you know I we have. Uh, we have a couple leagues. I think we have like three different men's leagues that we play in. So, as a matter of fact, I got a game today at noon. Um, so that <laughs> that kind of keeps you in the rhythm. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, if we're gonna go out, what are you doing? Are you are you just going straight beer? Are you mixing it up? What can you alternate? No. You go with a liquor day or or all I, beer? I, I don't do. I I honestly I don't do the liquor thing very often. I I'm a beer guy. I, I stick with my Miller Light and. Uh, I just figure I'm still I'm still around, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So th- there's the odd time I'll I'll have a little crown, a little crown and coke or something like that. Mm-hmm. But that that's very very few. I'm I'm a Miller Lite guy. So I'm how, loyal. How many Millers right now at the lake house? Do you have a kegerator? Do you, you go in? <laughs> you got <laughs> <No>. cases? <laughs> What's the setup out there? Yeah, it, it's it's a, it's kind of a case thing. Um, my kids are my kids have kind of followed in the footsteps too you know so oh, they're, they're miller like guys too. one of one of them is actually a craft uh, cj my youngest one he's into the craft thing him and his, him and his wife like getting out and bopping around and doing the craft beer thing and stuff like that but the other two are are, are kind of loyal also so we need some kind of sponsorship for the for the ludwig clan here from from miller light so there, there there goes my uh my pitch for the day <laughs> now uh you ever done a family ludwig shotgun out in the backyard the funnel <laughs> Uh, who who would win that? Just straight pounding them to see who can chug one the fastest. Well, yeah, that, yeah. Show the old man dad strength. <clears throat> yeah, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna win that battle. But unfortunately, around here, a shotgun actually means shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, Stanley Cup champ Craig Ludwig joining us here on one hundred five three The Fan. Um, all right, so in terms of the stars, I mean they're they're looking at the at the one seed now. Is the first round the most scary for a one seed? Just getting out of that first round and avoiding the upset because you know you'll you'll see an eight over a one in the NHL more often than the other sports. Yeah, you know I I think yeah there's there's a certain weight that comes with that, 
but uh, the weight is the worth it. I mean, in the, you know, the heaviness of being first overall is worth it. And I was just talking to Gavin about this the other day and, you know, <clears throat> we were talking yesterday and I said, the Rangers kind of were sitting pretty good. But when you look at the, the schedule that the two teams, uh, Dallas and, and the Rangers have, uh, the Rangers had to play the Islanders a couple of times. Then they lost last night to the Islanders. I think the Islanders are kind of that stingy team. And so right now I, I really, I still believe Dallas can get there. And <clears throat> you know what happened to us, you know, back in 99. And, and I was saying that it, it's important. Yeah. I think it's important to try to have, uh, you know, that first overall and have, have home ice throughout the playoffs. When we went into Buffalo um, for game six, uh, you know, we, we could, we knew that we could finish that one. And, but with, if we didn't, we had an opportunity to come back home to Dallas and for Buffalo, there's a different weight on your shoulders. You know, it's, it's a do or die thing. So there is a little bit more pressure and it's just nice to have in your back pocket. You hope you never need to, to use it. <clears throat> I think the last team, any, any sport wants to go to is a game seven. Um, Cause you just get the game sevens. You just never know. So, Dallas, you know, when you look at their numbers, you look at their lineup, you look at the depth that they have, the way that they've played this year. And I think from a fan, especially, um, it's nowhere near, in my opinion, to when we played, because this is an exciting team. I mean, our our game and even that era was built around, you know, keeping the puck out of your net more so than putting it in the other one. And so there was a lot of 2-1 games and uh, things like that. So now it's just it's back and forth. And, and for Dallas, it's just more forth. I mean, when you watch them play, they spend a lot of time in the offensive zone and that's the way they're built. So it's an exciting team for the Dallas Stars fans. Um, and they are sitting right where they want. And I think things are starting. And when I say things, I mean the players and there are certain players. And I think Jake is getting back to his form. And uh, I think he's only given up like seven goals in the last five games. So you know, there's just the odd one I think that he would want to clean up because those are the ones that sometimes will come back and haunt you. But I think we know that Ottinger, when he is the guy, what, what we're looking for is that guy that was in the Calgary series. Mm -hmm. And and I think Jake knows that. And I think, you know, he's just such a calm, cool kid. Um, you get him playing on top of his game and these guys are able to carry it into the playoffs. They're, you know, they're something to be reckoned with. But again, the playoffs are a completely different animal. All the stats that you accumulate throughout the year, the goals, the season Wyatt's having, the season that whole team is having, you, everybody starts at zero in game one. So, but I do think that they've got some guys there that are hungry. And, you know, Matt Duchesne's hungry. Jamie Benn is hungry. Tyler Sagan, it's been 12, 13 years since he won his last cup. And I was in that same scenario a long time ago. And you think you're never going to get back again. And, and the younger players know that. They know that there's some guys that are, their careers are winding down. They're going to be around for a couple, two, three, four, whatever that may be. So the younger players know that. And, and, and I think this is a really close-knit team. And I think they're in it for each other, which is the most important thing. Craig Ludwig joining us on the DNM Leasing Hotline here on 105 Through the Fan. Craig, how many other teams would you put above the Stars as championship favorites? Well, I mean, I don't think you can ever count out Colorado in, in the West. And, um, you know, they've got to get you know, one of their top guys, rotman has been injured. And so we'll see if they get him back. Um, I don't know if they have the goaltending to, to get them through. I, I think their goaltending has been suspect at times. And a possible opponent would be Vegas. And, and I just, in the West, <clears throat> I think that Vegas is now their goaltender that, you know, ran, them, ran the table with them last year has been hurt. I think he's coming back uh, sometime soon here. So, but for me, Vegas worries me from the standpoint, eh, it doesn't worry me. It, it can, it's a, it, it's a depth thing. I think they've got the best top six, whatever you want to call it, defenseman. And I think that's what carried them through last year, along with a couple other things uh, in the East. Man, uh, obviously the Rangers, Carolina, Boston, you know, so, but that you don't have to worry about so much, you know, until you mm -hmm. get to that last round. So in the West, it would be, as you talked about in the first round, I don't, I don't look at, at Las Vegas uh, being a, a, a number eight seed, if that's where they finish, you know what I mean? Like there, there's some other eight teams and they could play LA. I mean, there's a couple different options that they could play there, 
Um, but if you, and we know what happened with, you know, Vegas in the last time that they played them. So, but then again, that can be motivation too. But I, I would look at Colorado, Vegas, and, and a lot of people would say Edmonton. I just think that Edmonton, they've got two big bullets in their gun, obviously. Dry Seidel and, and the other guy, that that other guy's pretty good, uh, McDavid. So, but I just think that Dallas made a point last time Edmonton came to town uh, against that team, and that goes a long way. So, um, you know, so we'll see. But but again, I think for the Stars, they don't worry about their opponent. They, they mm-hmm. just say, listen, we've got the best plus minus goals, four goals against differential in the lead. There's a reason we have that. We score a lot. Uh, for the most part, we keep it out of our net. We're just going to play our game. We're not really going to worry about who the opponent is. Lud, Robertson did not have a great start to the postseason uh, last year. They were still able to win those games, those series. Um, you know, like outside of Otter, is he the one that really has to, or not, not even him, who has to step up and play above their talent level for them to really advance in the cup run? Well, you know, I, I, I think the line in, as a whole, I don't, you know, that was the big line, right? I mean, with Pavs and, and Hints and Robo, that, that was your big line for a long time. The good news for Dallas is now all of a sudden, well, then there was a point this year for most of the year, in my opinion, it, it was Matt Duchesne's line. And, and you know, that, that line seemed to be the best line. Well, now it's Wyatt Johnson. I mean, this is a good problem to have. So, and I think when you have that, there's less pressure on Robo coming into the playoffs thinking, I got to do this. Because now all of a sudden, you've got a whole group doing it. Where I, I think his first couple of years, you know, he put up some good numbers, young guy, pressure. And the other thing is, a lot of that can be alleviated, I, I think, by... It's the opponent. So the opponent's got to figure out who are we who are we taking our guys and what what line for the Dallas Stars are we trying to shut down here? So he may that line, I should say, may get opportunities where you're not getting well, let's just say they play Vegas. You're not gonna see Stone. You're not gonna see Mark Stone as much because I think you know they <laughs> they're gonna go, okay, wait a second. This Johnson kid is the hot one right now and that line, but then oh yeah, if Matt DeShane gets going and March, I mean, there, there's just so many options, and I and I think that's probably a conversation that, that I would be having with that line or that player and just say, listen, there's no pressure on you. And you could say the same thing to Wyatt. Even, you know, keep it going, but there's no pressure on you. We've got other guys. Everybody's going to carry this torch, and there should be no pressure on one certain person. My, my whole thing is going to be, for, for Dallas, is the decor. And, and you know, to have that six that when you get on the road especially – and you don't have last change and you get, you know, whoever it may be out there, can can they survive or, or can they do the job when you're on the road against other teams' top lines if that's how they want to match up? We're talking with Craig Lugwood here on 105 Through the Fan. Craig, you know, when you look at the the stars, you mentioned how important home ice would be for them. Or just in general, it is in the NHL playoffs. But Dallas has been one of the better road teams in the NHL over the past two seasons. Best record this year. What is it about you know, them on the road, you think that they're able to maintain their level of play. There hasn't been much of a drop-off compared to home. I think for all the reasons I was just saying earlier is they they don't they don't have to worry now. I don't think Pete DeBoer has to worry so much now about getting the right players against or away from whatever the other team wants to do with the you know the home team obviously has last change. I don't think you have to worry about that. I think the players know that. We're just going to go out and play. We don't really care who matches up. So uh, anytime you play on the road and you play in the playoffs on the road, especially uh, who needs to be your best player? (laughs) You know, it's your goaltender. And um, so at the end of the day, for the most part, playoff hockey, it ends up being, you know, he's one of the top two guys, top three guys at most important ones. So, um, but again, I, I don't think that, that Otter really even knows if he's playing at home or away. I, I really don't. I just think he's got that that calm demeanor about himself. I don't think, and and you don't see it. And that's that's a good thing about Jake is is, is if he's not having a good game, you don't. He doesn't show it, and, and he just he, there, there's not a lot a lot of emotion that comes out of him. So, um, I just I'm 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 just saying I I just think this team has got all the elements, and so does the Rangers. I mean, there's other teams that have the elements, too. They believe in themselves, too. But, um, like I said, they're, they've I'll, – I'll, I'll put it this way. I, I'm an old-school guy, and I believe in defense and stuff like that. And the team, the team that 
that I work with in coach, a U18 team that we traveled around the country. There was three years ago. And I said to the other coach, I said, listen, I'm going to go against the grain and everything that I totally believe in because I think we have a team that can score four to five goals a night. And, and uh, you know, all this defending and let's not put all the pressure on that. Let's play to our strengths. And I think that's what this team can do. And I think that's exactly what they're doing. They're saying they get down, they get down last night. Do you think there's one guy that was panicking when they were down a goal? Do you think there's anybody panicking when they're down two goals going into the third period? I, I just think there's a belief in this group that's like, we've done this all year. We've been down. We can come back. Otter's going to take care. You know, he's not giving up any more goals. We already know that. And I just think that's the belief that they have in each other. Uh, this was absolutely tremendous, especially the beginning. Uh, next time you see our boss, tell him that we did not put you up to that, and we can't wait to have you back on again. Have a great game today, Craig. Miller's on us. That's got to hurt me having to call him your boss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the great Craig Ludwig here on the DNWC Hotline. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Man, he is fantastic. Yeah, great. Why is RJ already shopping for the World Series champs? Next on 105.3 The Fan. But you do not need...
on 105.3 The Fan segment here brought to you by State of the R8 Loss. That's Soda, Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you have been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214-817-333-3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out-of-pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go-to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. The pitch is swung on. There's a drive to deep left center field. That is way back, and that ball is gone. Home run number three of the night for Shea Langoliers. He has put the athletics in front, four to three. Have a night, Shea Langoliers. Three home runs off three different Rangers, the last being Jose Leclerc. And it seems like the bullpen sirens are going off a little bit, just like last year throughout much of the season. That was the call from Nadell. We are your home for Rangers baseball. Sean, RJ, and Bobby on DFW Sports Station 105.3, the fan. That was that was that was tough at the end. That was that was tough to watch. That was it was a bad game. That was I think overall most people think that was a pretty uh, depressing night at the ballpark. Um, That's the way baseball. There's no or? reason. It is, but you shouldn't lose to Oakland, uh, especially when you got a lead going to the last inning. You should never lose that game. Well, the good news is uh, Jose Leclerc's ERA only went up uh, a run, even after giving up two runs in this game. Really? It, only, it only went up a run. It went up from 1350 to 1440. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no real concerns here. Uh, hey, they've won three of their last four, okay? So that's improvement. They're right? four and seven. Last year, their fourth win came at four and 16. April 21st, en route to a franchise worst 50 win season. They're excited. They're excited. They're getting to move to Sacramento. They're really? going to Sacramento next year. This is their last season in Oakland. Has anyone ever been excited to go to Sacramento? Um, no, I I don't think so. Unless you're flying out of there, unless you're, you're unless you live in a, a neighboring town, you go into Sacramento, go to the airport. And you get to fly out. I don't think anybody's been excited to go to Sacramento, but it has to be better than Oakland. It has to be better than the Coliseum. This is this is getting really bad though with Leclerc now. This is his stat line for the year now. We, we've got five appearances, five innings pitched. He has six walks, a hit by pitch, eight runs allowed, six hits allowed, and just four strikeouts. So I mean, you're talking about essentially the lowest number in that collection is how many people he's striking out, but. This is, he is, he looks broken again. That's what's concerning. Yeah. The good news is, is that we felt he was broken in the beginning of last year. And I'm, did we ever feel like that was totally settled? No, but remember he had been demoted. Yeah, but I mean, this was a team that like what set the record for most blown saves or save percentage and still going on to win the World Series. Like he, I, I never felt like we were comfortable with him, did we? Yeah, I, I, I feel like in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, we were down the stretch. I felt comfortable with him. Yeah, right. Like, Aroldis was the the frightening one, and I was like, just get us to the clerk. Yeah. That's the way I felt. Yeah, I, I felt at the end, at the end of the year, uh, that I was much more comfortable with with where he was. But his ERA was in the threes in October when I go back and look at it. That's what's weird. Yeah, he had a. Um, so he had a he had a stretch early on in the season, um, April twenty seventh or less last year. April twenty seventh, one run. Next appearance, two runs. Next appearance, one run. Two appearances later, two runs. Five appearances later, three runs. And then on that May thirteenth, I'm sorry, June thirteenth, they gave those three runs in a third of an inning, and then he went on a uh, a Brayu like movement in Houston where he just didn't give up a run. He didn't give up a single run in the month of July until the very well two runs in the month two times in the month of July August not a single run until the very last game September a couple of runs just two runs three runs the entire month I mean he started to pick things up as the year went on so maybe he just takes a while to get going maybe he's not hitting the spots I don't know man but even the, like even if you look at peripherally what he was wasn't doing this bad though but even, I mean it wasn't this bad but like if you look at peripherally what he was doing he was man, still I did not think. You'd be able to say that a second time smoothly. That's a tough word to say. Oh, yes. Peripher Especially with the day you're having. Go ahead, Peyton. Say that word. Peripherally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he said that. Bring it up. Put it on the board. Go ahead, Chop. Why is there a B in it? Go ahead, Chop. Let's see. Peripherally. Because he thought I was uh, saying preferably. Go ahead. You say it. Oh, yeah. peripherally. 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 Yeah. Peripherally. One more? Peripherally. Okay. 
There right. you go. Very good. Took the B out. Uh, Para no, Philly. But he, like, for instance, even last year when he was nine appearances through the season, Leclerc hadn't allowed a run, but yeah. he had basically as many walks as he did strikeouts. He was giving up hits. It was something where it was, you still didn't feel totally good about where he was at. And so to me, I look at it and I say, like, I think he just, in a lot of stretches last year, was fortunate that things didn't, like, like guys didn't score. He was still putting people on base. His fielding independent pitching was still in the fours for most of the year. All right, Chop, take us to uh, Canton. <laughs> Yes, uh, I like that. I like that. that's good. Not ones. Ohio trade days. No, not my Ohio. My wife is trying to get me to go, or my 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 mother in law. This is sad that she has to say this to me. She's the one like, that hates me. Uh, yes. So that makes it uh, like mother like daughter. Yes, like mother <laughs> like daughter. And they were like, no, no, no. You need to go like on a weekday or something. Um, and well, I'm like, you do Friday. You because you, the first day of trade days. I th- well, it may start on Thursday. I think earlier in the week it's supposed to be the better deals or something. Either way, it was during the week. And I was like, well, I'm not going to go during the week. I have to work. And she's like, they have beer there. And I was like, oh, that's what you think? I think you could just yeah. throw out a, throw out a, you know. You think I'm Luds? You think I'm Luds? <laughs> throw out a middle of light and I'll just abandon everything? Yeah. It, uh, it's fun. It, it is. It, it, Which it, I'm I, going I was... Wednesday. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll so go. I'll go with you. I saw this, uh, you know, like this was a uh, post. These, hey, these guys are still out there. And I was like, all right, well, let's take a look at these guys. Because the injuries have mounted for the Rangers. So, you know, now you're. And, and basically, what's out there this time of year are these guys. You're not, nobody's trading a player yet. Everybody's still in it. But, you know, if you do have a need for a player, need for some depth, you know, you got to look. And where are you looking? You're looking at the guys who have not been signed. It's like the first couple of weeks of the NFL season or in training camp where, up oh, my quarterback went down. Let's go find the quarterback that's out there. So these guys are still free agents. They've either, some of them have history of success in big games. Some have a history with Bruce Bochy. Now, I'm not recommending getting these. I'm just telling you, like, this is this is where the help lies outside of your farm system. From a veteran perspective, tell me if you have any interest. Tommy Pham. For the Ranger killer. Was it, wasn't the book on him last year that he was... A little clubhouse toxic. Yeah, is he the oh, guy that knows little, is like MMA and yes. slap B yeah, slapping yes. people for fantasy leagues? There was uh remember he had he got into a fight in the outfield with a player. Oh my god, it's gonna kill me. I can't believe I'm he forgetting. slapped someone. Yeah, he slapped somebody. Oh, it was Jock Peterson, right? Yeah. Uh yeah, Jock Peterson. Uh which doesn't like the French. Oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> Last year Tommy hit two fifty six. 328, 446, 774 OPS. But in the playoffs, his OPS jumped from 774 in the regular season to 846. That's not bad. Batting average was 313 in the playoffs. 17 hits in 16 games. Uh, he's a gamer. He he just is. He plays well in big spots. But he's an outfielder. They got a loaded outfield. They don't really need him. But do you just take him for a pinch hit roll or whatever? I mean, is that somebody that you would go get? Yeah, I mean, if Adolis is playing like last night, for instance, like maybe do you do you just get another? I wait, I wait for don't get mad at me over a jinx, but it's, I just wait for Adolis to get hurt. Like he is so jacked that any type of I thought he got yeah. hurt running down the first. Yeah. Ozzie Gian on the uh, White Sox post game. Boy, imagine being the manager of a team, and then all of a sudden being on a post game show on TV. It seems like a fall from grace. No offense, Basic, but um, he said you can't pull fat. Can't pull fat. Yeah, he goes. So these players that are jacked up, they pull muscles. You can't pull fat. Yeah, fat doesn't pull. I mean, he's kind of right on that one. Also, doesn't move very well. Uh, now here's a guy that's got a history with Bruce Boach. This is Brandon Belt. Brandon guy. Belt, thirty six, huh? My guy. Yes, that's right. A relative of yours. Uh, last year's OPS was eight fifty eight with with nineteen bombs, uh, three sixty nine on base. I'm surprised he's out there. He had a good year with Toronto. From Nagadochis. Maybe he wants too much money. Good job pronouncing that. Um, not the best player. Or as say, Nabadochis. <laughs> he just throw letters in. <laughs> throw a B in there. Nabadochis. I mean, I just made that joke. No, a B. You said a P. <laughs> no, I said a B. Nah, you said Nab. No, I didn't. Now, Yesterday you were wrong. You go, go today to tape, you're wrong. Go to the tape. I he said Nagbadochis. He said Nabadochis. Um, now maybe you he, don't even know the name of the friend you invited in. You're gonna tell me how I pronounce my word? Yeah, we got uh, Jerome sitting in. <laughs> <Jerome>. <laughs> <laughs> what was I wrong about yesterday? I don't know what I was wrong about. Yesterday. I don't want to get back into it. Um, <laughs> he's also plays first base, uh, so you could throw that in there. 
Uh, also an outfielder, though. Again, they don't need an outfielder. Evan Longoria, 38 years old. Mm. Hasn't had an OPS season of 840 or above in a decade. Who's he married to? Eva. I don't think it's Eva. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, I stopped for a half <laughs> You second. thought about I it. I think it's Eva. <laughs> I think, can you imagine Evan and Eva? With the both same last name to begin with, I, I thought they were. I thought they were. I mean, siblings. he's an athlete. Maybe it's Drea. I, I thought, thought they he were was, siblings for a while. Jeez, Bobby. I thought she did. The, oh, oh, that, that that's the worst she, joke I've she made. Did today. The, she did the paper clips and red ribbon stuff. Uh, uh, I thought he was married Jamie to someone famous. Jamie Faith Edmondson. Okay, I, I don't know who that is. All right. Never oh, mind. former model who was Playboy's Miss January in 2010, and a former, uh, well, former police officer and Dolphins cheerleader, and she was an Amazing Race. Wow, what a life this woman has lived. Yes, I tried to get on Amazing Race. Did you? Yeah, it didn't work. What was the? Did you send in like a tape? Oh, uh, we filled out an application. <laughs> send in the wrong tape. Have you not seen his video stuff? Oh no! It oh, is no Bobby. Bobby, I'll, I'll show it to you in a break. Actually, I can't show it to you because Bobby will use it against me oh. in, in, in a future world. Well, now he's gonna find it. He's gonna find it, Bobby. Don't 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 say the name of it is. I won't. I don't. don't, I don't yeah, I, I do remember, but I'm not gonna say it. I'll please it. please say the name of it. Why are you right so now? worried about it? Because someone's gonna get it. Someone's oh, gonna get it. Someone's oh. gonna find you, you it. You remember when we pulled out? I pulled our clips of our old broadcasting tapes or whatever, and I was like, all right, these are gonna be surprises. Yeah. He cheated. He listened to his clips before. He's like, I, I'm not gonna trust you. You're not gonna pull anything that'll get me canceled. No, I, I, I don't know how I don't know how life has just changed. Listen to me. <laughs> this. With whatever bad mood you're in, whatever you're going through at home. I'm in a great mood. Uh, with whatever laundry Kristen didn't do. And whatever cereal you haven't had. No, this, it, was, it was when I was banned from taking a sip of my wake-up juice this morning. <laughs> well, well, I'm sorry. I'm going to go like here. The CDM sucker was like this. Okay, I'm sorry. Just, just make your point. Just make your point. <laughs> What's Josh Lewin doing? <laughs> <laughs> this this will make your entire week. It'll okay. make your time. It really will. You got to start watching some of the videos in each break. Choppy, who would you go shopping for on your own list? Uh, so continuing with this. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, so the Evan Evan Longoria mm -hmm. play a little third. Zach Granke. Mm. Boy, he's forty. The pitchers here are not very good. Zach Greinke's 40. Uh, I'm saying no to this one. Noah Syndergaard, 31. Uh, last year, he was bad, 6.50 ERA. But in 2022, in the 22 starts he had with the Angels, he had a 3.82. Uh, now, his velocity's dipped quite a bit. He ain't throwing 98 anymore. He's more throwing like 92, 93. Uh, but he did have a 3-to-1 strikeout to walk ratio. And you can also get Julio Tehran, who was just released by the Mets. So of all these people, who would you want? I would maybe I would maybe take a look at Brandon Belt. I think he could still play. I don't think the rest of them can play. Uh, maybe Syndergaard if if the if the medicals check out with him. Some, I'm out on Rich Hill, 44 years old. Don't need that. Some Diamond Cavs with RJ Choppy on 105.3 The Fan. NFL statistics so absurd that they don't even sound real. Next and below the belt. On the fan. Let's get you over to Platinum Chrysler Dodge Ram Jeep. It is, of course, a...
brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. The great Bobby Belt. You ruined the morning show. Don't make me take off my belt. Don't make me no, take no, off my belt. We're not. Despite Sean Sharif's best efforts, Micah Parsons is about to get paid, y'all. <laughs> Holy cow. More on that in just a second. There you go, Clarence Hill. You can be right, man. <laughs> oh, you can be right. <laughs> Sharif. Right, Clarence. So, uh, Tell your next article. Before we, uh, come on, we, we, we like Clarence here. Uh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. We can't burn every bridge. So we were, uh, I, I was going around Reddit yesterday, as I tend to do. That's part of my uh, content gathering process. And I stumbled upon a thread on the NFL forum that it just, I was interested in clicking on it. It said, what statistic seems made up, but is actually real? So I just, you know, jumped in there and was taking a look at some things. I was like, oh, there's enough in here that I think these are pretty interesting. I think they're, they'd be fun to kick around while we're sitting here in the off season. So some of these ones that were submitted, Jim Harbaugh has been in the news lately. Jim Harbaugh, as it stands right now, has a higher yards per carry over the course of his career than Jalen Hurts. What? Yeah. Jim Harbaugh averaged five yards per carry in his career. Hurts, who has a lot of the tush push, the little one yard touchdowns and things like that. Jalen Hurts is at 4.8. So that's shocking. That's stunning. Really makes you wonder. That's one of those random stats that somebody comes up with. Like somebody decided to go to football reference and look up, like, oh, let's see what this guy's uh, yards per carry are and, and this one and that one. And you find some random ones, man, that are weird. Here's one that uh, relates to the Dallas Cowboys. Zach Martin has more Pro Bowls and All Pros than he does holding penalties in his career. Heard that one. That one's always been very popular. This was one that was it genuinely. Most of these I went, wow, that's interesting. That's fascinating. This is one that made me go, and I had to actually Google it and see. There's no way that's true. In 2002, the Steelers once outgained their opponent 422 yards to 47, possessed the ball for 40 minutes, and lost by 18 points. Wow. How many pick sixes were there or fumble recoveries? There you go. You're you're on the right track. This was Tommy Maddox throwing a couple pick sixes to Aaron Glenn and the expansion era Houston Texans. Houston picked up three first downs in this game. They picked up 40 yards. They barely had the ball. Oh they went like God. 0 for 12 on third down. And because of the pick sixes and all the turnovers, they ended up winning that game by 18 points. Wow. It was like 21 to 3 or something like that because Pittsburgh just couldn't score. Not much has changed since then. Pittsburgh still can't score. Yeah. And that's where one of the other ones that's really interesting, Kenny Pickett for the Steelers, he finished his career uh, with them with more wins as a Pittsburgh Steeler than passing touchdowns. What? <laughs> these, I know these I are mean, They won a lot of games. They won a lot of games. They right? win, I mean, they, they, they they win 10 like, games a year. He threw like eight, nine touchdowns, something like that. Some of the other ones really quickly before we get to the Josh Allen news that impacts Micah Parsons. Uh, Randy pa Randy Moss never led the NFL in, pa in receiving yards. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald has more tackles in his career than he does drops. <laughs> that one's interesting. Uh, Bruce this Arians. Amazing. Bruce Arians rushed for more touchdowns in a season at Virginia Tech than Michael Vick. What? Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Arians in a year run ran for more? More touchdowns than Michael Vick did. And even though he played football. Yeah, that, that, that's what it is. Um... Tom Brady is second all time in total receiving yards by a player 40 or older <laughs> <laughs> behind Jerry Rice because receivers just don't play that long. And then in 2019, in a quarter of his games, Jameis Winston threw an interception on his very first pass attempt of the game. On his in very, a quarter of his games? He did it four times that year. Man, the uh, Jameis is now on this like, guys, I was blind kick because he was, right? He had he had to get LASIK. He was looking and, at the Eclipse. And long. he was like, I didn't, I could, I didn't know. I didn't. He, I think he said he didn't know that that Bruce was white for a while. <laughs> he did make a comment about <laughs> he that. He said something like that. Arians. Yeah, he's yeah. great. Well, I mean, it's because he heard that Michael Vick stat at uh, that, that yeah. at, at Virginia Tech, the Russian touchdowns. <laughs> uh, Josh Allen from the Jacksonville Jaguars had a massive season last year. Seventeen and a half sacks. That's only the second year in his five years in the NFL that he had double digit sacks, but put up a big number. He just got paid this morning per Adam Schefter, five-year deal, $150 million. Wow. $88 million guaranteed. That sets the Micah Parsons bar at potentially 35. 
I would think somewhere around there. No. Pars- Josh Allen has never brought up. I mean, he's brought up as one of the top edge rushers, but he's never. Yeah. You've got that tier of yeah. TJ Watt, Miles Garrett, Micah Parsons. Like that's that's the group right there. Nick Bosa, maybe mm. 88 million guaranteed. And so, I mean, that's Bosa's making 34 mm-hmm. per Chris Jones, 32. Josh Allen, 30. So what are we at? 35 for Micah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's the that would be the leapfrog. And I think, you know, when you read Gelkin's article about CD holding out the other day, he starts listing off how much Tyreek Hill makes. And if you adjust it for the inflation of the salary cap, that that 30 million annually is actually 36.1. And you just you you start to wonder a little bit how close is because that's how generally agents try to manipulate the cap. Or, or try to argue for numbers. No, 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 no. I'm arguing based on when that was signed with inflation of the cap. What's that number? And yeah, sure. I'll come in under Tyreek's 36, but you're not going to pay me under Tyreek's 30 because the cap has changed. So I need to be up above that. So, I mean, you're probably looking at CD asking for between 31 and 35 a year. Oh, so who, who gets more lamb or Parsons per year? Parsons. Cause Parsons. I think Parsons isn't going to get done until next year. Lamb, might, well, Lamb might not because either. of us. We, we cost him his money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You made the the, the Cowboys went, hold the phone. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> because he'll get it from he'll get it from uh, Minnesota. They they don't have enough money to to pay Micah after they shell out all those big bucks to you, Sean, to to spit the line for him. That's the right. Air, you know, <laughs> they 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 devoted their budget elsewhere. But yeah. you're genuinely looking at a potential. Let's just say it is 35 for CD and 35 for Micah. You're looking at 35 for CD, 35 for Micah, and potentially waiting on Dak 60. So 60, so that's... 130 million a year wrapped up in three guys. And the cap will be what at that point? Uh, So it's at 255 right now. Um, I mean, next year it'll probably go up to 265, between 265 and 270. Something like that. And so... Third, it's a third of the cap. Now, obviously, average salary is not the same as cap charge. Like, your salary cap number is going to be lower than that a lot of times. If every before. team in the league had these three players, like, what what other teams have that amount of money tied up in three players like that? And would everybody sign them up for the re-sign, for the extension, versus saying, all right, we're going to let you go, and we're going to sign two really good players? Well, I mean, the, the, the Chiefs have... Chris, Pat, and Kelsey. But Kelsey's Kel- not that much. He's not so that much. No. They had to move on from Tyreek in part because right, of that. they did. Yeah, they did. That they, like that's the thing. You can have three guys like that, but you're going to be very, very thin. So I'll ask the question because since we're kind of getting to that point, like maybe you can have up to two. Let's say you determine I can only have two of them. Then which two are you paying? Which two are you keeping? Well, I mean, go ahead, Choppy. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your answer you, went, should, you went first on Friday. You go first. Your John. answer should be easy. <laughs> well, look, I mean, yeah, there's two schools of thought. Like, thought one is like, are you are you convinced that Dak is the guy, right? So if you are, then you keep Dak and Micah. Yeah, we know the schools. Right. What's your answer? No, so like I'm saying, like, if 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 you keep Dak and Micah, Dak's job, if you're paying him sixty million, his job is to find the next CD lamp. He creates the next CD. So if the Cowboys are convinced Dak is the guy that you do that. Otherwise, um, you if you don't keep Dak, then you don't keep any of them. That's it. That's the only thing. So my thing is, if I have to keep two, I'm going to keep Dak and Micah because Dak's at sixty million. He's paid that much to find the next CD. Yeah, lane. but you don't believe Dak is the guy, so you would I not. You so would Dak would uh, Dak should be the easy leave out for you. No, because I would get rid. Then at that point, I'm I'm blowing it up. If you're going to get rid of the quarterback, you're blowing it up. I don't. I don't. I have no use on a. I have no use for a 35 million dollar wide receiver if I don't have a quarterback. So I get rid of them all. I get six, seven first round draft picks out of the bunch, and then I go from there. I would. I would give Dak his money, and then Lamb. That's me. I would too. The only, the 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 next option for me though would be Lamb and Micah. But Micah is the best. I. I think Mike is the best. Well, at what he does. Da- at what he does. Dak is definitely third. Dak's, Dak's really good. But I think CD is better at his craft, we always say on the mm-hmm. show. Uh, CD and Micah than, than Dak is. But I don't have a ton of faith in the offense without Lamb. So, like, I'm, I'm signed. Like, Micah Parsons is the one that's probably going to the Hall of Fame. But I need Lamb if I'm going to 
signed Dak. And CD is a freaking stud. Don't get me wrong. Lamb's the easiest one to pay for me out of the three. Like, because to wow. me, it's because what Lamb brings Shocked in terms of that, just in terms of age, competitiveness, um, you know, who he is in the locker room, everything like that. Like, I think that Lamb is the easiest one to pay. Because obviously, we're talking about the quarterback position. You're talking about committing almost twice as much money. So if you're saying, all right, hey, we got to make some financial decisions here that teams have had to make, then to me, Lamb at that rate and how much of the cap he is, I think he impacts the game so significantly. So to me, it would be Dak and CD is the first combo. And then the second combo, if I had to like have an alternate one, it would be Micah and CD. Because to me, CD is the guy. CD's got to be part of the equation. Now I know you're not feeling well today. You <laughs> I left, feel great. You, you bumped Dak out of it. I feel fantastic. Oh really quickly God. before we wrap up this segment. Uh, couple By the of way, we're going to have to get this audio. But Adam Schefter said the Cowboys could be a sleeper team in the quarterback draft market. Wow. What is that noise? That's interesting. <laughs> Sounds like a cicada. So uh, the Mel Kiper has his new mock draft out this morning. Two rounder. And of course, he was he was famous for calling the Tyler famous. Smith pick months in advance. It was the first pick he got right the entire draft. Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle from Oklahoma, is his projection. And he says, this has to be a tackle, right? And I don't know if that's like him saying it like obvious or he's asking like for feedback like, right, this is a tackle. Uh, unless you view Tyler Smith as a tackle, it may be guard or center at that point. But he has Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. And then the most popular projection of almost any pick outside of Caleb Williams, it feels like, at number 56, Jonathan Brooks running back Texas to the Dallas Cowboys. People are mocking Jonathan Brooks at 56 to the Cowboys in every single mock. There's a bigger question at 24 than there is 56, it feels like. Below the Below. belt every day at this time. It's the hump day edition hump day. of Sean and RJ with one hour left to go. How Michael Jordan led the Mavericks to another win last night. Final hour with Brett Boone at 920 on your home of the Cowboys and Rangers. 105.3 The Fan. Let's get you healthy, kids. QC.
Turn it on, leave it on with Sean and RJ right here on The Fan. Final hour fist pump time on the Fan Cam, Twitch, and YouTube. I guess we're not well, coming back with the Dallas Mavericks clip. I mean, that spot, you told him to stop fading him out so quick. That that one, he he got it even earlier than that. He didn't even fade it in. Sean Sharif, RJ Choppy, and Bobby Belt, or maybe Peyton was just leaving time for the breaking news. Uh, that we have the Eagles and the Green Bay Packers kicking off the NFL season September 5th in Brazil. This is Brazil! On a Friday. I mean, they're taking over every day of the week. I hate that. I won't be watching it. Why? I mean, I'll watch it on, like, DVR, be at high school football, I'll be yeah. at high school football. Yeah, the league... What, what are you doing for high school football? I go watch high school football. You're just going to go every nights. Friday night? I go, like, half the Friday nights out of the year. That's early in the season. That's a good time to go. Um, they generally have left Friday and Saturday alone, like out of like deference to the high school and the college game. I mean, to this day, they don't start Saturday games till after the college regular season and, um, uh, conference championship games are over. They, they don't even play on Saturdays until that happens. Now they're just trying to squash the little guy. Yeah. Now they're going to high school football, which I mean, look, whatever. I mean, obviously they're the big dog on the block. They do whatever they want. Uh, but it would be nice if they didn't infringe on high school football. Are they just doing football. it once? Yeah, if it's just one time, it's one time. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, it's one that they try to generally, they have left alone, like on purpose, because that you're trying, it's the whole grow the game. And like, they're not yeah. in much of a need to grow the game as, as other sports are, but it's been something that's just like a, don't infringe on the amateur, let them have their space, let them do this. I mean, they're still... It sounds small town in a lot of ways, but I mean, there's still cities here in DFW that essentially shut down on Friday nights. Oh, yeah, yeah. 40, 40 shuts down on Friday night for football. That's the time to go to the grocery store. Friday night. Like, sure. if you're not going to go to the game, like, that's the time to go out and get your stuff done. You want to, you, you'll get a reservation anywhere you want to. You don't even need one. You just walk in. Um, but look, the NFL used to not play Sunday night football games when the World Series was going on. They, they wouldn't they would take that week off and that ended what 10 15 years ago they stopped taking that week off uh I don't know if that's the NFL saying that or that's NBC saying uh yeah let's just let's put the game on we know we can win the rating night let's win the rating night I mean I'm sure it was had the TV company station had a lot to do with it but that's where we are like they're they're just taking over every day we also have Terrell Suggs apparently arrested in Arizona for assault Jail records show the seven-time Pro Bowler, uh, Ravens hype man during the playoff game, was booked late Tuesday night. One account of assault, 
one count of offense against public order. Uh, that is not a dude that I would like to mess with. I was going to say, no. did you ever have any encounters with him when you were doing no. sports out there? I was 90 minutes from Baltimore. Well, Eric DaCosta would come on, though. Yeah. So I didn't know if Terrell Suggs did. Um, No, but, you know, I was mouthpiece for Eric. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so the, yeah, that's right. The players don't talk to you. Terrell did not. Well, except for my DMs. Um, <laughs> Dallas it's Stars on fire, and so is your basketball team. Mavs are up by 18 points. We play... Early in the third. Right back at you. 30 points tonight for Luka. This was a Michael Jordan-esque target for Luka Doncic against Grant Williams. Grant, while leaving here, talking about, oh, you know, the name on the front of the jersey versus the name on the back. He was implying that this was a little bit too much of the Luka show here. And uh, we had shoe gate of Luka's not being worn, being worn, uh, all these different things leading to some what we thought was bad blood, even though Lucas says, no, some people think that we have a bad relationship. We have a good relationship. They hugged it out beforehand, but then Luca goes out to torch Grant Williams and the Hornets for a 39-point triple-double, and in the first nine minutes, 21-5, 7-9 shooting, 5-7 of seven from three. They were up 22 at the half. There was just like just a destruction. Um yeah, I mean, because, like, Grant, like, they led, he, like, idol, not idolized, but he had, like, a big af affinity, affection for Luka coming in here. Uh, and I have no idea, like, you know, they could say whatever they want. I have no idea what their actual relationship is right now. Uh, but that was definitely the pray for Grant game because you, he was going to need all the prayers. It was going to take much more than that uh, for him to have a chance on that one. There is, that was it. When, when Luka uh, targeted you and he targets you, you're, you're going you're gonna to struggle that night. He's going to get his. Honestly, it's last night when this started, I was like, he's scoring. He's scoring 60 tonight. Yeah. Like he, he cooled off significantly as the game went because he started, yeah, seven to nine, like you said there. So he went like six of 16 to close or something like that. There were a couple of heat checks to end the first quarter where he put up a couple threes where he's like, all right, let's see if this goes down. And then, you know, he, he just missed him. But man, I really thought. The way he started that off, I was like, this is going to be one of those 60-point nights where he's just tapped into a Jordan level. Man. I love how vindictive he is. His smile. <laughs> he's so petty. His, sm <laughs> his smile. When he just, like, when he knows he's got it that night and he knows, like, you have no chance, like, he won't look at you angrily. He will just smile at you. And it's like, uh, like the, 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 the Devin Booker smile will be in my brain forever. And he does this now just walk, running down the court like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not tonight, kid. It's amazing. Kristen, you know, I've told you that's that's her hall pass. Luca? Luca. She loves him. She does. But she she doesn't like that. What we're talking about, Sean. She doesn't like that. She she saw a clip of him doing the too small one time when he like got a layup on somebody and yelled too small and stuff like that. She's like, I don't, I don't like the cocky. She's like, I, I don't well, like the cocky. She's married to you? I know. And she we're talking about her, how she's going to get away from me. Remember? We're talking about oh, yeah. who her salvation is. And mm -hmm. she thought it was going to be Luca, but now she's like, eh, cocky. That's not going to work. So... And last night while Grant like came up short on a jumper, I think Luca grabbed the rebound and the mics picked him up going, hell no. Like, <laughs> hell no. You're not going ahead and hitting that. So the Mavericks, uh, they are one win away or one Pelicans loss away from clinching the five spot. They could be no worse than six in the Western Conference. It's looking like a Mavs clips first round and even some Dallas Mavericks teammates are apparently starstruck. Yeah, Daniel Gafford, brand new, brand new guy, one of their big acquisitions. Uh, this was an article over in The Athletic. Tim Cato wrote this one. Uh, Daniel Gafford had told him after the games recently. It was 12 for 12 last night, 26 points. Perfect. It's easy when you're getting all those lobs thrown up to you. Um, after they beat the Rockets the other night, Daniel Gafford was talking to Tim Cato, and he was asking about you know playing with Luke and Kyrie, and he said, you're starstruck. He's like, that's how I think about it. He said, I'm a kid at a candy store playing with these guys and when you hear Luca and Kyrie talk about some of this and how they're they're trying to set guys up and how they're trying to show guys what it means to to win and what it takes to win Kyrie Irving had talked about it specifically after that game as well uh in his media availability he said I know I try to feed and I think Luca does a great job of this too these guys with confidence and the rewards on the other side of that whether they make shots or not we're still going to believe in them and Luke had said afterwards, he said, the chemistry's big. We're on a roll right now. At the, you know, they had that viral photo of them hugging after the game. 
and Kyrie had gotten asked about it. He said, at the end of the game, Luca was like, I'm tired, man. That's why I just hugged him. He left it all out there. He did all that he could. We know how hard we've worked and how much work it took to get to this point of the season. And that's the thing that I think that's really big, it feels like, for Kyrie right now in terms of when we're all trying to figure out, okay, why is it that he's he's assimilating with this roster compared to other spots? It does feel like Cuban or Kid or somebody else, it feels like they've empowered him alongside Luca to play leader more than he's been allowed to at other spots. You know what I mean? Like almost like Luca may be the guy, but Kyrie's the leader. And that mm. it, it almost feels like he's embracing that part of it and is willing to say, yeah, I can be number two when it comes to getting the ball in my hands as long as everybody knows that I'm I'm the alpha and I, I'm, I'm the guy here who, you know, when you need advice on what to do when you need somebody to set the tone that's me and that like i mean luca it seems like is fine deferring to that a little bit like yeah i don't want to lead everybody i i'm gonna have hard ass standards yeah. and the way i want things done but yeah Kyrie can be the the He's gentler the good man. cop too yeah and i that may be why that combination is working right now is it allows both of them to step into what they want luca wants the ball luca wants to be the one Kyrie, it feels like kind of i want to be the leader i want to be the guy that that people look up to I mean, yeah, you can make the case that, you know, you, there's a time where you want the ball in Kyrie's hands, you know, like uh, uh, in certain parts of the game. And and if it gets down to a free throw situation, you know, like end of game, Mavs are up, th you know, two and the other team's fouling, you absolutely want to get the ball to Kyrie. That dude would miss. Certainly don't want the ball in Jabari Smith's hands. <laughs> Odyssey Baseball Insider, Brett Boone. Was that a free throw joke? It was. Brett Boone will be joining us coming up at 920, host of the Brett Boone podcast, an Odyssey original. The Bucks dodged oh. a nightmare moment last night. Giannis getting a little Achilles scare. Uh, I was like, Achilles is trending. And I'm thinking to myself, huh, is it the anniversary of uh, his death, his <laughs> demise, when the arrow went through his heel? Like, what, what was Achilles trending for? Oh, no, of course. It's it's Giannis. Uh, uh, so, yeah, this is, this is a scare because anytime uh, an athlete goes down and they feel that bite, like so, like something's biting you in the back of the leg, you know, you know what that is. That that that's that scare. Uh, but they don't think it's that. They know it's not a, a, a rupture, but they don't think it's going to be anything long term serious. But that's still scary, nonetheless. Because if something's wrong back there, even if it's a slight strain, everything is at risk. Everything's at risk. Uh, Jalen Brunson scored forty again. He's on an absolute tear. Have you seen his AT and T commercial? I have not. No one's no one's watching TV. He's got all the like the little iPads or I don't know some devices all over him, and he's he's just breaking out there in New York. Um, so Jalen Brunson goes off again. Porzingis and Kyrie, by the way, win Player of the Week, and Porzingis had like a nineteen and ten stat line to win it in the Eastern Conference. Eastern Conference stat line. What, what, what a joke of a basketball conference. And then Ant, speaking of jokes, Anthony Davis <laughs> missed a huge Lakers game last night against the Warriors. They lost to Golden State because of a headache and nausea. Nausea or nausea? Nausea. Not na nausea. 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 Nausea, heart heartburn, indigestion. Nausea. I think mean, that's a commercial. Stomach diarrhea. So I don't know if I, I don't know that that's right. Well, you'd think it'd be right in a commercial. Think so. You would think, but I mean, but I how heard would you people know, you know, know the Bronson commercial? I, I've heard people in commercials say Sherbert, too. So Versus? Sherbet. I don't say Sherbet. You say Sherbert? Yes, yeah, Sherbert. Well, you've been throwing a second R in there that doesn't exist in the word. Sherbet? It's spelled S H E R B E T. It's Sherbet. How, what do you say? Yeah, but Farve is F A V R E. So you know what? It's really yeah. English, English language, French. man. Yeah, it, um, it's Sherbet. I, I called it Sherbert until I was like 17. And yeah. then I looked at the thing and I was like, there's no R. In oh. Texas, you say Sherbert. No, no you don't. No, you, yeah, you don't. Do. No. You don't say Sherbert anywhere. I, uh, I, but yeah. like I did. And then I was like, oh, I, I was corrected. And I've. All right, y'all. Well, actually... Do you order Sherbet or Sherbert ice cream? I'm going to say there's a second. Actually, R. I don't think it's ice cream. Look, the. <laughs> The, it's it's not so here's the thing about it it has become such a it has become such a popular mispronunciation that i think in recent years it has been added as like a dictionary like alternate pronunciation of it but it's not it's not how it there is no okay. second r what is sherbet it's what you think sherbet is no i know i know but like you know, sherbet. It sounds like it's it like it's kind of like it's like it a, sounds it's, like it's, ice, it sounds like the unicorn it's of like, ice cream i think of it as like a more ice creamy sorbet it is sorbet. Yeah, it's sorbet. Sorbet only with like more. Which apparely has a second R. 
What are the messages? Two R's or do you guys really go in and say I, I want the shirt? Everyone I know says Sherbert says six yep. oh two, two one four. Sure. That's fine. Everyone's mispronouncing it. It's, it's actually not pronounced Sherbet. Sherbet. <laughs> it's not pronounced Sherbet. All right, Shut let's up. throw. We should. It's we should, Sherbet. We should throw Brett Boone totally off. <laughs> It'll take him. I bet his first response to this is about twenty two seconds. Sherbert or Sherbet. Yeah, uh, I mean technically it is Sherbet, but how people pronounce it is how people pronounce it. I mean. Yeah. Like it's is it caramel or caramel? I mean, it's like there's two R's. Okay, but you're putting an entire or, other, like two I mean, A's, I yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's ask Burt Boone what he thinks of it. <laughs> <laughs> Our Odyssey Charbet. baseball insider: Do the Rangers have a bullpen problem? Let's ask Brett Boone on the home of the champs. I know one thing: they do not have a barbecue problem because of Hurtado Barbecue, the official barbecue.
Frankel.org and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214-817-333-3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there's never an out-of-pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go-to car and truck attorneys in Dallas. For Langoliers, his second home run of the year, the 1-0. Swing and a high fly ball into center field. Laoti going back, still going back to the track. He looks up and it's gone. Langoliers has a two-homer game. This one ties the score at two. Hicksy with the call, and it ended up, of course, being three. Evan Carter could have been the hero with his first home run of the year, but Langoliers has us worrying about Jose Leclerc as the Rangers lose game one to Oakland last night on this radio station. Game two this evening, 6.30 pregame, first pitch at 7 o'clock. We are now joined by the host of the Brett Boone Podcast and Odyssey original featuring the most notable names in baseball and all-around sports every week, Brett Boone on the DNM Leasing Hotline. Brett, you ready for the trivia question of the day? What do you got for me? All right, so Shea Langlers had three home runs last night. Who has more three home run games, you or your brother Aaron, A.A. Ron? I believe we're tied at two apiece. Well done. Wow. Well Do you done. know the years wow. of yours? Um, I can tell you the team. I, I One of mine was, oh, shoot. No, I can't. <laughs> oh. One of mine was against the Reds, and one of mine was against the Chicago Cubs. I know that because it was before the re- – one was in 1998 because it was the year Sammy and and uh, McGuire were slugging it out. I hit The third homer I hit that day was foul but by a good five feet. <laughs> I knew it. I went back to the batter's box. I looked at the umpire. He's signaling homer. I couldn't believe it. I ran around the bases. I'm sitting in the dugout. They're they're getting together, umpires. They didn't have replay back then. I mean, it's clearly foul. And he says, no. Oh. We, we confirmed. The third base umpire confirmed. It's a home run. Wow. And I just, they threw the next pitch and the next hitter. As soon as they do that, it's in the books. And uh, I got away with one. So th- I, I can give you that, but I don't know the team I was on. All right. Well, so- 98, I had to be on the Reds. And then when I did it against the Reds, it had to be Padres or Braves. Okay, so in '98, September 20th, it was my birthday. Well, uh, you did it, do it. You did it for the Reds against the Cubs. And then in 2000, okay, yeah. uh, Padres, it was yeah. Padres uh, and Cincinnati. That was the uh, that was the now game. Were you, June 23rd. Were you definitely trying to hit the third after the first two? No doubt, right? Um, no, it, I guess, I guess it's in your mind, you know, it's in your mind and you're thinking maybe, uh, but, but I, by that point in my career, I'd learned that, you know, I probably hit a, tried to hit a home run in my pro career early on, including the minor leagues, maybe 50 times and maybe once I did it. So it's kind of beating your head against the desk. It's like, do you realize that every time you think that? Or put it in your brain in any capacity. It never happens. And and since then, I'll tell you, 99, 95% of my home runs that I ever hit, it was like you hit it, and I was surprised. Like, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. I'm trying to have a good at bat. So, yes, in that particular situation, I, I think I was thinking, you know, three would be nice. Brett, we uh, we have closer issues uh, with the Rangers. Um, as a <laughs> yes, as a, as a player, is there a is that a helpless feeling when you're a play when you're a position player? And it's like you've done all you can, you hand it over, but you don't know what's going to happen. Yes, but 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 at the same time, I watched it a year ago. We watched this team win a World Series a year ago, and who is the biggest part of that bullpen? Clark and the way he brought it together and just did it time after time after time, and it wasn't always smooth. One, two, three. Um, so, you know, there's, there's some tough sledding for him out of the gate. Obviously the rest of the pen's doing a really good job for him. Um, but this is something he's going to have to work through. I, I, I have to admit a year ago with, because today when that, that postseason especially, it's so long, it's so rigorous. And I was overly impressed what LeClerc did just kind of, kind of merged on the scene and did an unbelievable job. I was I was pleasantly surprised for the Rangers, um, but I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I was, 
like I said, I didn't expect him to be dominant the way he did down the stretch and really be the anchor in that bullpen. He did it. Now we're starting a, a fresh season. You got to do it again. That's why there's not too many top tier bona fide, you know, big time closers out there. It's, it's something that's not easy to do. And, uh, I don't know. Hopefully he'll get through this. Brett, we were talking about earlier today the the idea that, you know, the Rangers have just been ravaged by injuries to the rotation. They're missing spores now. They're missing, you know, half their starting infield. When you look at that, it's easy for, for you know, the team messaging to be next man up, next man up. At some point, though, that, that feels like it's got to take a toll. How tough is that for a clubhouse to just put your head down and say, well, we got to make it work while, while we're missing really key contributors? It's it's a lot easier when you're when you're uh, winning some games. I know they lost three in a row, but you look at that division right now. That that division's off to a real tough start. I, I consider that a real talented division, and you got Texas and Anaheim at the top at six and five. So I think they're looking around that clubhouse, especially with Boach being the head of it. He's going, look, guys, we got a lot of injuries right now, from Jung to you know your Degrom and Scherzer who are a huge part of that rotation, if they get back to the rotation and get healthy, Nathaniel Lowe, Mele, uh, sports, you, you mentioned that at the top. It's like they're doing all this. They're still just fine. It's two weeks into the season. They're sitting at the top of the division, kind of holding serve. I think we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Until you get these guys back, get these guys healthy, if you can just kind of survive and give yourself a chance, you're fine. So in that clubhouse right now, these guys are kind of looking around going, Look how many guys we have injured, and we're still fine. We're atop the division. So I don't think there's any any panic in that clubhouse right now. It's just get through these times, find a way to win some games, and just survive. Because hopefully when you get everybody back, everybody healthy, you're going to be the team that you were a year ago. Uh, I still look at the uh, – in the offensive categories with all the with all the injuries and people being banged up, they're still top across the board like they were a year ago. Pitching's doing fine. Um, you know, with the exception of Leclerc that's had a little bit of a tough time, Bradford's done a nice job. Evaldi has really turned into a, a bona fide number one starter. And they're, they're holding serve right now. And that's, sometimes that's all you can expect to do. This season is so long, 162 games. You can't just start to finish be clicking. Very few years and very, very few special years you do that start to finish. There's dog days where you got to get through some injuries. And you can find a way to get some wins when, when you're down and, and you're not healthy or even close to being healthy like this Rangers team. That's a win for them. Brett Boone joining us on the DNM Leasing Hotline here on 105.3 The Fan. Your thoughts on the Oakland situation and did you dread playing there? <laughs> well, quite the contrary. Uh, everybody thinks, yeah, Oakland, probably if I look at the stadiums now, that and Tampa two worst venues in, in Major League Baseball. They've done such a good job with all these state-of-the-art new ballparks they've built. To be honest with you, I love to go into Oakland because I hit well there. And if you talk to any uh, you know hitter, where you do good, you don't care how bad the city is. You don't care if it's your least favorite hotel. You don't like the food in the city, the people. <laughs> if you get hits, that's your favorite place. So I love going to Oakland. I always hit well there, just like Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay – uh, you're playing in front of, you know, small crowds like you are in Oakland now. Um, but I hit well there, too. So I like both of the what are, what are considered probably the, the bottom two venues in, in all of Major League Baseball. You know, Oakland one time, when I first got to the big leagues in the early 90s, Oakland was beautiful. I mean, it was kind of like a Dodger stadium. They, they, they didn't have that renovated for football, you know, addition. They, it was open from, from uh, home plate. You looked out into the on the horizon and it was kind of like dodger stadium once they converted it into football baseball it kind of took a bad turn now it's just it's just outdated i mean the facility you go in the clubhouse wrigley field and fenway have nicer nicer places Hmm. now than than oakland and and we all know how old those are they're iconic venues but uh even the even the amenities when you get there so yeah it's bad i they're gonna go to sacramento oakland's just in a in a I, I don't know what they are. They're in a free fall. I mean, the organization doesn't know which way it's going. It's got a $40 million payroll. They're going to go play in a minor league stadium next year. I don't even know how that's legal, how you can do that. <laughs> I guess they're going to, you know, I guess they're going to get all the uh, specs up to uh, up to, to status quo for Major League Baseball. You know, there's certain things you have to have. 
certain level of, of quality of lights you have to have. So they have to redo that at a minor league facility. I don't know. For me, it's a mess right now. I, I, I've got a son-in-law that plays on that Oakland A's team. So he well. deals with it on a daily basis. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Do, do you think – you'll hear musicians in the comics say they love going back to their roots, playing in dive bars every now and then. Just you know, Do you think opposing players, visiting players – that have been in the league for 15 years might actually like going to a minor league stadium and just say, hey, this is kind of cool. It's a novelty. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, there's just some the big leagues is, is you know, just, just the grounds crew alone. Now, if the Oakland A's are playing there, I'm sure they're going to bring their grounds crew with them. But that's the one thing that's, that's, awesome about the big leagues versus the minor leagues now in in recent years the minor leagues have gotten much better and are much uh much better maintained than they used to be but a big league field you walk out there and it's just every piece of grass is in place they've got 15 guys that are full-time maintenance guys that work on the field to get that but uh, you know, I never like going back to a minor league field. The, the backdrops usually were under, you know, they didn't they didn't kind of live up to snuff. So the the big right handed pitcher, his his arm would come over the backstop in the white sky, mm. and he'd lose the ball. I didn't like anything about going to a minor league venue. But I'm sure if the A's are going to go there, they're going to make sure everything's up to snuff as far as quality, uh, uh, big league level quality. Brett, the story that has uh, taken over Major League Baseball this week are the pitching injuries. Your thoughts on it? You talk to a lot of people, obviously, with your podcast. Your thoughts on it and a possible solution? It is amazing. And and I've, I've been banging my head against the desk. Why did, does everybody, and it seems like it's a daily thing. I mean, just recently, Pavetta, Valdez, they go down. You know, um, Strider, Beaver are the, are the headliners this year that have gone down. Uh, Giolito, I mean, the list goes on and on. Bautista, Hendricks, two of the, the big-time closers in Major League Baseball. And it's kind of become an epidemic. And, I, and I've been thinking about it. You know, is it how they train in between in between starts? I had uh, Rick Griffin, who's a long time. He was, he was my trainer in, in Seattle. He did it for 30 years. And, and, and he has his thoughts. I've talked to teammates of mine that – they come up, well, they throw this heavy ball now, and we used to throw the heavy ball, but they really train with the heavy ball. You know, a couple of my teammates think that's the problem. Here's what I think. I've listened to doctors, and, and that's where I'm going to. I think the way we're brought up now as young kids, and, and the, the youth of today is brought up where – you're, you're, you're pitching in a little league game and you're allowed to throw X amount of pitches. And then if you, if you hit that limit, you can't pitch for four days. Well, what these kids are doing is they'll throw that, then their parents will take them to a travel ball team mm -hmm. the next day and they'll throw 70 pitches. Yep. We're doing it too much as kids. And I think it's finally catching up with us at the big league level. Back in the day, the big league level, the Tommy John, number one uh, culprit for the Tommy John was major league baseball pitchers. Then it turned into major league baseball and minor league pitchers. Now, youth, the young kids getting Tommy John, is, is they're the number one candidate, uh, not major league pitchers, not minor league pitchers. So I think it's just, it's finally come home to roost the, the way we're playing at the younger level, the way these guys that... 10, 11, 12, quit all the other sports, and they just they just pitch year-round as a 12-year-old. And and I don't think that's conducive to, to, to your growth plates or whatever. I don't want to pretend like I'm a doctor here. I'm not. I just think the way we bring these kids up now and tell them, you know, travel ball, and you got to play on this team, and you play year-round you if you want to be the best. Well, let me tell you something. I, I think you're born a major league player. I think you're born with that level of ability. And I think all the practice in the world, if you, if you don't have that big league ability as an 11-year-old, you're not going to be a big leaguer. So I, I, I go back to I've always thought about this is let kids be kids. Let them play all sports, find out what they're passionate about. Let them enjoy their childhood and, and be a kid. You only get to go through it once. And, and I sadly to say, I think these, these injuries at the top, top level start started when these kids were young because that's how they, they train and that's how they come up now. Uh, in the sports community. Brett, there is an ice cream or sorbet that starts with a sure. <laughs> How do you say the whole word? Sherbert. Sherbert? Like two R's, right? Sherbert. Yeah. Sherbert. Sherbert. What, what are you going to say? It's not. Well, there's sorbet. Yeah, there is a sorbet. 
orange or orange sherbet. Yeah, that's all we needed. Absolutely, absolutely. Why? What do we got going in? in it, it's not, not it's not it's not spelled with a second <laughs> R, so we're fighting over because a lot of people say sherbet, oh, but it is uh, spelled sherbet. Absolutely sherbet. Well, I'm, I grew up in New Jersey. It's absolutely sherbet there. I, I, I know there's <laughs> words that that change as you go across county lines, but I'm going to stick with sherbet. Pork roll or Taylor ham? Taylor ham. <laughs> Pork roll. There it is. There it is. There it is. Spam <laughs> and sherbet. That's what's covered on the home of the world champs. I've, ne- I've never met anybody that says sherbet. Exactly. I have an orange sherbet. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Exist. Just say Bobby's an idiot. Brett, Bobby, I, mean, I wouldn't do that, Bobby. Come on, Brett. Brett, Brett, thank you so much, <laughs> brother. I'm too good of a guy. We'll talk to you next time. Fantastic. That is Brett Boone, Odyssey Baseball Insider. He joins us every other hump day. Okay. And he's the host of the Brett Boone Podcast and Odyssey Original. Make sure to follow the Brett Boone Podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. Crosstalk with KMC is next. Let's get you over to K-Post Roofing and Waterproofing, the official
105.3 The Fan segment here brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. It is now time for Crosstalk with the KMC Masterpiece. That's not Mike for once with the... <laughs> Bag oh, open. Mike's not going to like that either. He does not like people eating crunchy food around him. That's right. Assuming he's not eating crunchy. Yeah, he has to be eating tortilla <laughs> chips. No, that's true, right? Yeah, he said if you're chips. eating, if I'm eating, if food, I'm eating chips and you're eating chips, I'm okay. If you're eating chips and I'm not eating chips, it drives me insane. Is that why you hate uh, RJ biting his nails because it's crunchy? Oh, I just think that's disgusting, that. and I mean, but will you eat? You ruin chips your nails. Yes. On the air, <clears throat> like coming back from the break, only when Sandler's crying. He was opening. During breaks, if I have some Cheetos or anything, like if I have celery and I'm crunching on it, Mike gets up and walks out and he'll he'll stand outside the window and and just stare. But then why can you do it? Because it doesn't bug me. (laughs) (laughs) Is Do do pitchers not bite? A lot of pitchers not bite their nose. They want them long. You literally can't. No, you don't want them long. Right. Oh, you don't? No, you want them manicured and short. But, but biting your biting nails, nails, would you get, get like a manicure? Yeah, do a lot no, of pitchers get no, manicures? Just, uh, no, but that purpose? you just make sure that your nails are are like manicured a- yourself. You just clip them, but you cannot have jagged fingernails pitching a baseball. It's You just can't. So use the emery board and you just... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was driving me crazy at 6 o'clock. Like, and it drives me crazy in general when people are eating or drinking on the air you can do it and get away with it and time it out but what in the break are you okay with it and everything cr- yeah man, i'm not i mean i can't tell you when to anyone when to eat or drink but they can eat and drink whenever they sure want tries. i just have to leave the room yes my w- wife knows like that too like she can't sit down so and watch a kids, show right? with me yeah i'll just be like i can't watch the show with while the you guys crunch yeah wow i just have wow. to leave adrian was like that when she was pregnant moody Oh. Yeah, that too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, if you if if she heard chomping anything, she would just be like, you "Gotta stop." But just while pregnant, dude, I was eating a Snickers bar across the other room, uh, side of the room, and she was just like, "You gotta." How go. did she hear that? She well, she has a keen sense of smell, and whenever you're pregnant, you can you hear get better. superpowers. Yeah, you get superpowers. But that know. doesn't affect the hearing, the annoyance of the. Crime. No, no, yeah, she can hear better too. That's the, the superpowers, pregnancy powers, is what we call them. You can hear better, you can see better. Everything's just more on high alert. Yes. What's up with your hearing, Sean? What's up with it? Yeah. Like, yeah, what is up with it? I have great hearing. Great vision and great hearing. Yeah. Then why? I'm going to warn everybody right now. Why, when I, if I plug my headphones in, it'll be like, welcome to 105. You you do keep it very loud. You're saying I talk loud or my headphones are loud? Your headphones are are so Uh, loud. Um, oh, my, I think my wife would probably say, I, have a hearing issue. Is You've that been in this business for a listen? I or... you know, no, I like she's like the the volume always has to be up on the TV. It's really loud. Is it? And that's again. I, I don't know what it is because Kristen like so she heard uh, Adrian heard you chewing. Amanda thinks you have stuff too loud. Kristen is always like I'm like this is a normal volume. Kristen's like why is the TV so loud? I don't know what it is. Just like wives I guess have like hearing sensitivity. I don't know. I'm glad I'm we just, got that all out there. Let me hear yours. Switch me. We got to switch now. These headphones. Now, also I think it's are... really nice too. Choppy will turn the volume all the way down before he unplugs, like so that when I plug my oh, th- that's what yeah, the volume is. Yeah, I just keep it very low. My, mine's really low too. Yeah. I have a very low, and that's because I'm afraid. <laughs> Sean's pushing them you into his You ears. can't hear. Can't I can't hear, hear them. That's, I know. That, oh, I'm concerned for yeah, you. Wow. I'm I'm concerned. Those big old pancakes on the side of your head Peggy. right now. Hey. Yeah, I can't hear it. Peggy, come see if mine are too loud. Oh I get to my gosh, this is. Captivating radio. I no, don't know. I have no clue at all. No, it's not. What's coming up on the show? Guys, to start the show, what was the biggest deal from last night? Stars win, Mavs win, or we need a new closer? And then at 1020, Ooh. from the mind of me and Ladanian Tomlinson, has your boss ever been out to get you? So we'll get into that at 1020. And Bruce Bochy, the Rangers manager, joins us at 1220 today, where Mike will ask him, do we need a new closer? Mike, do we need a new closer? For now. With your mic on. For now, Put your chips away. Yes, I would. Giving this away, but I'm saying it now. I would move Leclerc to a sixth, seventh inning role for now. Yeah. He's a streaky closer. He's always been a streaky closer. It'll take him about three appearances, three good appearances, and usually he'll put up a zero ERA. 
I'll use this. Last night, what happened after he walked a hitter that's really not a major threat to tie the game and then gave up a home run? What happened the next two batters? Threw great. Mm. The pressure was off. Yeah. The well, game the game yeah. was now somewhat obviously lost. You were hoping your team could come back. Sure. Then he executed his pitches. So I, I think that he needs less stressful situations. This is who Jose Leclerc has been his whole career from 2017 to 2024. Is he's a streaky relief pitcher. So for me, Bochi's way smarter than me. We'll see what happens. Hopefully the Rangers have a chance to win the game tonight late in the game. I'd love for him to be up by five or more. But if it's a one to three run game, I'm using Leclerc today, but I'm using him in the sixth or seventh inning. And, and I'm going to do it about three times. And usually when he goes well for three times in a row in a less stressful situation, usually then he will start pitching well yeah. if you need to move him to the closing situation. But at this point, I'm moving David Robertson into the closer. He can do it. He's done it for a long time. And then I'm moving LeClerc into a sixth, seventh inning role. And that I think right now you're going to have to rotate closers throughout the year. This is a decade-long thing with the Rangers. It's been going on since Nathan. since Joe Nathan left. And whoever's named the closer in spring training can't get the job struggle. done yeah. early on in the season. I think LeClerc will close some games for the Rangers this year. But I would move him off of that role right now, knowing that I'm probably going to have to move him back. And then knowing if I'm Chris Young, hey, I probably need to just start thinking about June and July if I need to make a trade for yeah. somebody that I think can really shut down that ninth inning and on a more consistent basis. And I tell you this, if Mason Miller's available for the Oakland Athletics, I don't know if anybody's ever going to get a hit off him the rest of his life. That was the that was some of the greatest stuff I've ever seen in my life yesterday when he closed out the game for Oakland. Wow. He's probably going to have 30 opportunities to close a game this year. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. was one of them. But I'm looking at a dude who's young, who has 5 to 6 years Team that control. you can control him. And the Rangers, for and he's from Central Nowhere United States School of Nothing. I was like looking him up. He was a third round pick. I was like, where is this school or whatever? Huh. And I'm like, where are our guys? Where's our third to fifth round picks that all of a sudden we develop into 102 mile an hour gas ballers that nobody can hit? And yep. so if we can't do it, if the Rangers can't develop Mason Millers, then trade a lot of your prospects. I'm not saying like a, trade multiple guys. That you're just like, we struggle to develop this dude. Let's just trade a lot of our quantity for that one dude. And for the next five years, we have a dude throwing 102 who looks unhittable. Waynesburg University. Yeah. You guys have been, yeah. Gardner Webb, I know. That's where he went fifth year. But okay. I never, yeah, Waynesburg. That's in, I you guys know. excited for Jackson Holiday and reset what he's supposed to be? As the Orioles call it, I'm the top rookie prospect. of the year, right? Not excited because he's trying to get in the way of us going one, two, and rookie of the year. That's a first round pick. Do you know that? What number win, one? He was the number one pick. No, right? if one. you win rookie of the year, like Gunnar Henderson did last year for Baltimore, and you're they had to call him up now. Like it, it is, yeah. it is the time. If you didn't call him up now and he wins rookie of the year, you don't get an extra first round pick. So they they're trying to not the Pitts, time. Pittsburgh doesn't care, right? They're going to hold Skeens back another couple weeks to make sure he does not qualify for a full year. So they have him for 7 years and not 6. But Baltimore looked at it. So at the end of the first round, after it's over, if your guys on the team for 170 days out of the 185 and they win rookie of the year, after the first round is over, your organization gets the next pick. So wow. they get like pick number 1 of the sandwich round. Pretty much. That's He's, a great way to And make then if sure you get that. second place or third place, you get extra international spending money. So if the Rangers were to finish one and two in rookie of the year this year because Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford were on the team all year, you would get an extra first round pick pretty much after the first round is over. And you would also get hundreds of thousands of extra dollars to spend on a Dominican uh, player pretty much. And get the mass first round pick. Uh, <laughs> holiday torching. In spring training, 10 games. You mean in minor leagues? Uh, excelled in spring training, yes. Okay. But was sent to the minors. That's what I get for making fun of you. 333, <laughs> 482, 595 with two home runs, nine RBI, Ooh. five doubles, 12 walks against eight strikeouts. Wow. Is that good? He's supposed to be legit. He is supposed to be the truth, man. I one think pick. everybody's going to be shocked how little he is. Oh. You think of Matt Holiday as this beast. He was 6'3", 235. Yeah. 
And his son, he has two sons. The other son's really good, too. I think he's in high school and going to be drafted very high, too, here pretty soon. But he's 5'10", 185? Dude, they have this. I, I, I mean, he, he looks small. Their indoor batting cage they have at their place in Colorado looks stupid. It looks like like this is like if you were going to grow up like this. Oh, man. It's giving me just you're making me. It's making me. You know what? Corey, did uh, Bobby ask you our pronunciation te- uh, question of the day? Oh, n- no. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> the sorbet like dessert that begins with sure is called what? Sherbet. Yes. As a kid, I said Sherbert. I said Sherbert. it wrong. I said it Sherbert as a kid, too. Yeah. Mike. Now. Then I became an adult. I and say I Sherbert, and I don't care. Like, all right. Everybody knows what you're talking about. You're not <laughs> yes. going so, to go to Baskin Robbins. Like, I don't know what you want. Or you're not going to go to Brahms. They're like, hey, I want I want a cone with orange Sherbert and lime Sherbert. They're going to be like, we don't have that. <laughs> we only have the the sure bit. That's not crunchy enough. I know. I ran out. As I should have saved him as soon as I didn't know Mike was. I just leave. There. It's fine. If you want to do it, it's fine. I just leave. <laughs> I feel like there's there's got to be a word though in the language of America or English. Oh my god. Um, because what is America's language? The uh, that we say English. That Mike would be like, look, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know what I'm saying, and it like really would matter. Like I, I can't think of the scenario. Never mind. I'll write it in a movie one day. Yeah, we had we had our ending in you. That was I did it today, man. You butchered it. Me and my cheesy ass. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Stop you get doing your, that. Show me your meat. That's what you get. For <laughs> Thank you, Pepe. We're out. We'll Pepe talk to you tomorrow morning. Sir. I have a text for you. Oh. Hey, miss anything on Sean and RJ?
Extra Paste, KNC Style, right here on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. What was the biggest deal from last night? 877 881 Was it the Mavs winning? Was it the Stars winning? Or was it the Rangers needing a new closer? What do you think was the biggest deal? 877-881-1053, franklinfirm.com, text line. You want to get involved? Also want to hear from you on the Twitch, on the YouTube? I think I have the Send most important pigeon. answer to your question, Kevin. And that is, it was not the Mavs winning, and it was not the Stars winning. Okay. It was definitely the Rangers situation. All right, let's fire off cut number four, then. This is what Corey wants you to hear this morning. The pitch is swung on. There's a drive to deep left center field. That is way back, and that ball is gone. Home run number three of the night for Shea Langoliers. He has put the athletics in front four to three. How about that for the local product, huh, from Keller? Yeah, Played my, for the Arlington A's growing up. I can't say I'm super now he's pumped on, for him. Now he's on the Oakland A's. Why not? Because Went to Baylor. we lost. That's really cool, though, that the local kid did no! it. You know? No! I mean, if anybody's going to no. hit three home runs, it needs to be a local kid. Yeah. Like when Bobby Witt Jr. comes here, are you hoping he breaks the record of Shea Langoliers? No, and four? I'm not. Are you? I do have a lot of Bobby Witt Jr. cards. <laughs> what if Shea's family is listening right now? And they are. And they're like, I used to like Kevin. I'm glad yeah. I'm glad that your son's awesome at baseball. I wish it did not come against the Rangers. That yeah. feels like a reasonable take. Just one game. Yeah, man. It's not like we're on a losing yeah. streak. You No, you are we the World Series. on a losing streak. That's true. We're but you told me, Kevin, we did a segment that we held for almost a month called What's Your Favorite Part About Defending the Title? And you said that no matter what happens, I can absorb anything with we won the title. That you is can true. absorb any loss. We've lost two straight to the to the Houston Astros and now one to the A's. That's three straight losses. I guess I did not anticipate I thought this was gonna come to a head against Astros fans. Uh, I'd be okay. like, yeah, we won the title. I didn't think that one A's fan was gonna be like, ha ha, <laughs> you lost last night. There are a lot of A's fans there. They were for, all from Keller, I think. <laughs> uh, the reason I say this, though, Kevin, is because I don't think the game against Charlotte last night, like, in the grand scheme of things, you needed it, but that was one of those three that I was looking at down the stretch here that I was like, that's an easy game. That's an easy win right okay, there. Yeah, sure. So I expected the Mavericks to do that. Luka made sure he was assertive early. He was hot early, and he was like, guys, I don't really want to play this game. We'll get into more of that conversation a little later on on where I think that's going. And then the Stars, like... Okay, they they came back and won. They needed that win. But I, th- I think the Rangers' place here is we have a real problem. It is a real problem. And it needs we got we got to find a solution at some point. But here's the thing: we said this last year all year. <laughs> Bochi is really good at figuring out bullpens. True. He will figure it out at some point. There was a fan during the post game show. We go to commercial, and I would say he probably uh, enjoyed a few beverages at the game. And he was like, Bochi never does good after winning the World Series. <laughs> and he was like, really? like." And I was like, hey, because we were at commercial and there was nobody around. And I was like, the Rangers blew more games last year than any team in the history of baseball yep. that went over 500. Yep. Like, literally, we're repeating the exact same thing that, that LeClerc did last year, You're that right. Hernandez did last year early in the year. Like, literally, somehow they went 40 and 20, and I can't tell you out of the first 20 losses how many were blown saves. But so I, I'm going to guess, and this might be too high, 50% of the 20 losses were blown saves. They yeah. might have been 50 and 10 if they would have saved every possible yeah. game to start the year. I don't know what it is with the Rangers. I don't know why the history of the Rangers for a decade now is whoever the closer is out of spring training struggles to start the season, to hold on to the job, and you have to start making adjustments. So I do think the Rangers are going to need to make an adjustment right now, and they're going to have to use a committee of closers. Yeah, uh, I don't think this is fixable my opinion and Boach knows LeClerc and Robertson and Yates those are your three candidates right now because Spores is hurt he will understand how to possibly use those guys way better than I would but I do think you're going to have to now make an adjustment starting tonight if it's a one two or three run game 
I do think you're going to have to make an adjustment and take LeClerc out of that pressure situation of the ninth inning and move him to earlier in the game. And then, you know what? Two weeks from now, maybe LeClerc's your closer again. I, it's not the ideal situation. You do not want this situation, but the Rangers just proved last year they had four closers. Yes. And with four closers during the season, going into the playoffs, you didn't feel good about your eighth, ninth inning situation. You won the World Series. And when Bruce Bochy says you don't panic, I definitely agree with that. But I don't think making an adjustment like this is necessarily panicking. But I do want to ask him that because he might be like, I disagree. I think that is panicking. We're going to leave him right where he is. And I'll be like, okay, well, you've won a lot of World Series. I trust you. Yeah, and, you know, he has good conversation. He's always fair with us when we have talks I with think him, so. too. From the 806, that's why I'm surprised and kind of disappointed Chris Young didn't do more to address the bullpen issues. I trust him and Bochy to fix it, but should have been addressed better in the offseason. They they got a bunch of pitchers with experience that have done the job before. Right? With with Yates and with Robertson. They they got they yeah. added some arms to it. Actually, the more we got into it, I was like, man, and there we have the like the Arenas or Arena. 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 Uh we have in in uh uh Yuri Rodriguez. We have we have guys that can potentially do it. They just gotta figure that out too. And then you gotta find that right. That right mix of it. Because I don't think anybody expected Spores would be the guy he was in the playoffs. Right. So it may be. I guess I was kind of hoping for that, but you're right. Well, no, no, no. I mean, th I, last year. Yeah. This year, I because last year I had no clue what oh, to yeah, expect yeah, from yeah. Spores. This year I was hoping, okay, we've turned the corner when our, we're on our way. But maybe there is one of those things where he's working with somebody else that we don't know about that's going to eventually turn into that. Maybe it's all the mind games, Kevin. Maybe it's mind games that he's playing with all of them. Look, I, I do think that Robertson and Yates could address that need. So going after the, if you're saying because you didn't get Josh Hader, like I understand that, but take a look at how that started. I, I do think in Robertson and Yates, you have viable candidates. And I, Mike, like you, I am very interested to see when they get an opportunity. Because I believe it's a matter of when and not if. Yes, I'm with you. I, I believe the same thing. <sighs> I'm I don't know exactly they're gonna have to figure something out now, but they can't make a trade. I remember last year. I mean, I feel like I'm having the same conversation again. <laughs> and I hope we have all the same conversations. And I hope on November 1st, I'm opening up candy while Jared Sandler's crying <laughs> because we won another World Series. But I'm, I feel like I'm having the same conversation with us, which because it's similar. And then I'm going to have the same conversation with fans. No, you can't trade for a closer today. That they're not available. Sure. I, I I mean without just getting destroyed yeah, in the value. The fastest you could trade for one last year, the Rangers did when they got Araldis Chapman and Will Smith was doing great at the time. They just needed depth and a just in case. And then he ended up closing some games. And then he ended up not being able to do it. And then they went back to LeClerc and he was able to figure it out in the end. So the Rangers are gonna have to go through this. Chris Young is gonna have to go through this again. I do think he did as much as he could. In the offseason, he did have a limited budget. Yeah. Based off of the TV situation that the Rangers are dealing sure. with, he had a limited budget on what he could do. Yates and Robertson have been awesome. Yeah. Now, I get Robertson gave up a solo home run to tie the game last he night. He was really frustrated with himself in yeah. the post. And, but he came in with first and third two outs and got a big strikeout yeah. to, to keep the game where it's at. Then he did give up a solo home run. Uh, but so far, Yates and Robertson pretty much can't pitch better than you can pitch. So those have been two so far very good pickups. And I do think now they're going to be asked to close some games as LeClerc gets back into his groove. And I think he will. I've seen it before. Somehow he goes to a lesser role, throws three games where he puts up zeros. Right. His ERA goes down to 2-5. Jared Sandler tweets it out. And then he goes back to a closer's role and starts doing pretty good. And then he goes on a streak where it's not good. And then he goes back to the role of sixth, seventh inning, then does great, then goes back to the closer role. Like, I, this is his career. Just to hammer home the statistical side of what you were saying about Robertson and Yates, Yates has allowed one hit, no runs in his four innings pitch early in the season. And then Robertson, that was his first mistake in five games as a ranger he'd been mistake free since yeah. then and so you are talking about like almost nine innings of we gave up this run i'm gonna disagree though with Corey. 
I actually had the order of stars because it looks like they're going to get the one seed in their division. And then... And conference too, right? Because they'll have a better record yes. than the other division, so they they're going to get track they're going to get yes. the ice on their side uh-huh. in yeah. Dallas that's for the playoffs. You need. You need so ice. I say that's one because we're coming to a close there. Two, I had the Mavs because they're in the real playoffs. They did it. They yes. made the real playoffs, they did. and because there's 151 games with left with the Rangers, I felt like there is an issue with the Rangers right now. But there's 151 games to get to where. The Stars and the Mavs are, so I'm very proud of where the Stars and Mavs, what they've done here for the last month. See, I think I fell in with the Stars on this as well because I I realized the Mavericks clinched the real playoff spot and the Stars didn't technically clinch anything last night, but... They did get really, really, really close, and they had another come-from-behind victory. And so they're on the precipice of whether it's the now-surging Winnipeg Jets or Colorado. They're they're almost to the point where they're going to outlast both of them. They're in a really good position to end up with more points than Vancouver. And like Mike said, take home ice for all of the Western Conference playoffs. And yesterday was a big step against a team that you should have beaten, Mm -hmm. but... The come from behind nature of it made it fun. Yeah, I guess that's where that's just kind of the you should. I guess every team should have beaten the teams they played against yesterday, right? Every I, yes, like you yeah. should beat yes. Charlotte. You should. I beat, agree with that. Yeah. So all those were should have beaten, and I guess maybe I'm just connected to the team that has the most recent championship. And Buffalo was probably, I guess, the best of the bunch, and they're not that great. Yeah. So so that's where I, where I was on that. But man, yeah, I, I was I was a little concerned to start things off in that in that game, but then. All of a sudden, the stars do or they, they they just are in a good place right now. They're they're in a good mental headspace. We have some cuts from Craig Ludwig that will play here at eleven o'clock that I think are really interesting. But they're in a really good headspace and health space at the moment too. Man, and that game that game ended up way different than I thought it was going to because within the first, I think the combined first nine shots, there were three goals given up, and it just looked like. Oh dear, we're we're in for a track meet, and then that was it. That was it for Buffalo. They scored twice on their first five shots, and we'd been talking so much about how well Ottinger had played and everything. And I was like, man, this is not the start that you're going to look for. And I realized that offense, maybe across the board, was sluggish after that in terms of even getting shots on goal in this game, but. No more giving up for Ottinger. That is eight straight wins. That is a career high. Okay, I I wanted to ask you your thoughts on the importance of eight straight wins and that being a career high for him. Do you think he thinks about that? Do you think that's in in his mind at all? Or do do you think that that's just a guy that's just riding a hot streak? I might be in the minority on this. I think it does. Because he had come back from injury before the All-Star break, right? And he looked at times kind of clunky going into the All-Star break. And coming out of the All-Star break, you're like, okay, hold on, here we go. And it looks like you built up some momentum. And then towards the end of February, you hit a tough spot again. Oh, no. (laughs) That's pretty much what it felt like. And so I think he, I don't know if he's like thinking about the eight straight necessarily as much as he's like, I'm stacking on you know, quality start after quality start after quality start. So maybe not necessarily the win part of it, but quality start after quality start after quality start. I realize if you want to argue about the Colorado game, but they scored all the goals in the world to win that one. That, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text Turco and and see kind of what what his thoughts are on something like that because the goalies, goalies are a lot like pitchers, right? Where they're weird. They're off their own little thing all sure. the time. You ever watch soccer goalies? And like their workouts are a thousand times more difficult and physical than the guys who are actually running around kicking the ball, getting all the glory, because uh, they're having to get beat up. Because soccer guys dive on, you know, for balls and all that stuff. So I am kind of curious they have if big gloves, yeah, big huge Mickey Mouse mitts and stuff like that. So Catch I'm, the ball, yeah. stop batting it. I'll ask Marty what what his thoughts are on when you're in a hot streak as a netminder. And part of that hot streak, with the exception of the Colorado game. All of the seven others, he has given up, Ottinger, that is, has given up two or fewer goals and had a save percentage of nine or five, nine oh five or better. And that's, you're going to need good. That's a good. lot. Yes, the save percentage could still be a little bit better. But giving up two or fewer goals because of the stingy defense in front of you as well, that'll work every single time. 
for the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Coming up next, from the conspiratorial mind of Corey Majors and LaDainian Tomlinson, has your boss ever been out to get you? 877-881-1053. We'll do that next on The Fan. Has your testosterone ever...
This segment of the KNC Masterpiece is also brought to you by Window Nation. It's brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. And it's brought to you by Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first. That's 214-817-333-3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there's never an out-of-pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. That's Frankel and Frankel, the go-to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. Now, this segment has been brought to us and constructed by Mr. Corey Majors. We're going to get to the point of, has your boss ever been out to get you? Yes. Obviously, I think. Well, I wasn't going to say him. Oh. But I think the answer is yes for me. How did we get to this point? To Of wondering if our boss is out to get us or not? Not this boss. Oh. But just ever, if you've had a boss out to get you, why did you talk to Ladanian Tomlinson and he led you in this? I direction? did not talk with oh, Ladanian Tomlinson. Okay. Is this is a uh, this is Ryan Clark's? Uh, is it is this his podcast, The Pivot, or is it just is the Pivot just the okay? It's Ryan Clark's uh, podcast, The Pivot, and I think he has some really good stuff. Uh, Ladanian Tomlinson is an interesting character, man. One of the best running backs we've we've gotten to see. Sure, uh, and to hear. Him, he's he's talking about a very specific game where he's like, how did how did that happen? And then this guy gets this opportunity afterwards. So he's talking about it's Cam Cameron, who was the uh, was the offensive coordinator for them at the time. And this was the year they went fourteen and two and lost fantastic. to the Patriots. They I think, were a in the fantastic playoffs. team. And granted. A lot of times when you play the Patriots in the playoffs, you walk away from it going something. There's conspiracy around everything, right? But there's, I think this is a really interesting approach from LaDainian Tomlinson. Let's dive a little deeper into that, okay? <laughs> yeah, like, okay. It, you went from you know, Marty. we've had time to process it and think about certain things. You went from Marty to North Turner. But, right? but remember, who's the offense coordinator? You guys remember at that time? Cam Cameron. Oh, don't say that. Did, did he not Mary. get, what What job did he get right after we lost? He came and be my head coach, and that is terrible. <laughs> so, in my mind, did we just throw the game for a head coaching job? Ooh. Did so, we just? So you so you say get, let's finish now. If we lose now, I get to go take my interviews. I get to go take a job. You play football a certain way. If you're up by eleven, mm-hmm. or if you're up in the second half, Freddie T, what are we doing? Tote that thing. We told that thing. Yep. How do I not get the ball? Lorenzo mm-hmm. said, uh, Lo Neal said that if you'd have got it more in the second half, y'all win the game. And that's why I said we have all had a chance to think about this stuff, process it, and the fact that, you know, someone gets it right after we lose. Guys, I appreciate everything. You know, you guys play hard for me. I'm going to take this Miami job. What? That That is a tough thing. Not tough for Cam. Cameron, right? Sure. I, he's got to, He gets to go be a head coach now. Uh, but, w- like, this is, as you listen to that, they believe they have the game sewn up. And this goes back to also Bill Callahan against against uh John Gruden in the Super Bowl. Tim Brown came on our air, Kevin, when he we did. were a night show, and he was like, Hey, I still believe to this day we threw out our entire game plan and we were we knew we were this kind of team, and then all of a sudden we're like, let's run the ball. And it changed everything and we lose the Super Bowl. I, these guys I think about that with the 28 to 3 Super Bowl but I don't necessarily have the link of then this person took this job or got a hush money yeah. payment from the Patriots yeah so. and well and the Bill Callahan thing obviously is he coached with Gruden he was yeah. friends with him and he he got to him somehow this one is yeah coach gets a job Kevin I will connect this to Dan Quinn 877 877-881-1053 Text in. Oh my god. I want to see how many people out I there. I do not because I saw this. it on Twitter. I've seen it on our fan text. How many people think that Dan Quinn went into that game against Green Bay and was like, I'm gonna go be a head coach somewhere else. I don't need to focus on Green it's Bay. It's not zero. Thank you. Thank That's, you, Rachel. I, I am not in agreement with that, I'm not but saying, I do think you're right. I'm not that it's saying not with zero. you, Kevin, but it's not zero. Uh, you're right. You're right about that. I'm not Did saying it's McCarthy it was. do the same thing on offense? <laughs> they were pretty poor there too. Well, he already had a head coaching job. So 
So why did he put up zero points until it was twenty-seven to zero and call interceptions? Yeah, maybe he was hoping that his defense could really could be better and stop him. But that's what? yeah. Hey, man, okay. they they had been playing games where the, their, their defense, defense had been really good, early yeah. in the early in games was keeping them in it, and then they were able to figure it out second quarter, second half. So I, I again, I'm saying that's not my feeling, but a lot of people were very frustrated because Dan Quinn was just like it. He just threw the papers up in the air and was like, I'm done. I'm out of here, guys. It's time. So this is Lord Ladanian Tomlinson played in the game, Mike. He thinks I, that his head, own coach called a bad game plan and then left him. I understand that it can happen. Ooh. Obviously, there's a lot of Cowboys that feel like after a few weeks into, I forget which season it was, that Jason Garrett decided to hold back tremendously, knowing that if this keeps going this way, Wade Phillips is right. gone and I'm the head coach. Right. And it worked out that way for him. I don't know if it's true or not. I Obviously, I've always hated the, Mike, I've always hated the, Coaches can interview for jobs before the Super Bowl's done. And I understand the whole process of you got to start building your team. You got to start getting that situated and everything. Dan Quinn took, what, eight months to figure out if he was going to get a head coaching job, though. Right. So I don't. I really do think there is a loose connection here. But Man, and somebody threw out, what about when Avery Johnson was like, I know we won 67 games, but let's go small. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is a weird one. But though I've never really liked that, hey, yes, we can start interviewing coaches and – not only it be a distraction all week for them while they're getting their game plans together for whoever the opponent is, we can go ahead and interview coaches and make up the mind that, yeah, they're going to be coaches for us, and either I'm going to replace my coordinator this week or he, I have to expect that he's going to be focused all week on the game plan because that's just what coaches do. I, I would always say wait till the offseason, but this is LaDainian Tomlinson sitting back going, hold on. Man, after really thinking about this, we just abandoned what we were really good at, and that was running the ball late in games with a big lead, and we could have won that game and done something different. Reggie, you said the answer was not zero. It is definitively yeah. not zero from the two one zero. Dan Quinn, sure, rage quit that playoff game. Why was Donovan Wilson playing single high from the 817? I do believe Quinn had already quit, but so did Demarcus Lawrence because he was tired. Uh, from the 817, that's why Dan Quinn ran zone D against. Man, I had no idea. Again, it's, everybody did say. I don't think that. Everybody but. did say that Dan Quinn, and Dan Quinn admits, he did things differently in that game than he did all season. They changed some things up because they thought their the way they matched up with Green Bay was would be helpful with what he was going to run. The first drive, 12 play, 75 yards. There was a big penalty there, I believe, by Delon, yes. Deron Bland to keep the situation alive. That was horrible defense. I will give... Horrible defense to start the game. Then Dak Prescott throws a pass to CeeDee Lamb, and they're all yelling at each other to start the game yep. off to punt. Then you get six plays, 28 yards, you get Green Bay to punt. So in that situation, I guess our defensive coordinator decided to play defense. Then Dan Quinn said, you know it would be great here to tell Dak Prescott to throw it to the other team to give them like a 15-yard field, a 19-yard field. So three plays, 19 yards after Dak throws them a touchdown pretty much. So Dak threw them the, the next seven points. Defense could have stopped him. Yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> Offense I, only gave up one touchdown. I would say looking um, at this, uh, I would just looking at the, the plays, I would say that McCarthy and Dak were the ones throwing the games more than Dan oh. Quinn. So this spawned off into another conversation. Have you ever felt like your boss was out to get you? Mm -hmm. I immediately thought of something in the newspaper. And when it unfolded, I was like, you can't be serious, right? I had gone to... It was either the Toyota factory in Plano or it was like a Lexus of some, it was like some car dealership place. And cause Travis Pastrana was going to be there from Red Bull. And so we we're going to do a story about that. Cause he's in Plano and all that good stuff. While it was happening, the PR person came up to me. I was like, Hey, the vice president of the entire Toyota company is here from Tokyo. Would you like to speak with him? I was like, uh, yeah, I feel like, why would you not take that opportunity? He was second in command of all of Toyota Heck and he yeah. was here from Japan. And so I, I talked to him Did and you I panic. Are you like, do I like, how do I just greet ask him? if I'm Japan? No, I no, okay. I did not. Ask I just that. making I said, sure that did you did you not say panic. That. 
No. Um, because I would have been like, how do I greet him? Do like, no, how I just, do we talk? He Does was very he... nice. Okay. And, and no, we didn't, there was no translator or anything. He was like all okay. over it. That's he awesome. Was, awesome. He was super nice. And I was like, you must be worth lots and lots of money. They have and, tough links. Uh, ooh, I don't remember that. Probably, but I don't remember. So I said hi to Jim Crane yesterday. Not the <laughs> other day, but did he have cufflinks? <sighs> he was dressed. Not he had a nice navy blazer on. I feel like that's classic, right? You wear a navy blazer with whatever. You're probably good. You're looking Even good. jeans. Yeah. 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 So I got the story. Went back to the office, which is not too far away, and I like ran into our editor's office and was like, "Hey, I just talked to the vice president of Toyota about the expansion and all the things." And she goes, "Why didn't you tell me?" And I was like, "So yeah, it just happened." And she goes, "Are you trying to show me up?" Oh and my I was gosh! Like, what is happening right now? And she goes, "You, how come you didn't tell me about this ahead of time?" I go, "I." Had no idea. I went there for Travis Pastrana. And then they said, hey, would you like to talk to this guy? And I thought, well, that feels like a no-brainer. Yeah. And then she was pissed at me because she thought I had somehow planned this all out. I don't know why. To take her job that I didn't want? That's the right. Same, is this the same editor that we had? To yes. Get? Okay. Yeah. Yes. She was... Kind of paranoid. She was kind of paranoid anyway. So yeah, yeah so Reggie, she, I wouldn't. So she <laughs> said I sandbagged her by setting up. Yeah, I called. How dare Toyota. you get a great interview? Yeah, I called Toyota <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, are you going to be sending your vice president over here anytime if soon?" Not, I'm not showing up. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Don't tell my editor. That is impressive. I had, I well, I was working before I left to pursue this avenue. I was I had been offered a job to manage the crew, uh, uh, the entire technical crew that I was working okay. with. So I was already running the network for the company and building all these massive printers and servers and stuff. And then I was asked to come be the guy that ran the whole thing. And I was like, well, I'm 22 and I don't really quite know how to manage people. And I don't know if I want all that like on my plate and the salary is probably not good enough anyway. And so I said, so, but this dude right here, he's really good. Like he's, he, he's goes all his work. He's, he's uh, got a couple kids and all this. I was like, he's perfect for this job. And then he started micromanaging me whenever he got the job. And I was like, okay, I don't like being working for this guy. And Sounds like you sabotage. I sabotage there. myself. But then once he started like staring over my shoulder and I was like, I am literally working right now. I was like, that's, that's when I've had enough. I felt like he was out for me. So I left after that. And so that's that's good for me. That's very different than the guy that came up to me and was like, what are you going to do when your little radio show calls? Ooh. And I was like, well, I'm going to make it number one in Seems middays. Like it's working out that's just what fine. I'm going to do, buddy. From the 214, holy cow. This is a very extreme story, man. From the 214, like I said, my boss was trying to sleep with my girlfriend at the time. She's my wife now. He ended up getting fired for it, and I got fired for putting him through a window. Oh, my gosh. I, I too, oh, please. know the sorrow that comes along with window-related window firings. Uh, it wasn't because of that, but holy cow, that is intense. And please, nobody out there take the clip of Mike saying that, Ma that McCarthy and Dak were intentionally throwing that game. That was a very small portion of a joke that Mike was saying. It's what those people Not do. The entire it's, it's what their life is about. Their life is about that. It's interesting that they've made their life about that, but that's what they do. From the 817, my old boss at Sam's Club would write me up for not, quote, not being able to count. But when I would ask to see the error, they would say, oh, we already filed it. See? You can't show it to you. Boss is out to Man. get you. Man. Boss is always out to get you. Yeah. Can you trust your boss is the big question of the day. What percentage of people do you think trust their boss? Um, 35? That is a good question. 85? 877 881 Do you trust your boss, yes or no? Okay. And we'll take, uh, based on what they say, we'll take that as the right percentage. And will that impact if you trust your boss? We'll send it to bossesofamerica.com and see if they can do and something with it. I bet Reggie's going to go look and see if that, that cannot be uh, that's available website. right now. You know me too well. <laughs> We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Always looking for new domain names, I guess. Coming up next, <laughs> it's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassick. Well... The number one prospect is up. How will that affect the Rangers? Next. Hello, this is Chip with Diamond.
This segment of the KNC Masterpiece on 105 Through the Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world, and they've got more Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Relax and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 Through the Fan right now. It's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Basick. Okay, so I'm going to start off with last night's game, and I know we discussed it in the first segment, but I'm going to go to a player that I want the Rangers to do everything possible to trade for, and that's Mason Miller, the closer for the Oakland Athletics. It ain't going to happen today. It's not going to happen in the month of April. It's not going to happen in the month of May. Here's my thinking here. Oakland is nowhere close to competing for a division or a playoff spot. They're three years away, maybe less, but probably at least three years away from, and they're going to be playing in Sacramento yes. for the next few years after yeah. this is over. What's the point of having a dude who has the best stuff in all of baseball closing out 30 games a year when you're winning 60 to max 75 games? So this is what the Rangers did with, I guess you could say Emmanuel Classe. Maybe there was a little bit of like, maybe we could be good trading for Corey Kluber going into the 2020 season. COVID happened and it just, it, that was at that point, the Rangers realized we're not close and right. we gotta, we gotta do something way different than what we're doing. The Rangers also traded Pete Fairbanks. And they said, what's the point? We're not winning anything. Yeah. So we have a dude throwing 100 miles an hour who has five years of control. Well, bullpens don't matter too much when you're rebuilding. You got to yeah. get position players and starting pitching better before bullpens really matter. So the Rangers traded Pete Fairbanks for Nick Solak. Now, this guy's way better. And I I'm going to be honest. He's way better than Pete Fairbanks. This was some of the best. Like Emmanuel Classe, I feel like over the last few years, has maybe had the best stuff in the American League as a closer. This guy is better. So if I'm Chris Young, I'm suggesting right now, not being part of the front office or anything, you need to figure out how to get Mason Miller to be your closer for the Texas Rangers for the next five years. Because budget, you're limited. Yeah. You're not developing dudes like Mason Miller. I don't know why, but you're not. And he was a third round pick out of Gardner Webb University and played for a few other Waynesburg University. Just to be honest, this goes a little bit into what Justin Verlander was saying yesterday. He didn't even get drafted out of high yeah, school. Yeah. This is the weird thing about, let's just say college basketball just ended. If you're not good, by 20 years old, like you don't show your skill to play in the NBA, sure. it's almost like you're finished. Yeah. Uh, and in a weird way, if you're Latin, if you're from Venezuela, Dominican Republic, a lot of times if you're not showing a lot of value between ages 15 and 19 years old, wow, it's kind of over. Oh, it's man. really, isn't it weird that so young. for, I'm going to say Americans... They have this path of going to a small college or a junior college, and then at the age of 21 or 22, really progressing. There's a lot of progression that can happen. They don't really give that progression to Latin players. It seems like now Blanco, right? They're like signing him at 22 is like signing an American at like 26 years old. Like it just doesn't happen by 22. Like we already found all the Latin Americans that we want to play uh, affiliated baseball. Mm -hmm. The rest of you can kind of play Dominican baseball if you want. There's no money over there, and you got to figure out something else because we decided at 18 or 19 years old you just weren't good enough to be in affiliated baseball. But I'm looking at this Mason Miller kid, and I'm like, look, if we can't develop Mason Millers, a dude who's throwing 101 with an unbelievable breaking ball, and it was one game, his command was perfect like it was perfection he threw two fastballs perfectly inside to Walsh and to Evan Carter to be like you have no chance yeah like you literally if you swing at this you can't put this ball in play hard I'm gonna break your bat or you get the bat head out so far in front you hit the ball foul by a million miles and I'm like and then he's throwing backdoor breaking balls and stuff that break on the bottom right hand corner that almost could have been strike three against yeah. Evan Carter I was like, man, that's a damn good pitch. Strike or not, that was a really good pitch. So I don't know uh, in June what you have to offer, but I'm offering a lot for Mason Miller. I was looking at what he did last year. I called up Sandler about this, and he had similar thoughts Can on Mason you, Miller. But about a quick, a quick question then. I was curious, Mark Church, not 
potentially fill that role, you think, because he doesn't throw hard enough? I'm yes, okay. but I will say this. It's early. And I, I agree with what Bruce Bochy. It's a headline on, on MLB.com. Look, we are so early into this season. Yeah. There's other closers having issues in Absolutely. baseball. There's other good relief pitchers having issues in baseball. I'm wondering, and I'm not seeing Mark Church throw in AAA. Like I'm not going back and right. watching right. Round Rock baseball nine inning games. Yeah. But I wonder if we're getting close to possibly a switch of Brock Burke and Mark Church. Okay. So if you're asking me, could Mark Church help? Maybe so. Maybe not as the closer immediately this year. But could there be a switch in the month of April where they decide to switch Burke's role to like, hey, you need to go down and work on your stuff, work on consistency, work on location. Yeah. And then Mark Church, we don't know. You're a unknown in the major leagues. Let's see if you can really help us out. Okay. Uh, but I think with Mason Miller, I do think that this is a team that's going to lose 90 to 100 games. I, Oakland might be better than I think. But when I say better than I think, like not lose 110 yeah. games or 100, they might only lose 90 games. Right. Um, but I look at him and I go, I'm I'm asking this question. What's the point of him being in Oakland the next three years? Yeah, no, I, I 100% understand your point and I agree with it. Last year he did start. I don't know if you trade for him and after a year or two go, let's throw him back into a starter's role. But to me, if you have a dude, the Rangers issues for a decade now with closing baseball games yeah. makes me think if I can trade for a dude that I know as long as he's healthy can close for the next five years and I don't have an issue with the ninth inning role, like that's something I want because David Robertson, we talked about it earlier and Kirby Yates are off to great starts. Yes. They're closer to 40 than yes. they are 30. They're Robertson not might be 39. They're not long-term solutions. Yeah. They are short-term, short contract solutions. LeClerc's on a one-year deal. He's not like on a long-term deal either. So I look at what you have in the future of your pen. And maybe you just keep doing one to three year deals with older veteran guys and figure out how to piece it together for the next three years. You have a championship lineup. It's proven your lineup, your, your position players are a championship team. Evaldi's pitching yesterday. He didn't even pitch great. And he pitched five and two thirds and gave up three hits in one run. That's him being a little bit off. Yeah. yeah. You could kind of see it too. There were a couple of times where I saw him make a pitch and he'd tap his toe and that's kind of his sign. I don't yeah. know if you noticed that, but he felt like he wasn't perfect. You know where yeah. he needs to be, but yeah. You're and he right. talked after the game. He was rushing. He was just, a, and, and this is obviously we're about to get to um, the Masters. And I would say hitting a golf ball and pitching a ball and hitting the ball are similar. If everything's not on time, you're going to be off. And it's amazing. The best in the world you're going to see hit the ball into a tree, hit the ball into a, a area that they were like the last thing you wanted to do was hit the ball in that area as a golfer. And these are the best in the world. And all it was was a tenth of a timing was off on something, and it caused that. And all it takes from Nate Aldi talking about it last night, all it takes is just my upper body just barely in front by a tenth of a second over where I'm supposed to be, and I throw a ball. And for Jose LeClerc right now, I do think it's mental first, mechanical second at this point, because I, I saw it last night after he gave up the home run, he threw two really nice sequences and got guys out. Now, I will give him credit for this. He didn't quit on the game. You still needed to get those outs to get your team back into the dugout only down by one. I will say this. If you're only down by one against the Oakland Athletics you in the ninth shot. inning, the game's over. Yeah. I'd like to say that Mason Miller is shutting you down. Yeah. So if you are losing tonight and Mason Miller comes in the game, I would like to put this out there. The game is over. Woo. You ain't hitting him. That is some, that is when I saw Emmanuel Class A for the first time. And then talking, I remember Sandy Alomar Jr. and stuff. And it was like, this is unhittable. Now, Emmanuel Class A has become hittable throughout his career. Nobody's perfect. I saw Billy Wagner when I was with Philadelphia and, in spring training, I was like, I don't know how a human being ever hits this person. I, I literally don't know how a human being ever hits what he's throwing up there. And it happens. Uh, and so somebody will eventually hit Mason Miller. And he has given up six hits this year. I would like to go watch those and go, how in the world did anybody do this? Because it is that was phenomenal last night, uh, what I saw. It's a new day today for the Texas Rangers. They do need to win this series. 
So you have two games to win this series, yeah. and you need to win both of them. You can only win one today. It's not the end of the world if you don't, but you just look at the series coming up. Detroit's playing pretty good baseball. Atlanta's one of the best teams in baseball. You won't have to face Spencer Strider. He's not going to be available, but I just you start looking at these games, and you just don't want to give too many away. And then that being said, I don't know. They gave away 50% of games they should have won. Last, the, yeah. Out of their 72 losses, 30 of them were very winnable games in the 8th yep. and ninth inning, and they gave them away. So they were able to win the World Series by giving away games last year more than anybody in the history of baseball who's ever been over 500 has done it. Like, literally, I'm not exaggerating. No team in the history of baseball gave away more late-inning leads than the Texas Rangers and actually played 82 and 80 baseball or better. And so for, I don't know, I guess they did it last year. So the players can come to the clubhouse today and go, I don't know. We did it last year for 162 games and figured it out. So let's just do it again. It did sound like whenever things were going a certain way, Bochi and his crew would go have meetings. Like they, they would, they didn't typically, it didn't sound like they were always had the real serious meetings, but whenever things needed to be fixed, they'd have real conversations with each other and come up with solutions. So I'll, I'll just trust that part of it for now. It'll be interesting tonight. My last question here for Baseball Nuggets. If you get to the sixth inning and Cody Bradford's done, and let's just say the score is 4-2, to two, you're winning 4-2, to two, you give me your order of the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning tonight. I go LeClerc, Yates, Robertson. <sighs> I feel like I'm in that same boat. Except for I'm probably throwing Tavares in there, Kevin, because I'm unlike you, I'm trying to keep him around. So I'm still trying to figure the out. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, okay. He's, he's got a great arm. Uh, but yeah, I'm probably with Kevin on that. The serious note would be that, that that's probably the, the Yates group. has looked great in the eighth, so I kind of don't want to move if, that. And if Leclerc can't handle the sixth, then I got an even bigger problem on my hands. I'm with you guys yeah. for now. But I, I do think Boach is going to have to, for the first three months of the year, rotate. have to rotate these guys into who's hot and who's not. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Coming up next, puck around and find out. Another day, another comeback win for the Stars. Let's discuss next on The Fan.
Be masterpieced KNC style right here on 105.3 The Fan. KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. It's time for a little puck around and find out another day, another comeback victory for your Dallas Stars. Can I give you a little bit of audio? I know you're excited, Corey, and I also want to know your breakdown of how you watched all these games. Cut number eight, if you will, Joe Pavelski do an awesome thing. It will be played back to the far point. Tanev looking for traffic in front, they score. That took a deflection as Tanev just threw it to the net. And the Stars take the 3-2 lead here in the second period. Now, that would be the last goal of the game. We were just talking about this off air. There was a very nerve-wracking moment where it looked as though... Buffalo had tied the game up, and then I jo- we we're joking off air. Unless that was Wemby you were defending, that was definitely a high stick. And so when they went back in the replay, and then props- you think Wemby can skate? No. Do you think it's harder to skate when you're tall? For sure, yes. I do. And it's more terrifying too because it's farther, Fall. farther, Your fall head is yeah. farther from yeah. the ice. Yeah, terrifying. I I don't know if he can skate, but I bet that is it is harder for taller people. That's to why they're only short general. MMA fighters. I don't actually, you know what? There used to be this MMA fighter, Stefan Struve. He was like 6'11, maybe seven foot. He got knocked out spectacularly multiple times. And it was like watching a building being demolished the way he would just cut, or a tree Timber. getting cut. Yes, there is a couple of highlights you can look up where he falls and it's just like, because he was falling for so long. It was amazing. Anyway, Uh look for a second like Buffalo had gotten the tying goal. They went back and reviewed it. Props to the fans at the AAC who were doing their cosplay ref stuff. Or they were they were doing a fantastic job and they were already pointing down to their like, hey, no goal. Did they put Victor in the box as well at some point during the broadcast? I think at that point they did. In this instance that I particularly saw the fans, they were uh, judging if it should have counted as a goal or not with Victory Green. It did not. Dallas wins once again. This is their 25th comeback win of the season. Obviously, I'd rather not have comeback wins. Especially 25 of them. 
That well, seems like a lot. Okay, I will tell you, keep in mind, that could also be... You, you got down you, early You gave one. up the first goal. Okay. You know, like, you, if you give up the first goal, yeah. that counts okay. as a comeback win. And guess what? Yesterday, the Stars did give up the first goal. In four minutes, they tied the game two minutes later. That still counts. And then they fell behind again. Okay. That still counts as a comeback goal. Well, then I'd still like to score the first goal and the last goal. Okay. And be a winner. I think every that's game, fair. If that's okay. Man, 82 and 0. I, that would take a long time to do that study, but I would like to know how many times teams, if you score the first goal and the last goal, win. Uh -huh. I well, feel like probably a pretty good amount. If you just shut them out every time and score multiple or just one goal, then you've done it. So. I've often just said, score seven goals. You yeah. know, score seven goals I mean, and you they win. They did that. That's they did. Been, that's been game? Reggie's saying since we, we met. Mm -hmm. The best analytic I ever found was if you score more than the other team, you win 100% of the time. I heard Mike say that on radio once and I was mm -hmm. like, it's 100% that one. Yeah. Like, you can't analytic it any other way. Okay. That's. <laughs> Good to know you guys are, man, you guys are really on point spit right now. facts on the fans. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. The Stars have now won 15 of their last 18 games. By the way, if you're looking for a pretty goal, go out of your way to go back and watch the Wyatt Johnston goal, where it's essentially, I'm going to do a terrible job of describing this because, you know, I'm not Razor. It, it's a reverse goal between two defenders where he's not looking at the net and he kind of spins around and shoots it. It's incredible the way he worked through the traffic after missing an attempt and getting it back from Harley. Okay. You know what, Kevin? Look, you should go look at it. I, I did a poor job of describing it. It was a neat looking goal. Next week, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna request one of Mike's friends be on the show with us. Okay, and we'll get we'll see if Mr. Raya wants to tell us describe it that way. Is it Raya or Ray? We'll ask him. Yeah, <laughs> and if it was a reverse goal, Is it I, just think Ray? I think I think he's gonna think back me up on this. We'll ask him if he wants to come on and, and there's an A at all. the end of his name. Mm -hmm. It Raya. is R E A. I it was Raya. I don't know why. I think it's just Ray. I'm gonna listen to him say it on the broadcast, and I'll just if he says it right, I'll be like. <laughs> I'm when, not arguing with that guy. If I say Ray... What do you mean if he says it right? As in however he says it, the right way to say it? Do you guys think of Darth Vader when you say the word Ray because of Field of Dreams? Wow, that's a, I thought that's you were a lot say of... of the Star Wars sequels. What's his name in no. real life? James Earl Jones? Yeah. James Earl Jones. Yeah. I don't... Ray. Because every time he says Ray, I think of Darth Vader. Okay. But then I think of Field of Dreams. And he, you know what? Ray Liotta's in that movie, too. He is. Wow. He's Shoeless Joe, and he's dead now. And his name's Both Liotta, of them right? are. Shoeless Joe and Ray Liotta. Rest in peace. How, how did we get here? We I were don't... just talking about the Wyatt Johnson I was just trying goal. to help you out getting somebody. Because he said Brian Ray, and then I was like, I think it's just Ray. Uh -huh. And then every time I say Ray, I think of Field of Dreams, and the person who I think of saying Ray is Darth Vader. <laughs> That's how we got there. Fair. I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if Anakin hadn't gone bad? How, did, how would things have turned out? Actually... I don't know. There was a zillion Jedi, and there was a zillion other people in line to be the other bad person. What if Ben Kevin, Solo let, let the hate flow? You know you want to. What if Just Ben lean Solo into it. had actually been a bounty hunter? See, and now you're going to be like, hey, what if Qui Gon hadn't got killed by Darth Maul? Would he have been able to keep Anakin on the straight? Yeah. Okay. Look, I, we don't have time for that what right if now. Leia had been uh, trained in the way of the Jedi. She was. Like what? Eventually. Like really growing up as a Jedi? Look, Wouldn't have matter. There's a zillion other ones. There are a lot of things. D Disney made a zillion Jedi that we and I could just ignore what happened with Disney. Uh -huh. There are a lot of things we can get into right now. I want to talk about the stars. Though. Okay, all right. <laughs> Jake Ottinger. He's huh. the goalie. That is true. Who's the other goalie? I call him Westwood One because you call I, him Wedgewood One. Scott yeah. Wedgewood. Yeah, Scott Wedgewood. Wedgewood. He is 8 0 and 0. He's not number 47, is he? In his. I honestly I don't do think not so. know what I don't number think he, he is. is. Sorry. He's 8 0 and 0 in his last eight starts with a goals against average of, I believe, 165. Otters and out. And a save percentage of 939. No, this is Ottinger in his last oh, eight games. Oh, I thought you were not saying. Scott Wedgwood. I was like, he's been really good. What are we playing Ottinger for? <sighs> he also has two shutouts during this time. He is peaking 
at the absolute, absolute right time. Scott, Scott Wedgwood's number 41, by the way. Dang it. I wanted to go. So oh, close. Sean and RJ had uh, Craig Ludwig on, and Craig Ludwig's on the Spits and Suds po- podcast. He with might be recording one right now. Boss man Gavin Spittle. And I thought this was a really uh, interesting point. Cut 13, if you can, Reggie. This is kind of talking about the way that the Stars are playing, but also where they w- they're trusting Otter. They don't have to worry now. I don't think Pete DeBoer has to worry so much now about getting the right players against or away from whatever the other team wants to do. With the you know the home team obviously has last change. I don't think you have to worry about that. I think the players know that we're just going to go out and play. We don't really care who matches up. So anytime you play on the road and you play in the playoffs on the road, especially. Who needs to be your best player? <laughs> you know, it's your goaltender. And um, <clears throat> so at the end of the day, for the most part, playoff hockey, it ends up being, you know, it, it, he's one of the top two guys, top three guys, that most important one. So let's play to our strengths. And I think that's what this team can do. And I think that's exactly what they're doing. They're saying they get down, they get down last night. Do you think there's one guy that was panicking when they were down a goal? Do you think there's anybody panicking when they're down two goals going into the third period? I just think there's a belief in this group that's like, we've done this all year. We've been down. We can come back. Otter's going to take care. You know, he's not giving up any more goals. We already know that. And I just think that's the belief that they have in each other. There's a a lot of things that he kind of touched on there. And the the key point is their trust in their goalie. Yeah. And like where he is right now, and I've been talking about this for a couple weeks now of him kind of building up to the point where the rest of the team can be cocky because they know that that dude's there with them. It's kind of like, I'm pretty cocky about our show because I know Kevin's right here. And I'm like, we're pretty damn good because Kevin's really good at what he does. And so that that's one of those those feelings. face, Mike. <laughs> Mike's very good at what he does. But I think Mike and I both get pretty cocky that we know we have Kevin to keep it on the on the, on the the rails whenever it gets I know. Off. We hate when you're not here because then we have to be serious. <laughs> you could get, be serious when I am here, get too. Mad Nobody at us. likes that show. Yeah, right? everybody says they don't oh, like it. Everybody that. loves the show where you get mad. And, oh, anyway, back to the point it is that is that ever otters at a point where he knows oh you know what that would slip by me but it's not going to happen again and the rest of the team has a lot of faith in it the thing he talked about the before that though i thought was really interesting too this is DeBoer and the players all knowing they have every tool in the toolbox yeah they are a complete tool set so and, and i'm not saying they're tools mike but this is when when you i i did give this comparison to kevin earlier mike maybe you'll understand it too if I go, oh. if I'm a manager and I'm like, am I smart as Kevin? Is that what you're saying? You're not. But if I have, <laughs> oh, oh, that's so rude. If I, I have, have a degree. <laughs> <laughs> For the entire universe, right? Yeah. Universal studies, UTA. Your son's going there. <laughs> Deal with that. <laughs> I, if, I, if I'm a manager and I go into it, I got, I go, I have one power hitter. And they're like, okay, but do you have guys that can get on base? You're like, no, but I have a power hitter. You're not. You're not good enough. Angels. Your team, yeah, exactly. Your team's not going to be good enough. But if you go, I have four or five power hitters and also a bunch of guys that can get on base. You Rangers. have a complete toolbox. Yes. Yes. The Rangers had a complete toolbox last year. They had everything they needed to win a championship. The Stars currently have the complete toolbox. They have guys that have grit on the defensive part. They have skilled players on the defensive side. They have skilled players up front. They have guys that are that can fly. They have guys that can hit you. They have everything, not really fly, Mike, but they have all the things that they need to win a championship. And DeBoer isn't out there going, man, I got to cover this up because this isn't good enough. DeBoer's like, I can just send my guys out there and say, go. And you see it with the records that we've talked about pretty continuously. The Stars still have an opportunity to have the most regular season points they've ever had. They still have the opportunity to take the Presidents for just the third time in franchise history. They had their 25th comeback win, which ties a franchise record. They have the most points they've ever gotten on the road. So you just keep them stack up, stack up, stack up, which is a great thing. It also intensifies pressure going into the playoffs because this definitely feels like a Stanley Cup or bust kind of team. And by the way, somebody asked if Tanev was back. He played 20 minutes last night. So I think they're asking Kevin, I think it's more like, 
is he back? No, like I, UT, like think, when UT was back. I no, I I well in that maybe not exactly. Yeah, uh, but they said we're back. I think he is back. Okay, back. Okay, not just that not is, just physically. No, not there. just back. He's, he's back. He's back. back. And so that's another positive for the stars because we all agree that was a very savvy move that they made at the deadline, and they haven't clinched central division yet, and they haven't clinched the number one seed in the West yet, but this brings you one step closer. One more win, you've got it. It could be a combination of Colorado and Winnipeg and Vancouver trip-ups, and I think your next game is against Winnipeg. Yeah, we know what their name is. They're, you're usually, Lose-a-peg, I'm yeah. with you on that. They have actually, ever since, it feels like right about the time you started calling them Lose a Peg, they have stepped it up. They've won four straight. Good. They have ice advantage over Colorado. I'd like to play lose a peg in the second round over Colorado. I'm confident now that the Stars will beat Colorado in the playoffs, not by like a 4-0 or 4-1 situation. I think it'll be a battle, but you play lose a peg, you're winning that in five. Okay, let me ask you this, though. The Stars play Winnipeg. If the Stars win, they can clinch the number one seed in the West. However, that also makes it much more likely that lose a peg will be... They will not have home ice against Colorado. What's your favorite sport that is predetermined who wins? Pro wrestling, bro. It doesn't matter who the stars play. Um, I like it. Man, that is the second wrestling reference of the day, although I'm pretty sure the first one only came to my headset. I, I do want to point out, Kevin. Who's, but, is that The Rock says that? Yes. Yeah, jabroni. At some point, you might get mad and want to yell at Mike today. But I want no you to way. remember a moment that you didn't see happen. Mm-hmm. Earlier, you said something about the presidents, and oh, Mike yeah. looked up, and he almost made a joke, but he stopped. And I'm proud of Mike for that moment. I didn't say trophy. I just said the president. <laughs> and he had all yeah. these thoughts. You could see every. He was like, oh, my God. Yeah. It was like a little kid that just walked into a circus. He was like, which one do I want to go to first? I'm pretty sure he screened Olympus is falling in yes. his head when you said they took yeah, the presidents. a lot. <laughs> That was he, happening. He held back so that you could finish your point. I'm, so just I, remember. I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you very much for that restraint. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, let's talk Mavs, Hornets, and getting extra rest going into the playoffs. We'll do it next right here on The Fan. The Fan.
This segment of the KNC Masterpiece is also brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. It's brought to you by Window Nation and it's brought to you by Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first. That's 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there's never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. That's Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Bridges leads them with 12, Brandon Miller 11, and Davis Bertans 10. The look away and the reverse finish. Put that one on the highlight reel. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. The Mavericks, as they should have, made short work of the Hornets. I thought the game was over in the first nine minutes. I realized. Yes. yes. Is that fair? Completely agree. Okay. So it's 31-14, to 14, and Luke has already scored 21 points to go along with with his five rebounds. I was like, man, he really hates Grant Williams. That's I wasn't watching the game. I was at the Ranger game and just getting ready for pregame and then pregame and I'm just checking the score and I'm like, oh man, the Mavericks are kicking butt and that story Michael Finley told here on 105 through the fan, it looks like he's reliving that story in the first quarter here. <laughs> it really did. And so it felt like the game was over at this point. I want to go to cut number 10. We're going to talk more about this game, but I want to go to cut number 10 when Kyrie is going in for a layup and the idea that this is what commentating for the Hornets does to you. And Dante Exum comes down with the rebound. Irving, you know he's going to make the layup. Oh, he missed it. We bleeped it because... That's Charlotte? Yeah, it is Charlotte. It sure does sound like he's saying effing, doesn't it? Yes, and I've listened to this multiple times as I obviously had to add the audio. I think he was going to say funky layup. Right, because you know Kyrie Irving gets it was down. like he under does, the basket. He does you know up. reverse yeah. layups? Very creative. A lot of English, but it very much sounded like he said he's going to blow the bleep and layup. Reggie, my son had this question, and I feel like if anybody has the answer off the top of the head, it would be you. Oh, thanks. I was talking about I don't Kyrie know. Irving and the English he puts on the ball, especially off the glass, and he goes. Has it always been called English, and why is it called English? And I was like, that's a great question. I don't know, but I've always said that or heard it and then repeated it a whole bunch of times. I don't know why it's called English. Do you know why they're putting English off the glass? I don't. Well, I mean, I feel like this starts from billiards, if I had to take a good yeah. guess. And, and why did billiards say they've put English on the pool ball? That I'm going to do some research for, and hopefully by the end of the segment, I'll have an answer. I, I don't know the answer to that. We're going to educate our audience on English on a ball. In the meantime, can you play that cut one more time of yeah, the, hear about the uncensored it. one? Or? This, no, 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 no. Not, not is this the, Del Curry? Not the uncensored censored one it oh. and Dante Exum comes down with the rebound Irving you know he's gonna make the layup oh he missed it because <laughs> he just said <laughs> he like, missed the layup he was like ah another layup against my hornets you he just sounds so tired of everything he's <laughs> seeing when he's like you know they're gonna make that effing layup when was the last time Charlotte was decent at basketball I don't know right. yeah and we stole one of their best players so, like when Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning hated each other. That was about the last time I think they were good at basketball. The By the way, English players, British players in pool would do the side spin, and nobody was doing it at the time. So they just called it English because that was the style, is oh. that British players were doing that. Sorry, what Corey, year? you're wrong. It's because oh. of the basketball player Alex English. Not, who created, don't, are you sure? I No, I'm not, That's actually. According it, to AI... Oh, on the no, internet. Don't ask. Uh, Why does Iverson everybody knows. think Alan Iverson? Because he went to Georgetown, <laughs> which is a great school. It's a great <laughs> education. That but they're like, let's up. ask AI all the questions I don't now. Think that's what he's I looked it up on internet. Ask Patrick com. Ewing, SPE. It's because of old English. 40 bottle. Oh, my gosh. What a drink. I guess um, they don't want to ask Sleepy Floyd because he was sleeping at Georgetown. Wasn't old English like super cheap? I have clone? no idea. I've never bought Old English in my or life. Or is that an alcohol? I thought it was an alcohol. Oh, there's there's old it Milwaukee. could be both. Yeah, I mean, it's the same, it's the same price as Mickey's. Yeah, you're good. Okay. About, about, it was, back in my well, day. Good oh, question man. from a 14-year-old, which I feel like we haven't solved yet. Yeah, I just told you the answer to the question. English players were putting side spin on the ball in billiards, and so everybody around the world was like, that's, they, we call it English. What that's year? putting English on it. 
back in the English times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's right. You've, you've what? Confuse me. Were people traveling to play billiards? What? Like at what yes. point? Yes, people travel all over the world to play pool. There used to be nothing to do, Mike, yes. before TV. We didn't have and they TVs. figured out a pool table before they figured out like a gridiron. Yes. 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 Let's felt this table and see what happens. Let's put holes on this table with felt and see what happens. <laughs> I think that's supposed to sound insane, but that was a perfectly reasonable statement you just made, Mike. We need bumpers, though, on the side so the balls don't fall off. So about the Mavericks, yep. uh -huh. I guess. I, I liked where you went with that. I'm I was going to figure a, out when pool was made. I was having a conversation with the Twitch, and then I felt compelled to get into that conversation about I want about you English. to be proud of me for keeping my joke to myself. Me, I am proud when of you. Was, okay. After that what one was the joke? Earlier this morning. Pool. I'll tell you. <laughs> about Japan. Just to you. All right. The 1340s. Oh, my God. That's they didn't what, even yeah. have trains back then. But they had pool, pool cues. Is that your barometer for like society so advancing? Oh, let's go play the English. Do you think the pool cues were straight or were they like crooked branches that they were just like, we're going to. Oh, did they really one. not have trains? When did we get trains? Yeah. I don't know. That's another question. Uh, I think it was during Doc Holland. It was oh the God. Doc. It was Doc from Back to the Future. So whatever the Western times were, that's when trains were invented. He got sent back. 1804? Yeah. 500 he got sent back years to later. Oh my, we were playing pool for 500 years before we got trained. We created pool in a hurry. That's crazy, Couldn't dude. figure out any other sport. Mm-hmm. I bet they had straight sticks. People were good at making arrows. You, you do see how it would be significantly easier to make a pool cue than a train, though, right? Yeah. I just didn't know they were 500 years apart, which then makes it like... All the people were traveling around the world to play the English in pool. How were they traveling? They're just walking. Horse? They, okay. They had horses. True horses. Yeah. Carriages. Oh, yeah. Carriages. When were carriages invented? Hey. I'm on it. Kevin, I think we need to do a weekly segment called When Was Everything Invented? And we just start asking questions. You know what, Corey? And look it up on the internet I'm kind of mad right now because that's actually a pretty good idea. <laughs> Between 3,000 and 2,500. So are we not talking Mavs? I don't know. <laughs> BC. Well, I mean, the Mavs handled the Charlotte Hornets so handily mm -hmm. in the course of that game. It was they figured out a carriage in a hurry. They got done with that game so early last night, they probably yeah. went and played it the pool together. It was 61 to 12 at halftime. Some might call it a runaway train. <laughs> that is not that accurate. That was the Phoenix Suns Clippers game. That is not <laughs> accurate. It did, feel, it did feel like that. All right. So, a couple of things. Luca played last night. He's played 20 of the last 30 games. And we talked about this going into the game. Kyrie has now played 30 straight games. That's good. And this might be something that we attack later, maybe in a few days. But if they win tonight and you've like, you lock up five, you've, you're already in the real, real playoffs. Do you rest for a couple of games knowing that your playoff seed is going to be locked in? Do you want me to float my theory out from pre-show this morning? As long as it has nothing to do with any of the other stuff you talked about in this segment. I can't. I can't guarantee it. Then no. Just Mike, say something. La last night when I was watching the game and Luke is just like burying three after yeah. three, I was thinking to myself, he doesn't want to play this game. He was told you can be done by halftime if you get yours and we'll just move on. I could see that. And so I started thinking he's trying to get out of this game as early as possible. But then it seemed like he stayed in the game throughout the evening. And I was like, oh, and I started wondering if he's trying to make a late run at MVP. And if if I understand you guys talking about rest here down the stretch, he's never finished second in MVP. I don't know if that matters or not. But and I, I wonder if there's a possibility I, that Luke is like, let me try and make this late run here and and make my bid, and make my claim to try and get this. Can I throw this out? This is really basketball topic. I'm scared of falling to six because I'm scared of somehow the Nuggets losing one or two more games. I have no clue what their schedule is, and okay. then all of a sudden it's Nuggets and Jamal Murray's healthy for the playoffs. Yeah. I don't want that. The Clippers, here's what I don't know. Help me out here. I'm not following Kawhi Leonard's injury situation. I mean, is he 100% so. going to be ready for the playoffs? I don't and, know that to be the case. Because if Kawhi Leonard's out, you're going to beat the Clippers in a series, and I think beat them pretty quickly. Yeah. So I I, I kind of want to face the Clippers. Okay. Now, if Kawhi's 100% healthy, it's going to be a heck of a matchup, and I can see the series going either way. I will pick the Mavs to win in six. But... If if Kawhi Leonard's iffy for the playoffs, 
I want the Clippers. I think he was he was questionable on playing last night or tonight rather. So I, I think that I think he's probably going to um, be good to go for the, is the it, postseason. Is it his knee again? Uh, let me double check. I believe that is correct. Because he his remember he beat the Mavericks and then was like, I'm done with the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Which really stunk. You're like, why did you have to turn into Michael Jordan for two games and then quit? Uh, Just quit two games ago. And see the thing about the Clippers, too, that kind of that I'm actually all right with is any one of those guys can go off on any given night, right? Like they can any one of those dudes, they're star players, but do they play as a team? And that's the difference between them and the Mavericks. The Mavericks have dudes that can go off at any point, but they play as they are playing as a team right now, and they are far more athletically uh, ept. Kevin, you know yes. how I like to use ept uh, than they were in prior times when they when it was Luca versus the Clippers. They are a far more at, like Gafford, PJ Washington. They are tough big team right now and, and a, a shorter term goal that did get reached last night and i do think this is a big deal i totally understand what you're saying mike about avoiding the six seed but you did clinch a spot in the top six and here's why that's important outside of just the rest too whether you think it's just Kyrie luca whether you're hoping that lively can be back and ready to go the mavericks end the season on the regular season on sunday the 14th the play-in tournament is the 16th through the 19th which means the playoffs start the following Saturday and Sunday. And so now that you're in the real, real playoffs, your last regular season game will be Sunday. Your first playoff game will be the following Saturday or Sunday, which that's another week to get lively back or to get rest for the rest of your players. However you cut it up, this is a good thing. Things are up in the air, but I'm going to tell you, Mavericks are going to beat the Clippers. And then if everything stays the same, it's Minnesota versus, I'm just throwing this out here. Right now, I'm gonna just take Sacramento as okay. the eight seed. Yeah. I understand it could be the it could be any team between Phoenix, Sacramento, L.A., and Golden State. Yep. You're beating that team too, and you're going the Western Conference Finals. Whoever it is, Minnesota, those teams in the play-in, the L.A. Clippers. As long as the Mavs are healthy in the playoffs, you're going to the Western Conference Finals. Well, if if that's the case, then you need to we need to turn our attention to another game tonight. Because the Nuggets and Timberwolves are playing. So yeah, it, it, if all of a sudden the Nuggets go to the one seed, that changes my confidence. They have, this, they have the same record. Yeah. So it stands to reason, though not guaranteed, that the winner of this game will, will be the clearly one. be the favorite to be the number one seed. So if you want the Timberwolves, you need to take a look at this game tonight, and that should be the team that you're cheering for. And the, the Nuggets do need to win this because they have they already don't hold the tie break with the Thunder. And this I think they're one and two versus the Timberwolves. So if they win this, they would have the opportunity to get a tie break. Otherwise, you could tell down to three. You are really close to that idea where that six seed is probably playing the Nuggets. Yeah. Okay. So if the Nuggets lose, you need to avoid the six spot. I agree. If the Nuggets win, then falling to six isn't the worst thing in the world because you get out of their bracket. Till the final. Yeah. If you face them. Yeah. And then Absolutely. you say Jokic versus Luka. Are you kidding me? To go to the NBA finals and then beat the Boston Celtics as Brown and Tatum throw it away because poor Zingas can't play 22 games in a row in the playoffs and sits out. So this is a fun night of basketball for probably across the league. But if you're a Mavericks centric fan, watch Mavs heat almost immediately after that. They'll probably coincide. It'll go right into Nuggets T-Wolf. Topic for another day. Would it be more shocking to the NBA world if the Mavericks win the NBA championship this year or what was more shocking to the MLB world that the Rangers won the championship last year? Or if the Cowboys that win, would be the most shocking thing in the history of football. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but I understand more why you shocking did say than, that. The, than yes. <laughs> the Cardinals winning the Super Bowl. He didn't even have to say a thing. He was like, yes, that is the answer. Okay. I've, I've seen them play I, playoff football. I do like that topic. We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan coming up next. It's time for gridiron gravy. The beast is here. Let's talk about it next right here in the fan. How do you know it for?
last segment of the KNC Masterpiece on 105 Through the Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world, and they've got more Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Relax and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Asking the questions that matter. Corey asked this question. He asked Mike, would you want to work with you? To which Mike said, yeah, it would be a blast. <laughs> I would like to keep tabs on how long you think that. Before how long you're like, hey, why don't you shut up and let me do what I want to do? Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> we'd be going nowhere in a hurry. Uh -huh. Sometimes we'd think to each other, let's exit right here. And then we'd miss the exit and say, well, we're going to deal with it. And we're just going to keep talking. Maybe we'll stop talking. Maybe we'll look at our phone and get distracted by a text message or What do you email. mean the barn's full? That's what he's doing yeah. in these Yeah, breaks. township, man. Yeah. I'm trying to grow some hay and feed the cows and get my milk. Wait, what is happening right now? He's I don't playing understand. playing Farmland or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a oh. stupid game, and I need to I need to delete it. You play that game all the time, I can see him. Mike. I can see him like I'm he's... addicted to it. Him and, and Mike and Mike are sitting there. They're driving. They're driving. Now, or maybe That'd it's be a, a good name for a show. Mike and yeah. Michael. Yeah, we'll nobody ever thought about this. And they're driving, and they're and he asked the question, "Should we exit here?" And the other one goes, "Yes." And then they both knuckle balls at the same time, and then they, they exit. Smash into the sign when they don't actually <laughs> exit. All right, right now, God willing, it's time to go around the entire NFL and dip into some gridiron gravy. Deep. Now, normally. I think that mock drafts are stupid too far before the draft. We're getting pretty close to the draft. And one person that I very, very much respect their opinions is Dane Brugler. So I just wanted to run through one specific aspect of the beast. He's got Caleb Williams as his number one quarterback. Drake May, second. Jane Daniels, third. And J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Michael Penix. I'm sure, I don't know if people would switch around Daniels or May, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who kind of fall in line with that. Maybe you switch around Knicks and Pennix. But I want to go all the way to the end of the beast. By the way, this thing is more than 300 pages. If you get the opportunity, check it out. It's amazing. Okay. But here's where he ranks those quarterbacks on his top 100 board. Because you guys, we we're all have heard the same things. Where it's looking like quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three. There are some people who think they're going to go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, five. So really high up in the draft. Dane Brugler has Caleb Williams as number one. Drake May, four. Jaden Daniels, eight. JJ McCarthy, 21. And so we're talking about somebody that they're looking like they're going to be a top five pick. And Dane. I know Dane is not necessarily the end-all be-all, but it kind of feels like he is when it comes to scouting out prospects. He's like, you're taking the 21st best player and you're probably going to trade up to get him in the top five. That just feels like a poor strategy, just in theoretical football. Mm -hmm. The what, what does Broadus always tell us? The window dress your board. And does Dane do that? Nope. So, like, that's the... Dane, Dane calls it like he sees it. A lot of times. And then he also takes in information that he gets from GMs and sources around, and he, he applies that. I think he has, like, two separate things, right? Where his board says... Versus some a of the, mock. Yeah, yeah, his board and mock are kind of different in, in those respects. And I think Broadus is kind of the same way, too. Broadus is like, pay more attention to this than any of the other stuff, because this is what I think about these players is how I would do it. But I think that is a pretty fascinating approach there. And I was just going to throw out the other two quarterbacks that now we're hearing there's more and more buzz about them going in the first round. Dane Brugler has Bo Nix at 44 and Michael Penix at 52. And no, Mike, that is not Michael Penix's age because I know you do like to take shots at him for being an older player. 52 That's the degree he throws the ball from. <laughs> 42 degrees. I, I could actually see that. But yeah, so you might have... Four players taken in the top five, with the lowest being in the 20s, and then two other first-round picks that Dane's like 44 and 52. Oh, well, 
just shows how much teams they 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 don't this goes back to the discussion of did you build your team and then get the quarterback do you have the right you know are you building it the right way yeah um or did you assume the quarterback was going to fix your team yeah I mean, chicago is lucky here they did go seven and ten I, I know it wasn't great but usually the guy that had the team that has the number one pick usually lost 13 mm -hmm. or 14 yeah. games yeah, yeah, yeah. you are going to a team that was t seven and ten you're not going to a team that was three and 14. yeah they they and decided they have another that, premium pick too yeah they decided that the, the the team was right the quarterback wasn't and then they sent him to pittsburgh and we'll see how that goes so yeah i am oddly intrigued to see how that goes. i'm fascinated by it because this is another part of the conversation with mike tomlin right like if mike tomlin is who he is uh, as as such a great coach will he be able to turn those two quarterbacks around i don't know i mean russell wilson and justin fields are two quarterbacks that the rest of everybody hates uh but, and, unless they're great and then tomlin had very untalented quarterbacks in trubisky and pickett and so he's trying to figure that thing out right now Corey, are you a fan of analogies yes I'm gonna take you to the Jets owner, Woody Johnson, he was talking about Aaron Rodgers' potential VP run. This is what he said. I know you might think I'm making this up. I am not. Quote. This is what he told the New York Post. Aaron Rodgers is getting back to football 100%. He never left football. That was a momentary distraction. Maybe like going in the dark room or whatever. The dark room. Yes. Oh, whenever he wanted to be a quarterback or not. <laughs> Or if you're developing photos, I don't know. No, or this was when, remember he went to the dark room. Oh yeah, that's right. And hid for like a three days. Well, that and then... was, yeah. And so this was the same as that. Okay. This was his dark room. Going and, into politics? For yes, a, potentially a being a vice presidential candidate. Would have been It was amazing. like going into the dark room and now he's good. Who's the most famous person you want to see be vice president right now? Man, I feel like any answer to that question is incorrect. Really? I guess David the, Duchovny. The Rock? Ooh, The Rock's a good option. Because he ticks everybody off, doesn't care. It feels like but the it's vice also president very doesn't do anything. That is true, but I would love to see a debate where he's up against, well, I think it doesn't matter uh -huh. what you think. Yes. Like, I would just love to see that happen in an actual... He walks over and takes their microphone and just starts going, what I'm cooking. I think that would be amazing. That feels very unlikely this year. All right, let's go from that to, you remember when Broadus said there might be more stuff with the Tavandre Sweat DWI? Well, of course, TMZ Sports is always here to figure these things out. Before he got arrested, one of the things that they talked about was he had been in a car accident and his car had flipped and fallen over on its side and kind of skid. So the cops are saying that the Dodge hit the Bronco from behind, causing it to lose control, roll over, and eventually come to a stop on its side. So this is a thing where like, I get the DWI is bad, but when you hear things like that, you're like, it is yeah, that's it. really good that people walked away from this thing. Yeah, for sure. And that's, uh, that, feels like there needs to be the right repercussion here yes not just a hey man this could cost you and it doesn't cost him anything like yeah. and, I'm, and again everybody something's going to hit you harder than money or whatever it's always gonna be something different but it feels like something he needs a real significant wake-up call with this and yeah. i don't know if that was it or not like that's that's the thing that's what's scary you is, know, i don't know if, that's, right? if that was it all right josh allen the Jags Josh Allen, not the quarterback Josh Allen. Yeah, I saw this. We're five, going all in. Yeah, five. <laughs> we. Oh, you're still a, still Jag. You're, I Jaguars. have a jersey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Five years, 150 million dollar contract with 88 million dollars guaranteed. The league sources confirmed this morning. That's a chunk of money. We can focus on Josh Allen, but I know around here, a lot of people started saying, "What's that going to make Micah's deal look like?" I hear you. I'm going to ask another question before we get to Micah. Okay. Is who do you think wins more games next year? Josh Allen in Buffalo or Josh Allen in Jacksonville? Mm. Corey, you can 
join if you'd say, like. I'm going to go on a limb. Josh Allen in Jacksonville. Yeah, let's go. Let's revisit this question, Kevin. Josh Allen in yeah. Buffalo. Josh Allen in Jacksonville. Josh Allen in Jacksonville just got a huge contract. Who wins more games next year? Jacksonville, Josh Allen, or Buffalo? Buffalo. Josh Allen? Buffalo's a good team. They win a lot of games. They got. They did lose a lot of folks, though. Yeah, I think. Again, so do the Ravens. Yeah, and and you know what? That this is where we'll get that decision of all of Josh Allen's uh, interceptions. How much do they cost him? As he doesn't have maybe the right things around him. By the way, have you have you followed like Stefan Diggs and what's he's he's been liking on Twitter? Somebody posted the- like, "Oh, Bills are one of the most toxic fan bases and stuff." He's like, "Like," which. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. I just, I guess the reason, my other reason too is it looked like Trevor Lawrence was on the right path and they sure. took a step, a couple yes. steps back. So agreed. That's agreed. Right, yeah. Agreed. We finally know that the Eagles are going to play the Packers in Brazil. I will say this feels like a pretty marquee Dude. game for the first go around in Brazil. And that's going to be in week one. The whole game. Go pack. Go. E A. No, 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 no. That's what they do, both teams. That's like there's I, a whole I just bunch. I didn't of ch- want you to say that on our. There's airways. a whole bunch of chanting, Eagles. Eagles are America. I got appreciated if the American Eagle. Uh, he's not wrong about that. What like, the hell, dude? That's I our, thought you were just about to back. That's up our the bird. Cowboys. But then he brought up our country, and that's the most important thing. It's the hummingbird coming. here. What? But it's the American Eagle in the United States, isn't the mockingbird? Official- Mockingbird, dang it. I mean, we literally have a street that runs through the entire city called Mockingbird. Yeah, but it doesn't like have a logo on it saying, well, that's yeah, the state bird. It does. No, over by Love Field, there's a sign. I can't argue. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not, but I know <laughs> that he is telling the truth on the Mockingbird. I got it wrong. <laughs> and then Terrell Suggs was arrested in Arizona for assault. What? As we devolve into bird talk. That's what? Terrell Suggs? Yes. Doesn't play anymore. But yeah. he did come out during the Baltimore game to try and liven up the crowd. Remember, he walked out. And for like four minutes, they got into it. And then Kansas City was like, hey, don't forget, we're still the champs. Whoops. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, early MLB takes, including ones on Langford and the Astros. Are these overreaction or reality? Next on The Fan.
You're about to be masterpieced. KNC style, right here on 105.3 The Fan. KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. It's Hockey Town USA is what you were looking for, Mike. By the way, the National Weather Service has issued a flash flood warning for Ellis and Dallas County that will be in effect until 3.26 p.m. So please be aware of that. We got Bruce Bochy coming up in about 20 minutes, but I was reading an article from The Athletic and I tweaked some of them. These are early MLB takes. Do you think they are overreaction or reality? First one. Pitchers get hurt a lot. Well, actually, oh, name one. The injury to Spencer Strider makes the Phillies the favorite in the NF N- NL East. Ooh, that's a good question. You overreaction or reality? Reality. Ooh, okay. Next question. Reality. Okay. It's really close. It's not an easy. That's not an easy yes, but. Phillies have better pitching now. Atlanta has a hair better hitting. It's, yeah. The other, team reaction. the other teams aren't good in there. Or reality. The Astros run in the AL West is finally over. Overreaction. Overreaction. No! Verlander's coming back soon. Their bullpen has blown games that their names and their history say they shouldn't be. Right. So I think at the end of the year, Astros are going to be between 85 and 95 wins. I also think the Rangers are going to be between 85 and 95 wins. No, I think the Rangers are going to be between 85 and 97 because, Mike, you told me if they just go 6 and 4 uh, every 10 games, mm-hmm. that gets you to 97. We're 0 and 1 in our next 10. Yeah. It's okay. We got plenty Still of time. Do it. Plenty of time to make Shea that up. Langoliers. He won't Shea do that. Langoliers. That won't happen today. I guarantee it. At this pace, he's going to lead everybody in homers. And I thought I led everybody in homers. Just Man, are people being mean to you on the text again? Nah. Okay. All right. So you say the Astros aren't done. Bold take by you guys. MLB over. How is that bold? It is funny to look so at standings and see that the two teams tied for last in our division are the Astros and Mariners. It's like it will be at the end of the year. I, I don't, Mark that. I don't think that. But if it turns out to be true, that would be amazing. Overreaction or reality? Wyatt Lankford cannot live up to the enormous rookie hype put on him. It's tough. He can't. I, I wish he could, but he can't. Is he, this who had? I'm part of the problem, by the way. When you, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's really good. So that's another thing. But Kevin. The Bryce Harper hype was far more than this. Oh, yeah. Like, we're experiencing this like because we're local than and this. we're excited about it. Yeah, far earlier. So it was like five, four years we had to wait for him to become that. Yeah. I I, I do think the, that the hype locally is is nuts. Nationally, I still think it's lower uh, than, than it is by far here. I'm with you. I saw today. They're like, Orioles game is free on MLB TV. Jackson Hall, that's yes. the dude right now. Yeah. The hype is, I don't think he can either. Like, at this point, he needs to, with only missing 10 games, pretty much, because of the call-up just 10 games into yeah. the season, he's a guy that I think people are projecting. The hype is he bats 350 with 40 home runs, 150 runs, and 150 RBIs. Like, that's the hype right. of, especially in the card world, like, that's what he has to do. And Wyatt Langford's cards are slowly going down, by the way. They're still very expensive. But they're slowly going down because people are like, oh, he's not going to hit a home run every series and he's not going to have an RBI every game. Since you brought up Jackson Holiday, was is this our 30 seconds on Orioles? Oh, yeah. Go for it. Completed. We did it. We did it. I still think they're great and I can't wait to watch Jackson Holiday either. Do you still, but we're still to the point where we think Wyatt Langford can have a season that people are like, whoa. Oh, I think he could win rookie of the year. Yeah. Last year, Gunnar Henderson won rookie of the year. I don't have his stats pulled up. It was like either 28 or 32 home runs with under 100 RBIs yeah. and he batted under 300. So if I tell you that Wyatt Langford hits 28 home runs, bats 280 with 85 RBIs, isn't that an unbelievably Great first year right out of college. And by the way, but that's not living up to expectations. He is still on pace right now for 88 RBIs. So even after a slower start. 
Now, as of yesterday, let's go, let's go back a day. Overreaction or reality, the Norfolk Tides could have beaten the Oakland A's. So that is the Orioles AAA affiliate. Not if Mason where, Miller pitches. Where they had Jackson Holiday, Kobe Mayo, a lot of their top players. Do you think a AAA team, that AAA team specifically, could have defeated the Oakland A's? In a series, I bet they could win a game. Okay. A seven-game series? Well, mm, I was thinking three-game series. And okay. I, I, I'll tell you, don't, watching Oakland, it's one game watching them. They're four and seven. So they're not that bad. Now, I was talking to somebody who is a Chicago White Sox fan. They're two and nine, and they're on a one-game winning streak right now. Their pitching sucks. And they're now now Luis Robert is hurt yeah. for a while again. And so I think see, I, I I will say this. I think at the end of the year, Oakland is not one of the three worst teams in baseball. How about okay. that? I think they might be the fourth worst, but sure. I'm not putting them way way ahead of that. But I think the White Sox, the Rockies. Ooh. Okay, you're going to have to do some work, Oakland. But it's going to be maybe they're not the third worst team in baseball at the end of the year. But those two teams will be worse than Oakland. I brought this one up just to see what you think for the sake potentially of your kiddo. It's not just a slow start. Age and decline are catching up with Francisco Lindor. He has gotten off to an awful start. He still moves well and does a lot of things defensively. So I think if age was catching up, we'd see him slowing down at shortstop. Okay. So I disagree with that. He seems like a guy that doesn't mind the spotlight. He is obviously the face of New Balance until yeah. Shohei. I don't know what it is, but in a way, he's struggling in New York. And this happens. The last two years were better than the yes. first year for sure. Uh He's going to, at the end of the day, he's going to be above a 230 hitter. I know that's a low standard. Yeah. Uh, I thought for sure when he was with Cleveland and went to New York that his status was going to go way up. Also, New York put a lot of money in that team with Verlander and Scherzer and everything that they were doing, Edwin Diaz, to try to win it all. And it has gone in another direction. I wonder this. I know this is another question. So I think it's an overreaction that he's just going to be a bad player the next three or four years. He's not old. He's 29. And he's I, the same I, age as Corey yeah, Seager. I, I think he just turned 30. 30 but, yeah. okay. And then Corey Seager's turning 30 at the yeah. end of this month, I think. So I don't think it's age and that decline, but I wonder if he regrets signing in New York. I understand he doesn't regret the money. I totally right. get that. I just wonder if he regrets going to New York. I, I, I also wonder, like... How much does winning affect things? Especially when you're talking about regret, the regret part of sure. it. When you're not winning and you kind of probably sign there. I know you got your big payday, but you kind of expected that they would build some things. And you then never they get did. booed they in Cleveland. Think of this. If Francisco Lindor, I'm just looking at his stats, 45 at bats this year, and it's he's batting 089. He wouldn't be getting booed here. He just wouldn't. If he was yeah. a Texas Ranger... Let's just take opposite. Corey Seager went to the Mets and Francisco Lindor came to the Texas Rangers. We wouldn't be booing him every time they announced him at the plate. They do in New York. And he doesn't seem to be handling that well. It's not fun for anybody. But to be like, you're booing me eight games into the season and yeah. he was good last yeah. year. He wasn't great, but he was good. It's just, it's probably not fun for him. And then he saw last year Verlander and Scherzer get traded. He's going to probably see Edwin Diaz get traded. Hey, by the way, Rangers, that might not be a Take bad a move either yeah. in June or July is to call up the Mets again and say, hey, you want to pick up a lot of money at Edwin Diaz? We'll add a better prospect to, to figure this one out. Is I think that Lindor might, it's tough to not let this out, but behind the scenes go, can you trade me? To who? Not here. We don't Oakland. have a spot for him. I do like Corey Seager at short. As much as I love Francisco Lindor, and he's a better defensive player than Corey Seager, Corey Seager's a much better offensive player. But Corey Seager, could he play third? And then we're, we're good there until Josh Young gets back, and then we can trade Josh oh, Young. Oh, man. I mean, to what? be honest, I don't know. you want me to throw something at you as they just take the field? And I don't. What if he got traded to the Dodgers so you don't have to play Mookie Betts at shortstop? Oh, I'd hate it. 
I'd hate it. I mean, Mookie's doing yeah. great at shortstop, but you move him back to second where Terrifying. he said he was going to play, and now Francisco Lindor for the next five years is the shortstop for the for the yeah. L.A. Dodgers. Did we just call the Dodgers Team USA at that point? Like, that's well, the, that's, oh, yeah, I know. He's from Puerto Rico, oh, Francisco team Lindor. World. Okay, how about that? He just let off with a hit as well. All right, overreaction Hitters or hit. reality, it's only a matter of time before the Marlins start trading their players. I hope so. Because that team... They're 1-11? and 11 They right have now. talent on their team. It's a weird thing that I, I get that they're not going to win a division. And even before the season, I wouldn't have said, hey, they're not competing in that division. But they do have some talented players. So if they start wanting to sell off, I want the Rangers to start plucking. Sure. What I you, mean, their manager's already out, right? Like, Skip Strumacher's already saying that he's looking elsewhere at the end of the season. Yeah. What do you want first from them? Do you want a starting pitcher, or did, would you rather go try and grab bullpen pieces? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, try and get the, what was the package, the Cole Hamels, Jake Diekman package, where you double up and get both at the same time? Yeah, I'm looking at, I don't know. I did like him a lot out of college, but he hasn't had a great major league career. AJ Puck, who's like six foot seven lefty. Like I wouldn't mind him. His numbers are not good to start the year. He has 14 walks and 10 and two thirds. I take that back now. I would not like AJ Puck because that is way too many walks. Okay. You but, know what? I think maybe so we'll have to look yeah, around. Maybe but I, I would, study here. Yeah. They had one of their good pitchers. I'm sorry I'm drawing a bl bl blank because I, I know it's not Suarez. It might be Perez. I know it doesn't sound good, but they had a stud pitcher who immediately got hurt. Serves an L. A couple more quick things for you. Overreaction reality. The Angels should just go ahead and release Anthony Rendon. What is, what's, does it say what's left on his contract? I believe he has two years left on his contract. Is he batting .02 right now? Man, he's got to be something like that. In his five seasons with the Angels, he's never hit 10 home runs, had 35 RBIs, or played 60 games in a season. He is currently, Kevin, batting 150 it's not bad. with zero home runs. Yeah, dude, from... Tw from this was... Hamilton? Can I tell you something? Josh if they Hamilton do release all over him, again? Yeah. If they were to release him, which I don't think they will, I'd pick him up. Would you? Yeah, for right now. Yeah. Even though he's been he's been terrible for a while, man. You're picking him up on league minimum. If he's terrible for you for two weeks, you release him yourself. Yeah. What if he comes here and he's like, I like it here. I like the team here. I like the environment. Like, I'm not saying he's going to go back to 2019 Washington National. I totally get that. But you have a major injury right now in Josh Young. He's not coming back till June. And I'm not saying Josh Smith isn't doing a nice job. Smith is doing a nice job. He played shortstop yesterday to give Corey Seager the day off. And I do like Zeke Duran. By the way, I didn't count his pitches yesterday in his last at-bat. He had 24 pitches seen in his first three at-bats yesterday, wow. drawing two walks. I thought that was very impressive and growth. But if you release a guy like that, I'm doing my homework and going, What's what's I'm paying him league minimum on a game to game basis, and his defense hasn't been as miserable as his batting okay. in the, in that time. So that is that is one thing. But you do need he needs to find a bat if I'm going to do the that. guy I was thinking about was Yuri Perez, who they're not trading. He's 20 years old for Miami. He was a pitcher last year. He went five and six with a three one five ERA. We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, we move into the expressway with some Mike Likes It, but also we will talk with Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochy right here on 105.3 The Fan. Are you
segment of the KNC Masterpiece is the Expressway, and it's brought to you by On Time Experts. One, two, swing and a miss. He struck him out on a fastball. A half a dozen punch outs for Nate Evaldi through four innings. And he's got a lively heater tonight to go along with the split and the curve. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan, where unfortunately the Rangers would actually lose that game last night on a night when the Stars and the Mavericks won. For the folks out there across the Metroplex, we talked about the flash flood warning in Ellis and Dallas County earlier. 
That has now been extended out to Rockwall and Collin County as well. So if y'all are out there, just be careful. We might switch it up right here if that's okay. I'm going to text my wife real quick. Uh, okay. She's in Collin County. Okay. So. And do some Mike Likes It yeah. before Boach. All right, guys. So I got to touch one of the coolest things in Rangers history yesterday. I couldn't believe. World Series trophy? What I saw. Well. You're not supposed think, to touch that. I I don't even know where that's at right now. Okay. I'm sure it's in the building somewhere. Right. Like probably in the offices or maybe at the owner's house. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a good question, but I got to touch and not get to grab it like a real bat because it is very fragile at this point because it is broken, and I forgot that it is broken. You broke part of it, didn't you? No. Okay. Corey Seager's game-tying Game 1 oh. World Series bat. I couldn't believe it That's when I saw cool. it. It was so cool and so broken. <laughs> you know it, what's interesting it's like, like if that. you held it like a bat and wiggled it it might split <laughs> like as so in broken. like and i'm you know so they the people who have it know like it is a very fragile piece right now does it but, need to be preserved like yeah, that they, they, yes it can't they, fall apart for they said for like kind of the matching to make sure it's because i said i think you could do this and push this in it'd still be broken but they're like no you want to keep it exact the way that it okay. fell down on the ground after his extra inning at bat where it's broken they're like you keep it like that and I, these are things that you kind of learn we had on darren Ravel earlier in the week and yep and i was thinking to myself you know this is a one-on-one -on -one piece and i mean there is pine tar cake all over that thing yeah and there are ball marks all over that thing and the donut wore off the black paint it's, you could see that on his bat that he's yeah. currently using too and I'm going to throw this out in Texas Rangers history. I'm going to throw out. Is there anything better than that bat? Is Garcia's bat where he hit the home run better? Is Garcia's bat? I have a hard time is, with that. Is, Gar is Garcia's, I call them rainbow sherberts. I know they're not, but are his shoes in the oh, Houston ALCS more important than that? Is Nolan Ryan's 5,000 strikeout ball better than that? I'm throwing out I things. I don't think so to that last one just because that was an amazing individual uh, accomplishment. But you did win the World Series, not just make the World Series. So I would go with one of the... I think I would go with the Seager bat above all else. Okay. <sighs> the store that that He had a great year last year. And I think he had that bat the entire year. And, and like he won you the said, MVP of the World yeah, Series. He now he only in, used it for game one. Yeah. And and he, you know, Bochi did say that he thinks it was like a 40 ounce bat after all the pine, pine tar, tar, like Mike was just yeah. talking about. And you about. can't hold it like a bat, if that makes sense. Like you can, if I were to grab the the part of the bat where you would kind of check and see how heavy it was, you couldn't do it. Because as soon as you, let's say, wiggled it hard, you're going to break the bat even more. Yeah, man. Because it's split. It's splintered a lot. I will also say at, at this. The, at the narrowest part, the skinniest okay. part. This is the, the other part about that, though, Mike, is we knew that he had that bat for a majority of the season, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know how many other people were paying attention. Like, it's we very Wonder Boy-ish. Yeah. If you've ever watched The Natural, which is a movie that's a zillion years old. That yeah. is a good movie. It's a, it's, I think it, I wonder if it still holds up. I bet it does because it's kind of like this, hey, we're kind of using a little bit of Babe Ruthian stuff yeah. here with a fictional story. So, Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm going to go with it. Yeah, he hit that home run, a very significant home run in the World Series. That, that in a series where we won the World Series. It's not like if Josh Hamilton's bat was there. So that's the greatest piece yeah. of Rangers history. Yeah. I, I think it is. In the Rangers kind of Hall of Fame area too. I don't know if it's ready for... Is it ready for the public to see? If it is, I don't know about it. I am not positive. I've also... I think, I think, I think it is. Also, think his is. Game 1 jersey is there. I've got to see and, and touch the Game 1 jersey. Uh, jersey for Corey Seager. I'm assuming he also wore it in game two also. And so, I don't think he changed jerseys. I don't, maybe they do. Maybe in, maybe in today's world of how authentic things are and how much memorabilia they want. Do you think that players wear a game one world series yes. jersey than a game two game? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Somebody asked a couple more questions 
the Spores glove that he spiked All right. or the baseball? Because you talked about how specialized authentication can be. And if you could tell me, this is it. This is the baseball that ended the World Series. I bet they authenticated series. it yes. very quickly. And so that's what I kind of think about. I realize the Corey Seager bat was amazing. But if you're telling me I had possession of the ball, which ended the World Series, and you want it, man, that would be amazing. I'll add this, though. If I have a wall of stuff and I have a wall of balls, that one ball isn't sticking out when I look up there. That bat, if I have like a wall of bats, Especially that bat's going to look you. And... Hey, why is that one broken? Oh, yeah. right. here's the story, Kevin. I'm bad at this. Obviously, like a heritage auctions, golden auction, you know, they would be better at uh, giving an estimate of what they think it would go for at auction. I remember trying to buy the Evan Carter first base hit in the World Series ball, I think. Do you remember when I was trying to get that off of MLB.com? Yes, and it went for like, if I'm remembering right, it went for like $3,600 for that ball. That was just a base hit. His first ever Whoa. base hit in a World Series. How much do you think that bat would go for if it auctioned off? Billion. And I don't think they're going to do that. I think it's going to be in Rangers history. But I mean, at least 50K, right? That's what I was thinking. At least 50,000. A Ranger fan w would want that bat for at least 50, yes. right? Maybe 51. Would you I mean, sure. So you can yes. get you can Thanks, get a Corey. replica World Series ring. Uh -huh. Like the real deal that the players got. That cost $75,000 from Jason of Beverly Hills. Wouldn't you rather have I Yes, that, I would. The I one bat rather than the yes, the I World Series like so I kind of want Jason from Beverly Hills to make me that bat now. You know, the broken, now I kind of want a diamond studded bat. It's going to be all diamond like studded and everything. No, yeah, I think I would rather have, regardless of the price, I think I would rather have that bat. I mean, as far as I know, ring? there's 63 yeah. of those rings that yeah. were given to players and bat. slash coaching staff. That's one bat. And I get Corey Seager used another bat the next day, but that's the bat that hit the home run to tie the game up and again the bat that was with him through most of the all the playoffs against houston all those games that was the bat he was using like that's uh, i'd go to 52 kevin well okay, I'm, I'm asking sure. this if it costs 75k and i get that there's in a in a way that is just a piece of wood if you're just looking at it from the value of what the product is and I get that the ring has obviously diamonds and I'm assuming platinum and gold. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there's more value to that. If you're just looking at it from that is firewood and that is diamonds and bunch of rocks, gold and platinum and stuff. So I, I get it from that standpoint, but you can, there's going to be, and now you can buy $10,000 rings, by the way, I think here pretty soon, like Jared Sandler and Eric Nadell, and those guys are going to get their rings. Now, those are different. Those are not $75,000 rings. Still pretty amazing. Yeah, but I think those are ten to fifteen k. I I think those rings that they're getting. Yeah, they're expensive. But I, putting that aside, it's not what that costs, right? It's that what means, it means. For yeah. sure. Now, I, I do have a question about I would about trade, that. if I was Jared Sandler, I'd trade my ring for that bat. Wow. Would you? If you, yes. I don't think I would though. Yeah, would. Okay, All sorry, right. not to. Bat. I like this. This is fun. Not, right? not to send us in a totally different direction, Corey. Sorry for jumping in there. I don't think I would because I would feel like I earned that ring as being part of the team, as opposed to I just bought Corey Seager's bat. I understand right. if you want the bat. Oh, I can see but, that. But for Jared and Eric, they, they work the game. They earn those rings. Okay, so that was that was part of this that I was gonna ask you because mike you have you stand a chance for this of if the rangers are going to win another world series you stand a chance Think of about that getting the ring put Holy in your hand cow. and kevin and you and i do not like as we're here we interview we do interviews oh, we go man. we're part of it we feel like it. yeah i'll I let know, you I wear my ring that, follow -up. that would be awesome and jared's gonna come up here uh, into the studio and he's gonna flash his ring and he's gonna yeah. show it off he's gonna be like look how shiny it is Corey. and i'm gonna be like Ugh. but i'm not really that jealous of it because like you just said he did the work for it yes are you a little jealous of the fact that jared gets a ring yeah oh no and like you could be simultaneously jealous and thinking you deserve it right yeah. i have I, I have i'm not getting a ring and i called two whole games last year in washington <laughs> right before the all-star break and a lot of and man can you believe it? how many rangers how many new rangers fans are there because of you they I'll tell you what, there are, Tolos are there's, there's no way I can shout out all the Tolos that say hello to me at these games. And obviously 
to be honest, and I get it. It was a school night. It was weather night. There are a lot less people at that Oakland Athletic game than the Houston Astros series. Sure. It was still a decent for a, for what we had last. I guess last night was Tuesday for a Tuesday night uh, against the Oakland Athletics. It was still a pretty good crowd led by the Shea Langoliers group from Keller who yeah, was enjoying yeah. the heck out of that game. Yeah, but uh, a lot of Tolos more than ever. I mean, it's I don't even know it, how to express this. Five times more. It's people shouting out Tolo and it stuff at the Ranger game. I, it's, I would say during the <laughs> Astros games that I was there, I was there for two of them that they were broadcast by Bally's. I was doing pre and post. I'm going to try not to exaggerate. 250 people yelled Tolo. I don't, I to think, me, I definitely or said hello, listen to the station. They might not just yell Tolo, but like. Acknowledge. I definitely believe our you show because we've talked about this for the last couple of years. Like, I know Corey gets recognized everywhere, but the rest of us were getting recognized a little bit more as well in a whole bunch of different places where you get more social media traction and everything. And so it is amazing. I did like this text and go, and you only thought you were the home of the Rangers, but you didn't get a ring. I do think that's a funny text. I understand why, but I'm both jealous right. and proud of Jared because Jared knows as much about Rangers baseball as anybody, and he deserves it. Let me throw this out. We just talked about Corey Seager's bat, the the bat that hit the homer against Seawall to tie up game one of the World Series. They And they have, by the way, if you're like up in the, I guess you can see it from different sections, but they have a huge now poster. They took Juan Gonzalez down. Totally get it. Because they have that picture of Seager finishing his swing and yelling. Okay. Yeah. Fine. You, you got to put that up. I that's, get it. Sorry, sure. Juan. There's yeah. nowhere else to put it, though. Yeah, and Ruben Sierra and Juan Gonzalez got taken down. Maybe they're somewhere else. I just don't know where they went. But I like I like to think they're somewhere else and not in that Indiana Jones storage shed at there's the end. There's probably of, a lot of p p fans what, walking in the same If going, they don't want it guys? anymore, I'll take the Ruben Sierra. I'll yeah. figure a play. I'll put it on the side of my house. Me too. Yeah. Will you? Yeah, I would. How long does it stay up there before you're instructed to take it down? Not long. <laughs> okay. But I think it'd be really fun. From the 469, late to the party, but huge shout out to y'all and the station. I got a four pack of tickets to Saturday's game. Took my first, both of my sons to the game. And they hollered at you and you hollered back. Thank you. Now I'm putting up the Corey Seager bat. Oh my God. It was just so amazing. Guys, I just can't tell you how amazing it was to hold that piece of history. Were you nervous at all that you like might accidentally? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. A little bit. But the other person who has the bat was making sure. And they trust me. They know I'm not stupid. Uh because he I'm not I'm not I'm saying there could be somebody that doesn't understand broken bats sure. and could really break that bat sure. completely and sure. ruin it. Is I'm putting that piece of history in our Metroplex up against any other piece of history in Dallas Cowboys history. In Dallas Mavericks history and Dallas Stars history, what would be the piece that you would want to own or that you would think would be the most valuable? Is it like a Red whole skate? Is it like Roger <laughs> Stallbox? Oh, that would be cool. Is it Roger Stallbox like jersey or helmet from the first ever Super Bowl the Cowboys won? Is it Super I don't Bowl know? Six. Is it is it Bob Lilly's helmet, he threw up into space and it came back down after they lost the Super Bowl to the Colts. I, I don't know. I This is tough. I I want it is tough. I'm gonna go is it Dirk's game six jersey. I understand. I promise there's gonna be a lot of answers okay. that come in that I that I understand. I'm going with the jersey from Roger Staubach in Super Bowl six. That was the first Super Bowl the Cowboys ever won. He was also the MVP. And if you're looking for like an all-around human to represent history, that's a pretty damn good choice right there. I take Super Bowl six Roger Staubach jersey. I love it. I think that's a great answer. Now I ask you this question. Do you think that still exists? Yes. Where is it? I think he has it. It's a good question I for Roger he, Staubach. I don't know if he had it at the time. I think he's, people just didn't care I, about things like that back then. So I just don't know if it I still think he's exists. Found a way to get back to it. He's got it. Does he? You have know you this one. Yeah. Oh. Does he have his other Super Bowl jerseys, the ones he lost and the ones he won? Mm -hmm. 
Not the ones he lost. Not not in the same way. Now, like, I throw way, this yeah. up against oh, Jerry Jones's suit that he wore in 1993 when they won the Super Bowl. Because, I mean, Jerry is the Dallas Cowboys. No, if way anything, bigger than Roger. Mike, way bigger I'd than Tom Mike, stop. Landry Fedora. You know if anybody wants anything from that time, it's Jimmy Johnson's Apex uh, coat that he had on. That's oh, the, yes. The, oh, I, d- I do want 500 that. 500 people could have stood there and watched that team win. It was Jerry <laughs> Jones who did it. I, You know what, man? Because like jerseys are so like jerseys and shirts, there are lots of things like that that float around. The bat, that's the one I want. That that's a unique piece, uh, like very unique because of even the way that it is, and it's a first thing. Like that's Tony Dorsett's your first ever favorite player. He is my first ever favorite player. What if player. I presented that bat I would like versus the, the jersey that he wore when he had the ninety nine yard? I like the helmet from that. Like a, a jersey's like I, I'm not a huge jersey sign okay. fan person, but the helmet or something like that, I would love. That would be pretty significant from the ninety nine yard run or the football or that the, he carried. Yeah. Ooh, what about the football for the hail mary? Um, that comes up from the two one four. That's a good Whoa. one. Oh, that's a good one. Multiple or the people, orange. There's a lot of the really field. good ones coming in on the text I, right now. I will say I understand people who say this. I don't think this would be my choice. From the nine four zero, they said Emmett's cleats from the record breaking game, and from the nine zero three, the ball where Emmett broke the all time rushing record. I understand that. The only reason I don't think I would say that is because while that achievement was historic, it was in a run-of-the-mill game. Okay. And I think I'm trending towards, I want something from a historic, like a winning game, not just a, you set this record in a regular game. But if you could get them, obviously you'd be like, hey, good for me. I'm hoping, and I know it would be behind the scenes, they're not going to let the Ranger fans hold the bat, but I'm hoping probably not pretty soon that uh, that is in the Rangers Hall of Fame <laughs> Uh, or I think they have like a, maybe a, they're going to have like kind of a Hall of Fame room and then also kind of the 2023 playoff World yes. Series run room yes. where people get to see that back because it was super cool. OK, so I have one more thing in Mike likes it. Then we're going to have to move on. Do you want to hit any of the other answers? Because uh, okay. there's, yeah, there's, there's plenty. There's plenty okay, of awesome. Them. Yeah. Tio's popcorn bucket. That's yeah. funny. Oh, that's Ooh. funny one. That one's not as significant as some of these other ones. Multiple people, the puck when the stars won the Stanley Cup or, as you said, Brett Hull skate. And that is one interesting thing, Mike. I don't know if you feel this way at all. I wonder with the Mavs, Stars and Rangers, there's just one of them. Right? There's just the one title. Whereas with the Cowboys, I pick Staubach, but you can go into a couple different eras and pick up Super Bowl type memorabilia. So I wonder how many more people are like, I want it from this because this is the only one. So we had multiple people saying the puck or the skate from Brett Hull. Chuck Howley's Super Bowl MVP when he was on the losing team. That's the only time okay. we've. Uh, Anybody put we've... in the speech that Jerry wrote out when he said he's all in for 2024? Mike. Mike. <laughs> Mike, we're, where you're we're having so, so much. Well. We're doing. Oh. We're having oh, fun talking Charlotte about everything Hornets else announced. right that's now. How I, that's how I feel. Every time God. Mike talks about things like this, don't worry. I feel like the Charlotte Hornets announced. In 15 days, we're getting seven Hall of Famers because Jerry's running the show. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Right. And what, impossible. What want, this is how I feel every time you talk about Jerry and the Cowboys. And Dante Exum comes down with the rebound. Irving, you know he's gonna make. The- <laughs> That's how I feel every time you go over to Jerry and the Cowboys. I, I was just, I was going to say, like, this kind of goes to the thing. Jerseys are and games are cool, but the Brett Hull skate is a story in sure. itself, right? Yeah. The, just like that bat is a story, yes, right? The, the jersey's cool, but the bat is the you're story. Right. Kurt Schilling's you're right. you're bloody right. sock. Whether or not it's real doesn't matter. It's the story. And that's look, are you trying to say that you, you believe it's, it's real? Not real? Dude, a lot of there's a lot of stories out there about that. Again, a story in a, so that's why those are the the more unique things rather than just a jersey. It's not like that dude woke up and put that jersey on and was like, This, this thing's is, gonna be, you know. I'm gonna say something that's so wrong of me. What the hell then why say it? Because it's great. Get that Kyrie Irving audio ready again. <laughs> if I was a fan of the New York Mets in 86, I would want Bill Buckner's glove. Out of everything oh, sure. okay, in that, no, that's oh, fair. Out Absolutely. of everything in that World Series, is that right? No, it's not even from my team. It's a glove that missed a ground ball. But I would want, out of all of the things, I would want Bill Buckner's floppy first baseman's glove. I... 
I that's, think that's that is fair. fair. That is yes, because that thing is part of that yeah. that specific one. If little you're story a Miami Heat there. fan, don't you want one of the whistles that mm -hmm. the refs blew seven million times for Dwayne Wade? Like that was the MVP, <laughs> not Dwayne Wade. Like he didn't do anything. He just let the guys blow the whistle. He said, "Hey, David Stern, call another one for me, brother." You know, in in like you know that piece of of bat that Roger Clemens threw at uh at Piazza. At Piazza? Right? I want that. Like yeah. that again. That's part that's of that. Like one. nobody else has anything like right. that there's nothing like it dude i don't need anything else mike likes it was a hit again i'm sorry <laughs> i'm just sorry to everybody else that so many people have to listen to us i because just got a of message the content that i give i just got but a message that says sorry I but just, i love basic and i'm I like just, oh. i want to apologize for being too good at times it's not fair mm -hmm. <sighs> now i know what like all the greats feel like when they're doing their thing and you're just like god i just stole all the listeners away from everybody else i feel bad we, we the numbers stolen. actually do bad yeah the up. numbers are showing we stole it all the listeners oh, can we i know it's gonna be tough mike because you just said what an impossibly ego. high bar <laughs> what an ego. can we possibly transition to something else that will clearly pale in comparison to what you yeah. were just talking yes. about all right Corey, you and i were talking about this before the show the Ravens and John Harbaugh talking about how they will consult to a certain level with Lamar Jackson about some of the things that they were going to do in the draft. So I want to start with that as a springboard. Do you think that's a good idea? Do the And we've talked about this. The Cowboys do that before. How much input do you get? And is that a good idea? Because I feel like, and I might just be thinking about this from basketball, which might be wrong. I feel like sometimes athletes are not the best general managers and so maybe this is not the route that you should go um well i mean let's take they, th they're taking a shot at chris young right now huh? that is that that was not oh. the shot i was taking uh, there there michael are a jordan. lot of um yeah michael jordan's terrible at it the LeBron james is terrible at it. <clears throat> tony romo was a fantastic quarterback right yeah didn't win the super bowl but like you watch him play and you're like quarterback, special yeah. special quarterback but he also said, "Bring me the bring me that Gavin Escobar guy." And Troy Aikman said, "Bring me David Lafleur." It never, it yeah. never, it never worked out. And so, and then on top of it, you have a room full of Brian Broadduses that you pay for this job, and you're you're telling, you're saying, "Hey guys, I know I pay y'all to, and y'all are the best in the world. You have the best eye. You can find talent, Mike. You you know baseball better than anybody." And you're gonna find me that oh, pitcher. Not than anybody. And, okay, and, and so There's like Smoltzy, I like Smoltzy. I was really just kind of bringing you into the conversation here, but yeah, thanks. No, the and so you're telling these people that you are say are your experts that you don't care really what the what they think and who their players are that they think are best for this team, and that's where it is kind of a kick in the face to those guys who are taking a lot of pride in going out and scouting. And making sure that they are they are, have the right information on the right guys, but you also have a guy who is very highly paid, who is you are saying we're putting the entire franchise in your hands. You get to take it on and you get to do something with it. So, Pressure. Kevin, I do feel like you need some input from that guy, but at the same time, you have a whole scouting department that's going to be ticked off that you didn't take their advice. Why are you? Why am I even here? If okay. you're not going to utilize me. Can I tell you the first thing I would want to ask of this quarterback? And and can I, uh, sure. before, before you do that, that's where I would, if I'm the GM here, I would make sure my scouts are there with them so they can hear what the quarterback wants. Okay. I'll bring them in after this first question. Okay. Because this is what I want to know. I want to ask the quarterback. It could be Lamar. It could be Dak. It could be her. What can you do better this year that makes us better as a football team i don't want to hear if you get me this if you get me this if you get me this i want to start with what can you do better and i feel like i springboard off of that if i get like what feels like a true honest answer then i go from there and i was like thank you very much for your feedback now let's bring in the scouts are there position groups that you're looking for and then i i would maybe ask for position versus player or mm -hmm. position group as, as opposed to player, but I would want to ask that first question first. See what kind of honest answer you get, and then go from there. I think that's a, and you got to really know that that's a genuine answer. Yes, because it's it's very difficult for a lot of. What's the answer you get, Kevin, to the question? What's your biggest weakness? I work too hard. 
I'm too much of a perfectionist. Not me. What's, yeah. Mike, what's Fair. your biggest weakness? Everything comes too easy to me. <laughs> Oh man, I was ready to answer that question for you. <laughs> Be, so like that, and sometimes so, the filter just shuts off between brain and mouth. And you know, and a lot of guys, even when I asked Dane Dunning, yeah, this is what my therapist says. I asked me. Dane Dunning about, hey, what, like, do you would you want to pitch against your lineup? And what's Dane? No, he doesn't want to pitch of against course, his yeah. lineup. But what was it? Yeah, of course, I'm going to challenge anybody. Like I'm, I'm in, I'm up for the challenge. And so I don't need my quarterback to be macho in front of me for this answer i need him to be very vulnerable and so i gotta figure out how to get him to say to open up and say the real thing look man we signed you to the big contract you're our guy we have faith in you but we really need to get down to the truth of this so that we can do this so what is and if he says look i gotta be a more accurate passer or i have to be able to trust the receivers I'm throwing to, I haven't trusted them yet. And that's where trying to figure out what that, what that is for him. And I also have to kind of tap into some of the other guys, my other receivers and tight ends like Mark Andrews. Why does, what do y'all have? How do you, what's the connection y'all have that makes y'all work so well that he can't quite find. What do you think about that? And so can I go find something to add to it? That's similar to it. Cause I'm not just going to say, do you like this guy or not? Yeah, he's fast. I like him. I got to know more about what you want from a receiver or if you need a better offensive lineman. I, I'm not asking this in a negative connotation. I'm really curious how the whole team works together. Do you think if you need to go to your quarterback to all these other players to get the breakdown that like maybe your breakdown's on the other side? Like maybe your breakdown is with you or the scouts or whoever. Yeah. And y'all just aren't doing a good job. Yeah. Or, or man, we have a really good team. But we just have to figure out how to beat the Chiefs. And everybody's having to Good deal luck. with that. You know, that's a, that's a big yeah. problem. But but for this part of the conversation of what are the questions that you want to ask the quarterback, I, I really do. If it's Dak Prescott, if it's Dak Prescott, do you want to ask Dak Prescott, hey, man, and I, I think the Cowboys have kind of had this conversation with him before, too. I mean, the Cowboys have uh, taken that advice from him before. So. I do. I really want to ask Dak, hey, man, we've been working on building this team for a while. What do we need? What are we putting together here? Because what if Dak had told me I got to keep Zeke around? That's your friend. Are we keeping Zeke around for that? So there's there is a lot of honesty that I need to help him and and let him know that it's a next level that we're trying to take this thing as well. I, I'm I'm fascinated by this conversation. And look, if if it's a, if it's a franchise that traditionally has done pretty well, like the Ravens, it feels tough to be like. I don't think you're going about things the right way. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it feels like you just kind of default to, hey, you do your thing and we'll go along with it. And so I understand why they would say that. Yeah, but I, I mean, with with and I think with every one of these quarterbacks, you do want insight on what they do well and what they do poorly from them so that you can know not to ask them to do that. Because a guy's going to, with a coach, he's going to try and do everything he can to prove to coach that he's the guy, right? He's yes. not going to admit yes. that he has a, a weakness anywhere because, hey, I, I you know, but I don't want to ask you to do this if you can't do this. I'm not going to ask you to make a throw if you can't make that throw. Can I ask you if this is somebody doing their job great or poorly? Did you see what happened in the Celtics game? No. They, <laughs> Milwaukee was whistled for four fouls. That was the fewest ever in an NBA game according to basketball reference, ever. The Boston Celtics got zero free throws. Okay. That had never happened in an NBA game ever. So do you think, because I think it was Jason Tatum who tweeted out, like, welcome to life in the NBA being on the Celtics or something along those lines. Do you think that the officials fundamentally did a poor job? Or do you think, hey, you did a great job. Thank you for not mucking up the game. Oh with your man, calls. that's a really that's a really good question there because a lot of times I don't want fouls called throughout games. Now maybe every once in a while I see Kyrie go at the basket for something, uh, but I don't want a lot of foul calls. We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan. Coming up next, this time we will talk with Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochi right here on 105 through the fan. The fan is.
You're about to be masterpieced. KNC style, right here on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. If you're looking to spice up your game day grub, reach for the original Louisiana brand hot sauce, the official hot sauce of the Texas Rangers. The original Louisiana brand hot sauce flavor favors the bold. That is also who brings to you Texas Rangers manager Bruce Bochy. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, guys. How's it going there? We're doing we're doing well. We're doing well. I saw what you said last night, obviously, about it's too early to panic, and that made a lot of sense to me when it comes to the bullpen. I, I'm curious, It's is it panic if you move LeClerc not always in the ninth inning role? Like, would you con- is he going to stay there, or do you think moving him is a reasonable response because of the last few games, or does that count as panic? Well, I think that's a fair question, sure. Uh, back Mike Maddox and I were just sitting here talking uh, as we were waiting for your call. I didn't know if my phone was on airplane mode. I have no idea how ah. it was airplane mode. <laughs> That's why it was going to voicemail, so I apologize for that. But, uh, yeah, these are things we're talking about now, uh, you know, light and load on him uh, until he gets his, uh, you know, his good command back and it's not quite there. So, um it, yeah, it's a week in the season, but at the same time, you know, you sometimes you have to adjust, you know, sooner than you, you know you anticipate uh, during the course of a season. So uh, we're talking about this, but it, it. And I'll just give you a situation. I mean, last night uh, we talked about okay, Nate's got first and third. He's getting up there, two outs. We want to cover him, take care of him. Well. You know, it's hard not to bring in one of your guys throwing well, who we brought in Robertson versus uh, uh, LeClerc. That's the game's on the line there. And, and so anyway, uh, this is going to be up to us to find the right pocket, so to speak. And uh, in the right situation, it may be in a blowout game to where he can go out there and work on some stuff and not have every pitch on the line. Uh, so these are things we're talking about now. When you talked about LeClerc's control, I'm curious over the years, I'm sure the answer can be both, but with all the pitchers you've dealt with, when someone struggles with control, do you feel like it's usually a physical thing? Is it more likely to be a mental aspect that's leading to that? I think both. I, I, I do. I think uh, that's what you look at. Um, you know, confidence is it's so important to a pitcher. With confidence comes conviction on um, the pitch that you're throwing and uh, right now, you know, at, even though we, you know, just won a world championship, you know, these guys are human. They they want to have success now, and so that's what we're looking at. You know, see if we can find something. You look at his velocity; it's ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, last year probably just a tick higher than that, but but that'll work if he's getting ball where he, he he's trying to throw it, and that's not happening uh, right now consistently. He'll have a hitter where he just dominates something, you know, and then the next hitter, he's kind of all over a little bit. And so, anyway, uh, that's our job as uh, coaches uh, to help make these guys better. You know, uh, Marcus Simeon, I feel like we're, we're going to see him try to play 162, you know, every chance he gets to go out there and be out there. But I am kind of, you, you have the ability to kind of, move a little bit with Corey Seager, have him have a couple off days and your outfield, the the depth you have there, you have some abilities to juggle that just a little bit. And is that does that make it a more of a luxury or more complicated when you have these opportunities to move guys around and and give guys some rest and then also you have these injuries pop up where you're like, well now we got to add this guy in. Well, I look at it as as a luxury. I do. It's going to enable to keep these guys fresh. I mean, we're what, 10 days in the season, whatever, and uh, 11 maybe. Uh, it's, it's nice to, you know, to have uh, the ability to give guys days off and feel like you're putting a really good competitive team that can win out there. And, and uh, last night, for example, I mean, when you look at our infield, uh, really had one guy uh, out there that started on our team last year. But, mm-hmm. you know, they played well. Smitty had a heck of a game. They kind of got unnoticed. First time up, left-hander out there, um, drives in Marcus. Uh, next time, perfect bunt, uh, set up first and second, a great rally. Uh, um, so it's nice to have you know the depth that 
than we have now. It's going to just make us stronger. We just need to stay away from any more injuries. Uh, uh, I am going to give uh, Langford a day to day. He's been in every game. Granted, most of them have been uh, DHing, but um, he's got a little tightness going on with the back. He'll be fine. And you know, one day we think that will clear up. He'll be back out there. Evan Carter hit the home run yesterday and, and had so many big at bats last year. And you didn't see a lot of emotion from him last year in the playoffs. He just kept playing the game and just was, hey, it's baseball. I'm just playing baseball. Yesterday, a lot of emotion after that home run rounding first base. Was that just uh, kind of a release of frustration or just an excitement of hitting a home run late in the game? I think both. I, yeah, I think he was. I think he's excited how he's swinging the bat right now. And, uh, in fact, he hit a home run. Um, but you look at you know, the timing of that home run. They just tie the game, and uh, we come back and uh, take the lead with this home run. So, yeah, no no doubt, I think both of them came into play there. And, uh, uh, but when we get off to a slow start like him, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's going to feel good to start having some results. And, of course, hit a home run, it puts you ahead late in the ball game. And then I'm going to go back to, I know I was only 19 years old. I was out of high school, but I can remember just my first full season in the minor leagues going, holy crap, this everyday thing is a lot. <laughs> is that a little bit with, I know Langford, you know, went through college baseball, but you're playing Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I know it's very early in the season. Is his body just adjusting to, holy crap, we're playing every day. I, you know why I, I think a little bit. I think he got a taste of it last year, so it wasn't like, uh, he hasn't done it, and he is DHing quite a bit. But with that said, he's probably working more as a TH. As you know, you're sitting there. Well, it's hard to for a young guy, you know, with his energy after and a bat just sit there. So what's he going to do? He's going to go to cage and hit, hit, hit. So he's probably you know um, getting more work in on the DH uh, day versus even playing the left field. So. Um, and that's where he's going to have to, you know, learn how to, you know, handle it, control it, uh, uh, you know, the workload. But he he'll he'll be getting his days off. He's a strong man, though, young man that uh, I think he can handle it. But to your point, it's it's an adjustment. It is, and every day you're seeing a major league pitcher. So um, it's he's going to have his ups and downs. There's no getting around it, and it's going to be up to me uh, to help protect him. Obviously, already this season, and of course last season, I think y'all have done an excellent job with the next man up mentality. I was curious, what are you hoping to see from Davis Wenzel, and what do you think he could provide for the team? Well, I'll start with defense. You know, that's what I look at probably as much as anything when we're bringing somebody up. Wait, I, I just think you, you got to have a – um, good defender out there that's not going to hurt you. And he's he's a plus defender. He can play third, short, second, first base. Uh, so, you know, we, we're looking at him uh, doing a nice job there. Now he's going to provide some power. You know, he showed it last year in Round Rock, uh, you know, with the, what, 30 home runs, whatever. And, and you know, he's he got really good numbers against lefties. So it, it can be a, a platoon type situation, maybe not completely, but pretty close to it, uh, similar to what we had last night. Uh, uh, so yeah, that works. This kid's been impressive. Uh, the last two springs I've seen him, I, I, I just love the way he plays the game. He's got a a, 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 a nice clock. Uh, you know, I'm talking about game awareness uh, in him that it, it works. So he's he's a, he's all all around good ball player. He takes the roster spot of Justin Foscu, who also fought hard to get back to get with the big club, and then he has to go on the injured list. Does your heart kind of kind of break for him in this situation? Gosh, I I, I was stunned it happened. You know, it happened to swing before his base hit, and I had no idea until the next day. And I I know he felt it. But he's probably hoping at the same time, well, I'm going to get up tomorrow. It's going to feel good. And it didn't. So, yeah, you feel for the guy. Yeah, he get, gets up. He gets a base hit. Uh, his first major league hit. He's starting the next day with the left-hander going. He's, you know, he's been told and shows up he can't play. And, you know, I'm sure his family's here. 
So that's that's a big bow. I mean, he's worked hard to get to this point, and I, I'm just amazed at the number of injuries. Uh, not just us; everybody's dealing with a lot of these oblique, of course, the uh, pitchers with the elbows, but you know, it, calf injuries. It, I mean, it's just you're seeing it more and more uh, in today's game. Coach, I'm I'm kind of kind of curious about. We have a luxury of being able to watch the game as a fan and. Watching Nate Evaldi on the hill is just an absolute blast. The dude, he'll get into a jam, and then he gets out of it, and we're like cheering for him like that. I know you cheer for these guys that way, but you also have a lot of things that you have to take into account during this thing, you know, while it's all going on. if you, When was the last time, or do you still find yourself watching a game like a fan? Do you have those moments where you're where you're feeling like, hey, I'm just, I'm just kind of spectating here? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. I've said this. I, I appreciate the gifts and talents that these guys have. Uh, uh, I mean, Nate, he is fun to watch. I, I love watching him. Um, you know, his stuff, his command, his focus, uh, he is just locked in out there. I mean, pitch to pitch. Uh, our guys have learned so much about him. In fact, uh, he's uh, yesterday I saw him talking to uh, Andrew Heaney, they're talking about pitching. He's pitching that day, and they're talking pitching. And things. So, you know, he cares about his teammates, but really all of them. I mean, Dolly, uh, of course, Seager, uh, Marcus. Uh, no, they're, you know, I, I appreciate what you know, what they can do. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still a fan. I got a great seat to watch these guys. And, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's you know, last year, of course, it, you can't beat watching uh, what happened then. So Bradford takes the ball today. His fastball this year is averaging 90 miles an hour. But I was telling these guys, if there was no radar gun, let's just go way back in the day, Boach, when you played, there was no radar guns in the building. Nobody knew how hard anybody was throwing every pitch. The hitter's reaction to Bradford this year is 97 miles an hour. That's what I'm I'm looking at is the, the there's late reaction to his fastball. It's getting on hitters. Can you explain from – being a former catcher and a manager on how Bradford's fastball is playing a lot better than let's say the 90 miles an hour, the radar gun says. Yeah, it does. Uh, and I'll put Dunning in that boat too, uh, cause he's you know, 90, but it plays, uh, plays more than that. And you know, a couple of things come into play, uh, you know, extension that, that, you know, where, where you release it, uh, as far as uh, to home plate, you know, some guys have a little longer extension. He's a big, tall guy, has that. Uh, but the biggest, I think, is uh, deception. And, you know, he hides the ball well, and it you know, comes out. They, they just don't pick it up as quick. And then, you, had, you know, they're conscious of that change up, and now he's throwing more curveballs. So, but he elevates it well, too. And so a high fastball, you know, it's always going to look a little quicker. And uh, so does a good job of going up when he has to. So there's some variables involved with that. And, you know, sometimes you face a guy and throws 99, 100. Uh, I've heard hitters go, man, it, it doesn't look that hard. So uh, deception is such a big part of uh, pitching. That's why you see a lot of guys doing a lot of turning and twisting, trying to get that to make it look quicker. Boach, can you tell from a catcher's standpoint when a guy who is deceptive isn't as deceptive that day? And can you give them a, a, a point from behind the plate of, hey, your glove side's opening up a little bit early or something that is causing the hitter to see the ball better from a catcher's standpoint? Yeah, I, I think what you just said is probably the biggest one. Uh, you know, they're just opening up. And so, you know, the, the hitter can see the ball and everything um, where a lot of guys would take the ball from behind them. And, you know, I, I, I mean, our Chris Young, I, I, I got to talk about him. I mean, see why he was not someone that bowled his way through him, but man, it, it played so much quicker because you know, he came out from behind them and he's a big guy. And big guys are usually long armor. So it's, it's what they're kind of used to, but he was a short armor and it just got on him. And I remember Pujols telling me, I just can't pick up the ball off of them. And uh, uh, so, you know, that's that's the biggest one, I think. Uh, uh, it's just opening up, and then they can see the arm the whole time, where the ball's coming from. So, you know, they have the reference spot, so to speak, uh, where to look every time. 
And outstanding stuff, as always. Appreciate your time, and we look forward with catching up with you again next week. All right, guys. Uh, sorry about that uh, mishap, but uh, good talking with you. No yeah. worries at all. There Happens you go. The best of us. Texas Rangers world champion manager Bruce Bochy. So a couple different things to take out of that real quick. You got to work on airplane mode. That is true. That is true. Don't leave your phone in airplane mode. But Langford with the back with the back tightness, it did sound like they were hoping just the one day off, but he described it as day to day. And then they are in the midst, him and Mike Maddox right now are in the midst of having conversation about, as he said, quote, lightening the load on LeClerc, which what do you mean? What do you feel that load means? Because I think it means the amount of pressure, like the pressure. That's what I think too. Yes. I, I think that means a different inning. I, I think like he would come in in a clean seventh. Or, it, yeah, it sounded it, like he actually gave a great example of, I don't want to put him in on first and third and two outs yes, in the sixth inning yes. with the tie game. Like Whereas That's that's Robertson, not lightening like, the go. load. Yeah. That's that's putting maybe more pressure on him because he's as a closer, you're almost always coming in in a clean inning situation. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'm not going to. So if we're going to lighten the load, I can't put him in. I can't have him warming up and then put him in in a very close game with runners on base right now. We, okay, what about what about come in and get the last out or the last two outs? Is that a possibility? With nobody on base? Yeah, like, you know, I don't know. I guess it would be no right usually, now. Like, I mean, maybe usually you would use the same guy. Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, and I guess this is starting pitcher situation. He's got He's met his max pitches. And you're just like, that's it for you right today. We appreciate it. But I guess yeah, that's, yeah. that's few and far between. I, I wish I could tell you I really know Oakland's lineup well, but I don't. <laughs> but I can see what you're saying is maybe in the sixth inning, Bradford is facing a lefty to start off the inning. Like, he has this one guy. Mm-hmm. And then we're yeah. bringing in LeClerc. But the issue is this. What if it's a tie game and he gives up a double? And so there's a runner on second and nobody out. Do you want LeClerc coming in in that situation right now? I don't yeah. think I do. Yeah, I understand the necessities. But it was fascinating, too, because he's like, oh, yeah, me and Maddox are yeah. literally talking and about then, that right now. I guess you don't think about this, but it was a great point, is maybe Lankford's working too hard being a DH, where he'd be out in the outfield getting ready to play defense there. <laughs> instead of like I'm I need to do something I just swung a bat twice in my at bat and now I have 30 minutes at least until I get another at bat it might be 45 minutes till I get another at bat let's just go down and swing the bat another 50 times we're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan and I don't want to mess up your day so coming up next uh-uh. is the C vlog so what do you mean nope y'all said y'all would rather have Bochi for C block than me so I'm done you love I, Bruce Bochy. I'm going to be honest. Thumbs up. And, I would rather have Bochy on than see too. Yeah. Wouldn't you rather have Bochy than like any segment on the show usually? <sighs> Except know. for your memorabilia segment <laughs> from a, just a minute ago. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I know. That was really good. Mike likes it. <laughs> Gridiron Gravy in March is huge. <laughs> God. There we go. <laughs> Underneath the camera line. Jeez. Coming up next. I don't know what the Cowboys are not doing in free Either. agency. We'll talk, favorite golf. Segment. we'll talk okay. golf in the next segment. On the fan. <laughs> DFW's number one.
of the KNC Masterpiece is also brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. It's brought to you by state-of-the-art weight loss, that soda, and it's brought to you by Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first. That's 214 or 817-333-3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there's never an out-of-pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. That's Frankel and Frankel, the go-to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Mavs are up by 18 points. We play early in the third. Right back at you. 30 points tonight for Luka. His seventh made three. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105. Go eat another fan. double cheeseburger, Grant. Where? Williams. Both the Mavericks and Stars are victorious. Rangers lose the A's. They will look to get it back going once again tonight. Now, a segment that's always a winner. It is the C Block starring Corey Majors. I'm going to count what Reggie played as the comeback audio as his random bit of audio that has nothing to do with the segment. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Tonight. Don't worry about it. You it, you did it. That's two days in a row, bro. You just did it because the but it was all torn up. Like we it, it wasn't anticipated the way that we just did it. Thank you, Reggie. Kevin, we're going to talk golf. I like golf. I do not like golf, but I like you, so I'm in. The I got three prop bets for you that you could have some fun with, but it is the Masters. And Kevin, our friend, uh, our friend Matt Pittman from Meat Church is cooking at the Masters this week. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, that is really cool. By the way, Meat Church in Waxahachie in two weeks, maybe on the same day as the Brett Hole signing at Worth Collecting, they're gonna be having a 10th anniversary extravaganza. So if you want to be in, so we need to be in Waxahachie all day. I, I feel like you do. The whole city of Waxahachie needs to be there. That's a really cool little downtown area. Like when we went down there for worth worth collecting. Whenever Evan, or I'm sorry, whenever White Langford was there, that was a. I walked around. I was like, this place is dope, man. This is a fun little walk around. Did you need to hear my master's predictions? Is that what you're curious? Absolutely about? not. Oh, okay. That's but if you want to. Picked Scotty Scheffler to finish first. He's a Highland Park guy. Will like, Zella Torres. That's that's your dream is to live in Highland Park. That's what you've always said. Not yep. true. That to finish true. second. So Noah could go to Highland Park. Xander. Say Shoffley mm -hmm. to finish third. And the winning score will be a minus 10. I put 278. But now everyone's putting minus in front of theirs. I feel like to show me up. So I'll change. You didn't say 10 under. That's no. the proper golf term. Kevin, will there be a hole in one? They're going to shoot a drop 10. That's no. right. On the 16th hole. Yes. If you pick yes, minus 120. Oh, so that's actually the favorite? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I thought I was going to make some cash. So there. this is one that they say go ahead and bet on. I like If it. you want a little more risk, take the plus 140 odds. There will be two holes in one. Ooh. Okay. Bogey free round in tournament? No. The pick is Actually, plus yeah. 250, Scotty Scheffler. Oh, okay. So you just That's brought like him two up. Two and a half to yeah, one on your money. Favorite to All right. win. All right. Scotty Too Hotty Scheffler. That's right. <laughs> How many people remember that guy? I do. I clearly. Will you find a napkin on the course? Ooh, if you're there, yes, yes 100%. Not on TV. On TV. Ooh, it's supposed to be windy that first the, day, right? This is a real prop yes. bet. No. 
I'm I like, just, there's no way, because there's no way some human is watching every second of this just looking for a napkin. Like, we're paying you somebody will $100,000 to look for a napkin for four straight days? Mike, on the third prop bet, I didn't know how to pronounce the guy's name, so I didn't want to do it, all right? To be honest, <laughs> if we're going to be transparent here... That means see-through. <laughs> Unlike the napkins. All right. Sort of. So let's move on to the next one, Kevin. <laughs> Nine trends from the last decade... To help pick this year's green jacket winner. I already told you, Sky Show. I know you did. I know. But we're going to go through this anyway as practice. Okay. Number one, what's your age again? It's been 38 years since a 46-year-old Jack Nicholas donned his sixth green jacket and got his last of 18 majors. So that he was 46 when he got his last major. Okay. He became the oldest winner in tournament history with that win. And over the last 10 years, the average age of the winner has been a shade under 31. Ooh. Even with the champions, Dustin Johnson, 36, Sergio Garcia, 37, and Tiger Woods at 43. Since Johnson's win in 2020, the last three winners have all been under the age of 30. Ooh. So if you're going based on this, you've eliminated Fred Couples, Zach Johnson, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, VJ Singh, Mike Weir, and Scheffler's good. some other people. Uh, I do not I think any of those people are going to win. All right. Maybe don't remember your first time. Only three players have ever won the Masters in their first attempts. Okay. Do you know those three players? Whoever won the first Masters. Oh, Gary That's Player. One. Horton Smith in the first Masters ever, correct? Told you. Smith. Knocked one out of the park. <laughs> and Tiger. Tom, Tom Watson. Gene Sarazen in 1935. And Fuzzy Zeller. In 1979. I've heard of that guy. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. His name's Fuzz. It's like Z-O-E. A debutante has not won what? in 45 years. I don't know. There have been a number of close calls in recent history. Jordan Spieth, Will Zelatoris, with some other names. Eliminated are a whole bunch of people. So people who have, yeah, uh, who experienced that. So there's a lot of people that you could just eliminate there, Kevin. Was there a word you <laughs> missed right there? You're not going to tell me who those people if are. you're being just transparent. Wyndham Clark, Ludwig Aberg, Akshay. That's the name I couldn't pronounce in the other one that I didn't okay. want to do. So you guys, Austin Eckrote, Eric Cole, Denny back. McCarthy, Jake Knapp, Nick Dunlap. You want me to name all the rest of them? Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. <laughs> No. Christo Lamprecht, nope. <laughs> Neil Shipley, Jasper Stubbs, or maybe, maybe Jasper. Who they knows? got some names in there. Do you think he put in one name that he just made up just to see if we were locked in? Y'all wouldn't know. He didn't think that far I ahead. wouldn't know. Or did I? Whoa. It's a steady climb. They say Gus National is an acquired taste, much like Kevin does not like the taste of that. So it's kind of like salt, I guess. One may not understand the nuances. Everybody likes salt. You have to have salt. The first or second Still time. Still had it after the fact. Seven of the last ten Masters champions had at least one top five finish in their Masters careers before donning the green jacket. Like Zelatoris. With all ten previously collected a top 40 result. So what I'm looking here is Max Homa, Cameron Davis, Kurt Kitayama, uh, Adrian, Adrian Maronk, and Eric Van Ruyen. They're mm. all out. Okay. Each green jacket winner since 2014 has notched a top 15 finish on the PGA Tour or DP World Tour in a stroke play event over the calendar year leading up to the Masters. Seven of those had already entered the winner's circle on the year. John Rahm, Scheffler, Johnson, Spieth. Eight had found a spot on the podium. We'll use that same top 15 cutoff point, Kevin. Ricky Fowler's out. Mm. Bubba Watson, see you later. Gary Woodland, along with other names. <laughs> okay. Major championship pedigree. There have been five. There have been a number of first-time major winners who've broken through at Augusta, but none have come without some prior experience on a comparable stage. Eight of the ten most recent Masters champions had at least a major runner-up result already in their name with all 10 having tied for six finish or better. Okay. Four of the last 10 collected a runner-up finish within a major championship, while nine had a top 15 finish. So you got guys like Sam Burns, Ryan Fox, Adam Hadwin. <laughs> They're out. Along with other names. Uh-huh. 
And just like that, 50 players and five have been eliminated, Kevin. Let's get I wonder ten. if they're going to play tomorrow. Because of the rain? I think. Is yes. it rainy in Augusta right now? Well, usually the rain that happens here, for the most part, then ends up in Louisiana and then into Mississippi and then into Alabama and then into Georgia. So okay. I believe they're supposed to have very high gusty winds tomorrow with the possibility of rain. So I'm assuming some of the stuff we've been seeing over the last few days could be oh. what Augusta might be seeing. Mike! Augusta, Georgia on Thursday. 19 mile per hour winds. 100% chance of precipitation. Oh dear. Look oh! at you! I know precipitation and where it heads. Sure. Most of the time I do. What color is this rain? Uh, light green. Light green. It's been green earlier, but it's light green right now. You need to reset now. that. No, if, the you, Mike know, if you don't, rain if, chart. You, if you know what Mike's talking about, okay. his answer just now. Okay. You've been listening long enough. If you don't, you need mm -hmm. to do. You need to reach out to somebody that you know that's been listening for a while and ask. Okay. Mm -hmm. We might be hey, getting Kevin, if the, the flash something? flood warnings, <laughs> the flash flood warnings that we have around our Metroplex, those are yellow, orange, and red colored rains. That yep. is in Ellis, Dallas, Rockwall, and Collin County. So that's till what? Like 326. 330 so, now. Oh. Thereabouts. Oh, man. Four more minutes of flash flood. I mean, technically possibly. 337, if I'm going to be honest. What? Wait. He that's was one minutes. minute off. You. And it's not like somebody no, he said 326, which what it, which is what it was earlier. There's no such thing as flash floods of light green rain, mm -hmm. unless it's like 40 days and 40 nights or something. What color is it if there is no rain? Is it just clear? Yeah, there's no color. The rain doesn't have a color if it's not there. Progressive. It's not raining. You can't have a color on the radar. Yeah, Reggie. By the way, if you're curious, th he's replicating the news charts of how they have rain it's not the rain itself is green yeah. it's the, it would be green on the news People weather like, oh chart. what about purple rain well that's not rain that's usually sleet i need, that's what I need ibuprofen so bad there were three other things three. kevin uh that i needed to get to technical <gasps> statistics that could get you there hitting the ball really far <laughs> how you are with your irons and your plan b solutions those names, those eliminated lots of other. What if they had to play in the rain? Just like play. Be like that movie uh, Caddyshack. And then somebody gets struck by lightning. You still finish it out. Then they become um, that lightning character in Spider Man, Jamie Foxx. What was it? Electro? 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 Yeah. He fell into You think that guy from Caddyshack turned into Jamie Foxx? I think so. But maybe that's through electric eels. It wasn't through mm -hmm. lightning. Oh, he man. fell into an electric eel plant. And the 469 just drove through some really hard rain. It really is bad out here. Saw two really bad wrecks. Well, you thought we were lying? Yeah, we've been trying to tell you. I talked to a police officer yesterday. Good for you, bud. Congrats. What? About I the rain? About, or? about wrecks. Okay. And he said there are more wrecks. I had a theory. I forgot to do this, and Mike likes it this week. Well, I have a theory. I'll do it tomorrow that I have to give you tomorrow. I'm going to keep you on the edge of your pants. That's the that. seat of your edge. So, Kevin... The edge of your seat. To wrap it, it up, after all the... Who the hell am I supposed to pick? Either. Scotty too hot. I got some names for you. Sergio Garcia. The Scheffler. Chris Kirk. Tony F Finau. Oh, the homie Finau winning? I love Tony Finau. Justin Thomas. Hideki Matsuyama. Xander Schauffele. Or Scotty Scheffler. Ooh, those are two of my top three. There you go. Check it out. This based is a, on based on math. Yeah, we were. This able is to one of the four that. times every year that actually golfers golf against each other. There's an, they, they all split up and they start living it up and then they start PGA in it and they're all spread out and then they don't play much golf and so literally now there's only four times. It'd be like if the Texas Rangers only played major leaguers four times a year, and they're like, the rest of the time, we just randomly play people around the country, in the world. That's what's happened to golf. I thought Liv and PGA were coming together they as need, one. No, they still have to come to a better they didn't, agreement. Yeah. So now you got Dustin Johnson being like, I don't need to play in this place. And then you have other people going, I don't want to play in this PGA Tour. I'm too tired. They don't pay enough money for me to go to 
Los Colinas or wherever the tournament is here now at the dumpster fire that they made a place, a course, right? It used to be a trash heap and they made a new course over it. It's trashy. There's no, there's no trees there. And everybody Why are you still see. talking? Why'd you stop? Him? I feel like you're. Why are you still talking, Mike? He's I'm trying to so, get answers. It's, it's radio. You have to talk. And we're not helping Kevin. We're just staring you're at You're just him. looking at me like I'm saying something smart. So I'm going to keep saying it. Was you that how you interpreted that look? trying to give more details. You interpreted that look incorrectly. So that we will nod right. and acknowledge Text him in what he's saying. Where they play one of these PGA things. <laughs> Didn't it used to be a trash fill? And now they put a golf course over it. <laughs> trash fill. Coming up next. We'll shit chat. What do you fill it with? You fill it with, with land or trash? Fellas. You're filling it with trash. From the G Bag Nation, right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up Thursday morning on Sean.
W Sports Leader 1053 The Fan. This segment of the KNC Masterpiece on 105 Through the Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. They've got more Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Jonah Heim lights into it and drives it over the left field wall. Jonah Heim with a solo shot on the first pitch of the bottom of the second puts the Rangers back on top here, two to one. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan. The Rangers know that big wins come from bold plays. That's why the original Louisiana brand hot sauce is the official hot sauce of the Texas Rangers. Also brought you Bruce Bochy earlier. The original Louisiana brand hot sauce flavor favors the bold. Now it's time. Courtesy of DNM Leasing for our chit chat with those fellas from the G Bag Nation. Gentlemen, how is you today? Peggy, we are rolling. How are you? Outstanding. Doing very well. We talked about this at the very beginning of the show. Do you look back at last night and think the biggest deal is the Mavericks winning, clinching a spot in the real playoffs, the Stars winning, inching closer to the number one seed in the West, or the Rangers probably needing a new closer, which it did feel like Bochi. <laughs> Didn't say that, but he did not say that when he was like, yeah, we're going to look to lighten the load. Yeah, get him in some low leverage situations. Uh, a lot of things you should be looking into with LeClerc, which is just crazy because he's a World Series hero and one of my favorites. Um, you know, that story is massive, though. I think I'm going to go with Mavs locking down um, the play in. I don't know how much uh, home ice ed- matters and has actually been a curse of recent yeah, times. Yeah, the Stars have actually been really, and Ottinger have been really good on the road. This they have been. They've been great on the road. The President's Trophy is also something that you don't really want in the NHL. Uh, Disagree! Just ask Boston. Really? I mean, go back and look at that track record. Tampa Bay, when they want it, they get upset. Boston gets upset. That seems like no thank you. I'm cool with the Rangers getting that, and I'll just be the best team in the West. You make a lot of good points, Zach. Here's my counterpoint. The Dallas Bring Stars it. have won the President's Trophy twice in their history. First time they won it, Western Conference Finals. Second time they won it, they won the whole damn thing. So the Stars okay. have a better track record with the President's Trophy than the rest of the NHL. Okay. Uh, did they win it when they went to the Cup Final the most recent time? No, they didn't. So I think you're okay here. You have a very bright shirt on. It's very bright. But it was free. Okay. I thought Eric and I were going to tag team this and wear the same shirt today, but he didn't fulfill his end of the bargain. Oh, I can fulfill that at a moment's note. I can snap my fingers and have that shirt on my body. He has Are another free me? shirt on from a, another day. 
What percentage of your wardrobe do you think is free? Is that a wash shirt? Um, I would say I'm not joking, Hagee. I would over fifty percent. Good approach. Of shirts, right? People don't hand out free pants. You ever notice that? <laughs> Yeah, because I have, I probably have, shirts. I think I have like three times the amount of shirts that I do pants. Yeah. And so I've probably bought more of my, like, yeah, it's it's a lot of shirts People that are free. People need to bring pants up here. But are you, like wearing, are you wearing pants that have the like those Zubos bail pants? bonds on yes. them or something? Yeah, yeah right why not? Yeah. So somebody brings you pants, you're like, sounds good. I mean, if they fit right, right? Nobody I mean, has. It's a huge question. Let's. I mean, somebody needs to get into this free pants game. You talk to our Milo insulation guy. Holy shirts and pants. See if he's got some pants. Ooh. Did some fan swag pants. Okay. Maybe I, shorts. Maybe some hoochie daddy shorts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Michael mm-hmm. definitely wear some shorts on you. We just, so <laughs> never mind. I don't want to know the answer to this question. I don't want to know the answer to my follow up question. Never mind. Say hammer time on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe get some on pillow the front pants. though, right? Not <laughs> MC Hammer. You know, he had his own pants. Yes. No, I. Uh, I understand. <laughs> You're right over there, <laughs> guys. All yeah. this- Catch the ball, Cole Beasley. Go stars, Kevin. Right. We are we are watching a game that has captivated everybody that's walked into this room. Is this today. 2016? I'm assuming. 2016. Yeah. It's Cowboys at Steelers. Cowboys are currently down 18 13, and this is the game Tomlin kept going for two, right? I believe so. He was chasing those points chasing the entire points, game. Yeah, and then it, I think at the end it is the Zeke. He breaks one off. He does have a screen. I think for like 80 something yards too. Yeah, it's a pretty significant moment in Cowboys history and Kevin I think that's where this discussion off air has taken place is this was a very a big turning point for Dak to become the quarterback of the Cowboys was it this game and the Green Bay game that made it feel like that team was unstoppable yes I was like it doesn't matter if you fall behind you'll be fine you'll win I mean they haven't won in Lambeau since you go to Pittsburgh and win as a rookie I don't think that that was something that had really been done often in NFL history and this was the game I think you had Witten and Dez, both in that locker room that were Romo guys, and they became Dak guys. They said, look, this is his team now. And that's when Romo realized, all right, I got to make that speech. The the other thing, it, well, Kevin says it's a poem, poem. but uh, the it other thing, too, poem. though, you guys, you and uh, Broadus and Woolchuck, seemed like y'all were bi- salivating bi- watching bi- the offensive line bi- create bi- holes for Zeke. I was here. watching Zeke run, which was really impressive. Making the jump cuts. God, he ability. can move. He, yeah, like, 94, his... two years ago, 94, stuffing him in that hole. But he actually planted that right foot and moved mm-hmm. in another direction. Oh, oh no, what happened there? there? Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that was a breakdown <laughs> what, in What, what, what right happened there? there? Oh, James Harrison happened, dude. That ha- Damn, I mean, Tyron James Smith. Harrison's just going to Get rid of Tyron Smith. What are we doing there? Yeah, I bet we, we did. better. We could have got so many draft picks for him a while back. Dak's taken quite the handsome turn as well over the last seven years compared to, you think he's more handsome now? Yeah, yeah. He's still kind of baby-faced. He was a just a touch, maybe. I don't know if it's still baby-faced at that age. Martin gets a touch bloated. gosh, Martin got beat bad. Now he looks incredible. You know what, Dak was auto penning everything. Ozzy Gian saying you don't pull fat. Maybe mm-hmm. Dak getting in better shape, right? He wasn't hurt for a while. He had a good string of non injuries, and all of a sudden you start getting shredded here. The injuries happen. How do we make Dak fat again? Wow. It's like bubble you need that body armor yeah. as a quarterback. You do. Body armor. Like Milo insulation. How about my question, Broadus? Who wins more games next year? Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, or Jacksonville Jaguar, Josh Allen? A Josh off? Uh, let's go with the Jacksonville one. Okay. I think the Jacksonville guy wins more games. That's a shocker. What? Really? Yeah. <laughs> why, why do you say that? Because he's, he's, he's caping okay. for his guy, Doug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes Constantly. Sense. Constantly. <laughs> he loves texting But Josh Doug. Allen is your guy, right? Like the, the oh, quarterback no, I, I, you yeah. love? Yeah, I love Josh Allen, but I'm I'm just going, I love Doug Peterson more. Buffalo, who's Buffalo's number one receiver now? Gabe something? No, he he's gone yeah, too. They don't they don't have to. I think it's Dalton. that was Davis. Okay. They got rid of. They're, they're, they're going to trade. They're going to trade up year. with Dallas and get one. Is what they're going to. They'll do. draft a guy in the first round. Yeah. I think right now though, it might be like Khalil Shakir out of or Shakur out of Boise State. Shakur. Yeah, I think they're going to try. I think I think Buffalo Buffalo clearly hunting their savers in this thing. Then maybe you get maybe you get maybe the guy will be there for him that they could trade with Dallas and you pick up that late three from them. It's Vlad McCon. It's like Curtis Samuel. For those that were wondering. Yeah, they did get Curtis Samuel. Maybe uh, Matt Collins. 
want to mm. say thank you to you guys. Shredded. Josh Allen's oh. going to be running a lot. Probably Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox, to be honest with you. Yeah, that, that's no. exactly the right. full Patriots. Thank you guys for making this crosstalk significantly less dark than yesterday's crosstalk. Because that eclipse. wasn't hard. What do you? <laughs> you guys see the dog at Stars practice? Yes, it's adorable, right? There's only one person in this room that would poop on that. Mm -hmm. that, dog, that dog was alive and everything. Mm. It's raining like crazy out there. Turn around. Don't Cats, and dogs. Cats, Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What do you guys got coming up on the program? <laughs> Pure Gold, as always, thanks for asking, yes. including uh, Tim Cato from The Athletic talking Mavs at 4 o'clock. Goose talk. Was the dog at the Kelvin Stars Kato? practice was Kirk Herbstreet there or something? Yes. yes. Trailblazer. I do remember Goose Kelvin Cato. Wasn't a bad big shot blocker. Cute. Don't know if he'd make it in today's game. Maybe you not too? Enough. Yeah. Who, what, Kelvin You Kato? two? What? We're still talking. Pure We're gold trying to get always. you into Thanks your for show. <laughs> Thanks it's for been raining a lot. Turn around, don't drown. Over a I'm trying to help you out. Jose, Jose, Jose. Why would you have a mood change? Jose. Seeger bats. Hey, tomorrow we'll be at the ballpark. If you got other stuff going on, I get it. Give me those Emmett cleats. If you want to come see us, we'll be there 10 to 1, leading you into Rangers right here on 105 through the fan. Say edge of your pants, Kevin. I will not. You can hear Kevin.
all in with the G-Bag Nation right here on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. Hour one, G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. I hope you're having a fantastic day as we are off and running on a rainy and windy Wednesday afternoon. I hope you're staying safe out there. And, you know, even if you're on the highway, standing water is an issue. Hydroplaning, I think, is your biggest threat right now. Although creeks and, uh, you know, flash flooding have got to be uh, a, a pretty significant uh, threat right now as the storms broke out about 90 minutes or so ago. You know, the creeks are rising, Brian. Yep. Dawson, it, it, everything you said is absolutely true, but we got PSG in I mean, Barcelona. We got flash flood warnings in Collin yeah. County, in Rockwall. We'll be fine. We do have, uh, we do have uh, what, more Champions League soccer yeah. on here today? We got Champions. PSG and Barcelona going at it. We just, uh, we just wow. kicked it off. Sports TV Paradise, they're playing the Masters uh, Par 3 tournament today. There's Brian Bros from the yes. Cowboys Scout NFL Executive. The Cowboys content is is really cranking up as the draft approaches. There's a lot of juicy draft content we're going to get into today. Uh, Brian has Krusty's Corner coming up at 240 with, I believe, an update on the goose. Oh, we got to get a goose update on the overly aggressive geese. We have video. Did you get bit? No, we have video. Security though. footage oh. of you whooping that goose's ass, nope. stepping up like Actually, Jim did yesterday. Now. Hold Actually, on now. It's like me taking the <laughs> video. I'm taking the video and. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little terrified taking the video. You might see a little shake hand. Oh, I can tell. A little shake hand while we're doing this. When Wolchuk asked, Brian, did you get bit? The appropriate answer is you're going to have to tune in at 240 to find out. Oh. Okay, so if you go ahead and hit the dump button there. And it's a yeah. true professional. Plug that back Thank in there. Thank you for salvaging What did that. I say? No. <laughs> well, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Go ahead, Wolchuk. Hey, uh, Brian, did you did the geese bite you? No. Uh, oh, no. I said no. <laughs> No, you got to check at hey, 240 today. Brian, did, did you get bit by the geese? Check at 240. I'll let you know. There we go. Bang. Krusty's Corner every afternoon. We got following. video of this. I'm swear this thing Gosh, is. Gosh, look it's at a menace, Smith. Yes, it's, a menace. Their ass. it's a menace. It's a menace. Oh, what a block on the punter. <laughs> oh, my dear God. Golly, this <laughs> Cowboys team was epic. Oh, yeah. We're watching Cowboys Steelers. Keith Davis. 2016. Yeah. The good old days, man. Unbelievable Cowboys offensive line. Unbelievable Zeke back in his rookie year. Alfred Terrence Morris. Gosh, we, we got Alfred Morris spelling Zeke here, boys. I'm feeling a big run. Doug Free on the right side. Gosh, I miss you, Travis Frederick. Must have been nice when Jason Garrett's uh, game plan to just go on the road and run it 40 times actually could work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All you needed was the greatest offensive line over the last 25 years for the Cowboys and uh, one of the greatest rookie runners the game has ever seen in uh, a 22-year-old Zeke. That was pretty outstanding. Okay, you do have Broadus. You have, uh, of course, Lucius Alexander in the pimp cup over there at Master Control. He has LA Live coming up at 540. G-Bag of the Day is now right around the corner at 230. Wolchuk and Chiafalo are present. You have Carter Freeman coordinating your video at 105thefan.com, Twitch, and YouTube for the majority of the next four and a half hours as we will take you into Rangers A's pregame. I mean, look at that. Zeke was down, and he was like, nope, I'm not down. I'm in a plank position, and I'm going to go from plank position and, and do some sort of a, a, a bunny hop forward an additional three yards. Bang, first down. That was a special Zeke right there. It was a special Zeke, and they can go Hulk package with the sixth offensive lineman, Joe Looney, in there. I mean, they, it, it, it was just an embarrassment of riches, that Cowboys team in 2016, but Zeke was special. I mean, that was one of the best seasons we've ever seen. I mean, look at that. He's holding the ball with his right hand. He's down in a, in a, in a three-point plank, and somehow, I don't even know how you propel yourself there. Is that Achilles muscle? Is that is that, mm. you know, a left arm like rocketing you forward? He, he, he was incredible. Yeah, I think there there's actually probably a, a lot of tricep involved in that one. A tricep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever the case, it was a sight to behold. And, you know, we knew back then that this team had to, oh, yes. there, there's the pass to Des to, to win the game with a minute and a half to play. Rangers weren't as fortunate last night. They fall, uh, you know, 6-5 uh, or they fall 2-6-5. With a uh, loss to the A's, do you agree with Bochi here? He says it's too early to panic about the pin, or or do you just chalk that up to, you know, a, a, a weird Langolier incident there with his his three bombskis? Holy crap! It was a weird uh, Shea Langolier's incident there uh, with three home runs. Keller native, shout out to him. He hit five of his thirty. He's hit against the Rangers. Yeah, uh, new new uh, Chris with a K Davis for the A's. Yeah. Shea Langolier, yeah, he's the new go. Rangers killer. I think yes, it is. Uh, we proved. I mean, they proved it last year. You could go the whole season and even the postseason essentially with a crappy yeah. bullpen, find a way to win the World Series with the offense and Bruce Bochy managing it. I do think the question that Hagee asked earlier on KMC 
was relevant. You, you've got to now move Jose Leclerc out of the closer role. You've got to pitch him in the seventh or the eighth inning where the pressure isn't as high. And it's such a weird thing to be talking about because Jose Leclerc delivered for you in the highest pressure, high leverage situation in the postseason. We're talking DS, CS, World Series. Now, it was a little bit shaky at times, but he found a way to get it done. But we've seen this from Jose throughout his entire career. Last year, he had to get sent down to work on his mechanics and his command a little bit. Last night, he said it's not a mechanics issue, but it's something he needs to figure out and tweak. Uh, but absolutely, I think you're looking at somebody else to step in on this closer role, and you need to change what Jose Leclerc is and when he's entering the game moving forward. But yeah, I think you made a great point. Like the way they blew saves last year, I mean, this this would just be the start of it. Yeah. We'd be back into it tonight yeah. and then back into it like twice before we even got to Monday again. And you'd be like, holy crap, we'd be talking about historically it being one of the biggest fails. So, you know, I, I don't think panic's the right word. And, you know, I think it's smart for teams to be like, nobody panic. Like, nobody is panicking. We're just pointing out that you defied the odds last year to get there, and we prefer to not have to try to run that gauntlet again. I think maybe more frustration, yeah. right? Like, we were thought we were past this with Jose Leclerc, the way that he performed in the playoffs. You're thinking, like, okay, he's yeah, back hopefully, to form. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. It's a building block, and now we can get some level of consistency here. There's a newfound confidence inside of him. And, yeah, because it doesn't get any more stressful than – uh, getting through a, a World Series and a postseason like that and some of the situations that he was put in. And so you you, you were hopeful that uh, that he would be able to bounce back, especially versus a team like the A's. And on a day yeah. where it's it's a Valdi pitch and, and shout out uh, Walchuk on, cashing out on the prize picks on the uh, the punch outs. He had eight last oh, night. Yes, he did. He yes, was he, did. he was dealing. Uh, and so to lose to lose an Evaldi day is definitely a huge bummer. But by and large, I mean this is not uh, nowhere close to panic mode time. You have the exact right guys pulling the strings from Bochi to see why it's a long season. They will get it figured out. But uh, it's it's a big time work in progress in the meantime. Yeah, you know, I, I do think they, they should give him some time off. Like, I'd give him a week where maybe he throws a couple of bullpens and then come back at it with a new role. I, I don't know who you like down in the minors or how else you could fix it, but it's clear it just needs to be Robertson and Yates in the eighth and ninth inning, right? And then maybe LeClerc can be a part of your yeah, fifth, sixth, point, seventh inning type yeah, of deal. at this yeah. point, I mean, we saw this last year. I, I think the thing that I was most disappointed is the Rangers – had chances to score runs and they didn't score runs. When you got bases loaded, no yeah, outs, yeah, and you can't come away with yeah, a single run. That's where I that's where all of a sudden I was like going, this game's not going the right way, whether LeClerc gets in there yeah, or not. Yeah, it wasn't all on Jose. No. And and but to everybody's point here though, we saw what happened with the bullpen last year. The fact that that Boach is kind of like, hey, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll do some things. We'll work around it. We got to trust him. We all do. But man, not scoring runs last night and 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 losing to the A's. That, that to me, that's you know we we talk about oh well, it's 162. It came down to the 162nd game last year, if you remember, mm -hmm. in Seattle. Yeah, you know, and we and, and when it's one thing to lose to the Dodgers, the Braves, the Orioles, or whoever, you're losing to the A's. That that right there in itself. That's a team that needs to look at itself and go, hey, we didn't get it done tonight. Especially when you got your ace yeah, on, on yeah, the bump that's that right. That's that, right. That's got to be a surefire victory. Yeah. That's a take care of business night. Yeah. 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 That's the that's the most disappointing thing to me that, you know, yeah, the, the bullpen blew one last night, but you know, where were the runs? Yeah. Where was the runs against a team that gives up runs? I mean, the, that was the third straight win for the ace. Give them some credit. They're, you know, they're but they're that it, it took all it took home runs. That's the only way they were going to score. It was one player, yeah, one player. It was beat one. You last it, it was one player drove in all four of the A's runs. Uh, yeah, yeah it, that that I think is what makes it worse. Uh, yeah. is, is because of the team in which you lost to. That that's yeah. a series that you need to sweep. You know, and you could point to Corey Seager being out, but hot dang, Josh Smith just stepped in there and went two for four. He again. was very good. He is. He's he's you played know. really well for and he, and you know what? He had a, a drag bunt hit. He, I thought about I, you when I saw the bunt. I was my like, gosh, Ryan somewhere smiling. I was was i was like the happiest guy in the world and like eric in the radio goes i think that's the first bunt hit we've had all year i'm like yeah it is we don't know how to bunt but good for josh i hope they do more of that with his speed and his ability to have a little back control there i think luca last night just said man we got back to backs we're all beaten up because we've been going for it full send for the last 16 games we need rest so i'm not going to work as hard on offense tonight i'm just going to jack 17 threes <laughs> and make about half of them We'll score a buck thirty. I'll hang a thirty-nine point triple double on these guys, and we'll win by twenty-five. That sound good? And 
and they said break, and then he went out there and just kept shooting and, and kept making them, and it was awesome. And now they're officially out of the play-in uh, picture. They're they're two games better than the six, two games back of the Ford. Uh, so the five seed is, is is definitely there. I'd be in a situation tonight where I'd be thinking about resting, um, but they know best. You know, back to back here, the things you've been battling. Uh, I, I I I would chill, but I think they just want to lock that down and eliminate the threat of falling back to the six, which could mean Denver. Right now, they know, dude. If we just win one more game, we got three chances. We don't want to look up in a in a in a week from now and say, man, we should have tried harder to win at Miami. Yeah, we we you know that to me, winning a game at Miami means days off. I mean, to me, that's where I think it's kind of worth it right now. Figure Not out having a, to play against OKC. Yeah, figure out a way to to you know get that that break by being in that you know being in the the you know getting the into the the, the tournament, not having to deal with the play and stuff. Man, you, you've given yourself days off. You know what I think the other thing is is they're having an absolute blast. They're yeah, like, yeah. I could rest, but damn, this is fun. You know, we get out of here and everybody's smiling and we're overwhelming the opposition. You know, we're feeling like the Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> out here right now with some of the yeah. stuff we're doing. It's crazy, dude. I mean, it is just a it's an absolute insane highlight reel situation. I cannot wait for whoever it is at the end of the season that does the compilation, the highlight compilation for the Mavericks. I mean, I imagine yeah. it's just going to be ridiculously long Hours. and epic yeah. between the individual greatness of Luca and Kyrie and then what they do with their with their counterparts. I mean, some of the plays, the no look alley oop to Gafford last night. I mean, my gosh, what a game for Gafford. And then after after Grant yeah, he Williams, wasn't very good the other day, that though. first quarter, Grant Williams missing, yeah. you know, the fadeaway deal, Luca getting it, and then it's the outlet, and then the way they are passing the ball around that ends in a Kyrie bounce to Luca cutting to the. It's like, dude, yeah. this is just this is beautiful. This yeah. is an orchestra, and everybody is hitting the right notes. It's a cheat code when you have two guys like that, and then a bunch of others with great size. Like Washington's yeah. a freaking cheat code on both ends of the court. You know, his ability to to catch and make plays for himself and others at that size with that athleticism yeah. and the ability to close things off defensively with his frame. Like, bro, I you know, I know we've been saying it for a while now, but it's really starting to become crystal clear that this team is superior, you know, and I, I think they'll go toe to toe with Denver. You know, I, I, I think that that is going to be a, a battle of the Giants. Yeah, you know what's interesting is I think Denver might be finding themselves because now everybody's awake to it. We've been discussing it for a while, and we know, like, nationally, Tim Legler's been a guy that since the trade was like, okay, this is, this is going to be a legit team. But now, cat's out of the bag. Everybody is understanding this, and I imagine that even Denver is looking around going, hey, Yes, we should still beat the Mavericks, but by God, why would we want to try and see them in the first round? You yeah, know, yeah. so even Denver is probably even more hyped up about because they felt like at times they're kind of sleepwalking. They're floating around the three seed, the four seed in the West, even though we all know what they're capable of. But now it's like, OK, you know what? Forget this, dude. We need to get we need to get that two seed for sure, because we do not want to have to see the Mavericks. If we see them in the Western Conference finals, fine. But that's a first round slow. Fest that might take you seven. Absolutely, better equipped to play with those bigs. You know, yeah. I mean, you that, look, you you beat Denver. Them. Denver you beat has just to a be a while ago. Yeah, Denver has to be very mindful that you you just got bigger inside. Yeah. You know, and so that that gives you a chance against them for sure. I mean, and their wings, I mean, have incredible size between yeah. Porter and Gordon, and and now you have a guy in Washington, and you know Josh Green and stuff. You can kind of go uh, toe to toe with them with their with their length and their athleticism. Stars moved a step closer to getting uh, uh, the, the division wrapped up. Maybe the top seed in the West wrapped up with a win over Buffalo. Another great second period. Pavelski gets the winner, and they they play great defense in the third to win again, and they'll host Winnipeg tomorrow. Okay, uh, like I said, we have a lot of Cowboy stuff coming up. Kentucky is looking at Baylor Scott Drew to replace Calipari, so that's a story we got to follow up on. We'll be talking Masters. We have Cowboys draft. Krusty's Corner's coming up at 240 if you if you want uh, the goose update. It's it's coming to you. And we're back with the uh, the G-Bag of the day. What else are we doing there, Chief? We'll go around the rim featuring the Bad News Bulls and some history was made last night in the association next year in the nation.
Yeah, yeah buddy. Welcome back, Nation. G Bag of the Day is coming up in 10 minutes from right now. The segment is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. It's brought to you by Soda. That's state of the art. And the Frankels. Life's unpredictable. Accidents happen. Franklin and Franklin. Go to attorneys for contract wrecks and DFW. If your loved one it gets in an accident, especially this afternoon with all this rain, contact Franklin Frankel for a free consultation. 214 or 817 333 Go to franklfirm.com. Here's the chief. Yes, sir. Let's uh, crank open that rim sesh. We had a shacked and a full Hall of Fame worthy moment last night in the association. Let's address it as we cut the lights out and put the kids to bed so we can go all 56 inches around that rim. Let it rain! Rain dance! Rain dance! I got to join here, man. I've been saying for a special occasion. It's always a special occasion when we can finally put to rest forever the details of the Porzingis trade. It's official now that the Mavericks are clinching a spot in the playoffs. Their 2024 first round pick will now be sent to New York. And finally, we can close the Porzingis book. Oh, that is, that is so comforting. Doesn't that feel good? Uh, to know that. Yes. It's in, it's in our past Ooh. forever now. A trade that took place on January 31st, 2019. Um, and uh, now is officially kaput. Praise Man, Lord. So embarrassing uh, that the organization sold out so hard to get him and treated him like an absolute superstar. And they got everything that they asked for with that. You know, uh, I think uh, nobody else in the league wanted him. Uh, he gave up a whole lot to get him. And, you know, it really helped New York recover. You know, you, luckily the Mavs got Luka and then ultimately found a way to get Kyrie. You know, I, I think that's what uh, has allowed you that right place, right time with Kyrie makes up for the horrible mistakes of trading for Porzingis and letting Brunson go. Yeah. Basketball God was smiling on Mark Cuban, who was once again viciously fumbling the bag. Yeah, I mean, if all that stuff doesn't happen, maybe we don't have Dante Exum here. I, would, I wouldn't want to live in that world. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. By the way, the only scenario for the Mavs Clippers trilogy not to happen is the Mavericks going over and their remaining three games and the Pelicans going the opposite of over and their remaining three games. So you go 0 and 3, Pelicans go 3 and 0, then all of a sudden you will find a way to dodge the Clippers in round one. I don't want to dodge them. I want to see them. The trilogy, it's ours. Luke has got that look in his eye. You yeah. know what look I'm talking about. Killer Instinct look. Payback look. I actually have teammates that are respectable now look in his eye, and he's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Clippers. He's going to embarrass them. Uh, but get your body ready because Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are in your near yeah. future. And, and Marcus Morris is no longer in our future, right? That's true. He's either no, not there or washed up. And we we actually have the Morris power now. Yep. Yeah, you know? right. that, that, that Morris power has been transferred here to Dallas. Right. And we're the new Lob City. And we're just going to be dunking all over their faces, man. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that uh, that series, uh, and I do feel confident that the Mavs will be able to get through it. Now, a couple of housekeeping notes you had. Giannis go down last night. Uh, the non-contact fall down, grabbing at the ankle, Achilles area, calf area, and is like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. what's happening to the Greek freak? Well, best case outcome, it looks like he will be okay as he has avoided damage to his Achilles tendon. So that is good news, certainly not great news because a strained calf as you're going in, I mean, you're literally limping into the playoffs if you're Milwaukee and Giannis here. So, but they avoided complete disaster and now we will wait to see how long it'll take for Giannis to make his triumphant return. Uh, Wemby last night paying homage <laughs> to the God himself. Did you guys see this? No, what happened? Oh, Wemby, Wemby, Wemby. Well, it's once again him just stuffing the stat sheet and doing amazing things. Uh, but now this time he's flashing the the handle uh, in a way oh, that would yeah. make God sham God proud. It's insane. Yeah. He went God sham God to the spin to the bucket no. in the paint as a seven foot fifty pterodactyl extraterrestrial basketball player it's amazing there he's able to do that you know just 30 years ago they wouldn't even let the big men try it be like why are you dribbling at practice bro you're not gonna be able to play like that in the games it's a whole new world yeah like they they just thought well if you're that tall you'll get the ball quickly stolen from the little guys yeah Wimby's like psych not so I love fast the sham god it's a cool tr trick to try to teach your kids dude <laughs> 
Yeah, it's an awesome, awesome move. It's always been awesome. And when you see a guy that size pull it off, like flawless perfection too. There was no glitch. It was just, it was a guy who's been there, done that. It might as well have been God Sham God himself making that move and then spinning off it and then getting to the rack for the layup. It was, it was fantastic. Uh, and it just sucks that it's all happening in a Spurs uniform. And I just have to put that aside every time something Wemby does amazing happens. Yeah, uh, it really bothers me. Yeah, same here. And I, I saw this stat. Like, Wemby is... He's doing the God Sham God thing. He's putting up the points. He's doing the Steph Curry bit, too, where he shoots the three, and he's turning around and walking away before it even goes in because he knows it is already. So he's got that to his game. But then we also know the defensive prowess and just how fierce of a shot blocker, rim protector dude he is. And so I saw that he already has eight games with seven or more blocks. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. That's Rudy incredible. Gobert who is our rim protector of the last half decade or sure. so, defensive player of the year guy, he has seven games with seven or more blocks in him for his entire career. So Wimby already has more seven-plus block games in his career. 70 games in Wimby's career, almost 800 games in Gobert's career. So yeah, he's going he's gonna to set the record for quadruple doubles. Yeah. What's going to happen here? Yeah, because nobody's you know. doing it with blocks yeah. except Wimby. I mean, you have to have a completely different level of awareness than you've ever been used to on a basketball court to avoid your shot getting blocked. Yeah. It's like being a sixth grader and trying to play against high schoolers, and you're like, okay, i got to be real careful at all times, or I'm going to get my stuff swatted. Dude, e even Jokic has to be super careful. Everybody does. Yeah. And watching these guys go on a fast break where Wemby is still down at the rim, and now all of a sudden it's a three-on-one, and they can't get a shot off. No. Yeah. Because he's able to defend both players that are around the paint, and they're both and they're playing with fear. You know, so they're passing it when they shouldn't, and they're dribbling it when they shouldn't. And then they kick it over to the guy for the corner three, and Wemby's long enough and athletic enough to get out there and yeah. contest the shot and force the miss on a three-and-one situation. And last night, you had Gigi Jackson of the Memphis Grizzlies get his shot blocked there at the rim by Wemby. And after the game, he was talking about Wemby's trash talking. He says he's so high in the air because of how tall he is, so when he talks trash, he sounds like he's whispering. He was like, go back up. Go, go. You scared. You scared. You scared. <laughs> you scared. You That's scared. apparently the type of trash talk you could get from Wimby. Uh, history was made last night. Two free throws were attempted in the entirety of the Celtics and Bucks game. Uh, Milwaukee attempted the two free throws. Boston, the first None. team in NBA history to attempt zero free throws in a game. That seems pretty ridiculous. Crazy. But, hey, man, it was, it was, I guess it was a keep it moving situation. Yeah, you know, got a flight, <laughs> like, to, yeah, got a flight to catch. To yeah, hot yeah. dinner date. Got to yeah. get home for lunch. Right. But the moment of the night that everyone will remember happened in Chicago with the Bad News Bulls. And Carter Freeman is going to do us some service here by throwing the video up so you guys can get video evidence oh, of this. But this is a Hall of Fame level Shaq and a fool. They have Ooh. executed the worst dunk <laughs> attempt of all time this oh, is no. the play-by-play -play from the bulls nbc sports broadcast so this is how it sounded and then if you're able to view it just check out the fan cam the youtube the twitch right now and you can see the play for yourself here's the play-by-play so the trailer oh, thought it was an alley off the glass to him Yes, this is okay. Tony Craig of the Bulls gets the steal. He's running down the court. He's going to go off glass to himself, but Andre Drummond is trailing him, and Andre Drummond thinks he's going off glass so that Andre Drummond can follow up yeah. with the you alley off the, the glass for one yes, of the court. Right. But that was not <laughs> that was not Tory Craig's intention. And then what you have <laughs> is just disaster where two players colliding, uh, oh, one dude's front is. side colliding with his teammate's backside, uh, and a missed dunk oh. where uh, to Tory Craig or whatever falls to the floor, and everybody's going, "What? What just happened here?" Now we also have a, a freeze frame from like this is like the dash cam view. <laughs> yes. Look at the look at the photo there. <laughs> Craig's like his eyes are like, "Are you kidding me? Do Whoa. I have a seven? footer on my back right now get oh, off of trying me. to block this and one this is my time <laughs> just a, a blooper of the ages right there let's go it's time now for the g-bag of the day into the pimp cup here's what says Hey, hey, 
slip slide trying to provide for me. Uh, when we last left off, our man that won G bag of the day, he's, I don't know if he's from Irving. I keep wanting to think he's from Irving because he went to the Irving City Council to plead a case to have legalized gambling here in the state of Texas. He is the man of the people. His name is Tiny. Salute. He is not Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I said that respectfully, but he is a man of the people. Plead your case, Tiny. My name is Tiny, and I'm a <laughs> professional sports gambler. But unfortunately, my career is at a standstill because I got six baby mamas all in the DFW Metroplex. So I can't live in a state that's got legal gambling in a sense it will be March Madness. I'm coming up here to beg y'all to make <laughs> sports gambling legal in the city so I can stack my paper and pay for the illegitimate, illegit illegitimate mm -hmm. yeah. children. I know some people think sports betting is risky, but I got an unbeaten system that can put money in all y'all pockets. Seriously. My system is easy. I bet on the blackest and darkest teams in college sports because uh, blacker the berry, sweeter the juice, and better the jump shot. I also got a sports betting angle that is foolproof. Since y'all want to let these all these transgenders up in the league, I became almost a millionaire betting on Leah Thomas's big ass winning all them swimming meets. <laughs> and just like these transgender swimmers, my swimmers are strong. <laughs> That's why I got so many baby mamas. But you know what that means? What? I got a lot of bills to pay. So I'm sick of risking my life and my freedom on gambling illegally on transgender athletes. <laughs> so I beg you, yeah. Irving City Council, to please legalize sports gambling because I can't afford <laughs> to be up in the penitentiary <laughs> Doing five to ten years on some weak ass gambling charge. <laughs> I love that dismount. Weak ass yeah. gambling charge. The almost millionaire is not something that I had really caught yeah. up until today. That's great. It's close. <laughs> Who knows, Tiny's? Uh, please uh, uh, message us at yeah. Gbag Nation <laughs> or any of us individually. You can find our links in the bio. Thanks to those dudes like Leah Thomas out there getting it done for me. <laughs> Uh, you yeah, with them big ass hands. Yeah. That's how you swim it faster. You can make a big coop, uh, a scoop out of the water like that. It's not fair. It's an unfair advantage. Uh, Jeff Teague. You guys familiar with Jeff Teague? Jeff Teague. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me something about Jeff Teague if you're familiar with him. He is a uh, basketball guy, yeah. Right. NBA, the, yeah. he's he's more Fox. impressive as a podcaster Atlanta than he Hawk. was as an NBA player, I would say. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's great because he tells a story about NBA referee Tony Brothers. Oh. There's a lot of stories coming out about Tony Brothers. Uh, I didn't, I never like paid attention to Tony Brothers' eyebrows. Yeah. Until Jeff Teague said yeah, something yeah. that I was looking at. I was like, man. <laughs> uh -oh. Shave him down the a little one bit, with the eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that one. You can hit that a little bit, a little manscape. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a little bit, dog. <laughs> Uh, yeah, here's the story right here. Jeff Teague apparently had his mom and somebody else courtside, another lady in his life. And uh, Tony Brothers was trying to holler. But I ain't gonna lie, one ref though, some of the big ass eyebrows. Uh, Tony Brothers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said with the eyebrows. Man, so he was trying to be cool. I don't like him either. He was trying to be cool. And I was a young, I was a young guy. My mama, we playing at the Pacers on the Hawks. My mama and my aunt Nisi was sitting courtside. And you know they had my jersey. You know they cheering this shit every time I came in the game. Whatever I was young, I probably my first, second year, maybe my second year. Right. And he like pulled me to the side. He was like, "Man, who them hoes?" <laughs> I lost it. Oh, the I, I went my crazy. God. And he was like apologizing. I was like, "That's my mama." You, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna start going crazy. I know you. Was I, wanted, right, I wanted no. to like slap him. I was like, I slapped it. I said that I would slap the shit out you, bro. <laughs> Did he get teed up for that? Oh. He said he's gonna slap me. He can't get mad. He can't oh, get mad. Your mama's in the game, bro. Yeah. How do you think you got here? Yeah. Your mama's not, in the game, baby. I'm not calling a foul on you the rest of the game. That's Stop my bad. Dude. Can't <laughs> you get can mad. do whatever you want. You want to travel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See what's going on? Matter of fact, your team's winning tonight. I guarantee yeah. it. That's my bad, dude. Hey, but shoot or shoot, man. Shout yeah, out to Tony. That's what I'm saying, man. He's got a chance to shoot. You can't get mad at that, man. Mm -hmm. I don't hate the player. Uh, let's see here. I'm feeling so uncomfortable. I left my chapstick in the truck. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think you understand the struggles of a <laughs> black man with no chapstick. I'll tell you what. If you need a reference, just think Michael Irvin lips. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we need to door dash it. <laughs> <laughs> a bottle of water. Uh, Bobby Belt. 
Uh-oh. What did you say, bro? Uh, all right, we're doing Ask Reddit here on 105.3 The Fan. <laughs> Franklin Prinkle Injury Attorney Sex Line, 877 881 1053. 877 Text Line. Text Line. Oh, I, yeah. I think oh, no. he said it. Uh, all right, we're doing Ask Reddit here on 105.3 The Fan. Franklin Prinkle Injury Attorney Sex Line, 877 881 1053. Sex Line. Yeah, he said it. He said it. He said it. He said it. He also says Ask Scroted. Yeah. <laughs> Really, there's two in there, actually. Wait, what? what, what At the wait, very beginning. We're playing wait, Ask Scroat It. Yeah. On, the, on, the, on the sex line. Scroat It. Ask Scroat It on the sex line. Uh, all right. We're doing Ask Scroat It here. Uh, yeah! <laughs> he does. Yes! Awesome. The mind's a- moving too fast for yeah, the mouth. Frog in it slip right there. God, that's good. That's Adderall and coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So why are they calling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Ryan Garcia, I've been keeping up with that that drama. He's kind of cooled it down just a little bit. Okay. We're getting closer to fight day. See, getting closer to the fight. I've seen him working out uh, here in Dallas. Uh, I also think this piece of audio that I'm going to play came from Dallas because the media day was yesterday, Ooh. and it dropped yesterday. So I'm just assuming. Don't don't get me to lying. I'm just assuming. But they said this is Ryan Garcia's greatest promo of all time. It was just a quick question. You keep track of anything that Devin is saying or his workout last week? Once you go to a swimming pool party with Diddy, it's like you don't even pay attention to what the f- he's saying. What are we going to see from Ryan Garcia? None of that. F- it's going to be light work for me. Another day in the office. It's going to be one of those things where you're just like, yo, hold my beer, watch this. You know, at the end of the day, I'm Usain. He's those other runners that we can't even name. Who's the second fastest runner in the world? We don't know. When I step into NYC, it's gonna be crazy. You know, they're gonna bring the energy. We're gonna we're gonna tear down the whole arena. It's gonna be crazy. And then we're gonna light one up right after, 420, baby. We, then the day we. after that, I'm like, what's next? You know, hit up a club, do something. You know, I'm not even gonna be worried that I just knocked somebody out and became a WBC champion. I, I do appreciate it though. Shout out WBC. <laughs> I do appreciate it though. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, guys. dude. I cannot wait for this now. It's going to be awesome. His antics have made it must a must-watch fight. Ten days away. I think he's going to get beat up quickly. 30, 45 seconds. He's going to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's Mike McGregor with the broken leg still talking trash. <laughs> Your wife's in my DMs. <laughs> Is it Tiny, our two-time champ at the Irving City Council? Is it Jeff Teague on uh, Tony Brothers? Bobby Belt uh, with his uh, uh, turbo t- uh, topic setup. Ryan Garcia to, uh, with the greatest promo of all time. I'll go with Belt. I'll get it started, Chief. How about you? I'm rocking with the champ. We're tied at one, Lucius. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That man is a man of the people. It's two to one in favor of Tiny, I believe, Wolchuk. It's strawberry chapstick, too, bro. It smells <laughs> good and everything. Oh, it's shining. tasty. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go Bobby. We're tied at two, Brian. I'll go with Bobby as well. By a score of three to two in a stunner. And your new G-Bag of the Day champion, it's Bobby Bell. We'll have to make Tiny an honorary five-time champion. And uh, we'd love to hear from you at G-Bag Nation on X, Tiny. That was some uh, terrific work. Okay, uh, we're coming back with Krusty's Corner. Where are we going with that, sir? Got an update about this goose. We'll do that next. Coming up Thursday morning on...
Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They are the number one Chevy dealer in the world with more Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference. Based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Thank you, Lucius. It is the GBAC Nation here on 105 through the fan. And uh, it is time now for an update on what was our biggest hit story yesterday. Inside Krusty's Corner, brought to you by Reliant Air Conditioning, gimmick-free AC repair and replacement. Here's Krusty. Thank you very much, General. Appreciate that. Uh, before I get to the uh, goose update, I uh, have a couple things going on here. We have uh, Bobby and I, I said yesterday we were going to do Love of the Star. We're going to do it tonight. Bobby couldn't do it last night. So if you can uh, get your questions in to me or Bobby about that, uh, for Love of the Star, and we'll post that thing up tomorrow. He couldn't do it last night? Couldn't do it last night. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, couldn't do it last night. Franklin Prinkle Injury Attorney Sex Line, 877-881-1053. Sex Line? He crashed. He, he crashed. crashed after work. He couldn't. He crashed. He could, yeah. he could not do his job, yeah. Lucius. I think that's a great catch by you. Uh, the uh, Yeah, but we, we're going to do it. To, we're going to get that done tonight. And then uh, we got an announcement today at 5 o'clock. So stick around uh, for that. Okay. Got a big, big announcement. At five special announcement at special, five. Special announcement at five o'clock today. So uh, everybody kind of hang around your uh, your dial and uh, we'll uh, see if we can get it done. Bringing the goose in studio. I wish we could bring the goose real quick. Can Is I anybody do, quitting? Uh, no, okay. nobody quitting. Okay. Can I do no. something real quick? That before is I talk? quitting time. Can I do something real quick before I talk about the goose? Nope. I guess. I saw this nickname for coworkers. You guys ever seen this thing? No. People have nicknames for their coworkers. Yeah? Yeah, have you ever heard anybody be called a Kit Kat? No. No, what's that mean? Always taking a break. Oh, okay. Oh, well done. Yeah, how about uh, Motion Light? Motion Light. <laughs> motion Light only works when somebody walks past. Ooh, Ooh I like that. I pulled that move. E.T. always home. wants to go home. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Seaweed floats around all day and stinks like poop. Oh. Does seaweed stink like poop? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. How about this one? A lantern. You know What'd what you say? If you're a lantern. If you're a lantern. What is a lantern? Like a lantern? Lantern. lantern. Oh, lantern. Yeah, there's a T in there. Okay. Okay. Lantern. There you go. Lantern. You know what it is? The lights on. So angry. Nope. Not very bright <laughs> and has to always be carried. <laughs> Ooh. That's awesome. Oh, man. This is you, Woolchuck. Deck chair. Deck chair. Okay. Deck. Oh, Deck with an E chair. What is my problem? No, no, no. That, that one was good. that was you just for clarification's sake. Deck just, chair. just the lantern. I was confusing. Deck chair, lantern, lantern, growing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jackass. What's a deck chair? Deck chair. You know what a deck chair is? No. What is it? Always folds under pressure. Ooh. Why does that mean? That's you, bro. You're a, you're a folder Jose, guy. Jose, I'm a folder Jose. guy. <laughs> Man, sorry about your luck, little shirt. Uh, and that's it. You're Work. choosing war today. All right. I, 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 cho I chose violence. Fine. Bring it on. All right. We got an update on the update on the, the goose. I think um, 
I'm going to make Carter so mad. We got, uh, be, is Carter here with us today? Yeah, Car- Car- <laughs> yes, Carter. Yeah, I believe you've had multiple interactions with him <laughs> yeah, today. I know. I, I just you weren't sure, sure if he was I, on his Kit Kat break? I, did, I wanted to make sure he was there. I didn't want to like <laughs> offend him if I asked for the video and then he uh, he's not available. So if he, I can't see him. Is he back there? He, I guess he is. Yeah. Okay. Kit Kat's uh, back there. Give me Kit- a break. Oh, here we Give go. Okay. Break. Carter's posted the video of said <laughs> goose. This is the the ornery goose. This from... is the ornery goose. If you're if you're new to the uh, the program, welcome. But yesterday I had an experience. Look at actually, that thing. The, the day before, with I was at the Cooper Clinic, which is uh, been around since 1970. It's a workout facility, one of world renowned workout facilities in uh, the country. Great medical stuff and all that over there. But they have a track. I'm a member over there, so I can walk around mm-hmm. and use their gym and all that. But as you notice here, they have wildlife all over the premises here. And this thing right here has been a nemesis of mine for two days now. If we notice right here. Looks more like a bully than a nemesis. Look how, okay, uh, if you're watching on the the Twitch and the cam and all that stuff, you can see what I'm talking about. I'm sorry if, if you can't. Maybe you need to go back and look at this. But, all right, I'm minding my own business, but I have to stop. He's over in his area, but he makes his way onto the track. See, he's over there just checking out. He's he's just kind of kind of hanging out, eating some stuff, and then he makes his way onto his track. He's he's now got me kind of cornered here. Yeah. He's got me cornered. Yeah, and you're literally And I'm backing up. Yeah, you're backing up. I am backing up because I want no part. Uh, Tovash sent us a picture yesterday of the the teeth and how, you know, how that thing could, be, oh, yeah. oh yeah, the mouth of a goose yeah, is maybe not, one of the last good. places on all of Earth you not want to find good. any part of your body inside not, of. Not, it's like not. you were being a deck chair, if you ask me. Yeah, I That's was. True, man. I was folding up like a deck chair. I, the pressure was a little <laughs> much for me here. He's eating up your space immediately. This guy's being really aggressive, though. Okay, what would happen if you would have stopped right there? Would he have come up and started pecking your shoes? Or? I think. Wait, did you didn't put the deer urine on I your shoes? I didn't get the deer urine on my man. shoes. I did not. Do well, that. then this is your fault. Okay, but I again, I don't want to put deer urine on my running shoes why not i just don't because i don't okay let me ask you this do you think this is going to be an everyday problem with this guy <laughs> yes okay for because the next three weeks you think so while he's, he's in he's heat, got eggs because he knows he owns you yeah, he, okay he's, he's fending you off on the nest he's letting you know you're not welcome around okay yeah. <laughs> to the right to the right well actually his left to his left you could there are there's the a lake or a pond and I believe the mom and the babies and eggs and stuff are over there. Yeah. I think this guy. He thinks is, you're a bit of a threat. He thinks I'm a big threat. And, to steal his girl. But he does Mr. this. Girl. He does this for everybody that comes by. Except Jim. Now, Jim, as we mentioned yesterday, Jim, he got, he went airborne on Jim. He went vertical and went extension with. Spread the, goose. Spread goose. And when he went spread goose, Jim, an old crusty, forearmed him right in the chest. Gave him um, that shit. Probably from the greatest generation. Yeah. I don't think I have the the guts to forearm a goose in the chest if it went full spread on me like that. I don't I, I don't think you should underestimate yourself here, Brian. You never want to go to toe to toe with a goose when they go full spread like that, though. No, no. To don't. be real. As much as I want you to get in the mix on this guy. And it seems like he's kind of asking for it. You do need to be careful. Okay, that's that's a big goose, though, isn't it? I mean, did you guys? Honestly, any- I was I was I would say s- smaller than I was yeah. anticipating, yeah. but I didn't see him go full spread either. You know, when he starts was, levitating off the ground, backing, I was backing up, so maybe I didn't do his his size size any justice. But as you can see, look at him. He he's he is on the path, and he's head down, like head hunting down after and, you, and yeah. traveling yeah. at me. Yeah, get get like a selfie stick, and then just like get it down on ground level, and really get it up to his face, so we can get a good look at his eyes and his his mouth. I mean, that looks like a damn pencil sharpener when a goose opens its mouth like that. It's it terrifying. Looks absolutely. There's like three it's layers just, okay. of teeth. It's yeah, weird. Right, bacteria like, written. There's like there's teeth on their tongue. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It yeah. seems like it. Okay, so next time that I do this. Should I should I stop? What should do you I, mean stop? Yeah. What does that mean? Should I stop and let him kind of get near me you and see take how a, close he'll get? A no, picture? No, go around him. 
<laughs> that's that Canada Goose thing. If that's the him, that might be the female, right? We don't know. I, th- I think that's the male guy. You think so? I think yeah, so. That's Canada Goose, I think that man. the female is over by the, the pond area, standing by the eggs, or the small ones. The little, dude, the little dude at the fishing spot I go to, there's some swans over there because it's a, like a public park in a sense. Sure. They call them uh, cobra chickens. Okay. <laughs> cobra Let's chickens, yeah. man. Yeah, they, they might just be trying to chase you off, but if you stop, they might attack you. So if you think that would be good for ratings, I would say then, yes, yeah, stop, Brian. Yeah, you haven't seen a video of that goose uh, attacking a kid? He was wearing that kid out. The kid was running for his life. Yeah. That kid is probably like 36 years old right now. We'll tell you every day, man. Stay away from those geese. I wake up yeah. on a night okay. system. I, 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 I'm going to take your guys' advice. And I'm probably not going to get good. Get you some duck boots. That's I'm not, not going to get any good more video on that. But you get an idea of what I'm. I, I, there's some trauma going on in my life with this thing right now. I can't have a good workout. <laughs> there's some anxiety in there. I know. Yes, because yeah. I'm worried yeah, about this. Hey, let the, me let the me tell you. Of geese. It was it was some nighttime running going on. It got dark. I'm worried about this thing hiding behind a tree. Seriously, and coming out and coming tapping, out. Yeah, tapping coming your pockets. Yeah. Tripping See what me, you got. Tripping me like like getting his body and tripping me as I'm running. I'm a little worried about yeah, this. Yeah, there's some ingenuity with these these guys. They're smart. Yeah. You yeah, can't underestimate the them. They're smart. Age uh, 9 to 15, I, I lived way out in the country. We had to ride up this 200-yard hill to get to the convenience store, which was like 10 miles away, right? So as we climbed this hill, the farmer who lived like 100 yards to the right down a long driveway had like 15 dogs. Oh, So you'd have to try to sneak up the hill, but as soon as one saw you, it was your job to get to the top of the hill and get through where you could get to flatland and outrun the dogs before they cut you off. So you had to and run come from dogs every day? Well, if we wanted to go to the uh, convenience store, uh, our yeah. bus came out past the dogs to take us to school. So we didn't have to na- navigate the dogs to get to school. But to get to the convenience store on bikes, we did. Wow. So every every uh, week or so, we did, Brian. Yeah. Well, thanks, for Carter, for putting it together for us. And I hope uh, you can go back and check it out. Well, I'll wish you nothing but the best there in your we'll continued see what happens adventures. Tonight. We'll see what happens again. The best Google uh, can, can tell me early May those bad boys should hatch and Doodle chill out. He'll go hang out with his buddies on the pond again pretty so. soon. Fear yeah. of geese, anatidophobia. He's going to... What? And a tit of phobia. I don't have that phobia at all. No. You He's going to escort her around, Dawson. Yeah. yeah. He's going to escort her Is and the right? babies around. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's Go not over yet. Okay. All right. It's not over. So you got to you got to wait until the, until these babies it's leave the nest yeah. and, until they uh, cross over into manhood. Ugh. This and, might and be. by that time he done found another mate. <laughs> That's right. He's on your ass again. Yeah, he went. He went down. He he went to the store to get some cigarettes. Right, Lucius. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll be right back. What you want, Snickers? You look like a type of guy like Snickers. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> we have Cowboys draft stuff coming up at three twenty. <laughs> NFL news of the day next. Wolchuk, where is it? Yeah, we got a sleeper team that's willing to draft a quarterback, according to Shefty. The (laughs) Mm -hmm. Brazil game, and keep an eye on these new deals. That's next, but oh my goodness, I've been having so much.
Got cowboy stuff coming up at 320. What a tremendous sports paradise we are in. If the weather could just get a little bit better, it'd be a total paradise. We got a lot of NFL news going on, and here's Wolchuk with the peak NFL news today, boy. Who does Adam Schefter think could be a sleeper team to take a quarterback? We'll get to that in just a moment, but it appears that uh, Mo Hurst of the Cleveland Browns got ball sacked. He told us a couple weeks back, if you remember, Browns going to Brazil. They're going to open up the season against the Eagles. Ooh, they're not. Hmm. Now, conspiracy. Is this Hurst getting ball sacked, or is it the NFL thinking the strip got leaked? Now we got to pivot. He's already told everyone Browns are going. No, no, no. We're going to switch because it is the Green Bay Packers who are going to play the Philadelphia Eagles when the NFL holds its first regular season game in Brazil Friday night, September 6th in Sao Paulo. I could see that. Oh, you leaked the story? Oh, you think you're going to cover stuff? Well, guess what? Now you look like an idiot. That's what the Cowboys did to Jane Slater. Yeah, I could see. I, I just don't know how difficult it is to actually iron out that schedule. You know? They, they, I mean, look, like for the league-wide trying to get all these games. Out, didn't it? Didn't we used to do like a big schedule release, like end of March? It would be out. Leading Like now it's after the draft. After they, the they draft. They keep doing this later and later Well, now. they're trying to get, they're trying to, they're trying to carry this thing all the way to July. Okay, the only, so we, the we only want more month, reason to tune in. Right, the only month that they don't have stuff physical because those the OTAs and mini camps all end in the middle of June. Okay. So the league takes off from the middle of June to the end of July. That's the only time they have no news. No news at all. Makes sense. But uh we'll see. That's gonna be a fun matchup. Jordan Love and the Eagles. Yeah. That's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Now, speaking of quarterbacks, Adam Schefter went on NFL Live yesterday. 
He had this to say about what team he thinks could be a sleeper to draft a quarterback based on, I don't know, the current quarterback's contract. Here's Shefty. Well, what about Jerry? What are they going to do at quarterback if they lose Dak? That's interesting. And that's why I think the Dallas Cowboys might just be a sleeper team in the quarterback market during the Ooh. draft because at some point in time, they might have to draft a quarterback higher than you'd think at some point in time because Dak is going into the last year of the contract and it might be time Ooh. to get somebody in there to start grooming him. Just like they found Dak Prescott in round four, might be time to go find another I'm quarterback in another round to begin to get him ready. Mm. Okay, would you like some insight? Yeah, give me some insight. I asked Schefter this question. Okay, you did. I did. Is this after you heard this or before? Yeah, after, okay. the, after I heard this. Yep. So you just, this you is just, perfect. You just texted him or you FaceTimed him? I texted him. I asked him, I said, hey, what, what's this about drafting a quarterback? And he goes, you don't think they would? He was like, he's not sure. That they that they really he he threw that out there. He's not reporting. He's opining. He is just opinion is whatever you opining. Yeah, I guess okay. is what you're saying there. Opinionating. Opinionating. He's opinionating. I asked him. I said. I he, he goes. Y you don't think they would? You know, like he's not really sure. Yeah, he should stick to just reporting yeah. the facts. Come on, because I, 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 I tried to tell him about the whole thing with Trey Lance. Yeah, they already drafted their fourth round quarterback. Yeah, He's yeah. Trey Lance. I, and I'm like, listen, if, you know, if they, if say Pratt from Tulane or say, Pratt, sure. somebody like that, yeah. sure, I, I consider it, but you've already used a fourth round pick on a guy you had a second round grade on. Yeah. And he was asking me like, well, you don't think they would draft a quarterback? I, I don't know because I, I think they have way too many needs that they need to fill that I don't know. And, he, and look, he's, that was the Packer he's, way. He's not as confident as he sounded in that uh it sounded in that deal, right? And that report that he just did. I think that they that there could be some mid round quarterbacks that they like, whether that's Spencer Rattler, maybe it is Michael Pratt. We knew that yeah. they were interested in I think Aiden O'Connell last year was a guy that sure. Mike McCarthy liked a lot. Right. And it just kind of depended on the round and the value. I don't see it happening. I think when you look at not having a fourth round pick, they're not going to be in a position most likely to take one of these guys. No. And they have Trey Lance. That's what I'm saying. I and, and I once I explained that to Adam, he was like, Oh, oh okay, thanks. And mm. I, I'm like, Well, see, this is this is the Okay, thanks. I didn't think about that. This is the part of and I know it's interesting for fans out there to be able to to kind of follow along and do stuff. This is the part that really stinks because you're hearing so much and some of it isn't true. Some yeah. of it's not and so you report stuff that's not true, and then you get a fan base that all of a sudden is like, Dallas can draft a quarterback. They come up with crazy ideas, well, like pretty yeah, internet yeah. ideas. They come up with ideas and stuff like that. You know, this is the time when people are looking for information, but if you're just consistently throwing stuff out there that's not accurate, you're not helping anybody's fan base at all dealing with this. No, you're not. No. But it is kind of the ESPN. Hey, we know what is drawn. I wanted to know. Attention. I wanted to see. Cowboys. I wanted to see how committed he was to his report. He wasn't. I'm glad that you asked because that's great. We can dispel that. Yeah, and but I think anybody that knows this team, they don't have enough picks. No, they used a fourth round pick on a quarterback currently on their roster. You know that they liked as a second round grade. They're they're not going to. I just don't see them drafting a quarterback with the if, now if they get a bunch of picks, multiple picks, keep trading back, getting picks, getting picks, maybe somebody's there. But I just don't see how you could say this is a team with you know, no, they've they if they have to get if they have to get another or if they have to get a quarterback, they are just going to find a way not to pay Trey Lance. Or 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 pay, pay Dak Prescott. Yeah. Then, then you let yeah. that go. Yeah. I mean, if a guy fell to you, if you have an Aaron Rodgers like slide, and maybe there's a quarterback that they do that like, we talked about that today. We talked about that today. That would be so awesome. If 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 they okay, if one of those guys like Michael Penix or somebody falls to you at 24, yeah, then maybe you can. Maybe they do have that conversation. Yeah, if maybe they, you if do. They've graded him as a first rounder. They pick up the phone and have a trade conversation. I, that would, would be so that. exciting. That's what I think. That's what the organization needs. You know, uh, you know, a breath of fresh air. So many people have, have given up on this model. I think Dak could still win a Super Bowl with a different team, but the Cowboys aren't winning a Super Bowl team with this model, not with Dak as their quarterback. You would you would need the absolute GOAT to win with how they team build. So it'd be just amazing, you know? I, I think send Dak somewhere where a, a team wants to go all in to win you a Super Bowl. You're not going to win it if you don't really go all in.
unless you have Mahomes. That's the bottom line. I do want to know, Brian, like with, with this team wanting needing more picks, and it'd be a day yeah. three pick for this player, but I've had, and I'm sure you've seen this as well, a lot of Tolos have asked about, okay, if Trey Lance is your backup, is there any value for Cooper Rush? I don't think so. I don't think so either. No, I don't. I don't think so either. You know, he had a chance to be signed. And remember the only team that the Raiders, was, the Raiders right? were the only ones that were yeah. interested in the player. He's a good backup to have. He is, he is a good backup. He's a very good backup. A lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Good Not backup a threat, to have, but yeah. quality. Win yeah. games. Can. No doubt. Yeah. And he's proven that, no doubt. Now the Raiders, there's a lot of Jaden Daniels noise going on. Like, does Jaden Daniels want to play for the Patriots? Uh I know Schefter also reported he does believe that Washington will take Jaden Daniels at number two. Mm-hmm. Seems like the sports books believe that as well. Apparently, Raiders owner Mark Davis has given their GM, Tom Telesco, and head coach Antonio Pierce permission to trade up in the NFL draft for a quarterback. Jaden Daniels is one. He was just doing a Instagram Live with Malik Neighbors, and Neighbors was kind of hitting on like, hey, maybe there's a way that they could unite, similar to the Texans mm-hmm. making that trade to stack back-to-back picks. Now, they they went offensive and defensive, but maybe the Raiders get involved here in the Jaden Daniels sweepstakes. I don't know, but that's another team to kind of monitor what's going on with their quarterback situation. We also have the Eagles and uh, Devontae Smith in talks regarding a long-term extension. This certainly is something I'm sure C.D. Lamb and his representatives are monitoring. Uh, there's optimism that a deal could get done. Projected four years, $98 million is the projected deal now. Nothing confirmed, but something that could happen. And then we had the big deal uh, with Josh Allen, not the quarterback, but the defensive end of the Jacksonville Jags. He got a five-year, $150 million deal to stay in Jacksonville. So $88 million guaranteed. Micah Parsons and David Mulligetta, his agent, certainly eyeing that and thinking, oh, well, we're definitely going more than that. Yeah, uh, I mean, the the Jags, it's confusing. You, you should have just got the deal done with this dude, Josh Allen, so that you could have franchise tagged Calvin Ridley. You wouldn't have gone and paid Gabe Davis. Like, the, the order of operations here mm. seems pretty flawed from the Jaguar standpoint. Well, is it still bulky over there? Is he still their GM? Sure, bulky, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a guy that's made a lot of, who knows? I mean, mm. weird, weird moves he, in the he, past. He survived. He's a survivor. He There was thought talk that he was going to be out the door, and he, he managed to keep his gig. You guys hear about, uh, I, I mean, I know you have because we've kind of talked about it, but this Terrell Suggs deal is oh, getting geez. crazy. Oh, my goodness gracious. TMZ reporting. Terrell Suggs, former Baltimore Raven. T-Sizzle. Pulled a gun out, threatened to kill a man in an argument while at Starbucks. He swore at Suggs before the ex-NFL star challenged him to a fight. Said, I'll kill your BS. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there was also another thing that he said that is not clean for radio, so I'll refrain from saying it. What did it start with? Uh, a P, ass, and then a derogatory slur. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, but that's a man that won. It's not won. a strong slur either. It's not. It's this, not. That man, it's just not a strong slur for the white people's. This just doesn't, Honestly, it's it not doesn't something. Hit. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't hit. But I feel like we can't say it, right? But if you know where it came from, I don't know why they even use that. Yeah. Saltines. No. Crack of that whip. Okay. That's where it really came from. <laughs> I didn't think it came from Salt. Yeah, Man. well, yeah. But for people that were wondering, like, what are so we it's not a, about? it's not a good, you know, it's not a good one. It's not no, good. No, 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 you got to come good. up with something else, and there's nothing that hits out there. We should. 877. You guys conquered the best word. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Everybody else is fighting for second. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We can even think of something more vulgar. Harsh. Who's, who's, who is. Well, why are you challenging Suggs? Yes. Who is the crazy person that's looking at Terrell Suggs and thinking, yeah, I want to S talk this no, guy? Like, that is a dude I am not messing with. Like, like James the, Harrison. It's the biggest human being to ever step foot in a Starbucks. Hell no. And you're going to come shot? Yeah, it's bad, dude. You see his mugshot? He seems a little happy to be there. I think he did it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a guy that's not denying. He's not denying. He's like, yep. I confess, I did do this. I mean, I might and have. What a res- are you going to do about it? I might have a respectful disagreement with Mister Suggs. I think we could see eye to eye, and 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 you know, as as strong as my language would get, my voice would never raise much. It would probably be higher, a nice high octave, and would end with "sir." There'd be you a know? lot of "sir" involved. Yeah. And yeah. what can I do for you? Do you want my sure. coffee? Did yeah. I, did I cut you in line? You gonna move out the way like Broadus does that goose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, yeah. my bad. I am yeah. so sorry. Sorry, I'm in your area. <laughs> but what else can I give you? My television, my wallet, mm-hmm. with I'm the th- prayer hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Namaste, sir. Namaste. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm totally nonviolent. Oh, okay, we, we're going to have to get, I mean, you assume TMZ is going to end up getting this Starbucks footage. Yeah. And I, I can't wait to see the size of this guy. Right. I, I, like the oh, other guy. Okay. Does you know? he look like a college wrestler or something? Like, is there cauliflower ear? Like, what is, What gave him the confidence Here's to, my guess. to mother bleep sucks? We've got little man syndrome. And I caffeine. <laughs> Plus caffeine together. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe, maybe it's, you know, we got a little Adderall mixed in too, Bobby Belt style. Yeah, rewind yeah. that security Man. tape about 15 minutes. You'll see him order a triple espresso and pop a pill. There's a lot of waiting around at <laughs> yeah, Starbucks. Yeah. And, and he'd call it breakfast. It, <laughs> yeah. A lot of waiting around at Starbucks. You, you know, you get up, you get frustrated. You know, yeah. you get a little. I only hit you the drive through. I'm, I'm not going to get that mad. Yeah, not but, Terrell Suggs. I'm no, going to beat you up, I've mad. Seen, I've seen people get mad at these Starbucks. I mean, not pulling a gun mad, but. You know, no, I'm talking about just even just having a confrontation with Terrell Suggs. Yeah. I'm not going to get that mad in no. Starbucks. No. no, I'll wait one more person. I'm, yeah, I'd be mad at everybody else. In fact, yeah. go ahead and like, skip me in line. Screw you, yeah. brother. Bleep you. I'm going to oh, start that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to start that train where we start buying the person behind you's deal. I'm like, hey, this one's on, hey, he's on me. He's on me. We can get he's the train like, rolling if you want. Forward. I'm paying yeah. for his and the guy that he's going to pay for in this line. Oh he, Terrell, get whatever you want. You want a pastry? It's unreal. Uh, we did get Tavondre Sweat's blood alcohol content level. Oh, okay. And this is the 400 pounder. Yeah, this is. Yeah. Uh, Texas defensive tackle that was in that accident level was more than 25% over the legal limit when he was pulled over for a DWI. Mm. His BAC was measured at 6.08 a.m., but the officer arrived to the scene at 4.41 a.m., meaning his BAC could have been much higher if it had been tested earlier. Hmm. Is that high, Dawson? 25%. No, I mean, le legal's point oh way, so 25% is knows, like point one. <laughs> Dick Wolf. He knows. Right? You're not, you're not like Dick hammer, Wolf. hammered until you're point one eight. See? You know? <laughs> okay. Point two, like, wow, how are you keeping that car on the on the road? You know, point what, three, possibly dying. What do you think I was possibly. at the parade? Uh, I, think we were, I think we were all probably <laughs> around You think same. I was point one five? Yeah, point one five, point one two, somewhere in there. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like hey, still the peak was after that vodka tequila or whatever we <laughs> yeah. chugged or I, I did straight from the, the well, me and brought us waterfall it and you just went yeah. right mouth wild animal mouth. style. <laughs> yeah, it's a believe in World Series parade, guys. Come on. <laughs> and, then you, and then you handed it back to the lady in the crowd that who yeah. knows how many. They were yeah, very yeah. happy to have it back. Yeah. I should have just walked off with it. So, like, like three times the the legal limit is where it's probably like, okay, oh, yeah. now you're now yeah. you're playing with some serious. Yeah, your field sobriety test is a total disaster. Okay, yeah. okay, you're not fooling the cop at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this is this is all just a formality. This crap we're doing here. Yeah, I got gout. That's why I can't get the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh my bunion! Yeah. Oh that my bunion! So I can't good. move. Oh, the gout and the bunion. Uh, final thing. That's NFL. a great idea. <laughs> I gotta remember that one. Last NFL news of the day: uh, Antoine Winfield working towards a deal to make him the NFL's highest-paid safety mm -hmm. with the Bucks. First team All-Pro in 2023. That's my dude. Love you, uh, and I hope he gets his bag. He deserves it. You're right on, Well, Chuck. Thank you. NFL news of the day: most afternoons, three o'clock. Uh, a special programming notice coming up at five o'clock. That's right? right. Is that that's, that's accurate? Right. Okay. That's right. And no, nobody's leaving this time. I don't know. Okay. Some of us don't have contracts. So you don't cool. know that. That's a good point. Things could change here. You know, I just signed mine, so don't you fools leave. <laughs> <laughs> Doing my best. Okay. We were thinking the same thing about you. LA Live 2 don't 7. Leave. Yeah, don't if leave. Lucius, Lucius was out. I was out. Yeah, don't leave, Lucius, please. Don't Cowboys leave. content is flowing. An NFL draft big board report is next here in the G Bag Nation. But I do want to tell you about my home.
Yeah, buddy. Welcome back. Let's do some Cowboys uh, and some talk some draft here with you. But we have a little bit of Rangers news before we get there. Segment is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. It's brought to you by the Frankels. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Franklin Frankel, the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one has been in an accident, contact the Frankels, 214 or 817-333-3333. Jump online to frankelfirm.com. Yeah, a little bit of Rangers news here for you. Wyatt Langford is going to get the night off. It's Simeon Seager Carter, Garcia Smith batting fifth, Heim sixth, and then Walsh, Janko DH in batting eighth, and Leody Tavares in center field. Your starting pitcher tonight, uh, our buddy Cody Bradford, who's been on uh, the show at least three times in my recollection. recollection. Yes, sir. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Rangers need to get a win. Uh, sitting at 6-5, uh, and five, losing to the A's. It, it'd be nice, but, you know, as we've learned, this is not going to be easy. And, you know, unfortunately, the Rangers still have Jose LeClerc in their bullpen, and, and last night it cost them. I, I would hope um, that Boach sees this as – the last time we need to suffer that fate for a while. Um, it would involve a week off for me. It might involve some minor league stuff. Like I think you got to put LeClerc in 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 like uh desperation mode like he is in the in the in the postseason, the World Series. When he's in like, man, I'm kind of battling for my career mode. I have anxiety about how I lack control. You know, it's just it, it's not going well. What what got the absolute best of him was being terrified because his postseason was on the line and I, I think you got to tap back into that careers on the line you know let's see how you react to that instead of this oh you know let's just take it day by day and trust your stuff i, I you know i think you got to shock the energy somehow so hopefully boach is going to do that but you know in the end however boach handles it i'm sure it's good you know he's, he's got like a phd with 20 years of infield experience at this point i love having that kind of leadership on my team but from my from my perspective LeClerc wouldn't pick up a baseball with with my uniform on for at least a week. I just couldn't stand the sight of it. I'd probably be the same way as you on that one, but that is one of the comforting things about w- this Rangers team right now is knowing, having having the confidence that they will figure it out. You know, yeah. the decision makers, the powers that be, understand, and whatever their process is, it feels like something that, that can be trusted despite some bumps along the way where our frustration sometimes, you know, sometimes cooler heads prevail and that's what they – they got going on and we're kind of like dude what the heck are we doing uh but ultimately you know one way or another they're going to get it figured out yeah yeah i, I love uh, boach see why you know a lot, lot of great leadership on this team into the players the pitchers the players themselves okay brian you've been talking quite a bit behind the scenes about what position group you feel like is most likely going to be addressed in the first round the athletics john mishota with an article about it today we go to johnny matches and he ranked your top five most likely positions Uh, to be taken by the Cowboys at 24. Where would you go with it, or what do you think is going to happen as of now? I think it's going to be if... I think they're hunting a center, and I think they're trying to figure out which one is going to be there when they pick at 24. Will it be Barton, or will it be Powers Johnson, the center from Oregon? I think they're comfortable with either one of those guys. That would be my guess. I I think on their board... The center might be higher than whatever tackles on that board. Hmm. Would be for me. So that's Most likely. That's if I, if I had to if I had to place a bet on it right now. And I know we got a couple of weeks until this uh, thing kicks off for real. And then you know maybe you'll get a little somebody leaking some stuff to you about the direction that they really think. But my gut feeling right now is they're hunting a center, and that would be at least best play, player available compared to the tackle. Is right. it Well, the, the best they, I, I'm, in their stack, they might I, they might have these two centers, Barton from Duke, Powers Johnson from Oregon, higher than any one of these other tackles that we might be talking about. So it's looking like best offensive lineman available? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going yeah. to be an offensive lineman. That will be your pick. Now, if, if you get – it seems like Ram Barton is starting to get a little bit of hype leading into mm-hmm. this thing. It was Powers Johnson was getting a ton of buzz. Now it's moved over to Parton. Maybe he's not there. I mean, it seems like a lot of the mocks you're looking at, he's not available. So do you pivot? Do you go with a guidance from Oklahoma at tackle? But I do think it will be whoever the best offensive lineman is most likely will be your selection uh, unless you get maybe a, tra- uh, a trade up if one of those guys starts to fall. We've talked about Fuaga, the offensive tackle from Oregon mm-hmm. State. I think that's the only scenario you see a move up. I think Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia. Right. 
could also be a sneaky fallback option. That could maybe be a trade. I think that's scenario. a trade back too. Yeah, and, and to me, there they, they might even take. I wonder if Frazier gets to you at fifty six in the second round. He could. I don't think he will, but he could. Okay, well, if you if you trade back, say you trade out of the first round. There's a couple of names I would keep an eye on then, potentially. Would you say Cooper, the linebacker from Texas A&M, is a trade back? Yes. And then I and then I would also think Frazier from the center from West Virginia. Is I also back. wonder about Peyton Wilson. I I mean, yeah. I just I, the linebacker from North Carolina. He's State. so darn good. If they view him medically as like this guy's okay, he's played two yeah. years, we're fine with it because the tape is undeniable. The mm. guy is just awesome. Yeah. So Mashota goes offensive tackle one, center two. Yeah. Uh, defensive tackle three. It's disappointing that they need defensive tackle. And I think at this point, I'm rooting for them to take offensive linemen over defensive line because I just think there's a much better chance they'll have a hit. Uh, I think a running back will probably be higher on their board again than one of their defensive tackles. But it, he doesn't, the, run, the running back position does not make Mashota's top five. He goes defensive end and then yeah. wide receiver cornerback. Mm. Um, Speaking of running backs, let's jump over here to a blog in the boys. They have aggregated a couple of different spots that are taking a look at third round runners. Uh, Braylon Allen, Wisconsin, uh, yeah. or uh, you could have Bucky Irving, Oregon between those two gentlemen. Which one would you prefer? Uh, I mean, I would look at one of the other backs personally than those two, <laughs> but I do think I'd take Bucky Irving over Braylon Allen. Now, they visited with Braylon Allen. He's a big back. He's six foot two. To me, for his size, I don't see the physicality. If it's blocked up, Braylon Allen will get it for you. He's highly productive at Wisconsin. I don't see a lot of creativity in the way that he runs. Bucky Irving is more of that slithering, uh, explosive type of back. The issue with him comes from what we've talked about with pass protection. He yeah. is a smaller guy at five foot eight. You can see him get bullied and run over in pass pro. But as a runner, he's got great field vision, contact balance, very explosive, and he's good in the receiving game as well. I feel like with Shoot, Allen sold me. Well, yeah, I feel like with Allen, you he could be a guy that you could feature. I think Irving you have to split time with. I think you have to have the size. I think you have to have two backs for Bucky Irving to play. I think I think Braylon Allen could play. Handle him the ball. I mean, his toughness is super impressive. His elusiveness is not. Not. He's not going to create. No, not at all. But good speed. Not really. Average. Not really. Oh, not average, really. Average for speed. Allen. But he's. But like I say, he is a. He is a tough guy, and he's got contact balance, and he's going to finish forward. He's. He's more of a bully than he is anything. Okay. What do you think about this report here? Bruce Feldman says uh, the Cowboys really like NC State linebacker Peyton Wilson. I believe he Ooh, just mentioned him yeah. a few moments ago. A, a linebacker name to watch for the Cowboys. Is this something we can get excited about? I mean, we need like the next Sean Lee to be able to step in here and a significant piece that the opposition has to account for in every play. He'd be a more athletic Sean Lee. I mean, he, he's he got the smarts, the intelligence to read and diagnose, but his sideline to sideline speed as a rusher as well, he can get after the quarterback. I mean, he's got some of the most impressive tape from a linebacker that I think you've seen in years. He he is uh, he would be the best linebacker in this draft, Brian, if it weren't for the injuries. Yep. I, I think we agree on he's that. He's my number one linebacker, even with the injuries. I so. heard Brugler this morning talk about, I mean, the injuries, double-digit surgeries on his body? Yes. Yeah. Oh my yep. goodness. And that that's the fear. He is a Sean Lee. That's one of those where if I, it, like for me, if I'm a GM and I find that out about the player, I'm not even looking at his tape. I don't want to be sucked in on something here that be like, oh my gosh, I will, I will bypass my principles. Double, that's not injured guy. That's historic injured guy. Yeah. Double digit surgeries. Yeah. But the last two years he's been healthy yeah. with NC State. He might not have an ACL. We'll go day three. Now there's Tajay Spears. <laughs> Round five, six, seven, something like that. I, 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 I could see, you know, because of the Cowboys' need. You know, if you if you got two years now of not getting hurt, maybe you figured something out. You know, maybe yeah. you changed your diet. You were you were on the wrong path. Fast food and sugar. You switched to vegetables and alkaline water and lean protein. The next thing you know, you're not getting hurt. Give me a narrative. I'm willing to buy on that for that kind of talent on day three. Everybody you're looking at right now. Cowboys will take them day one. Sorry. Well, everybody you're looking Amen. at right now, as far as some of the top players, have all got something wrong with them. He's got significant things wrong with him. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. But and but 
but like we've all keep but saying, if they took him, dude. You would love him. Yeah, he is going to make every single tackle. He's incredible. He'd be hurt the second day in Oxnard. If that's the case, then you can tell me and Zach we're all full of s. Okay. All right. Well. Feel like I do on a regular basis. Anyway. Yeah, I know. I, I, <laughs> just, what else is I just thought it was kind of par for the course. I wanted to set you up for you, you're okay, but doing it. Yeah. Gosh, dude, I'll tell you all this draft talk's got me. It's exciting. Bit, got I me mean, a little bit hungry. It's draft season, baby. I'm hungry, dude. Thank yeah. God the fans' path to the draft this year is brought to you by Pluckers. Ooh, you know, that yeah. is right. You know, we all as well. Eight Pluckers locations parting with you on the opening night of the draft. Come eat fried Oreos and ice cream, and we'll have ourselves a time. Those, holy Mac and cheese. Nachos. Oh, my goodness. I might break a record on okay. the consumption of the Holy Mac. That's such great. We got to have a wing count at whatever location y'all are at, like uh, like we did with the beers at spring training. <laughs> I want to see how many the Chiefs can get through. Special programming announcement coming up at 5 o'clock. An edition of Revelations next, Chief? Yes, sir. It's time I inform the people what the P in Paris Olympics actually stands for. That's next here in the nation. I'm going to tell you what window.
Chevrolet in Grapevine. They are the number one Chevy dealer in the world with more Silverados than anyone else, y'all. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference. Based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Thank you very much, Lucius. Special programming announcement coming up at 5 o'clock. It's now time for the Chiefs Revelations. Yes, sir. Cannot wait to chat Mavericks basketball with Tim Cato in 15 minutes. That's going to be fantastic. Your Mavericks now clinching the postseason, avoiding the play-in, and they are the team nobody wants to see. But right now, it's time for this. That's right, buddy. You show that turd who's boss. Hey, hey, just grab a hold of something, bite your lip, and give it hell. Come on. We're going to get through this. All right, we're going to get to the Paris Olympics here in just a moment, but I want you guys to consider something. My dad, in a recent sermon, mentioned anecdotally that the advent of the mirror did not arrive until the 14th century. Dang. Wasn't something I'd ever considered. And so he shouldn't have said that during his sermon because then my mind started wandering a little bit. I'm thinking about the mirror now. What life would have been like. This is now a bathroom staple for anyone, public or home. I would say nine out of ten bathrooms have a mirror in there. Yeah. Uh, but just general life without the mirror, how do you imagine that going? No mirror. You don't like you don't know how many people lived an entire life not really knowing what they looked like. I feel like your self-confidence would probably be much higher. Yes. Yes, most likely. Yeah. And you don't know how ugly you might be or how fat you are. Um, I think you'd know how fat you are. Maybe. You'd, you'd probably have a lot more neck beards going on, I imagine. Ooh, yeah. Like the more, Andrew Luck vibe. A lot more unpopped pimples, maybe, uh, you know, out there, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, I on on a different topic, I, I was listening to somebody talk about this recently, like the difference of, of previous generations. And one thing that happened is you relied on others for your sense of self and self-worth. So actually the opinions of others mattered a lot more. And I don't know if the the mirror's presence or lack thereof would contribute to that. But I would imagine you could build a self-image a lot better with a mirror than without. But yeah, a lot of things were super different back in the day. And that's why it was so important what people thought of you, right? Because your whole value was like condensed down to the immediate people like in your neighborhood or your little town or whatever. Like that was your complete identity, what they thought of you, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And just, um, I mean, I don't know. I guess you're probably doing the 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 Tarzan thing of peeking into the the local river or whatever to get a reflection to, oh, yeah, get a, Simba to goes catch to look a at vibe Mufasa. yeah yeah or Simba perhaps <sighs> oh, but you're still God. not getting a a true a true look and yeah I do wonder how many dudes were able to get the hotter girl you know the the five dude gets the ten girl because the ten girl doesn't know she's a ten let's go so you know maybe she's more willing to settle on that. You know, in that in that situation, he obviously knows she's attractive, but he doesn't know how attractive he is. So he's no. like, I mean, why not? I'll take my chances here. Pretty smart, pretty strong. Looks like I'm the alpha. Everyone became the late bloomer. Yeah, you know, you never knew how the the girl in high school she peaks in college. Yeah, she wasn't attractive in high school. Now she didn't know how attractive she was. This was kind of all, all day, every day. How how many people you think didn't know they had really bad teeth? That also is probably Everybody. great. That's that's yeah. a, yeah. that that to me seems like something maybe in today's society we still people don't look in the mirror yeah. all the time. That's probably an advertising. Are you teeth shaming right now? I'm saying there's some maybe you know maybe there's maybe there's some places that don't have mirrors. I do got some pretty jacked up chiclets. I just refuse. To I'm get just braces. saying back in the 14th century, yeah. Dawson. I'm not saying. <laughs> well, today. I think there's there's some level of looking around you and seeing everybody else's teeth looking awful. You have to probably have the self awareness of my teeth probably look my bad teeth, too. Yeah, like my, everybody's teeth are terrible here. Yeah, yeah it's a non factor. Yeah, yeah. But like that levels the playing field a little bit. Yeah. We all got garbage teeth, so. Just was curious. Um, it's still something today. That but it goes to like relying on others for your identity because ultimately you're going to talk about how hot those girls are. You're going to create a pecking order, right? They're going to talk about you, you know? Yeah, that's true. I mean, word gets out pretty quick, especially, you know, these small villages yeah. or whatever. And now you're being told, oh, no, I'm ugly. Like, imagine Crap. finding out, like, yeah. you didn't get to find out for yourself. Goodness you gracious. had to be told, hey, 
don't shoot your shot with that one over there because yeah. you're going to get a hard no because we've informed her uh, <laughs> that she's hot and you're, and she knows you're not. Yeah. Uh, be very, very interesting. Uh, now we'll get to, once again, the Olympics here momentarily, but I also wanted to just run something by you guys. I don't know. I mean, you guys know about me generally at home. I'm doing the, the seated P situation. Mm. Only yeah. in the comfort of my own home. Yeah. Out of courtesy for others as uh, well. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, last night... Y'all feel a little yeah. strange? Just a little bit? It, not at all, Lucius. No not, shame. Not huh? at all. There's a lot of strange going on. Not a lot at all. Last night, I did the rare stand and pee in oh. my own home. Oh, and did you pee gosh. on the ground? Mazel tov. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I appreciate did that. You pee, did you pee on your it's feet? A, did co you, coming of age moment. Did you miss? Yeah, uh, of course no, you I was did. actually no. I did. I lifted the seat and everything. I was. I was proud of the. I was oh, proud yeah, of the dude. aim. I really was. You. But my wife was eavesdropping in the living room while I was doing this, and she was asking me because she doesn't usually hear it the same way because I'm usually sitting down. You know, it's just yeah. not as audible. <laughs> this time. <laughs> She's catching Low it. Lomax. And so she's like, is, is that normal, what you just did? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And she started describing the way that my pee sounded. Yeah. And it was it, like strong stream yeah. for 90% of it. Yeah. But then the final maybe 10 to 15 seconds is just sort of like a like a pump and go <laughs> dribble situation, yeah. you know? And I guess in her mind, it's, it's like it's just generally just full stream and then it's a hard stop and it's over. And she was wondering, like, do like, are you are you sure you're good with the way that sounded there with mm. the dribbles at the end? She watched dogging. Is everything healthy? Yeah, like, bro. You, she got like three kids. She's got to worry about. Hey, man, you okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm like, I can't even pee. Like, this is why I sit to you pee. Got that like, it's just another up? reminder <laughs> as to why the benefits of sitting to pee oh, at your wait. house. You know, it's just another thing for your your wife to to wonder about. You know, poke holes into a little bit. Oh, Velocity shaming, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, I don't know. I felt good about the strength of the stream for at least eighty percent of it, but I don't know. Uh, if you guys are doing a fifteen-second dribble deal at the end, just make sure you're clearing it all out. Then I, I, do I feel thing. comfortable. I'm with you, bro. You're not alone. Okay, because I've been a little bit concerned. Good swing on that caddy there in the par three. That's a Masters. wife. That's yeah, that's a, a, that that wife has a good swing. That's a wife. Yeah. I think I think she might be trying actually now trying to get inside the mind of a female. She might be trying to manipulate you to sit back down. Like, oh, is that normal? Because that wasn't that impressive. Might not want to do that again. <laughs> I actually had. <laughs> that wasn't. I had Didn't the. Sound uh, too strong. See, there, thank buddy. you. I'm trying to peel this back and get to the root of what she's Hell, doing to me because she's, she's mind bleeping me right now and she's up on the scoreboard. It's the reverse psychology. I actually had the opposite effect on the sitting down situation hmm. once. And this was a two-ing, you know, you can't one without two-ing situation. Yeah. So it wasn't purposefully sitting to pee. But I had to, like, go through the the seat lid, that little opening there. Oh, no. It was not a good a good moment. So yeah. it, it, it was way more. Cold messy. morning? You were... <laughs> Yeah, you were, you were, you were sort of horizontal instead of like down, I just, I don't not think, hanging down. I don't think I was really prepared for what was about to happen, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, I'm like aiming and <laughs> long night with the booger sugar. <laughs> Who knows, dude? <laughs> uh, well, uh, that I guess that is certainly of note as a hazard. I appreciate that because I am nothing but like the pros of of sitting to pee in the comfort. Of your I know own you've home, had a lot of practice. Is, that's with definitely it. I, a, ha a I was hazard. not having practice. You, you, to you pull your little skivvies down to your ankles and do it? Uh, I, I do, yeah. I mean, everything, if you just watched me, you would think up until I don't wipe and I just stand up and go, you would think I was, you know, deucing. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody knows. Uh, uh, and you got to push it down there and squeeze your legs together. You're doing too much, bro. Come on. <laughs> you gotta hide it. Yeah, that's <laughs> not how nature yeah. makes yeah. yeah, the back of my hand has to get some work there. Some like, rubbing yeah, going yeah, on there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Paris puppy. Olympics. Uh, what does the P in Paris Olympics stand for? Of course, it stands for poo. According to the Washington Post, a conservation group called the Surf Rider Foundation has spent six months examining water samples taken near the bridge that will be used for the swimming marathon's finish line and claims it's detected an alarming level of E. coli mm. and enterochi. Mm. Two forms of bacteria that are linked to, uh, of course, fecal matter. And uh, that's oh, obviously yeah. not an ideal situation for not a waterway hygienic. that's no. preparing to welcome some of the best aquatic athletes on the planet. Um, so just something to monitor there. That's Apparently, enough not to go. There are currently plans to install water treatment plant disinfection units mm. and force boats that currently dispose of body waste in the, I believe it's the Seine the Seine River, 
Saney River. Sounds insane to me. To uh, to pivot <laughs> to other methods in the months leading up to the Olympics. So just uh, a huge cautionary tale. Can you imagine being an Olympic athlete? You've been training your entire life for this moment to go swim in some Paris waters, lead yourself to victory on behalf of your country, and the whole time swim faster. You're you're gonna you're gonna come out of there with double pink eye. I, I mean, at the very least. I mean, if you come out of there with double pink eye and that's it, you kind of feel like you got unscathed. Didn't yeah. Get, our guy yeah, Bob take Costas that. get pink eye during the Olympics? Yeah, yeah but that, that was for something else. Yeah. Maybe swimming in the poo. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it. You know, I think, I think that's that was a, just a crazy night in Most likely way to get <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, that was, yeah, because it wasn't ban- – was wasn't that the – It was uh, – Which Olympics was that? Which Olympics was that? Russia? That might have been Sochi. Okay. Nonetheless, uh, just uh, an unfortunate situation. Tokyo. And hopefully, it? Paris Tokyo. gets their river figured out that was before a summer one. they put human beings in it. Are they actually uh, so we're gonna just be a PSA? In that? A PSA, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> the text can't get over the irony of uh, maybe your disappointment in Caleb Williams' lack of masculine uh, traits or habits, and yeah. you're sitting to pee. Would you like to address this before we go? That's a very good question from them. Cause you got to push it down, then sit down. Bro. Yeah, there's a lot. You're looking this ridiculous. Right, going, a lot going on there, bro. You're looking ridiculous, bro. I actually paint my nails while I sit to pee. <laughs> we have more draft gold coming more up. Time. The, the fans' path to draft coverage Two is birds. brought to you by our friends at Pluckers. We'll be at all eight Pluckers locations, parting with you on opening night of the draft. It's also brought to you by our friends at Zero Res. Significant programming announcement is uh, coming up at 5 o'clock that uh, we are sure you will enjoy. Tim Cato of The Athletic. Are the Mavs going to go win the championship? He'll answer that question and more coming up next right here. It's the GBAC Nation of the fam. I have to chat Frankel's with you.
You're rolling with the G-Bag Nation right here on 105.3 The Fan. Yeah, buddy, it's hour three of the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. And if you're watching us on the webcam right now, 105.3thefan.com, Twitch, and YouTube, you will see we have a special guest joining us here. Salute to you, Tim Cato of The Athletic, joining us now to talk Mavericks. And a good afternoon to you, sir. How the heck are you? I'm doing well. I feel like you tell all of your guests that they're special, though. Well, uh, most of them, uh, but with you, I really mean it because uh, I love your Mavs uh, <laughs> analysis. I'll take that. I'll take that. And your insight. And, I, man, I feel like every time you join us, we, we talk about one way or another, what's their upside, you know, and what's their best case scenario. And all day long, uh, since Wolchuk told me you were going to join us, I've been looking forward to your answer here because we're more bullish than ever on their chances to win the title. Timmy, what say you? Yeah, I think the Dallas Mavericks have proven that they can beat any team. That doesn't mean that they're favorites. That doesn't mean that they're a, a top three team. But they are one of the they are one of the very short list of teams that I could actually see beating the Denver Nuggets in a full series. And at that rate, and especially, I, I'm so impressed with what Boston has done in the East. But they're also playing in the East. Um, they're they're a fantastic team, despite that. To be to be very clear, but I, I do think that this is a team that. Um, can beat anybody at its best because in any given series, it can have two of the top three players. And we know historically throughout the course of the NBA that, you know, star talent, that highest echelon is what rises to the top. And, you know, this team over the past two months or so has has really proven it to me that there's enough around these two ridiculous star talents in Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving that, yeah, I, 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 I would not count them out. I would not rule them out against any team they face, even if, you know, they're not maybe a top three favorite by any means title contenders going into the playoffs. Team rankings wise, you have Boston up there. You have Denver up there. How many more teams is it? Is it two? Is it is it five? How, how many are you putting ahead of the Mavs right now? That's that's the tier on top. And Oklahoma City probably comes the closest to to that top tier. But but yeah, it's it's Denver and Boston on top, and and then I think there's there's a bit of a gap, and the next tier starts, and Dallas is somewhere in that next tier. What is it? Is it is it is it size with defensive awareness and skill set that has sort of turned this thing over for us and and got it going in the right direction? Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, you know, obviously we know that the 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 trade deadline and and the new additions and, and PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford that is that has been a huge addition. I, I think the team is. Uh, playing better. I, I, I think that they're, you know, PJ Washington and as particularly enabled this defense to make a little bit more sense, uh, replacing him with, with Grant Williams, uh, just led into this team's defensive principles and, and the fundamentals that Jason Kidd wants them to play. But I also think the team overall as a whole is, is more bought in, more understanding, it looks much better at executing what they want to do. And that includes players you know, I, I think players like Derek Jones Jr., who has been great all year, you know, is is only amplified by by the way the the, the team, you know, the players around us, his teammates around him, are really uh, executing and, and functioning as as you know within this system that they that they build. And and Gafford, you know, being able to go Gafford lively, obviously lively, he's been injured for a little bit, but you know, just being able to keep. Uh, you know, at their peak rim presence and hopefully into the playoffs with lively, hopefully returning. Um, you know, that had been something that that has improved. And then Luca, you know, uh, Luca is better since probably the start of December than he was the first two months. And he was really good back then. But, you know, we we are we are seeing, you know, a, a generational all time player uh, at the peak of, at the absolute peak of his powers so far. And uh, who knows what's to come? As we all know, only 25, very possibly only going to get better from here. Uh, it's a hard thing to fathom, but 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 he has been that good, and that's a huge part of this. It's been such a joy to watch him and Kyrie, and Kyrie's certainly been sensational, especially in the fourth quarter, but now you're starting to see the Luka MVP momentum start to heat up a little bit. What are your thoughts on how likely and, and where his game's kind of evolved in the last two months? I don't think he's going to win it from a... You know, someone who's in the media and just has a sense of how these th how these things go. I, I don't think this late push is is going to be enough. I am a voter. 
And to me, it is very, very clearly between him and Jokic, and I don't have a decision. And thankfully, don't have to make it for a few more days here. And and I I just want to emphasize, and, and I very well may end up voting Luca for all the obvious reasons for everything that we've seen him do. He is absolutely fully deserving to win MVP this year. I just think Jokic is also fully deserving and able to win. And for Luca to ascend to top two player, no matter how this shakes out, and you know, certainly officially, it will almost certainly shake out with Jokic on top. That's that's okay. You know, I I, I think it's fantastic the all the cases, uh, all the MVP cases that fans are making for for Luca, and they're right. He absolutely has an MVP case, and if he finishes second, that doesn't do anything to diminish, you know, what this team is and. Uh, you know what what this player is and what he what he means to this team and he will his moment is is if, if it's not this year it is coming very very soon I, I am I am certain of that talking Mavs with the athletics Tim Cato here in the G-Bag Nation do you still Tim view this the team's defense as a liability no no I, I mean I think I think that looking you know, seeing how they look against the very best offenses in a in a postseason, uh, you know, situation is is yeah, we we do need to see what they look like and how high they they can reach. And in the sense of you know, maybe it's not quite going to be good enough to win a certain playoff series, and and that's going to be the downfall. Yeah, that that is a possibility. Obviously, the offense is is still uh, you know more of this team strength than the defense, but the defense has been really good for a long enough time that absolutely I I buy into it um you know if, if it has shortcomings it's less it's less the defense itself and, and the way that it's come together and it's more that you know maybe they need a little bit more top end talent you know maybe they need you know a third year Derek Lively uh you know that would be the ideal fit rather than you know a rookie who still shows rookie moments and is still learning you know maybe they need um, you know, a, a defensive stopper that that is just a little bit, you know, level above what Derek Jones Jr. can do, or or maybe, you know, someone who can stay on the court a little bit more because he's a little bit more, you know, has a little bit more offense to his game. But Derek, you know, Derek Jones has also been so good. And, you know, he blocked a Steph Curry three, you know, at the at the release. That's something that I have hardly ever seen. I have watched a lot of Steph Curry in NBA basketball over over my time. This this guy is is super impressive. And then PJ Washington as the, you know, kind of Swiss Army knife on the defensive end, being able to, you know, uh guard up, you know, and that's a that's a really important skill for, you know, your wings or your big wings, whatever you want to call PJ Washington. That's a that's a necessary skill. You have to have a player that can you know, comfortably, you know, spend a possession or two on a center and, and and not completely break the defense that you're trying to play. And so absolutely, this is a this is a very, you know, the defense we've seen is is very real. Um, we just have to see exactly how it looks in the playoffs. It's still more of a weakness than than the offense, but it's not a weakness. It they have proven that it's not a weakness. It's a it's a very serious defensive unit and, and that's a testament to the the trade deadline and the front office and the coaching staff. Uh, Tim, is a playoff run basically in the hands of a rookie that's banged up right now? Of a deep playoff run? I mean, is it is it tight? Is it that simple, or are you looking at this like without him, they're a different team? Without Lively, they're a different team. With him, they're a team that could beat anybody on any given night. Let me let me put it this way. I, I think that's a little simple, and I think you also might be right. You know, I, I think that this team is 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 uh, you know e even since he's been out, you know they they keep winning games. They've they won games. We've yeah. seen that. Yeah, 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 we've seen that the strengths of this team are not solely tied to that center position. But there's also a very real case to be made that the team could get into a postseason series. And you know, if Lively isn't available, if if he if he misses, you know, and right now it looks like the the hope, the optimism is that. At most, he's going to miss a game or two mm -hmm. into the first round, but you never know for sure. Um, you know, that could be something that it was like, wow, you know, Lively's absence was really missed. This 48 minutes of rim running, physical, uh, rim protecting uh, center platoon was something that they really missed. Even with Maxi coming along, playing very well of late, uh, you know, this is definitely 
a big part of the team's identity is just having, you know, uh, Lively or Gafford on the court at all times. And so, yes and no, but absolutely the team wants and, and needs him back. Okay, uh, it's Tim Cato here at The Athletic. How long does Kyrie Irving have at the absolute peak of his, you know, abilities here? And a stunning elite player, uh, approaching mid thirties here. How big is this window with both these guys in like top ten form? Well, I mean, remember what he said earlier this year. He's Benjamin Button team. You yeah. know, he is. He's 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 got the most dunks of his career. Nice. You know, he's he's actually getting more athletic as he ages. I I think that Kyrie is. I I don't. <sighs> You know, it's impossible to know these things. And, and he has a lot of injury history. I don't think that he's someone who's going to drop off, uh, you know, a cliff. It, it doesn't feel like, you know, he is one of the best shooters of his generation. And a lot of what he does, obviously, he is a super uber athlete. And, and that plays into it. And, you know, just because he doesn't dunk a lot, you know, this year notwithstanding, does not mean that, you know, his athleticism is a huge part of his game. But I think it's also something, you know, like his his handles create so much space for him in addition to his athleticism, his, you know, his shooting and his ability to, you know, toggle between a primary option role, but also being the secondary scorer next to Luca. You know, I think that's something that that is positive and beneficial for his longevity and, uh, you know, both role wise, but possibly also minutes wise and just in terms of the, you know, the load he carries on a, on a nightly basis and, you know, he's played the most games consecutively in his career since 2016, and that stat might be outdated. I, you know, a couple of weeks ago that was true. Now he's played, you know, a couple of weeks more more games. I, I need to check that, but you know, I, I don't. I, I think that he's he's got some time left. I, I I don't. It's not something I worry about through the duration of his contract, with which runs two more seasons. Um, maybe we see a little slip here and there, but I, I still expect him to be a very very good player top 30 top 40 ish and you know maybe the season of late he's been even a little bit higher than top 30 ish what have you thought about the play of thj here as of late i mean he's certainly a guy that generates a lot of criticism from fans but it seems as though he's really starting to make the right basketball plays and he's not trying to play some of that selfish ball we've seen previously yeah i think i think he deserves yeah he, he gets he gets a lot of vitriol from from mass fans and i, I understand why you know, and, and, you know, you can be upset at players uh, without making it personal. Um, I, I really think he deserves some plaudits for the way that he has adapted and exactly the ways you've said. I, I think his shot selection has has improved his his willingness to pass. Um, which game was it? The, oh man, I'm blinking. A, a few games, they're all blurring together. But, <laughs> you know, he made, uh, to PJ Washington, he made the, yes. you know, the game-winning assist. And... You know, Golden that's State? something that I think it was Golden State. Golden State. Yeah, yeah. against Golden State. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, the, I knew it was the one basketball expert the here, games. Tim. Basketball expert. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's too many teams. Yeah, too I know. many teams. You bring it, it bring it back down to 18 and then I can remember <laughs> them all. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I think I think he deserves a, a lot of uh, credit for for adjusting his game. It's still very weird to me that that he just seems to have lost some of his shooting ability out of out of nowhere. I kept thinking it was just a slump that would turn around, and obviously it, it still really hasn't. He, it's not that he doesn't make shots, but he does not make them. He has not been making them consistently at, at the rate that he almost always has during his Dallas tenure. But, yeah, he he's an expendable player. Dallas has tried trading him before. That That's probably almost certainly something that they're going to look to do again. We'll see what his role is in the postseason. A lot of it will depend on how he plays when he's out there. But, you know, if this team's fully healthy, I expect them to go into game one of any postseason series with a 10-man rotation. But how it gets shortened from there, whether it's just a less minutes, like maybe severely less minutes or, you know, completely falling out of the rotation, that remains to be seen, but but I, I think it's something that we can expect to happen, that, that they aren't going deep into the postseason with a 10-man rotation. They're just going to start that way. Hey, Tim, do as a fan base, do we owe Jason Kidd an apology? Um, you feel like it. I, I think I think he's <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a hard one to answer. What did you say about him? You know, a couple months ago. Oh, you don't want to. Know uh, you know, yeah, that that, plays that's, into that's it what as I'm well. saying, though. I yeah. mean, I, I you know, we, we do the radio every day and, and I think we've all been critical. I know on our end and I think the fan base has been critical. He seems to stay the course no matter what. 
you know? And so yeah, and maybe I, I maybe you know an apology for how things are going for this basketball team right now. I, I've come to, and it's not just, you know, the past month. I, I've come to, over the past few years, appreciate his mindset. And I think even some of the quotes that were most frustrating, especially last season for the fan base, some of them I felt like were explainable if if you kind of understood his broader mindset. Um, some of them were just frustrating. Yeah. Um, you know, some of them even, you know, from my space as, you know, not not a fan, but but certainly observing this, uh, I, I can't really defend. But but some of them, you know, kind of came from this the steadiness that he preaches, this this kind of zenness. Um and and I obviously the players respond to that. It, you know, everybody wanted to to know last season about, you know, dysfunction that was happening behind the scenes. And there really never was. And there was frustration, absolutely. There there was certainly some hot, you know, emotions in the locker room, but the the team did not turn on the the coaching staff by any means, nothing close to that. And, you know, I think that has shown. And so I I've been impressed of of late. I think that he is doing a good job coaching this team. And I think generally the the one thing that we can take away is that he does a pretty decent job coaching when everything comes together in the way that he wants it to. Um, you know, his his drawbacks as a head coach may be when things aren't going well. And we saw that last season where, you know, I do think he did a bad job. But now this season, especially post uh, trade deadline when he has the roster and the players that he wants to execute the ideas and vision that he has we have seen it work very well so i do think he's good at that it just may be that he's not as adaptable or adjustable or able to you know fix something that isn't going in the exact ways that he wants it to um as as some other coaches terrific insights once again tim enjoy covering this team man it's, i think it's a special time with what they're capable of doing yeah, I might be working into uh to late May, you know. Nice yeah. beyond. Nice. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to see, but I'm I'm mentally prepping for it. Let's so. go. Thank you, Tim. Have a great time and we'll catch you up with you soon. Tim, Absolutely. Tim, Talk soon. K there he goes, Tim Cato of the Athletic here with you on 1053, the fan, one of our absolute favorites uh from the uh, the NBA insider community and a guy who's just been dialed in on these maps the the entire way. Okay, uh very special programming announcement coming up at five o'clock. You're gonna want to stick around for that. Wolchuk's top ten is coming up next, though, buddy. Where are you taking us? Well, it's a very special day. Happy National Siblings Day. Love doing this list. Top ten siblings in sports. What are some of your favorite siblings that you've gotten to watch over the years? That's next. We have you covered.
run together. Visit traininfo.com to find your local independent train dealer. Traininfo.com. It's hard to stop a train. Hey, buddies. Welcome back, Nation. Hope you're having a good one. Time now for the top 10. Segments brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today, carsforkids.org. Brought to you by the Frankels. Life's unpredictable. Accidents happen. Franklin Frankler, are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks and DFW. If you or a loved one's been in an accident, contact the Frankels for a free consultation, 214 or 817-333-3333. Jump online to franklfirm.com. And here he is, your woolly bully, Zach with an H. Thank you very much. Top 10 siblings in sports history. Happy National Siblings Day. I know, I think think all of us have siblings. We're all not only children here. So happy Siblings Day to my sister, Samantha. Now, uh, Eric, you've got several brothers. Gavin, you've got a brother. Brian, you've got a brother. Mm -hmm. Who's your brother and sister? Yeah, we all related in God's way. You know what I mean? That's true. I got a whole lot of brothers and sisters out here. Happy Siblings Day, bro. Yeah, man. What's up, bro? Who are some of your favorite sports siblings? Speaking of uh, a pair that we'll get to, shout out to the Mannings, ESPN and Peyton Mannings, Omaha Productions. They've just agreed to an extension through 2034 for Manning cast to continue and for the two sides to continue expansion on other content. So excited to see how that ends up evolving over the uh, next several years. Yeah, I think they should get a TikTok, you know, take their best 30 or 45 seconds from each show and post that. That's how I'll be enjoying it. It does seem like the way that a lot of people are consuming their entertainment now. Like a lot of these podcasts are blowing up because people are just taking little clips from from TikTok, like Jinxie and Sketch, these two uh, big streamers now. That's how they've become super super popular so you got a pretty good podcast but you get those 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 shorts jumping and now you just blow up what's up brother yeah all right uh here are some of the texts we've been getting in uh quinn and quincy williams from the 518 we got jack and jim youngblood from the 815 that's an old dude that texts that one in hey shout out to you we appreciate that. i didn't know there was a jim i didn't either i just knew jack i didn't know jim yeah there were two of them yeah uh the watt brothers got to be the most exciting siblings we ever watched from the 817 the Kelsey brothers, certainly, Jason and Travis. Uh, we've got Dak and Tad. Shout out to the 214. Dynamic duo on social. The Brian brothers from the 469. The tennis. Yeah. What about the greatest trio of siblings going in all of sport right now? The Aloos. The Ball Saint brothers. Browns. Rowdy, Rocky, and Reagan Beers. The Beers. No question. Dominating college athletics. They are. Reagan's I don't know if the, the brothers the, are that great. Don't they have a sister too that's a baller? No, that that that's the Oregon State. That's the main one. That's Reagan. Oh, that's Reagan. Oh, yeah. Reagan. Okay. Yeah. She's the best one I think out of all three. She's the one that has the mask on. Think she might be the on, biggest. Right? Yeah. yeah. She's the big. She's she's the she's the big man for the Beavers. Oh, the Gronk. She got a big back. Brothers. Oh, giant. Dude. Giant. Big yeah. back. Okay. Broad shoulders. I mean, she was yeah. wearing the mask yeah. during the NCAA yeah. women's tournament. Okay. Just she actually out. did the interview at like halftime with the mask on still. Yeah. You I'd don't want to get behind to her about three feet, yeah. probably. Yeah, a couple yeah. axe handles, Lucius. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a hold. <laughs> don't uh, want to get behind her in the post. I'll tell you that. Much. No, she will eat you alive. <laughs> the Diggs brothers, Trayvon and Stefan. Go get him. Some love. Yeah, welcome, welcome to Texas. Uh, the Low brothers, absolutely. Nasty Nate and his brother in Tampa Bay. The Cavender twins. Lowe's, uh, I, I, we got some good news on him. We okay. did get some good news on Lowe. He's running yeah. the bases. Running the bases to live BP. We'll talk with Jerry about that. Kenny Landry. The Bush, the, the Bushes in racing. Yes. Kyle and Kurt. Yeah. The Bushes. Vegas. Good son. drivers. The Molinas being texted in. Yadier, Benji. Oh, man. Who, who How many the are one? there? Aren't there like four catcher dudes? There's a lot. Yeah. Oh, they're all catchers. Has there yeah. ever been a time throughout baseball history that a there wasn't a Molina? Because I would argue there's not been. Uh, there probably at some point was. Do we have one? No, Who's I think you're Molina right now. I don't think we have one. There's Molina in there. I don't think so. But which He's is the one somewhere? One of them. Yeah, maybe coaching. One of them took a a catcher's yes a a an off the ground fastball. To, I think it was Yachty. It was. It's one of and they slow motion that thing like sports mm. science on that has to be the just the worst. It's one of the most egregious things I've ever seen happen to a player. Gosh, and that's... the fact that he came back out there. For more. Like, that's a hang em up situation. Yeah. That's an, uh, I'm okay now. I'm going to tap out. Reggie and Cheryl Miller. Yes. Absolutely. Scratch yep. that off my list. What else you got, Lucius? Uh, the Ball Brothers. <laughs> Never lost. The Ball Brothers are good. Yeah. What, what, they've kind of, uh, I haven't heard much from the Ball Brothers as of late. 
Oh, you don't have my uh, timeline. <laughs> did LeVar just do something? That's, did, yeah. we, did he? What, what's up with LeVar? Somebody just bought a house for somebody, I think. Yeah, I, I seen LeVar showing off a house mm -hmm. on the Vlad yeah. TV. Okay. That's the last time I seen him. Shout out to LeVar, man. Uh, no. Deion Sanders' kids. Yeah. Uh, Shiloh, Shador, and, and then good, Dion Jr. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say good luck. And think, uh, Well, there might be more than that, but those yeah. are the three I know of. Yeah. The Wayne's brothers? Yeah, the Wayne's brothers. Talented amazing. group that is. Yeah. There's like 12 of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they all talented. We got Cal and Billy Ripken. Uh, the Diaz brothers. Absolutely. You don't want to mess with them. The Blades brothers. That's a Miami Hurricane institution right Sedines, there. Daywalkers. The Hockeys. Yeah. Uh, Josh and Jace Young. Absolutely being texted in. We got uh, the Alomars. Certainly. Mm. Oh, Robbie and Sandy. Yeah. The Blues brothers. Yeah. The Boses. Jake and Elwood. Joey. Uh, the Ante de Compos. Oh, come on. <laughs> Giannis and Fiannis. One of those is doing all of the heavy lifting there. Hey, but the other ones are, uh, you know. Thanasis. They're in there. The older one that's not that tall was the Hooper. And, like, Giannis was struggling to get on the court when they were, like, 15, 16, just figuring out basketball. Wow. Older one took it, almost discouraged Giannis. Because he was, he'd be, like, cleaning up in the corner while the varsity team was hooping. And he'd be like, man, I want to play. Dang, yep. that's crazy. Can you, yeah. That's a bummer when you're the big brother and then all of a sudden little you brother becomes the Greek freak. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, at yeah. this point, I'm sure he thinks it's cool, but there must have been yeah. a, He's probably there's a transition period He's where probably, you're like, he wouldn't be him if it weren't sucks. for me. Yeah, yeah, that's what Michael Jordan's brother says all the time. Yeah. There you go. I that's, drove him to be great. That's yeah. the play. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's the move. Like, yeah, he's, he's better than me, but it's because of me that he's good. By the way, LeVar Ball did recently make an appearance here. Uh, this was last week. He blamed the NBA training staffs and Puma's raggedy shoes for his son Lamelo's injuries. Yeah, raggedy yeah, shoes. Yeah. He did yeah. something about raggedy shoes. Yes, he does, man. You got to take his word for it. He says the reason they, they're they hurt is because they got away from me. My sons, they start doing these Rudy Toot workouts. If you keep Rudy running them Toot. hills, you're going to keep that power and that strength. You start dealing with these rubber bands and doing this lightweight stuff, of course you're going to start breaking down. A lot of things have to do with them raggedy shoes that Mello be wearing. Them shoes are not made the right way for him. That's why he keeps tweaking his ankle every single time. <laughs> He's got to get back at those big baller brand gotta shoes, Got to get man. back in the big brawlers, absolutely. Uh, we've got Ronde and Tiki Barber being texted in. Sneaky Tiki. Sneaky Tiki. Jason and Jeremy Giambi. The Jones Brothers. Of course, John Jones in the UFC, and then uh, Arthur and Chandler in the NFL. Good plays. Very good plays. The Seegers, absolutely. Uh, the Acuna brothers. Matata. <laughs> <laughs> Does uh, Webby have a brother? <sighs> Man, I don't know. Jamie and Jordy Ben. Mm. The Bash brothers. Here's the top Splash ten Splash bros? Splash bros. The yeah, Bang well, bros? The Bang bros. Yes. Well, so definitely Steph and Seth. You got the Giambis as yeah. long as we're in Oakland. Number 10 is the uh, Suter brothers, Brian, Daryl, Dwayne, Brent, Ron, and Rich Suter, all NHL players. Collectively, they won six Stanley Cups. That is incredible. Yeah, the ones Boring. that aren't in the playoffs have to go work on the farm. Yeah, that's what, seriously. Oh, really? That's what they do. That's your. That's if you. The season's over. Yeah. Like you got to go work oh. on the, the family farm. So, so we better make sure we stay in. the You got to get the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Lu Lucius grew up with that kind of a situation where you could end up at a buddy's house or your house, like doing yard work. For oh yeah. Like eight to ten hours. Yeah. Is that yeah. a thing in the past? Does that still happen to kids? I don't know. That was my house. Was it? Good for you. Yes. My, my friends would come over and then they'd be calling mom to come pick them up a little bit yeah. quicker than I, they I had friends were that, anticipating. I, there, was a, there was a buddy of mine. <laughs> mom, but, I know I said I was going to be here all day on a Saturday. It's 10 a.m. and I got to go. My yeah, dad, no, we, I, I, I've my been, buddy Mr. Mine. Chiafalo will not get off my hide. Yeah. Hey, go pull the weeds, kids. My, my dad would love that. No, we want to paint Who the house? Who's a weed eater around here? Which one of you boys? <laughs> I, had, I had buddies that like this This uh, buddy of mine, his mom, we, we crawled out of the window. So we would like to avoid her to, from not going through the front door. Okay. Like we were with the don't, house. Don't be seen. We, we'd crawl out the window, at the back window, and then go through the back door or the garage area to get out of the house just to not to have to do chores. Yeah. Paint yeah. the house. That's amazing. Gutter cream. Early in the morning, too. Oh, God. My pops used to trick over. you. He'd buy that pizza on Friday night. You guys yeah. want to go to Blockbuster? Get you some Blockbuster <laughs> videos Friday night. Put a little $20 in your pocket if you want to go to Venice Beach or anything, yeah. you know? I'm talking about 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 
You know what, boys? He's kicking. He's coming in with just straight underwear on. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Start assigning people jobs. Uh, <laughs> kicking what you're doing today. Just draws, bro. Kicking the roots. The whitey tighties too, fam. Oh, oh, embarrassing no. me. I gotta go back to school. <laughs> just handing your friend a shovel as yeah. he's getting out of bed. <laughs> That's the look. Uh, definitely the Von Erichs. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There you go. 100%. So Wemby does have a brother. He's 17 years old, and apparently he's already causing a stir in the U.S. basketball I, media mock draft. Is he so. a 6'5 guy, maybe? Is he how? Is he a 6'5? Uh, I'll, I'll work on the, uh, the, height. the size here. Oh, yeah. Nice. The Jones is Julius and Thomas Jones from the 469. Hmm. Uh, Jack and Bobby Charlton. Uh, soccer players. Yes, English football legends. Yeah. Actually, when uh, last time England won the cup, I think in... 66. You're damn right. Yeah. Look at you. Dang. Encyclopedia Brian. You've been taking your ginkgo biloba, haven't you, Brian? I'm getting better at this. If man. this damn geese would get out of my way, I'd be a lot healthier, I think. That recall is really coming <laughs> back, man. Yeah. Number eight. How about this, Kurt and Kyle Bush? That's a yeah, yeah, said that earlier, yeah. yeah. Seven is Henrik and Daniel Sedin. Mm. Hockey or hockey guys. Hockeyers, they are, yeah, they are hockey Vancouver or... Canuck Legends, man. Yeah, Both Canuckers. gold medalists. Yeah. I want a no hockey list. No disrespect it. to hockey. I love you, Stars fans. No. Number six, Vince Joe and Dom DiMaggio. Baseballers. I didn't know that there were that many DiMaggios. Yep. Yep. I'll never forget like what Pete Rose said about DiMaggio. My gosh. Showering <laughs> in uh, Vietnam. <laughs> uh, those were the days. He painted quite the picture. 6'8 uh, for uh, Wimbin Yama's brother, by the way. 6'8? Six, 6'8. Eight? Six, eight. All right, here yeah. we go. Yeah. Listed as a wing, small forward kind of dude, but 6'8". And that's at 17 years old, so Jeez. who knows what he will continue to sprout into. Might be better. Five is uh, some more hockey players. Phil and Tony Esposito. Yeah. Chicago Blackhawks. Blackhawks and Bruins. Winners. Mac and Jack Robinson at number four. Oh, baseballers? Yeah, Jackie Robinson, of course, and uh, Mac. Uh, the, uh, the Olympics. I didn't the know Olympians. there was a Mac. The Olympics. About the same. Yeah, Mac. he was amazing in sports, too, as yeah. well. Was he really? Yes. See, yeah. Jackie Robinson played football at UCLA, was a quarterback. Yeah, Mac was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jackie Robinson was no joke. Well, you did, back in those days, you did all the sports. He did. He, he showed up. You did so everything. They like, hey, Jackie, we need you to like beat USC this week. Why don't you come play quarterback for us? Mac won silver right behind Jesse Owens yes. at that 1936 World Olympics. What? Yeah. Yes, he did. Number three is uh, Maurice and Henry Richard. Hockey. Yeah. Canadians. Number two, Peyton and Eli. Number one, though, best set of siblings on National Sibling Day in sports is indeed Venus and Serena yeah. Williams. Yeah. Yeah. The Williams sisters there. I mean, they're absolutely badass. Thank you, Woolchuck. My pleasure. Top 10 every afternoon, 420 here in the GBAC Nation, set for Mondays when CY joins us. Then we run it at 440. Now, uh, speaking of 440, what are we doing next, Chief? Uh, <laughs> what are we doing next? That is a, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> oh, what are we doing um, next, Woolchuck? We, are we going to taking a trip around the, going around the, the bases? bases? Yeah, we got a mixed get... bag. Oh, we're mixed bagging it? Wow. Yeah. Okay, you got to hear this little dicky story next. And we got a special programming announcement coming up at 5. But uh, speaking of amazing stuff, I want to tell you about Diamonds Direct right now because if you have any jewelry needs in your life, you owe it to your...
Steakhouse in Dallas. Knife serves lunch and dinner seven days a week with incredible cuts of steak, exceptional cocktails, and intimate moody ambience. For reservations, visit KnifePlano.com. The fan is proud to support the 2024 Tex Gala to benefit the Texas Rangers Foundation on Monday, April 22nd, headlined by Country Music Hall of Fame members Brooks and Dunn. Walk the red carpet and enjoy cocktail hour and dinner on the playing surface of Globe Life Field. It's going to be an amazing night for a great cause. For tickets, go to rangers.com slash Tex Gala. Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They are the number one Chevy dealer in the world with more Silverados than anyone else, y'all. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference. Based on new Chevrolet registrations, 2023. Yes, sir. Welcome back, nation. Programming announcement coming up in 12 minutes. Mixed bag time. Here's Wolchuk. All right, this just in, Tom Pelissero and uh, NFL Media announcing the NFL informed clubs today it has revised the uniform policy to allow teams a third helmet design. This expansion was offered to the teams that were going through the redesign process for the 2024 season, and it's now open to all clubs for the 2025 season. So we know the Cowboys had their traditional helmet, and there's the white one that they were wearing for uh, Thanksgiving and the alternate unis. 1960 helmet. Now we've got a third option. Is is the, well, What are we doing here? Do we get the, the black Cowboys helmet? You said 1960s Cowboys helmet brought us? That a 1960 helmet. I believe they wore The throwback times. jerseys. Yeah. 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 White helmet with the blue star. I think this could be fun. Now we can get some more creative third helmet ideas. Wasn't was it, wasn't that the the Thanksgiving helmet they had for some years like... I feel like I've seen Romo yes. wear this before. Yeah, this no, 1960s. it is. Oh, they wore yeah. it for Looks years. good. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It's a clean look. See, clean. they were. Are we are we doing this now? Are we? The policy used to be they didn't want to keep changing these helmets out for the concussion type. For the of concussion. Stuff. Now I think they're seeing positive results in their new concu- uh, yeah. the helmets in the yeah. models that they're. So I think that they're more comfortable now. Where okay, we can go ahead and let you be a little more creative with the uniform designs. There you go. So that's good news, especially for those that kind of like the alternate or the color rush type of helmets. We also have, shout out to track and field. They've become the first Olympic sport with prize money. Gold medalists now get $50,000. That's nothing. <laughs> you should get more. I know. But yeah. can you believe that this is the first time that this has even been done? And yeah, 50K, I agree with you, is small and they should be getting more. But hopefully this opens the door now to where these Olympians are able to cash in on their sport because that's pathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just weird that like billions and billions of TV dollars are, are going to, uh, you know, be cycled through the yeah. economy. And these these dudes are spending, or these ladies as well, uh, or, you know, neither one, are, they're spending three or four years. You know, this is not like one year, here's $50,000, which, by the way, after taxes, isn't going to get you much anywhere at all. I mean, you, you are sacrificing an entire half decade trying to uh, represent your country at the highest level, and they're still benefiting from that myth of uh, amateurism. Yeah. It's, uh, it's unfortunate to see people taken advantage of. Will they be taxed on like a... Like I, from France in a France situation? Maybe. I think they get taxed. Don't they get taxed on the medals that they get issued out? I the think value of the medal. Yeah. The value of the medal. So yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so we do have some questions. Like, well, <laughs> what about the Cowboys, the red, white, and the blue stripe? That's certainly not a different helmet. It's just a, a stripe that they put on the they helmet. Put, yeah, that's yeah. a different. They do that so for it doesn't the, count. The it's military, one of the designs. That, that, yeah, it's for the, uh, the uh, Medal of Honor recipient. Yeah, and, they, and they, I think They're they only do it one, uh, one, one game one, a year. One I think game they year. work for the Giants game this year, maybe. Uh, yeah. That could have been two years ago. These years are starting to blend blend together for me. But they did it the first time for the bicentennial in 1976. Yeah, and it, and those are pretty cool too. But that wouldn't count against uh, one of the Cowboys no. designs: blue chrome, silver chrome, star from the 817. You can send in your ideas if you want. Eight seven seven eight eight. It's so weird how the NFL drew such a firm line on this for so long. Their paranoia about the concussion lawsuits has driven them to some extremes, and I, I think a lot of them were with actual player safety involved. And then there were just some bizarre ones that took away from. What I think is one of the most fun things for fans, it's uniform color combinations. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I know when you're playing Madden and you're creating your teams and all this stuff, like some of the designs, uh, even even in you know in the NBA, in, in 2K, that's some of the best stuff. Uh, speaking of helmets, all right, we have on the New Heights podcast, a little dicky. Can I do something real quick? Yeah, what do you got? Just real quick, the I looked up Michael Phelps because I was okay. curious how much. Michael Phelps supposedly has a net worth of over $100 million. Dude. 
But only he but would greatest have, Olympian of all time. But he would only yeah exactly. But he would only had gotten six hundred fifty thousand dollars for all his medals. That's unbelievable. Think about Michael Phelps, but the amount of medals he's got—what ma- twenty plus gold medals, right? You said gold medals. Gold, yeah, he's got the most gold medals ever. Yeah, gold medals. He'd only made six hundred fifty thousand dollars on his on his gold medals. Oh man! But he's worth he's worth a hundred million dollars, and that's because with endorsements, it's endorsements, and, and all partnerships, that and all that. Like that. I bet if he was like doing the auctioning off of his gold medals, they would. Wouldn't they just cash out in a huge way? I just I just find it hard to believe that he he's only making. Six hundred and fifty thousand no, dollars. Olympians don't get imbursed. Yeah, at all uh, for or. But yeah, he's you have all the endorsements. He's a subway. It's all about the endorsements. Yeah, yeah the subway, subway rolls around. Yeah, all yeah, that, that's where they're cashing in. Yeah. So, Lil Dicky was telling uh, Travis and Jason Kelsey his welcome to Hollywood story, and uh, well, what are some of the weirdest requests you've ever gotten? And uh, here's here's Lil Dicky. First question, our fans uh, have asked us to sign actual babies. Travis actually signed uh, his first one. Chrome Parsons. <laughs> so it's a champion. Haley let me sign that chrome dome of his. What's the weirdest thing someone has a- asked you to sign? Uh, I mean, I signed a man's oh, Shut no! the f- Way. I did. I signed a man's When you said in the show, like, come that, on That's one of those show. based on the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I basically, you know, I was like, back then, I was trying to sell the tickets. I was like, Sacramento, like, still a few tickets left. Meet and greet. Like, I might sign someone's tonight. Guy eventually comes to the front and he goes like, yo, LD, like, you you for real about, like, signing? (laughs) I just wanted to see if this was actually about to happen. I said, if you unravel your and stretch it and place it on the table, I will sign that. I will sign it. And he, with no hesitation. Zero hesitation. Zero hesitation. He unraveled his his like medium size medium is medium size medium. i remember being very like it wasn't that big wasn't that small like, <laughs> it was like very medium it's normal like i didn't feel annoyed by it or like it was easy to, wow. i could find the place to sign easily like it was, uh, and i signed this man medium yeah can't call his bluff baby unbelievable Oof. I cannot yeah. believe somebody actually <laughs> requested that. Are you kidding? No hezzy on the stretch out. Yeah, no, no hesitation. Problem. Just, I guess, perfect size to be able to sign. But <laughs> what the heck are we doing? It wasn't annoying. I mean, I guess this is this is finally, you know, we're 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 being progressive here. I mean, the ladies have always had their body parts signed. Fair. And now, now the dudes are like, you know what? We want some of this He's too. He's yelling this out to promote a concert and just be mm-hmm. funny. Equality. As a joke. Some guy after the concert says like, oh, dude, were you, were you being serious? Because that would have been a dream of mine. <laughs> like, do you mind? <laughs> yeah, there's some weirdos happening out there in LA. I I'm never going to wash it again after this. Thank you, man. <laughs> I'm going right to the tattoo parlor. <laughs> yeah. He's going to make it permanent. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> Gosh, that's oh, unbelievable. Oh, oh. oh yeah. There's I mean, me. you've heard about the piercings, right? Like the yeah. Prince Albert. Mm-hmm. And- sure. You know, some folks just want to do some strange stuff with Weird that. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. It, it's wild. That's the best John Hancock story I've ever heard. That's a great one. <laughs> it's a white guy thing. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's got to be a white guy thing. Yeah, you're getting escorted out to place if you ask. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, Come on, fam. What are we doing? You going to ask Drake? <laughs> hey, man. I really love your music. <laughs> get a Scorpio right here. Can I get you to sign it first? <laughs> we got an hour and a half of the nation to go. Rangers pregame is coming up at 6 o'clock. Special programming announcement on the other side. And it edition of the finest waits for you chief where are we going well we have a texas size grand opening and a little sprinkle dinkle of master's goodies next here in the nation shoot yeah but i'd love to talk to you about my friends at dnm leasing maybe you want something new right you were driving through that rain earlier today and you said man i need new tires so we just don't have
Magnation, right here on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go, hour four of the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. We'll take a look at a, uh, a mock draft coming up in the Expressway at 520. We have a Heat Mavs preview as they'll be in action here coming up in the 6 o'clock hour. Rangers and A's coming up at 630. And uh, we do have, uh, you know, in addition to the finest here in just a second. But before we get to that, Brian, we've been teasing it throughout the afternoon. Yeah. Special programming announcement. Take it away. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Gavin. Really appreciate that. Uh, really looking forward to getting this back together again. We've done it uh, a few years now, and uh, we do it every year for the draft. we got Draft 101 yeah, buddy. coming up. This is your opportunity to hang out with... Uh, all the crew that's going to handle the uh, the draft coverage for three days: Aisha Morrison, Zach Wolchuk, myself, Nick Harris, Bobby Belt, Bobby Belt. We're all going to be there, and uh, this is going to take place on April eighteenth at seven thirty, and it's going to be at a special place. We're going to have it at the Star there in Frisco at the Dallas Cowboys facility. Uh, at the it's inside the Dallas Cowboys team auditorium, their meeting room their big auditorium that they hold their team meetings in, uh, that's where we're going to have uh, the the Draft 101. Wait, so Toes get to sit in the same chairs that the players sit yeah, in? They exactly. sure do. Yeah, and so, wow. again, like we've done in the past, it's going to be questions and answers, uh, You know, pass around the mics. If you have a question about the draft, we're going to kind of chop it up. It should be a really, really fun night. It and always is, dude. It is a fun night. And, and the way you can uh, register this is you just go on the website here, at 1053thefan.com backslash draft101. Once again, 1053thefan.com backslash draft101. And it, you should get registered for that. And we look forward to seeing you on April 18th at 7.30 at the Star in Frisco. Can't and wait. Thank, thank you to Miller Light, by the way. Yeah, shout out to Miller Light. Yeah. Cheers. It's going to be a fun uh, fun time. We didn't get to do this last year. This yeah. is my first time being a part of Draft 101. We're super excited about yeah. it. But these this is going to fill up quick, so make sure you go right now. Uh, we've put it out on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, Instagram. I'm sure we'll get it popping as well. So 1053thefan.com slash draft101, 7.30 next Thursday. It's going to be awesome. Walchuk's running point on that, huh? He is. 
Apparently. Uh, he's we, hosting. We, we, we gotta, ready. Does just, he have to open up with like a monologue of sorts? Is he oh, gonna, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like five good minutes? Oh, yeah. I'll be ready. Yeah, like, got you some know, material. Got to give a speech. You never have... Any so- birthdays in the house? All yeah. right. <laughs> Any Pisces? <Yeah. laughs> I do think you should start by just roasting your, your crew here. Yeah. You know, like whoever you host. have. Like Broadus. Yeah. You got Aisha there. Nick's there. Bobby. Oh, yeah. Like kill Tony, bro. Just yeah. go for it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, that's going to be awesome. That's dude. a pretty easy crew to roast. I think I could have fun with that. I think I went to the very first ever one uh, before I was actually working here. It was like the first time ever because it was back when they were doing it in the, at the yeah, station. The this is the first year they're actually doing it at the star. Yes, like, first just, time. This is absolutely premium real estate. Well, yeah. I remember when we were doing it, it would be after G bag and it'd be like seven to eight downstairs at the showroom. Yeah. And people would be texting in draft questions for the entire first hour of the nosebleed seats. It'd be nothing show related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just getting bombarded with draft questions. Oh. It's like, unfortunately, we're not airing draft 101 right yeah, now. Yeah, this but... is not an airable thing. This is just an exclusive, yeah, intimate exclusive, draft yeah. conversation Come amongst in, football minds. Get all you bring your bring your. Uh, we've had people bring their notebooks and stuff before. Oh, bring your like, lunch with, pail uh, with all their questions and stuff like that. So cool. I just got a text message from Basic. You guys see this? No, what happened? What Basic's out. You know, he's doing the work tonight out at the ballpark. Park. Yeah, he says there's possibly twenty thousand people outside the stadium right now, uh, waiting for oh. the championship mini bobblehead thing. This is oh yeah, it's a trophy. It's a replica. It's a replica. Yeah. Uh, oh, Mike, Mike called it. That's, what, that's why Carter left an hour and a half ago yeah. to get his oh. little spot in there for that trophy. Oh, Damon, yeah. we could have put it up on the cam. Okay, you know what'd be funny? But that's smart move for. Okay, I, so Carter's probably gonna be able to put it back there. Yeah, he looked at me and said, "He gone," and yeah. then walked out the door. I'm yeah, like, okay. Hey, what would that's be really move. funny? Shout out to Carter. Dude. What would be really funny if we could get one of these bobblehead trophies and Carter does not get one? What would be really oh, funny is if Carter's on the clock right now. <laughs> Come on, Brodus. <laughs> Carter <laughs> clock out. He's, on he's definitely on the clock. <laughs> yeah, and he is. All well, well, we had to do is text somebody and say, "Hey, can we get an extra? Can, can we get trophy? a? Can we get a? Well, there's only ten thousand of them. That's what I'm saying. So it's just a first 10,000 you know, so, so yeah. what they do is like oh, last no. night like what they when i used to do pre and post is the night before they do the giveaway they will bring it to, to the, the media, media. Yeah. yeah so you can take a picture of it and kind of show the fans what they're going to get right. yeah i saw so eric matt yeah. jared you know mike if he was working yesterday yeah. probably got it yesterday yeah i wonder if mike did i wonder if mike got his bobblehead mike, I mike you got listen. one yeah bro. well the listen. world the world series <laughs> replica is outstanding it looks badass scouting one well, it's not a bobblehead right he keeps calling the trophy a it's bobblehead. Not a bobblehead it's a replica trophy oh, okay yeah. i know what it is but usually when you do, it's got rob manfred's head on the top of it yeah. just don't, 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 don't. okay d- d- is it about the size of a bobblehead it's bigger <laughs> isn't it yeah <laughs> i think it might be smaller smaller than i saw kennedy landry post a side by side with her stanley Okay, and, and the trophy it didn't look big, but it, well, it's kind of like it's, it's kind of like what you're working with right there, Dawson. That your drink. It's right a, there. it's like, a, yeah. Okay, all yeah, right. That'd yeah. be that'd be. It, it is a collector's so, so item. It's definitely smaller than that. Okay, size doesn't matter in this instance. It's I a championship about, I think trophy. About okay, this big as big as this uh, cup right here. All right, it's a solid. So it's handheld. So there's twenty thousand fans roll, out there. Roll out and sign. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They, they're they're <laughs> stretch it out a little bit. bit. Stretch it out a little bit and sign it. I love only, me a meat stretcher. Only half of them are getting the trophies. <laughs> Here's the chief with an addition to the finest. Oh man, the heartbreak. Sign there. up for draft one oh one. Yeah, please. All Definitely. You, all you it's probably be embarrassing if you don't. And so, how uh, how can we how can we sign up for that, Broadus? Uh that would be a one oh five three the fan dot com uh, backslash draft one oh one. Gosh, it's gonna be awesome. And that's uh, a week from tomorrow. Uh, the 18th. Yeah, a week yeah, from, from tomorrow. tomorrow. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, 730. beautiful. Be there. 7.30. What are you prime what time. 7 7.30. 7.30. Yes, I got a daughter. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, so I got a daughter. <laughs> have to, <laughs> nice seeing you guys. <laughs> have to get out of here. Oh, look, there's no more brisket. <laughs> I've got a daughter. <laughs> wow. you look at here? Got myself a daughter. <laughs> uh, that was my favorite part of finding out I was having a baby girl. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> gentlemen, tomorrow, the Masters is underway. Dun, dun. Now, Broadus is a little bit butthurt. He's going to be hate watching these Masters because he keeps getting denied entry. I uh, have. The Broaduses are not allowed on the Masters grounds, apparently. I keep applying for tickets every year. I've gone twice, though. I've made it twice. Well, you won't be the only one who doesn't get an opportunity to participate in the Augusta festivities. Uh, and this is a gentleman who was supposed to have that opportunity. Oh, he and, sold his tickets. In fact, it's his job to do so. Uh, but due to unforeseen circumstances, a uh, caddy for Tyrell Hatton will unfortunately not be making Uh-oh. his caddy duties go to work. What did he do? Starting tomorrow, here is Tyrell Hatton, the golfer, 
with a great accent telling you what's happened to his caddy and John Rahm is next to him when you hear the giggling throughout the story just know that is your reigning Masters champion John Rahm. Good. Can you talk about the caddy situation today? My caddy fell over last night uh. um, <laughs> after dinner. Now uh, his reputation is um, an interesting one so I, I don't know <laughs> how the fall really occurred but either way he landed pretty heavy on his shoulder um and he spent the afternoon in hospital so he's had an x-ray uh he's not he won't be caddying for the next month um Wait. yeah so i've got a, a friend on on the bag he's he's actually flying tomorrow now to augusta so augusta. and he'll augusta. he'll do um adelaide and singapore if, if we can get a visa in time for him to visa. do Australia, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, wow. Drunkenness? There is, uh, yes, yes. I, I presume there was maybe some heavy porridge taking place. Yeah. And there was a stumble. I, I assume it's either a curb that was not yeah, anticipated. Curb yeah. The curb can get you a staircase every once in a while. You mm -hmm. elongate a step, and now you're, you're expecting step to be there and it's not and now you're tumbling down so curb or steps uh i imagine but i would love to get the details on that particular story you there would, you would like hatton as a golfer and i'll tell you why i mean if you ever watch video of him he like talks to his ball in very foul language okay i saw clips of this and i was gonna pull he's it he's a it's club like, breaker club thrower because he's on the live tour yes he's and, angry and they i he guess is. like they air you know yeah. these guys are i don't know if they're mic'd yeah. up or just the mics yeah. pick it up but he is he, just mother bleeping c wording yeah his himself yeah, his the, golf club ball, his golf ball, ball. he's he's like the infidel, yeah Mike. he's like yeah <laughs> that's the one that's yeah. it you effer golf ball that's it you know like he yeah he's he's pretty good at you this bloody effer yeah he's he's what we all do when we get on the course the way you talk to your ball that's is that per capita the most foul language uh you know him in just just golf courses in general is that where you feel like you could find the most foul language because everybody's so upset at Might themselves. Just be driving down seventy five. You yeah, these U.S. True. Open courses where they make the greens super dry. Yes. they'll like burn the damn greens for a month before you <laughs> yeah. show up. You're putting on clay. Yeah, been sent to the kiln. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a miserable. Foot roll off the green. Yeah, not not for me. Uh, so caddies get paid, right? Yes, they do yes. quite a bit. So he's about to miss out on some money because he got buzzed. He's going to miss out. Matter of yeah. fact, uh, got to tell the family that. Scotty Scheffler's caddy. Ooh, that's, yeah. I, I call it a drinking problem. Sorry, sir. mom and dad. I, I think Scotty Scheffler's caddy. Bill W. Next week <laughs> made about eight hundred seventy-five thousand the last three weeks. See what? Prize Cause, money because it's all about what you're. If your guy you get wins, certain, you got yeah. You get a, you get a, you you get a fee. You get a you have a caddy fee that you get like a you know, like, and then there's bonuses. For how you finish, yeah, in the tournament. You know, there was a story I feel like uh, a couple of years but ago. But he, he's paid by the by the golfer. Yes, not he, by the it, tour. You're the golf supposed, supposed to give a tip, right? If you win, said golfer like John Rahm was supposed to tip his caddy. Yeah, and I think there was a story of somebody that won one of the majors didn't tip. Matt Kuchar. Matt yeah, Kuchar won at yeah. Mexico. Yeah. yeah, he won at Mexico, and he was his guy gave was the guy two grand. Yeah, the guy was due fifty grand, and he didn't. He gave him two. Oof. Yeah, that's not cool. No. No. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I wonder what the qualifications are for the guy that's flying in now. A day, like, is he just getting a? <laughs> right. Is he just a friend? Right place, right time. Sure, bro. I'm going to come out. I don't really have much in the way of advice you. for you here. Hold a hole, but I'll be. I'll walk with you. You know, yeah, I'll keep no, you company. It's a bad play. Maybe the guy has some experience though. But I'd be looking for a local caddy before I'd be trying to fly somebody in. I that would be a great idea. Somebody that know. I mean, he's played this course enough to kind of understand. A lot of these guys don't ask for help. You know, I mean, hey, rake the, pick up the divots, rake the traps, clean my clubs. You know, it's pretty, it could be a pretty simple game. You might be able to phone a friend in this situation. Maybe he's got the number of one happy Gilmore Ooh. and he could try and borrow a caddy situation. Speaking Who was of. Who happy caddy? He had his homeless buddy. Yeah. Uh, and then he had that hockey plan or that, uh, the kid that looks like Will Zalatoris, right? Yes, that's who it was. Uh the blondie, the, yeah, guy. the blondie, yeah. So I think he, I think Happy Gilmore ultimately had two caddies, uh, but here he actually, got a caddy four. Happy has made an appearance on the Dan Patrick show uh, because cat's out of the bag thanks to Shooter McGavin on Happy Two. So uh, here is Happy addressing the situation. Now that brings us to Happy Gilmore 
Du. Du. Part du. du. All right, picked yeah. up a little bit of steam. Shooter McGavin shot off his mouth a little bit here. Yeah, he did. He certainly did. He texted me uh, after the fact. By the way, that thing you told me not to talk about. <laughs> I talked about. That's, well, that's good news. Uh, no, all I did was tell him. See, I did stand up. I did a comedy special, and a lot of uh, my buddies came by, and Shooter was one of them. And I said, dude, we've been talking about uh, a happy two, and we're working on some stuff. That's all I told Shooter. I said, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell anybody. And then he, and then he, he, you know, he kept it mostly private. He told a couple of DJs about it. That's they usually are great at secrets, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> yep. But you should have known Next. not to not to trust him. Well, I was excited that Shooter was in the room with me. <laughs> he didn't. I love him. You didn't like him in the movie. You couldn't trust him in the movie, yeah. and you can't trust I, him in I, real I, life. It all came. It all came back to me at that moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was like, "That's right. He's the bad guy." So, cat's out of the bag, thanks to Shooter, but uh, betraying a uh, a trust there. But that is good and news for all of us, and I we're fired up. Dan Patrick's in the movie too. Yeah, like, as himself. Yeah, he's gonna get a, he's he's gonna get a part. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, very exciting news for myself and the folks in the eight one seven Alliance Fort Worth uh, had their grand opening today. H E B thirty four fifty one Heritage Trace Parkway, True Texas Barbecue, oh. and uh, yes, H E B. Dude, okay. Honestly, HEB, the grand opening. I cannot wait, dude. This I'm is my first time. I've never, I've never been inside one. It's, so at some point this weekend, I plan amazing. on making my maiden yeah, voyage. Crazy. Eric, like I don't like grocery store shopping. It's but crazy. HEB, I will show up yeah. and just kind of wander around because it's that much fun. And that True Texas Barbecue is actually pretty good. That's what I wanted to ask you guys about. I'm not never familiar with this True Texas Barbecue it's situation. It's expensive, but it is pretty good. Is it upside down? It's not upside down. A true brand. You know. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, dang, that's not actually a terrible idea. They, they, should, could, they might be able they to work that into that some that of their I merch. Mean, I knew where you were going with that, but that, no, they could did. partner. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know where he was going with that. <laughs> one. Is it upside down? The truth. It's upside down barbecue. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, the dude, brisket's pretty good. Brisket I, Sandos for nine bucks. Yeah. Twelve bucks for a plate with two side dishes. You got the beef ribs occasionally. Um, they'll have fried chicken tenders and wings as well. The sliced brisket, brisket, the sausage, the St. Louis pork ribs, pulled pork, burnt ends. And they got like a pretty full menu situation here. I didn't know if Dawson. you guys had actually tried Ooh. that barbecue because I've never tried it. Yeah, I've tried it. Dawson, I need a ruling. Okay. Are you a barbecue place if you're doing chicken tenders? Um, if, Kids meal, bro. If you smoke them. I mean, what about the kids? Uh, the kids could eat brisket sandwiches. I guess if you're doing it for the kids. You know how the kids can get when it comes to chicken tendies. I need a ruling. I you can do it. Chicken you can do it technically. You know, some people would actually say chicken wings aren't barbecue. So I ask I, for I ask for a little levity. I'll, yeah. I'll give it in return. Well, we had the steak debate. We know that yeah. they're doing steaks. Hey, mm. I don't know if that's a barbecue place. I don't, I'm with you, bro. I don't think that's a barbecue place whatsoever. Yeah, that chicken tendies. If you have, tendies. if you have, if you have barbecue chicken. You're, yeah. bar you're, you're a yeah. barbecue place. I have not noticed the chicken tenders at the location. In I would even say a chicken fried steak at a barbecue place is not a barbecue place. I'm with you, bro. I'll agree. bring you some chicken tenders you think is barbecue. Okay, I'm please. Do that. Uh, Challenge. When, hey, when, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, yes. the, the, we got the meatball. I got a, a great meatball dish for you guys on Friday, though. Okay. We got something coming up. Dude. How about that, Big time. Tease. Big time. Hey, Big and congratulations, Walch Walchuk. I don't know if you heard about this, but the pretzel cheddar club sandwich Chick fil A bringing it in and bringing it strong in Raleigh, North Carolina. They're unveiling Raleigh. it. It happened two days ago, and hopefully this takes off. The pretzel bun. I've been talking about yes. this with the Hawaiian roll. Yes. The, the pretzel bun, you make a cheeseburger or a slider that's out what of it. We're, that's it what we're working with. It takes it to a level that's 10. That's what we're working with like, yeah. it, lo it looks like Chick-fil-A is testing the waters on pretzel buns for their sandwiches. Love it. That's, a, that's just a home run move, so kudos to them. Salute to those guys, and salute to you. Thanks for making us part of your day as we're on now to the Express. Way. If you missed our announcement, brought us and the guys are bringing back Draft 101. That's April 18th up at the Star. Yes, sir. And where do we go to sign up? Uh, you go to 1053thefan.com backslash Draft 101. It should be up and ready to go. I think it's 10 years. You know, I, I remember after Cowboys, Packers, Dez caught that ball, you yeah. guys did like a film study then yeah. Yeah. on the NFL downstairs shortly thereafter, like draft. And it is so cool to be able to sit there and, and talk with Brian it is it is fun we have a really great group your questions will get them all answered too and yeah we, we missed it because of COVID though too we couldn't get yeah. it really done the right way there so getting it back in the mix and and thanks to the Cowboys and thanks to Miller Light too for 
helping us out on that. Okay, LA Live's coming up in about 22 minutes. Uh, we have some Cowboys draft prep and a look at all the big headlines from the world of sport that have been developing throughout your afternoon coming up next here in the nation. I want to chat with you about Men's Tea Clinic. You know, the question might be, Dawson, where do you, how do you possibly have so much energy? I was just telling the guys earlier, I might need to see a therapist because I keep putting more stuff in my life.